Let's do it. Finally, we can discuss the fabled next installment of the fucking MCU, which a lot of people have been like, are they skipping this one? I'm like, almost did. <laughs> like, we came very close. I was like, I asked you about it, like, not long after I'd seen it. I was like, so what did you think of it? Because I'm pretty sure you, you were going to be able to tear this one apart. And you just replied saying, I can't be arsed watching it. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, well, I gave initially, in. I was going to be the, uh, the person, the only person who'd watched it, but, yeah. I, once I'd heard a few bits and bobs, I was like, alright, fine, fine. <laughs> and, so uh, you have seen it? I have, but let's oh. just say I haven't um, seen it in a... I told you this already. <laughs> like, I don't know how you forgot. Did... What do you mean? I told you that I'd seen it at the... I told you how I saw it, too. I... I do. I'm not aware of I this not, information. I didn't see it in the theater. Let's put it that way. Oh, oh! A pirate helped you see it. Oh, you Jack Sparrow I, 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 I burst house. into my you house. Watched it, you watched it at a friend's house off of his TV when he was streaming it from Disney. This, yeah. uh, Mega. It was a pirate, and he and he was definitely Disney a Gold. I just Disney Gold. That makes me Disney think gold, of like that's Nazi what gold was, yeah. something. Um, well, but did you get to watch? It was. It was like. Gold Argentina is constructed and Adams look like Mickey Mouse, like Ted. Did you get to watch like this with Mickey Jack Gold. Sparrow? I did. Well, he burst into my house and did research with me on the film so that I could understand his narrative <laughs> as best I could. He's, so, he's a pretty helpful guy, is Jack. I'll yeah. say that for him. I can't wait for the all female remake of Pirates of the Caribbean coming soon. This is without a doubt the worst superhero I've ever heard of. Have you really heard of them? <laughs> like Shang Chi, a lot of people haven't, but it's fine because I I didn't know about Shang Chi until uh, all this promotion stuff started so popping up. And, like, yeah. and then you found out it was a triumph. And you I just well, glorious on that triumph. You had to it, share in the triumph. It's what is it like ninety eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes or something ridiculous uh, like that? <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes worthless master. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like, well, how much money did you have to spend on that one, Disney? <laughs> it's a bit weird. So many people are loving the film. And, uh, yeah, and is, I'm, that I'm, weird, like, is that weird? It, this has uh, got a real tinge of Black Panther to it. Well, yeah, I was about to say, people loved Loki. Remember that? So, yeah. Uh, that's true. Now people yeah. love WandaVision. Hey, it might win an Emmy tomorrow. Woo. Who knows? That's great. Dude, if it wins the Emmy for writing, like. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's over, uh, is, everybody. Is it's over. Is he going to win the award for like best female character? I would hope so. That's I wonder much if they have that award. Uh, yeah, all of Phase Four. It's, just, it's been lapped up quite a bit. In fact, people have been sharing them on Twitter. I shared one as well, but I was showing um, Rags and Freeing them. Cinema wins. He, he said that um, sometimes you just you gotta root for the villain and showed. Uh, Scarlet Witch in, in what division? Obviously, after enslaving the town and stuff, and it's like, what? <laughs> like, what, what? What do you mean you gotta root for it? You gotta, or else she'll imprison you and enslave you inside yeah. of her. Uh, she'll force you to root for her. He, um, I'll force them to love me. He gave it a cinema win <laughs> that Black Widow, sorry, the Taskmaster's HUD um, removed the information about Black Widow on it to focus on the vials. He was like, oh, look at that, that's neat. Like, <laughs> I, was like, I I remember when you sh you showed us that screenshot, and my comment was, "Ah, yes, because I love it in video games. Whenever my objective changes, my HUD disappears." Yep, just fucking excellent stuff. And so, yeah, Shang Chi is quite loved uh, by a lot of people. Um, but uh, we're here today to have myself, Fringy, Shad, and Drinker vaguely recollect the plot line and have Rags act as the person of interest being like, wait, what do you mean by that? Because nothing we say will make any sense, more than likely. Strap mm -hmm. yourself in, Rags, you're in for quite the treat here. All right, I'm strapping on, strapping in. Oh, okay. I'm strapping <laughs> in, whoa, whoa. I'm that ready. That could be to watch Shang-Chi, man. Um, <laughs> oh, so, this... I've, I, I've, so I'm the only one who here, I'm, I'm the only one here who has not seen this f film yet. You is are the, the audience case? insert. You represent the audience experience. Chat are going to be in the same level of you. A lot of people in chat are anyway, because I'm not sure a lot of them saw it, especially if they've been fans of the stuff we've been covering lately. I don't know why they would, but... Well, I mean, that's great, because I like to ask annoying questions, and I don't have to watch the movie. So, 
I think that's that's great. I, I like this. I like playing. Uh, I like playing. I don't know what position this is akin to in a in a sports ball game where you don't have to do anything. But a lot of the attentions on you. I mean, I guess it's like basically all the positions in baseball. So you're the referee. You can stop us whenever know. you want. I, I'm just Rags, I'm trying to picture. I, I would like, like to. I'd like to correct Rags there. Just it's like all the positions in in cricket. Wow. Cricket? That's probably you're offensive. <laughs> oh, you mean like uh, like thorax? No, no, because cricket is one of the most boring games ever invented, and I'm saying that as an Australian, and it's it's based off it's, it's baseball fat, fat it's baseball adjacent. Oh, but it's like worse a less than baseball. enjoyable version of baseball. It is, yeah, it, is. it is a less enjoyable version than baseball. I <laughs> That's totally incredible. Agree. I feel like the big thing that works against cricket is like when baseball players swing, it kind of looks cool, but like when cricket players swing at the ball, it looks a little weird and floopy. Like the There's no way to swing kind of, that they, weird well, they just paddle. Kind of put the bat in front of it, don't they? They don't even yeah. swing it. It's just going to like well, lift it up. Yeah. And yeah, strange. you always end up with ridiculous scores in cricket, like 170 runs or something. Like, oh, why? What? Is it so big? <laughs> what? Well, if you score, if you score four points in baseball, it's a fucking miracle yeah. blowout. <laughs> well, so cricket tends to last all day, which. To what me, it sounds like hell? Because <laughs> only base because ah. baseball doesn't last all day, but it feels like it lasts all day. <laughs> I mean, well, baseball could, could, could in theory happen. last forever, couldn't it? Like if you never get struck out or whatever, in, you just keep going. Uh, in theory, it is logically possible for baseball to go on forever. I mean, I suppose cricket's but, the same, isn't it? Because it keeps going until you've had a certain number of outs. But in, yeah. this, in order for a base, in order for a a batter to per, perpetually be the batter, he would have to keep fouling balls perpetually. That's mm -hmm. the only way that it could happen, as far as I know. Because either four balls and you're on base, or three strikes and you're out, or you get hit. So one of these things will uh, happen. Again, it's only it's only logically possible. Realistically, it's just not. So anyway, Shang Chi. Baseball, yeah. baseball sucks. Wow. <laughs> I guess it's See, you guys. I don't know. Just, I don't know. Ugh. Growing up with cricket, American. baseball felt like a, like a bre breath of fresh air to me. It's like, what? Yeah, you can actually do things in between when you hit the ball. You have to run to these other bases, and people might try and throw the ball to the base to get you out, and you're still engaged after you hit the ball. Oh, wow, that's awesome. And so I got to <laughs> Shan, you, you could have done that with episodes. cricket. <laughs> Is I played Simpsons baseball episode as a kid, where, like, but, where Homer like stops drinking and he goes to a baseball game and like because he's sober he's <laughs> like oh shit this is really crap. <laughs> he's <laughs> he's like, I enjoy going to the baseball the stadium and watching the games. You've got your peanuts and your cracker jacks and all of that. You know I enjoy that, but watching it on TV is just not fucking happening. It ain't happening, and. Well, now, here's something it's just that kind of... It's boring, too. Do you know how, like, baseball is like, ah, oh, it's America's pastime. Um, d don't more people so watch... So is racism. Like... <laughs> what I was gonna <laughs> say is, like, is it basketball and, like, like, uh, uh, gridiron? That's like, aren't they way more popular? Well, I, I think basketball is really great, and it seems like football, American football... I guess that's my question is who is like, you know what? I'm not going to watch basketball or football. I'm going to watch baseball. Like, how many people actually watch baseball in America? I'm sure there's plenty. I don't know. It's a whole I, there's industry. There's probably plenty. The... Well, of course, the whole industry. I'm not how sure many how many people, people cross over with this stream, though. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I would much rather watch basketball or what's the other one? Football. I'd rather watch those. Oh, it escapes a lot of people me watch for a baseball. moment. Yeah, they're lying. <laughs> So just they don't watch. A... They don't. They they don't watch, they watch baseball. baseball. It's just like they're, on they the are TV. To baseball, and they're just like, yeah. I, I mean, if it's on, I guess you know. Oh well, okay. So apparently, eight point two seven million people watch the annual American League National League Robots. matchup on Fox. I I don't know what that is, but all right. <laughs> oh wait, Fringy, have you seen baseball? No, we're I playing oh, we have to watch that. That's like a South Park movie. Like, oh, okay. It, it, it's just. I mean, you, you've seen Orgasmo, right? Uh, I no. 
I haven't seen that either. All right. Well, you know what? Well, that'll be a day. Um. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> So no, just because this, so yeah, this anyway, conversation is boring. Yeah, and, and this conversation is more interesting than Shane Chi. Wow. Uh, Fringy. Yeah, well, Fringy, yeah. what do you what do you prefer more? Aussie rules style football or rugby or gridiron? Uh, um, what, what's I mean, wait, what what are these? I, so, I don't... A, so AFL well AFL is the name of the league. Aussie rules football is have you have you not seen like what football looks like here? Like real it's, football. I don't like, think so, like, no. It's you like, like yours, a banana but or something. Well, it's it's like oh, it's... the Amer it's it's like the American one, except not at all. It's way more unwieldy, and everybody runs around, and nobody's wearing any head protection at all. Um, oh, I think I know what you talked about. Wait, yeah, that shows dangerous. Actual... Yeah, yeah, um, it is. It's, it's really dangerous. Man's football. It's, it, 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 it's, AFL it's is really man's fun. football. It's yeah. really fun. Well, I was, was going to yeah. say, I don't know what AFL is, but like, um, obviously, we associate over here like rugby is like American football without the armor. So we have yeah. rugby too, but. I definitely prefer AFL to rugby, and I mean, I'll just let me like. I I find that I find that like our version of football is just quite entertaining. Um, it also feels well, like it's, it's because it's so they kick the fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, like, you can actually <laughs> kick it. It's also you kick really the football awkward. in American football. It's just often pointless and Not terrible, a lot. and arguably too pointless and terrible. I guess <laughs> that's what I'm saying, right? Is you kick the ball, but to win in in your game, you have to run it over a line. Whereas to win in this, you have to actually kick the thing through the goals. And you're not allowed you to know. throw the ball. You have to like no, you, you have, have to, to handball hunt it. it, handball it. Hunt and it, so yeah. AFL is really strange and has a really weird play set with the rules, which requires a very high skill set to play effectively because it's so weird. And uh, and so the type of plays that you see evolve from it actually can be pretty engaging, you know, I've gotta, gotta give it credit. I, I enjoy it as much as somebody who doesn't particularly enjoy sports would like any sport Same. that they watch. That would be, that would be how I would, I, I don't I don't really care about rugby at all. I uh I, I don't I don't get it. I guess I don't get the appeal. So the funny thing is for if, me is I've seen a lot of sports. Rugby is the one that has all the highest highlights for me. Um anyone in chat right, who okay. understands anything about what I'm saying, Shane Williams' best tries, some of the most interesting fucking sports shit I've ever seen, where he has to use his speed to bash through like an army of hulking dudes all while like dodging and flipping and then passing the ball to get it all the way across the field that kind of stuff is just it just pumps your blood i mean it was like so wait, wait a second, back in wait the day that guy was an absolute monster that's when i like, that was my era of watching power. rugby obviously i don't watch it anymore but shane williams was fucking the best winger on earth like, basically let's if Do we're admit. if we're going to complain about football not having enough kicking then are we going to be consistent here and complain that there are no rugs in rugby there's I a think few. we should complain about that. Yeah, There's objectively yeah, very few a, rugs in it. That, that, that's a fair criticism, I have to admit. Um, I guess I uh, I just find the naming weird. Like, that America, it's like it's football, but there's so little... Like, it's it's not <laughs> really. It's more like run ball or tackle ball. Hand ball. You know? Like, that's... Uh, well, uh, yeah, I guess throw ball. Like, that's kind throw of ball, what it is. Yeah. Concussion ball. You know? Throw your balls. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they called it rugby over here before. because it matches the Welsh accent so much. Rugby. That's why you should call a, a rug burn. Like if you if you rub against carpet or rug and it gives you that really nasty rash, that's like a rug bee, like a bee stung you sort of from the rug. Oh, and it's like ah, that's painful. Cricket chirping and cricket. That's true. There is a lot of that. Twenty twenty is all right. That can be entertaining because it actually ends like pretty quickly. Um, I guess. But uh, but like anything that lasts more than a few hours, it's like man. Except for tennis, like tennis can be super engaging. Even yeah, when it's tennis going for like is five hours. Yeah, really I, like I, I I can watch tennis here and there because I can like follow yeah, what's yeah. happening. And when it's the 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 women playing tennis, you can hear them go. Ugh! Oh, they like the grunt, <laughs> don't they? <laughs> they do. Well, I was. <laughs> uh, I linked a video to Fring the other day of um, the most intense badminton game I've ever fucking seen. Like, um, <laughs> and when you get to the top tier great. of these players, it is the kind of thing where you're just like, whoa. <laughs> you know, it's like table yeah. tennis as well, isn't it? That's yeah, yeah. insanely fast. Oh, yeah, I like how we, really we're here cool. to talk about Shang-Chi, but we're basically working our way through every professional <laughs> this is the sport. sports known, episode of EFAP. <laughs> every Let's famous sport. Let's to talk about Shinty. We haven't even, um, like, I literally haven't even given a line for the film. What about... <laughs> 
do we haven't even talked about soccer the world's most popular sport thing which is fairly named lots of socks and and and, you know lots of socks in soccer And soccer, it's the most appropriate, you know, game to be called football, I think. If you would actually give the title, uh, yes. what, yeah. it is, what it game is deserves to be called football, it is soccer. Soccer, definitely. It's football. Well, That'll the British had it right, as usual. Yeah, yeah pretty much. I, Though, so, I enjoy playing soccer a bunch, um, but watching it can be quite boring. Playing I it, you always enjoy. have to be doing something. I don't know, the Euros were pretty fucking find, good. Like. That's what I find super interesting about soccer, is it's like, well, I, I can, oh man, I have mixed feelings on it because it's like I'm pretty sure it's an excellent game, but it's like one that I have so little interest in. <laughs> like I really, um, I'm just not interested at all. But yeah, I, think I don't, I don't care about it at all. I don't give a shit. Yeah, but about I software. guess what I'm, I guess, I guess the thing is like it doesn't surprise me that it is the most popular sport in the world. I think that it is like you know uh, like, boiled down it, to its most fundamental elements. It is also consistent. Not only is there foots and balls, if you call it football, <laughs> but if you call it soccer, it also has socks. People are wearing socks. So, you know, I'm gonna you have to. Package. Yeah, it's yeah. mandatory. I, I, I'll tell you what like pisses me off about certain sports. Like American football is bad for this. Rugby's kind of bad for it as well. When it's really stop and start. Like, oh, I know yeah. with, yeah. with American like it football, happens there's bursts. a lot of plays and stuff. And like, obviously you're going by zones and it tends to stop every time you get to the next one. And it's like, man, it's so frustrating. You just want to see some fluid play. Yeah. Like longer plays play. instead of just moving yeah. inches across the fucking um, say, map. Sort of, <laughs> it's like, we made, we I, made 10 yards. Yay. I don't, I don't well, know. I, I like, I like the idea of that in football because it's like you get a breather in between the, the plays. It's not, there's not something constantly happening because soccer is constantly happening and it's really boring. So in football, everyone gets arranged and then they have the play and there's a huge variety of different things and arrangements that can happen in each play. And then it's over. And then you're like, okay. And and then in between you could talk to your, this, this is what Fringy, Fringy calls his friend, his mates, right? Fringy can <laughs> like talk with his mates and everything about, oh yeah, this is what happened. And they're over here and he wasn't off sides because this reason and whatnot. And that passer with that, 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 and then it's ready for the next play. And then the things can happen in baseball is like that, but it's the worst version of it where it's just like, this is really boring. You know, it's like, oh, he threw it and nothing happened. I, uh, oh, okay. I, you know what? You call soccer totally... exactly boring. I mean, it is though. I, I find know. that it is mostly boring to me. But that's <laughs> just sort of the way. Right? You're the person who doesn't it... use the word mates for friends here. What? You guys are my mates? No, I just mean that you're like because <laughs> Friggy <laughs> says that. It's just like, yeah, well, you're the only one who doesn't. <laughs> we all do. Yeah. Because we're, we're cool. just we're we're mates. We're talking about Shang Chi. You know? Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, nice. I, I don't even covered so much of the movie I, already. Like, bunch of mates getting way. together to discuss a triumph of a movie. What more yeah. can you ask for? You know, Rags can't be wrong that he thinks it's boring, guys. You do know that, right? Like, <laughs> oh, well, first, yeah, off, I'm, first off, I'm not wrong. Say, just did, in general. On, did, did he say he thought it was boring or if it was boring? It I is he just objectively well, I mean, boring. If he says, if he, <laughs> oh, well, okay, well then that changes things. There you go. <laughs> no, that makes me more correct. I've I've entered, I, I have left the area of feelings <laughs> and then we've entered, we've left that and we've gone into like objective reality. Well, we've gone into details of the universe that correspond with reality and it is that there is. It's, it's intrinsic to the universe itself that that uh what what are we talking about soccer soccer is boring <laughs> much well, like I, mean, Rags, I have the... seen the weaving of the universe in between the particles and the atoms and pineapple on pizza is also objectively bad I, i've seen that it's true it's yeah true. it is bad it's, it's disgusting true. kang when kang <laughs> made the everything he made it so that soccer was boring exactly but no, why we... did he allow pineapples to exist on pizzas to know that he's evil. which people know choose he's evil. the evil path, we can see. Who <laughs> <it is. laughs> like, it's like well, everyone I mean, who does it just evaporates. Like, oh no, <laughs> uh, got melted. That, wh one of the objective things you can say about soccer is that it's weak. They get tapped and they do a dive, and they're like, uh, ah, they fall over. Oh yeah, they're, yeah, yeah, they're really they're amazing nice. though. Yeah. That's really funny though to watch all the dives, the what worst I, ones where they're like ten feet away. Some of them are Oscar worthy. It's, on, it's great. Yeah. But on the other end of the spectrum, if you guys have ever seen actual horrifying injuries from soccer, it's like 
the worst ones are ones where they're literally just walking and then they just step on something a little bit wrong and it just breaks off their whole fucking foot and they're just <laughs> screaming and it's like, oh jeez, what the fuck? And it's like, yeah, it can happen. Um, and I guess it must be harder for the referees to identify when you've got people who think, you know, are always pretending like the injury that they got, like when they're faking it, is the worst, most horrific thing ever. They're just rolling around screaming. <laughs> yeah, it's like... The thing is, now we you live in an age where, like, the, the, the ref can have access to, like, a slow-motion replay. Like, there'll always <laughs> exactly. be a camera on the ball. And so mm -hmm. there's no exactly. excuse now for making bad calls. Exactly. <laughs> I will say, the most entertaining match of, of football that I ever saw was the, uh, the that World Cup one, Brazil and Germany. My god. 7-1. <laughs> so, wow, that's, a, that's, that's, like, as many points... As they'd scored in the entire season, seven. Wow. Well, and I think they scored the first four in about twenty-five minutes. Uh, this was the semi-final of the World Cup. Um, yeah, and it was in Brazil. Bra it was like home home territory. Oh, it was eight to one. Whoops. <laughs> there you are. Jeez. Wow. Some people mentioning the yeah. U UFC injuries as well. Like, did you guys ever the, see the one? Now, I was going to mention UFC. Out of any sport that I would say I actually enjoy watching, um, uh, it's UFC. Like uh, I, MMA stuff. That Ooh, stuff seems to come veins. around from like we want to do boxing, but fuck the gloves. They were like, really? But actually, <laughs> yeah, we want to. We want to. Yeah, we 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 want to go from. We want to graduate into more violence. Yeah. I've seen, well, yeah, I've seen the whole, like, leg up. snapping thing a few well, times. I was gonna say, there was that, I can't remember if I'm getting this right, but there was, like, a fight where it's, like, really built up, two people on either side of the thing. One of them is, like, sort of doing a bit of a, like, bouncing around a little bit, like a jump back, jump four, and he's, like, walking forward, walking back, getting ready, and he just breaks his leg. Like, he moves his leg wrong, and it just fucking breaks. <laughs> and it's like, oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I think you lost. Oh, that's then, terrifying. But, but then you have the single hit KO compilations and they're just, yeah. oh, they're so cool. And some of the hits that they land are insane. Oh, it's beautiful. There were some people saying M uh, MMA isn't a sport. It absolutely has to be, like, just by definition. But Oh, yeah, I, I got to assume it uh, qualifies, right? Well, it's competitive and it's athletic. Is that? I feel like that's. What, I what is honestly the don't know what the requirements are for sport. To be fair, sport definition: an activity involving physical exertion and skill in which an individual or team competes against another or others for entertainment. What about chess? Yeah, so it's sport. That's just porn. Well, I mean, chess does require physical exertion, and it re and it definitely <laughs> requires skill. All so, right. Yeah. What about no the, one the says sport. that? Someone said it. I what about like stand up? Could that be considered Logan. a sport? Stand up, what like if it was competitive stand up? Yeah, like the, the laughs from the crowd are tallied, sort of thing. I I feel like it would have maybe to, that would right? be because yeah you, maybe yeah because you you are physically exerting yourself. So do you guys want what to talk? About what about like what about like Counter Strike where everyone just cheats? Well, I mean that's the conversation, right? Esports, yeah, that did come e up, obviously, not sport. And the the thing is like it's exertion, and then it's like it's not exertion to fucking click a button. It's like, eh, yeah. well, that's like saying if if you say that esports isn't a sport, then golf's not a sport either. Exactly, you're not exactly um, exerting yourself. You're not well, pushing yourself to the limits of your physical you, capacity. I mean, you definitely are exerting yourself when you like hit the ball and then it flies like a kilometer. <laughs> that feels yeah, like that, yeah, is, but... that has. Count, right? You're using aspects of your physical self in esports with your reflexes, your finger well, so and eye coordination. That, like that's that, definitely. So, so that's my point, right? Like, is is esports a, just a kind of like a is that just a a name that doesn't make sense to just be considered sports? Yeah, I, mean, I do it's wonder about that. For categorization. Well, I, I, I think it's useful. I know people yeah, don't like it being called well, an esport kind of anyway, because they're like, get away from the word sport, you're not allowed because you're a game or whatever, the, the, the nerdy thing. And then, because like, they're like, but some people will be like, fine, call it an esport, but it's not a sport. Well, I'm fine with making a distinction. Dark. Yeah. Made like an esport in a traditional sport. I'm, I'm fine with that as a distinction, but they're both sports. Well, yeah. in the same way that motorsports, like, you know, F1 racing and stuff. Yeah, you like, just sit your not... ass down. Ooh, wow. Kind of, yeah. And it's all a skill rather than physical fitness. Like, not to say that they, they don't exert themselves, but again, it's the same thing. You're using a lot of machinery around you that aids your, your efforts. It's not just about you. Well, I mean, then that becomes the question. Does the addition of elements which answer you 
turn it into a different thing altogether. And if that were the case, would that apply to sports where there's like a tool or an instrument that you use, like fencing? Like, well, that's not a sport. Or like tennis, they should be hitting sport. it with their hands instead of a racket. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. No, that would be <laughs> talent. You know? Wait, isn't that just volleyball <laughs> at that point? Volleyball's <laughs> fun to watch. Oh, I, I will say this. I enjoy watching like amateur level volleyball more than professional volleyball. My my sisters both played volleyball in like high school and stuff. And I enjoyed watching them play more than the professionals and like the Olympic people play. I thought it was far more entertaining to watch them because there's a lot more of an element of it's it's less kind of like predictable in a sense. Because at the really high level volleyball, they just kind of try and do the same fucking thing over and over and over where they get it to the first person and they jump up and they spike it. And you're like, oh, OK, this is like the last every play ever. This right. is boring. But when at, at that kind of level, there's they haven't gotten that down yet. And so there's a lot of like saves and there's a lot of trying to just keep the ball up and get it to the other side. And I think it's a lot more entertaining argument and i actually volleyball is a good fun game to play Aaron. Good, good it game. is yeah volleyball. it yeah. it is uh it mm. is fun it is enjoyable volleyball is so, great any other sports you guys want to cover or... <laughs> um what about what's um uh what's the one with oh croquet do you play croquet? Yeah. Oh, i've only ever seen I it have... i have <laughs> yeah like Mueller, come on you know that all british people play croquet do they? Yes. Don't, stop trying to hide it. So here's the thing: no one plays croquet, and it's shit. <laughs> it, it's it not the sort of game that like you know people hey. played like two hundred years ago. Like, I I really don't. I, I play it's, it's like, people play it's it like hoops and sticks, well, where yeah, it's like I, this is a I, game. I offended rags. No rags. You can't call it crap when you get to use a massive mallet and hit things. Okay. But you barely allowed to tap things, and a lot of times it's just like, uh, you can't like really mallet something. It's it's a mallet technically, but that like it's, it's like what? saying, oh yeah, fucking butter in this bread is so fucking metal because I get to use a knife. Oh yeah, it, it is. Okay, <laughs> are you telling me buttering bread is not metal? You it are. isn't metal. It isn't metal. It, 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 it would it be better. metal. If you it's put it over the sword, it's pretty yeah. neutral. Yeah. If croquet if was, was on like courses dead. the size of golf courses where you actually had to wallop it like you know a hundred yards cool. down the, the the green down the fairway, then it would be interesting to watch. As it is, yeah, you just tap it with like this huge mallet. Long it just feels like a wasted croquet? potential. Yeah. Croquet on golf courses. There you go. <laughs> oh, that would be so cool. Oh my you god, you're gonna hammer instead it. of a golf club. <laughs> I think they need to take it's golf. Here's right? the thing. Let's mix up golf a bit and Dude. make let's make the hazards actually hazards. They're like, oh, it, it's like some sand over there. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah, something interesting. Where it's like, oh no, it landed in the sand pit. That's a hazard. It's like, no, 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 no. It's just fucking sand. People pay money to travel across the country to go to places of sand and sit there for vacation. That's not a hazard. That's the opposite of a hazard. It's a place you want to go. So you're saying oh, no, we need to, to make sand and then have people step in. Yeah, yeah, where, where the ball, where like we don't want to kill anybody or maim anyone, mm. but like where where you would have to hurry up and run there as quick as you can, or else the ball disappears. Right? You got to really like, oh shit, my ball went in the quicksand. I gotta go get it before it's you know before it sinks down into the bottom. You know. They well, like the ball, now, say the ball had explosives in it, right, and it was on a timer, so you had to get it. <laughs> you had to get it in the hole within a certain amount of time, otherwise it's gonna blow and kill you. So oh, you have we, to sign contracts we'll, before you play this, I think. Yeah, and so like it would be a frantic rush, a frantic race against time to get this thing in the hole before it's over. Well, like, we'll I think we'll that would make it much a, more interesting. I feel like we've got to make we'll it, it spicier. We've got, to have it, we've got to have it be that there are five people competing, and the first person to get it in the hole wins, and the other <laughs> four get blown up. So that <laughs> so way, he's, that on that vein, Fringy, you know? that's how I like to play. Uh, you guys to go into that game of golf with your friends, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, so alternate ru alternate rules. Um, the person who gets the ball in the hole first wins, right? Fuck off with this. Ooh, whoever touches it last, the, 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 the pussy shit. You have to get in there. Get in that hole. Kill that woman. Whoa. Get in there. And you got to do it fast. And you got to be first, right? So you have to balance it because you can't hit it too many times or else the game's like, nah, you hit it this many times, you're done, it's over. But you gotta be first. And so you have to think, ah, do I try a do I try a safe strategy and just go for it? Or do I try the shorter strategy where I'm just 
oh, it's, it's going to be tougher, but maybe I'll be able to pull it off. Or maybe I just fuck around with other people's balls. Yeah, What's I mean, I, you know, that's fair. You wanna... I, I, uh, I, I will say I do. Uh, I still like the idea of having five people need to compete, and the first person gets in. Because if you if you get if you have that as a as a rule set, imagine the interplay between those players, like ways that they try to sabotage each other, like teams or something. I no, not teams. Like like a two v two. So to make it clear, imagine if you had five people. Uh, let's I don't know six people. For some reason that feels like it's more fair. I don't know six people. They all have to play golf at the same time. The first person who gets it in wins, the other five explode. And they they each have an array of weapons with them as they uh, as they compete to get the ball into the but, hole. But also like think of it, right. that, that there's a there's a countdown for them to tee off all together, like five, four, three, and then yeah, they all exactly, have to hit. Exactly. And then they're racing to the ball to where it landed, and then they're trying to trip each other up and stop them from getting to their ball. And when they get to their well, ball, oh, trip them up. in front trip of them. them and then, yeah, and then they can aim to sh hit their ball at people who are in front of them to try and you know take them out and things. That would be such a cooler game. I'm just well, imagining the chaos of like six guys teeing off all at the same time. Like, oh, which one's mine? <laughs> well, no, well, they'd, be they'd be different colors. Yeah, it's like, I've solved the problem already. Perfect. Yeah, this is like a man's golf game, like putt putt, where everyone would have different colored balls, and you'd be able to tell. Man, I, when I, I was in South Dakota, we went to the shittiest putt putt course. We we got like three holes in. There's like eight of us there. And we, we got like three holes in and we're like, man, this is shit. And so we just started trying to fuck around with the courses and you could try and hit your butt. Like the, the, there are a lot of the, the courses where you could hit from one of yours into that. We just decided if you just get it into a hole, it counts. And sometimes it was easier to get the ball like hiked up over the little barriers of a hole of a, of a, a course and get it into a next one or the, you could just completely subvert. The, the entire expectations of putt putt. Putt putt's great. That's a sport. That's a fucking. How come there's not a professional? Do you guys, yeah. Do you guys call it putt putt instead of mini yeah. golf? We just call no, it. No, okay, well, the, the losers call it mini golf, but. Oh, no, 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 no. Mini, mini, mini golf is way better than that. Wow. No, putt putt's putt amazing. Completely putt -putt. gay and childish. Yeah, completely putt putt gay. does not Agreed. sound gay. <laughs> putt putt's amazing. <laughs> Putt putt, come yeah, off putt -putt's it. Putt putt's amazing. Lame. Mini no, golf. Putt -putt is like, I actually get what's on shit. the tin. I feel like, I don't even I feel know like what you're mini golf cut straight to the chase. It's golf, but mini. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a way better name. <laughs> no, no, it has evolved into its own spectator friendly, incredible, wild, wacky, uh, physical uh, kind of uh, arena, if we should say. It's, it's putt putt. It is, it is its own thing. Putt putt's incredible. Putt -putt you know how many like Taiwanese windmills? water taxi? Honestly, Taiwanese water taxi. Yeah, it's putt putt. It's here to pick you up, take you wherever you want to go. <laughs> <laughs> to pick Why you uh, up. a little driver that comes up and like putt putt. Yes. Putt putt. Putt putt. Here. Uh, putt putt. Uh, putt -putt. <laughs> putt -putt. No, it sounds like what a little kid will say when he needs to go to the toilet. Daddy, I need to go putt putt. And it's like, all right, off you go. <laughs> No, so if you said, Dad, I need to go putt-putt, he's like, fuck yeah, son, let's go putt-putt. And then they get in the car and they go play putt-putt. And then he poops. And the kid's just shot <laughs> himself on the way. <laughs> Dad, that wasn't what that's I wanted. Not that's, that, that's not putt, that's putt-putt putt adjacent. That's the not, virgin, that's, let's yeah. go play putt-putt versus the Chad father I wish to engage in mini-golf. <laughs> Mini golf. <laughs> no, yeah, no, mini. No, <laughs> there's nothing. Mini is not cool. Mini Miniature is a very lame golf word. golf father, we must. It, why? Why not just? For no, it's it, tradition. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want go. massive Better. croquet. I want really actual big hammers, big hoops, giant balls, and you have to really hit uh, them hard to get them through. Me too. That would be amazing. Maybe that's what we need to devote ourselves to, like bringing back croquet and making it cool again. Or just taking all sports and making them huge or small. Do you play croquet? Let's let's have massive basketball. All the balls the size that's of like. I don't know, a car. What a That's what the Queen of Hearts so really liked, that. was croquet. She would play croquet mm. in Alice and Wonderland. Or was that through the yeah, looking but... glass? I forget. In the Sorry, movie, it was Alice in Wonderland, but I forget which one is which. Because it's all just a, a, a drug-fueled fever dream in text form, and I forget which one's which. I think mm. they combined parts of both for the, um, for the movie, I think. I can't remember. All I know for sure is I don't care. 
Well, that's probably, you know, good for an intro, right? You guys want to talk about Shang-Chi? Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, since we're getting onto the subject of Shang-Chi, I have an important question. because I'm. What do the Chinese weird... call Chinese checkers? Okay, okay, well, wait, so Shang-Chi, right? I have a quick... No, right, I have a right. quick... No, because it's a different sport. Okay. Chinese checkers and checkers are two completely different games. Are they? Yeah, but yeah, maybe, just... maybe, maybe ours is just like... It's just our version of checkers is like... I don't know, Western checkers. Yeah, they call it European checkers, checkers or first yeah. world checkers. <laughs> it's, they call it, I looked it up. Um, uh, so Chinese chess is Zhang Qi. Zhang Qi. The, oh, hey, wait, that's like, sounds like, that sounds like Zhang Qi. Wow. Uh, we have nice. Zhang, now I will Zhang be able to segue Qi? easily. <laughs> <laughs> Slick. Yeah, I, I forget, yeah. Uh, what, what were you going to say, Chad? Okay, important question. I've had this weird reaction whenever I hear Shang Chi. It strikes me like it's a descriptive phrase, but perhaps in another language. But I'm like, it feels like you know, Shang is a description of you. You, you Shang your chi, or your chi is something that is gets shanged. And every time I hear, it, I'm like, what? Well, let's go Shang our chi. And I'm like, what does it mean? And I want to like chat, go fuck her girlfriends. Right. That does it. So, so let's so go chat. Shang her cheese. Translate this for me. What do you think Shang Chi means if it was like a descriptive phrase? Like, you know, you have to go Shang your chi or you Shang our cheese. Shave um, your chin. I want to say it's like take a dump. Take a oh, dump. Oh, oh, okay. I've got one. Shang Chi in right now. Whenever, you're, whenever you go to. Uh, by the way. China. Can I just also add, I w if anyone is trying to accuse me that this is a racist reaction to a foreign <laughs> language, you know, naming structure, no, it isn't because I do this. Maybe they shouldn't make English. silly sounding we words. This, we do this for English names all the oh, time. Look I, what they do I in Simpsons. Yeah, yeah, like, can, you, wanna, well, can you please you know find me Amanda Hug and Kiss? Is there Amanda Hug and Kiss? I, uh, yeah. Is anyone I, would, I need Amanda Hug and Kiss. Chad, I'll, I'll do you one better. I don't think that it's possible to be racist with language because language is non-racial inherently. What about racist words? Oh, well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> right. But like, what about the word racist? Hmm. Sorry. All right. Anyway, it a bit difficult for me. I need to reconsider my position. But <laughs> well, even like the N word isn't inherently racial, right? Because words don't oh, have I, meanings what, so much as I mean they have is, shared understandings. What, what, what I mean is that language, like, like if, if you make fun of a language, how is that racist when people of any ethnicity could speak any language? Like, language is non-racial, inherently. But it's like, associated for instance, if, if with racial groups someone, more. It is associated, but, but what I mean is, like, for instance, like, if, if somebody speaks English, that doesn't really tell you anything about who they are, where they came from, or anything Chad. like that. And then you can apply that to basically any language ever. Yeah, I mean, it's, all of us um, speak English, look how different we all are. Exactly. Huh? And it's, it's yeah, language is non-racial, so... I mean, if someone speaks Chinese, and you... Oh, sorry, Mandarin, and you knew nothing else about them except that was their primary language, you'd have a fr fairly good, you know, guess that they would be from China. Oh, right? like, but that's that's but, the key, right? That's just, a guess. No, that's just that's, likelihoods. It's a yeah. guess. It's, it's, it, it, it's a percentage. It's not, it's not. But that's but I think that still draws a general standard. Well, no. no. Well, so so what I so what I was saying was in defense of the idea that it's not racist to make fun of a language because language is non-racial. It's it's something else, maybe, but like language is is inherently non-racial because anybody can speak any language. All, all the best that you could do is assume that it's more likely for somebody to be of a certain race or ethnicity based on the language they're speaking. That's basically it. Okay. Don't so, Shang Chi. But, what does right. Shang Chi mean? If it was a description, like if you were to Shang your Chi, <laughs> what are you doing? I'll tell you why. When you get when you go to China, when you go to uh, China, when you're done working at the virology lab and you hop on the bus and you're going home past the bat markets and everything, you hop on the bus and the guy at the front, he turns to you and he says, Shang-Chi, and that means tickets, please. And then you say, um, what, it, what you say, uh, yeah, yeah, air commissar. And you hand him your ticket and he clicks it. Then he gives it back to you like in the good old days. And you sit down wherever you'd like, because it's some of the freedom that you get is you could sit anywhere on the bus that you'd like. And you take advantage of that fact and you savor it. And then... Everyone gets their, everyone shangs their chi, and you get to go onto the bus. Well, For some remember, reason, yeah. whenever I hear shang chi, I don't know, it feels like skinning an animal, that you're shanging um, something, 
And the oh chi could be any number of things. It could be cheese. I don't know. Skin your cheese. Well, I don't know. I mean, here's the question: Does it does it change your perception of what it could mean if um if it pronounced correctly, which is shang chi? That's that's how like oh, if, if you use I wouldn't go down that edge. route. The according to the movie is shang chi. So you know, uh, get it right, uh, Fringy. What do you mean? According to the movie, it's shang chi. Yeah, you, you're or not like quite Shang-Chi. getting it right. You're almost there. You're like Americans. Oh, uh, that's, that's just. It's like people who say a uh, burrito and they have to really yeah, obnoxious yeah. to try and roll that R. Burrito. It's like, stop it. Just stop it. I mean, Just say to be fair, you, you guys are still doing better than Aquafina did in the movie, so yeah. We'll talk about it. <laughs> we'll get there. Yeah, because obviously we've covered so many topics related to Shang-Chi already that I feel like we're going to cover it any second. A... Any second. Good stream, guys. I'm out here. <laughs> so, so, Rags, do you want to know about this movie? I do, but you're going to have to hold on for a second because I need to get a drink real quick. So I'll be right back. It's in the fridge. You guys discuss the sports ball in my absence. I will return. Well, what we can discuss while he's gone is just a uh, general, general view of the film. What, what has everyone got? Should we go left to right, right to left? Or, I don't know. Oh, it's actually... Right, I, can, I, can do, I can do it with one word, mate. Oh, go <laughs> ahead. <Shite>. Wow. <laughs> All right, Fringy, you got to. He said shite, so you get two words. We'll give Shad three and I get four. I can't. Two words? <laughs> you already said I can't, okay. <laughs> no, Shad, okay, review so. the film in three words. Uh, hang on, hang on. Because um, I actually had a tagline that That's I did in three. my review. Oh, I, I, I'm not, this isn't my thing. Okay. Boring, spectacle, no substance. That's four words that I think I can get away with. Boring spectacle and no substance. Could you say like substanceless? No, yeah. wait. In, yeah. Insubstantive. Boring spectacle. Insubstantive. Yeah, or sub- yeah, yeah. Like good, good command of language yeah. there. Yeah. I, if I were to redo it, I just it's just sludge, sludge, like good old sludge, yeah. sludge, sludge. sludge. <laughs> it's um, it's what people were saying about Black Widow. I feel, but actually true. Where the first two acts are pretty bad, but like the third act is so catastrophic. Um. Like, like a lot of There's... people were saying that the because I thought the whole thing for Black Widow was catastrophic, but like this film, the first act is like there's some stuff in there that's okay, and then I, I think once we start breaking down the um, the villains' motivations and how he plans to carry them out, this this conversation is <laughs> just going to go off the rails, man. Yeah, like we're well, going to be at this for hours. It's going to get funny when I li- literally read the fucking will building they give right at the beginning. I want to, I, wanna, I can't wait to tell Rags about it because it's. After just having said in Black Widow, that we had a whole organization that was controlling everything. Yeah, <laughs> I, I picked this up in my review. Like, like how many uh, how many secret organizations pulling the strings behind the, the like, scenes uh, can we have? Feels like the MC was kind of turning into what Transformers was. It's like they came here in 2007. No, they came here and they built the pyramids. No, they came here. Uh, like they went to the moon. No, they the dinosaurs. They killed <laughs> in, the dinosaurs. In prehistoric like, times, yeah. We just keep going further it, back. This is the problem that they're going to have going forward. Is like the further we get down the MCU timeline, the more like ridiculous the explanations they have to give for why you know Group X has never been heard of before. Well, yeah, but I mean, there's an easy counter. Maybe just write the story so that this is the first time that they're relevant. You know, like the first no, time we have to have decades they're... of lore or thousands no, of years yeah, in this case, right. like stretching back throughout human history because mm-hmm. they're that important. It's it's gonna get hard. I mean, it's Eternals, right? Why didn't you help? Oh, we got told not to. Like, no, I not saw that answer. in the trailer. I almost gagged. I was like, "What?" It's like, oh, well, I and mean, then they're saying, we "You know, we shit, really but... care about the Earth, except when we're told not to." I oh, couldn't believe it. I'm like... back. Hey, rags. You ready? Hello. People I am. I'm actually. I actually really am ready. Okay. This time, no, no so... funsies, no backsies. I'm. I'm actually ready. The way it works with, with the MCU's writing right now, as you know, is that they bring someone in and they go, yay, I get to tell whatever story I want. They're like, oh, there's all these other movies. Like, no, 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 no. My movie now. And you're like, okay. Which will help mm-hmm. you explain, help you understand this. We get our opening and it's it's a woman delivering exposition about this world as though you could treat this as though it's its own movie, like uh, the way that they try to do it. And in a, in a way, you're like, well, isn't that the point with the MCU? They should be able to stand alone. It's like, no, yeah, true. But when you start world building... As a part of a world that has shit tons of world building, starts to cross some stuff. So what what we find out? Because obviously you're you're probably wondering, right? You're like, oh my god, what are the what is the Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings? What are these ten rings, and what do they do? No, I know? was just I was just thinking that in my mind, 
the whole you're probably was, thinking like thinking where like, did they come from yeah like, how did whoa. they come into the hands of the villain like the or their origins and what's their purpose a great idea for the film what to is the legend that? of the ten rings what exactly. is the legend of now ten rings, you know? i'm I, I haven't got a 100% of the opening here, but I've got an approximation, so I will do my best to give you what uh, the film decides is the logic here, Rags, okay? So so it opens up, okay. so, right. like, amazing and awesome and, you know, stuff, and then it says, Thousands of years, the legend of the Ten Rings has been told, and with each generation, the story grows. That's not true. Whatever. Well, I, I get confused by that alone, because I don't know what, how... it. You know what? It's fine. Um... But it always Secret seems organizations to... where their legend keeps growing. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. yeah. It always seems to focus, though, on one man. They say he found the rings in a crater, or that he stole them from a grave. Um, but they gave him the strength of a god and the gift of eternal life. Do they ever explain where they came from? Nope, that's it. Oh. That's literally, yeah. Well, that's, we no, we're we're going to find out. We'll find out where they came from. It'll be yeah, in the next Avengers movie. Endgame. We'll find out. And try to hang a carrot on it to, 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 you know, hook people in. Where did they come from? Come back for the next adventure, right? Yeah. Mm. So, um, he, and they say he could have used them for good, but all he wanted was power. That little bitch. So he calls up his army, and for centuries they spread over every corner of the earth. They move in the shadows, and they overthrew governments and changed the course of history. But they didn't spread just Wakanda. Shit up. <laughs> that's just, that's yeah. worth mentioning. Like they're just, they made this up. They absolutely made this shit up. <laughs> they're yeah. just trying to... Like, I don't... Is there um? It, it's like one of those pictures in... It's like PictoChat, where... you Y'all remember PictoChat? I do. Yeah, yeah well, PictoChat was great. On the, on the, the, the Nintendo DS... And you'd make a picture, and then you'd say, ha ha, this is a funny picture. And then you'd send it to your friend, and your friend would add something. And then they'd send it to someone else, and they'd add something. And then they'd add something. And they'd da 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 And that's what it feels like now. There's nothing, like, what was the original thing? I don't know. It's had so much shit stapled to it, and nailed to it, and hot glued to it, that it's just, who knows what the MCU is anymore. And so, just to remind everybody, we got... Um... The, the Red Room organization, Shang-Chi's legendary whatever, Wing, Wing Wu, Wing, Win Wu, that's his name, the guy, the villainous. Wen Wu. Wen Wu. Wen Wu. Wen Wu. Wen Wu. So, Wen Wu, Red Ow. Room, Kang, Hydra, and Shield, Winter Soldier. Yeah, yeah. And the, the Russians' involvement with, with both that, are the, it's just like, yeah, ev everybody's uh, thoroughly pulling their strings, and everybody has, oh, Wakanda, of course, as well. They've got agents all over the world. It's so fucking stupid. You can picture there's like one guy in power in a room with like four bodyguards, and each of them are like, I'm actually a Wakandan agent. And then the one goes, I actually, I'm from fucking Wing Wu's army. And the other one's like, I'm a Hydra agent, bitch. TVA comes in and is like, you're all wrong. <laughs> and then the, the one guy who's left doesn't reveal yet, because he's like, you'll find out where I'm from in a later movie. <laughs> it, it's like that's you know it's all part of the marvel template though now isn't it like there's got yeah. to be some kind of like secret organization that's been controlling everything for decades you know there's got to be some kind of portal with alien things that pour through it for the big cgi finale you know it's, it's some, all just like each other at all it has to be grand all the time it has it's tiring. to be massive it has know. to be oh, yeah world ending say. okay i got gotcha, you i got gotcha. you and, and uh, what's so annoying about it is that they're so vague on this, you know, uh, clandestine organization's mission and goals. They're just toppling governments for, for what? What were they trying to do? Uh, just, uh, power. power. Like, toppling, power. Okay. listen, listen, toppling governments is its own reward. Yeah. <laughs> like I mean, if you just watch them put another government in their place, it doesn't really achieve much. But like, if, yeah, no, if think, it's your if government guy, does, this guy not all is governments are the same. Well, true. Uh, but this guy's had, what, a couple of thousand years to do all this Apparently, stuff? Uh, yeah. I don't know what the timeline well, was exactly, yeah. It's, I mean, I it's in ancient China, years. so it would go, say, like, conservatively a thousand years at least. China. I think right. it was a thousand In years that amount now. of time, he's really just become a wealthy businessman with a bit of yeah. a, a crime <laughs> empire in yeah. China. Like, and, you could have done so much more, sir. Like, with that time, I would have expected he would have been ruling an entire country at yes. least. Well, Genghis Khan was able to conquer, like, most of Asia in the space of, what, 20 oh, yeah. years? Only because Wing Wu allowed him to. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? 
I, well, no, well, I, technically, hey, Kang allowed him to. Yeah. But, but Rags, I, you're right. He did shang many cheese. That's... Mm -hmm. He did. Well, he he shang so did. many cheese. You probably got some chi in you yourself. Well, you know when someone takes, like, our world and then says, I'm making a story where actually an ancient god-like being got armies and took over politics and stuff thousands of years ago. You're like, oh, wow, how different would the world be? It's like, no, it's mostly the same. It's basically, yeah, it's basically identical. I was like, I... And there's only so many times I can accept that. <laughs> there's another yeah. one. There's another one. There's another one. It's like, shut and, up. No, actually, actually, guys, this, this cake that is our MCU has an, a, another hidden layer, but it tastes just the same. I promise. <sighs> and so this, another frustrating thing about this, they could have actually, it is possible to insert a new organization that has existed for a long time and not have the world be restructured or impacted and still have it make sense if you had their mission be very, very specific and uh, and they were doing something on a, a smaller scale that didn't impact larger events or would have put them in the path of the other clandestine organizations. So they could have done it, but they're so broad in what they're saying they did and the power and the level and the timeline and then they're vague on the specifics of what it causes. It's just a mess and you're wondering... Or what? What's going yeah, well, on? They, they, they could have solved this just by saying like they were focused on controlling China. Because like China mm -hmm. as a country is quite inward looking anyway, isn't it? It's not really about trying to expand so much as just controlling right. everything that happens inside it. And so you okay. Know, and that's true. Like, and the, there hasn't been the the focused on that, China, you know. Well, like, and, and but the thing is, hasn't been much MCU content in China yet, so exactly it's, it be that's easy to explain why I guess we. That's what I was going to say. But I big. wonder, I wonder how China, the real China, would have reacted if the movie was like, you know, the Ten Rings actually the Chinese government and they're controlling. Oh it, my god! You know, well then <laughs> like, they, they would definitely as, love it if that was the just case. As, to to jump in as well, Rags, you're you're probably wondering like what are the actual capabilities of these rings? Like what what is wondering their combat things. potential? Well, what can they do for you? I was about Guess to say what, anything. <laughs> when when this portion of the 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 expedition is pretty much done in terms of that, just get over it. They can they've controlled stuff since the beginning, and they're currently active. Uh, this this uh, Win Wu's sort of team. And so you're just like, wow, all the way to the present day. You know, the Red Room's excuse was, ah, uh, you see, Drakov planned to make world-changing things happen just when Black Widow stopped him. I know, it sounds convenient, but <laughs> this is like, yeah, yeah. With this one, it's like, nah, he's been doing his shit for ages. It's just you haven't noticed any of it. And so then it's like, right, so we've done that. It all lines up really well But um, with, uh, with the modern MCU. Oh, perfectly well, yeah. I couldn't even... I wouldn't even have noticed a difference because I've always felt that they've set this up. You guys remember all the references to Win Wu's sort of I do. and influence, yeah. All the time, yeah. Going back to um, um, Avengers: Age of Ultron. Yes. Ultron, yeah. He he wanted to have the Wing Wu power you know, that's suit. Actually, pretty funny. The Ultron when he was plugged in and stuff, he probably should have been like, "Wait, what the fuck is Wakanda? What the fuck? It, like all the shit to do with Wakanda? So you can probably infect their systems." And then he'd be like, Didn't "What the Wakanda hell is Wing Wu?" Oh my god. Did they allow rings? anyone to have internet in Wakanda? You know what maybe is, oh, is Wakanda network. like is Wakanda like China and they don't uh, they it's uh, they have a highly restricted internet access. You can't go actually, to places I the communist government doesn't want you to go to. I think I just a, okay, I'm just trying to picture like coming home from work on my war rhino, you know, <laughs> like saddling yeah. it up and stuff, sitting down and just logging onto my Wakanda net to like just check out the latest news in Wakanda. <laughs> Exactly. Well, because I was going to say, so like, uh, I think I brought it up in my video. I can't remember now, but imagine being like a young sort of whippersnapper in old Wakanda. You got hyper technology. You're told that you guys are basically the best in the world and you just stay away from the rest of the world because they're all like savage and colonized and stuff. Then you're like, oh, can we go visit it? And it's like, no, you can't step out of the border. You're like, hmm. And then if you have mm. technology to be able Here's to see. Here's the thing, no. To see what happens on the other side of the world and stuff, you'd be like, "Oh my god, look at these amazing places that I'm not allowed to visit. Look at all these things that are happening that are or, horrible that I'm not allowed to help." Yeah, exactly. And then, uh, and that's if they do know. If they don't know, how much worse is that? You're like, "We can't tell you about anything that happens outside of this dome." You're like, "Why?" And you're like, "Doesn't that well, sound like the setup got, for like a horror movie where it's like everything's perfect <laughs> except beyond well, you, the dome? You've, you've do not go beyond the dome." You've got North Korea, essentially, then. Like, you've just got, like, the state that tells you what you are allowed to talk about and, you know, what information you're allowed to have, and you're basically kept ignorant of everything outside your own country. So, yeah, like, you're living in a totalitarian nightmare. 
ups, even like you, you're living in a state where the leader of the country is the physically strongest, and that's it. That's <laughs> the only metric. You're well, the leader. It's just highlighting that um, it wouldn't work the way they tell us it does. People would have broken out of Wakanda long ago. There would have been so many different people who, and they can, by the way, they can just walk through the barrier whenever they want. Apparently, they have to break the what conditioning oh my god but yeah um you know because they're like claws the only person who managed to get in there and out and that's what we've joked about in the past that other explorers have gone in there and wakanda has fucking executed them and hidden the body it was just like jesus <laughs> <laughs> the wall of bones surrounding the dome but yeah I don't know. <laughs> um once again, it, it was bad when we were told all these other organizations were doing it. We just got another one, and it's it's become such a joke. Like I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if they say that the scrolls have been on Earth now for thousands of years, controlling everything. Oh my oh, goodness! Oh well, I mean, they secret will. invasions coming up. Secret oh, invasions no. coming up. That would definitely oh. be the plot of that. They've been there for a while, anyway. And then they've infiltrated the government. When they kill Kang, <laughs> he's like, knew. "You don't understand. I was never in control. It was Flang." And it's like, "Oh my <laughs> god, Galactus, Galactus." So anyway, Doctor his rings all along. are what he uses to dominate a lot of these fights and ranks. He's doing he's doing some crazy stuff, man. He'll just like he'll it, what, what 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 would you guys describe the powers? Wait, what's his what's his this? name is Wing Wu, right? Winwu? Wenwu? Wenwu. 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 Uh, Where? He's supposed to be the Mandarin you, you, from the you comics, already did that joke not. before. <laughs> did I? Mm -hmm. I thought I did how uh, before. Yes. I got, I got, I got a few more. I, I got like, like four. It'll pop joke. up four more. I feel like that's nah. basically the same joke. That's a huge derivation. Okay, okay. So question. <laughs> Do you reckon you could really yeah. call these rings or should they be Bracelet. more appropriately called bracelets? Oops. Well, right, because they're, they're oh. rings, but you wear them on your arms. They probably like, satisfy the definition <laughs> of a ring. Of, of a ring. I, true, oh, true. They are circular. Yeah, because a halo ring is a ring and it's like 10,000 miles I could across. put that on my finger. Um, yeah. Uh, well, oh, if you were um, Galactus, you could put that on your finger. Yeah. Oh, here, if, if you want to make it uh, uh, like Chinese, you could call them, I'll, I'll type it here in the chat for you so the joke makes sense. You could call them the hoops of hoo la. I don't. Oh, like hoo la, ho hoo -la hoops. Mm -hmm. right. we, we see what you did. Yeah, yeah. yeah you see, yeah, that was, that was pretty good. I, that was pretty good. Um, I think it was keeper. Well, that was, that was good, mean, Rex. It was good. Yeah, thank in you. In terms of establishing how powerful these rings are, Rags, he's like fighting against some ancient army and they fire a volley of arrows and he just like he he just wield he has the ring spinning around him and they deflect every single arrow and, and then, like, he <laughs> the <laughs> these rings the army and these, goes, goes these rings are basically like scarlet witch yeah in, like the, in, in ring like, form they can do the pretty much anything they the can how can he can control yeah. them is it just because he found them first so, oh, do they just listen to whoever? We do, we are they just like know. weapons? Wait, 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 wait. Like, I want like zero jumping ahead as best as you guys can do oh, for okay. Rags' hold, sake. We're gonna want to reveal this we stuff. No rags. We, yeah. we'll, 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 okay. we'll do what we can. Um, if there's hey, something that Rags asks that we'll be like, we'll get, we'll get an answer to that a little bit later. But what I was gonna say in this Darn, scene, yeah. the most powerful thing you see him do is like, a, like some kind of blast that blows apart like. 500 warriors and digs a hole into like a wall it's it's the now, kind of question. thing that's like whoa i have a question okay because okay? again the rings are really confusing the blast is it from the physical impact of the rings being shot from his wrists and they land into something or do they the rings actually shoot an energy wave i can't remember now i assume it was I energy think, wave. i think I rings themselves go because i'm pretty sure they, they have to return to the wearer after they've been that, used that's like that. what i that's what I thought, like, when I kept watching it, at, at first I thought they were energy waves, when I kept watching, it's like, no, the rings look to be leaving his wrist, make, making a, a contact with something, and always returning, and that for the rings to do something, it's requiring them to actually have physical contact and move towards it. So he throws them, like, um... They, well, no, they like should, they have their own like, kind of levitation. Like yeah, think yeah. of it okay. like you, you push a like fist forward, and then one flies off and hits someone, then they retract back onto your wrist. Okay. So I guess I mean, he can just manipulate them with the power weapons. of his mind or whatever. Yeah. Well, and and the way he jumps the high yeah. is like he thrusts his fist towards the ground, and the rings shoot off his wrist, hit the ground, and that shoots him up into the air and do a big super jump. Well, the thing is, um, those Does rings he die when he lands? Like, 
<laughs> oh, no. So this is the thing, Rags. <laughs> of what we're told, you are a glass cannon with those things. You could get killed easily if you don't, you know, because you're just human with them. But you, like, like uh, the good comparison with Scarlet Witch. You are basically Scarlet okay. Witch. Um, that Me means that you should be affected by the powers of gravity, but, you know. Well, I assume they gave him general superhuman capacity because it made him immortal, so he oh. was able to live forever. But clearly they don't, though. Yeah. It seems like they don't give you any superhuman he... capacity at all. Like, I'm pretty sure... It... Well, uh, yeah, he, he can be in... Yeah, he can be beaten up and injured just like a regular human. Well, he can... Yeah, exactly. The, the idea is that it's really hard for anybody to even, like, hit him because he's so good at using the rings. Um... I think, Did he yeah, practice? I, 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 well, I, I must have got that completely yeah. wrong, because I was just watching the whole movie assuming he had general superhuman abilities in strength, speed. I, but I think they're almost explicit. They're like, he can live for a really long time, and he can like beat the fuck out of people with powerful spells with his rings and stuff. But the, um, So how did anyone... How did anyone with that primitive level of technology beat the rings, then? They didn't? Nobody beat oh, no, the rings. This is... beat everybody. So if the that's idea the case, then is it should have been so easy or is he today? to defeat him if he had that limitation. Like someone could have just snuck up on him and stabbed him in the back. True, but that's how they got to tell her. Yeah, I was, I was gonna. I guess you'd be surprised that nobody across his entire reign, all the way up to two thousand. When was this set? Twenty? Is it twenty four? Twenty two? Wait, he I was alive up to twenty twenty four. Well, that's when the film is set. This is, <laughs> he's like, yeah, he's mortal. Yeah, so yeah. he's still alive through all of this? Yeah, he, that's yeah. the thing. Wearing the rings yeah, presumably gives you... You don't yeah. age. Wait, wait. Basically. I thought he, like, had entire, like, controlled a kingdom and a massive army and everything. Well, this oh, is where okay. it gets a bit hazy, because hmm. it's like, first of all, he was a conqueror, like Genghis Khan type. And then he just kind of settled into being more of, like, a, a Drakov type character. Yeah, modern businessman. Yeah, what he just has, like, this kind of, like, spy organization that controls governments and stuff behind the scenes so I don't really understand how that happened but yeah he that's must what have had some yeah. kind of like a nation and like an, well, an, it's uh, so weird. a people with borders and a <laughs> no it, I don't well, know well, this is the thing the narration did. seems to be a, like it seems to be establishing this because it's conquering nations armies and stuff and so the natural implication is like all right he must be the ruler of an entire nation but then it literally says he decided to move into the shadows and when i heard why? that i was like why yeah that like, sounds I, shit wh why yeah why would you do that in like purpose i can tell you why you had, because it wouldn't make any why? fucking sense if they did anything else <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It was so dumb. I was like, and this is in the opening part of the movie. When I don't hear that, it's like, all oh, right, okay, here we go. If I this if I had ten magic rings. plot rings and I had control of a whole huge country and I was going around and I was conquering people and making my big, amazing, cool kingdom, I'd be like, hell yeah, this is the life. I got an army. I got respect. I got all the bitches. My face is on the coins. This is just. This is great. This is what. This is really. This is peak human right here i made it i'm gonna keep doing this well there'd be nothing to stop you really conquering the entire planet because you've got all the time in the world you're immortal you've got armies that can't be defeated as long as you've got the 10 rings and so if his goal was just the acquisition of power like why would he ever stop until he yeah. conquered the entire world they make it so clear oh, it's all about power just... that they're like he, he oh. stopped at um well he and he went into the shadows and got power in the shadows, controlling things. We don't even know what he had influence and power over. They just tell us that that's I know. true. Exactly. <laughs> and and what like I said off. in my review, just like I, you could you could have justified it. Like it, the MCU has established superpowers vastly beyond the, this guy and his you know prissy little rings. And so you could have just said you know in his accumulation of power, he eventually came across people who were stronger than him and had the capacity to utterly destroy him. And he realized, all right, I need to be more covert about this. And then he moves in the shadows for uh, that reason. And if they wanted to be really clever, they could have even tied it in with the immortals or, or the eternals or whoever those people are going to be. That perhaps that he ran into some of those guys and they're <laughs> oh like, oh, God. these guys are way more powerful than me. They're going to kill me unless I switch up my game plan. And then the well, yeah, there's got to be something that happens that gets him from going from I'm the king of a whole army that everything. runs around like Attila into I'm going to be just Yakuza Plus. 
yeah, was exactly. great as well. See when you actually encounter him in the present day, like not to jump ahead too much, but you you really don't get a sense that he's got a huge amount of no. resources at his disposal. No. I don't think you see more nah. than like fifty guys in his entire well, force. Um, it's well, really it's yeah, this, this crappy little bunker compound in the mountains, hidden away. And it's like, yeah, oh, like yeah. when he when he when he makes his his big attack against the fairy tale land at the end. Like I mm -hmm. kid you not, there's about two dozen guys in in like four trucks that come out. That's that's his entire army. Well. You could, you could assume there's <laughs> other reasons potentially so for that. There's so much wrong with. Well, so we'll we'll give you some more, right? We'll get you chew off a little okay. bit more. Okay, all so you got all of that. Okay. All of that makes perfect sense. We're off to a great start. So okay, he's he's looking into a legend, right? Because he's like of the oh, Ten Rings. It's different legend. This is oh, actually okay. completely unrelated to the fucking Ten Rings. Because he, oh, he's okay. basically like, I've theoretically conquered the entire world, even though I haven't. But like, what can <laughs> I set my sights on now? And it's like. Yeah, like Magic. the line is he had yeah. nothing left on earth to conquer, and that's when he came to my home. It's like, excuse me? Had, he conquered the whole earth? Left, he conquered all of the world? <laughs> how is this not being taught in every history lesson? How because is this he did not it in the defining... shadows. How do you conquer the world in the shadows? <laughs> like, is this like some Freemason conspiracy? Again, that's uh. what Drakov was doing, and so you have presidents making decisions, and you've got two advisors in his ear like, actually, I believe you should choose option A, and the other one's like, oh, I think option B is the correct option. And the president's like, I don't trust either of you. And the the who, the who guy with the rings, I always forget his name, he actually Shang gives Chi? the reason. Wing no, Wu. that's Wing, the other Wing guy. Wu. Wing Wu. Wang, Wang Wu. Um, Wang Wu. Um, Wing Wu. I don't know, I just, I don't know. I, that's what my brain goes to, is Wing Wu. Okay, uh, Wenwu? Wenwu? I'm, Wen I'm, I'm so confused. Wenwu. Um, he says why the Wu? reason why he's trying to hunt down this village, and he says, to learn the martial arts of the gods. It's like, oh, okay. Right. One of the gods need martial arts. <laughs> no, 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 so... no idea. <laughs> That's like huh. shit. Unspecified. Martial arts is shit. It's like, I don't have a weapon. I gotta make the best of this. So he, he has like a map? And we see him, this is in just, just this is all part of the exposition in the opening. He's in like a truck with a bunch of his men in a forest. He's driving down some kind of gap in the forest. And you're like, okay. And, and then, Rex, right. the forest tries to eat them all. Like in a metaphorical sense? I the, don't know. The, the trees Literally. are crashing into each other, and if you stay still, they will eat you. And oh my god, they're, 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 they're driving through the, like a giant field of bamboo, used. essentially, and like there's like a path in front of them, but then it starts closing in behind them as they go. And, and it's like, oh my yeah, god, yeah. the forest is moving! And I, I'm pretty and, sure it's described uh, as it will eat you uh, later on. <laughs> and oh. there is no explanation why or how the forest can do this <laughs> apart it's... from just just magic. It's just magic now. They can no. do it because reasons. This because is it's happening... not actually tr it's not tracking them, and it's not actually trying to eat them. It's just moving in a certain pattern that, like, if you get the pattern wrong, then you'll get swallowed up by it. Right. The the forest moves in a pattern. Which yeah. Is, yeah. Like something you have to know. So imagine. Like, yeah. Imagine it like Pac Man moving through the flag. maze, and like it only follows a certain route continuously. Like mm -hmm. you just have to so, memorize the route. Yeah, and that route, it's specifically, it's a path that the trees part to open up temporarily for like only a couple of seconds, and then they close in behind it in a line. And so, is this like the you... impenetrable forest from Wakanda? L literally, we have an impenetrable forest now. Jay would be proud. So now, the trees move around and they make like pathways and openings like a maze. Now you yeah, might think like a, like a little maze opens up. Yeah. Okay. You Why don't you just fly in? <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. There's your solution to the entire movie. You could literally just fly a chopper over it and land on the other side, and you're fine. It doesn't make any sense at all. Everybody who's seen this movie is like, "Why wouldn't you fly? <laughs> What's, you you own the world." Apparently, it's '95. He tries the first time. They had helicopters in '95. Go nuts. They own a helicopter. <laughs> yeah, no I also, surprise, I but... love the fact that the way this forest moves and the speed that the kind of safe gap moves at, it could only ever have been traversed by people in like a high speed car, yeah. like a Jeep or something like that. You, you can't run it. Yeah, like the, it's kind of like... What it if you had the rings? That, like... Could you run it then? Could you what? use the rings to run fast? Is that one of their many powers? You could use the rings to just fly right over it. <laughs> yeah, that would be the... <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> 
Also, like, also pretend that, I don't know, you try and fly and suddenly a tree literally shoots out of the ground like a missile and will kill anything in the sky, okay? Still, they're friggin' trees! Use the rings to chop them all down or well, something like that. Or I was drop, like, so that's drop the other... napalm on them and just yeah, burn them. The, the, the other questions people have, like, can it's we not cut them down? Why not? Yeah, just... And, I, and if someone was trying to make an argument, like a moral one for that, I'd just be like, no, I'm just curious mechanically, can we cut them down? <laughs> an immoral reason for chopping down trees? Well, uh, the trees eat you, so you can consider it self-defense. <laughs> like, well, don't... it's a tree. It's It doesn't have to do anything. You can just chop it down, right? Make a chair? I don't it's know. In I'm the just way saying. It down. It's, um, it's a weird one. And so, I think all of his men get wiped out. Except him. Yeah, their car gets pushed off a cliff or something, and he survives just. And, and then, then he course, just starts walking through. But then he starts walking through the forest. Yeah, very he's normally. Fine. Like he's just like, well, all right, on my way. And it's just like, oh, all right. And then of course, ranks he meets a woman. Oh, in the forest. There, there is a woman. There's a random place where you reach, and it's like there's there's an opening in the trees. There's like a nice pond, very picturesque, and a woman is just standing. All right, so I I hold it. We might have skipped ahead. Who is doing all this? Who, oh, so Wen Wu. Wen Wu. Wen Wu. Wen Wu. Yeah. Wen, so okay, he, so he wants to. He's he conquered this the world. Place, mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's decided he wants to learn the kung fu of the gods. Okay, and he's found right. some crazy map or something that's going to take him to a place that he can learn it, even though he's got nothing else to go on. Goes through the magical bullshit bamboo forest that eats his friends, and then he just like wanders through by himself until he gets to this woman. So he didn't bring his friends with him, his army, or... Oh, he got, his, they got he eaten by the bamboo. With him, but they got, they all that's died. right, trees They got et by the tree. So he was like, oh, okay, I'll come back. Why did he not use his ring powers to chop well, down all well, the... he did. That's how he, he got out of the... The car got knocked off a cliff into the forest, and he jumped out. But all with his, his buddies ring. fell into the forest. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, and then he just okay. walked into the forest and found this lady there. Um, and it makes you wonder what must have been like going through his mind in that instance. Was like, I used to rule the world, and now I'm <laughs> just like here in this now forest. In the forest, in the in this forest trees are eating my twelve guys. <laughs> I, like, what? How did I fuck Why this up I so royally? This place, yeah. Um, so I want it said he's master of the ten rings. Right, I've been doing this for just centuries, 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 and he fights this lady, uh, Rags, with his ten rings, in full intent to kill her. She's like a defender of the forest, I guess. I don't fucking know. He loses. How? A great question you got there. Yeah. She I has mean, the martial arts of the gods. The of the he world. loses but, because woman. But here's she, the thing: martial like, arts is in, like. But if I have like a knife or a gun, dare I say, like your martial arts doesn't mean anything. Well, so this is oh, weird. That, part. You know, he um. They, they, like, just on that note, rags the. There is an interesting question to be had about the employment of firearms in this film. Let's just say that. <laughs> we'll, 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 oh, is it like a lot of the other Marvel stuff where it's like, oh, yeah, guns make things hard for heroes who we don't want to just shoot? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because this is okay. a kung fu movie. Literally, it's all kung fu. Nobody thinks to use projectile weapons yeah, to any that. meaningful degree. I know I'm bringing a gun where I go. So just to give you an example, right, he like does a big jump with his rings slams down on her with both arms with all the, the, the rings attached and she just blocks it with one arm she like That's almost like that. if you can consider the arm swords right and you block with a sword she like just blocks the attack with her arm and it's like but now hurt? remember <laughs> these rings these rings were so strong that he like threw it at a whole army and it just cut right through them <laughs> like it went straight through the, but she could block it all we get from yeah. her is yeah. that she has the power from the dragon of the wind she said. Yeah, she said at the beginning. Wind. I think um, that when she leaves the forest, she had to leave the power with the dragon. It's like, okay. What? What yeah. dragon? More oh, on that yeah, later. Right, yeah. <laughs> All right. That's a whole other conversation. Yeah. yeah. Um. Well, it actually looks like she's airbending at times in the fight. Like she can yeah. control yeah. air. Well, if you remember as well. So this 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 is just as confusing now as it may very well be when we talk about other things. He uh he like fires all the rings at her. And she like collects them and starts spinning them around and they turn orange instead of when they're with him they're blue and then when she has them they go orange and you're like oh it was so like when that happened i'm thinking like what mechanism is making you have control over these rings and for yeah. some reason in the plot she has the magical ability to wrest control of these rings from him for reasons nothing is explained why she just can yeah and, uh, uh, 
So I'm I'm probably correct in uh, imagining that like the power levels and the understanding of what people can do, their strengths and vulnerabilities is just basically a one big question mark. She literally just whatever, takes the rings yeah. off him temporarily, uses them herself, and then she gives them back. It is bizarre. Why would she do? Why would she do that? He's That's an evil great prick. Question. She, well, no, no. By this time, she her, her loins are are desiring him. <laughs> oh yeah. Like, uh, the music like, is like throughout like this whole fight, it it's still close yeah. up of their eyes looking at each other, and they're you know starting to flirt while they fight. And by the end, they're utterly smitten. They do, yeah. They yeah, it love. becomes like kind of a dance rather than. Oh wait, the like dragon lady. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah. So the dragon, the 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 kung fu dragon lady, she falls in love with Wing Wu. And I, they, because it, he can fight. <laughs> oh, so so now he's going to give her another ring. Yes, that's right. Also, because we're about that to understand the context of the exposition, which is that she and he have a son and daughter, and they are described. Well, she is describing this history to the son, being Shang Chi. When and he's a kid. can I just? Her, her line is, "You can't choose who you fall in love with." And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you can. If he's like that's, a psychopathic, that's dumb, though. yeah. If if he's a that's psychopathic like saying, warlord, it's like you could choose that. He's a bit too far for me. Like, that's yeah, yeah that's that's pretty. That's a, that's not a good message to give to not, anyone. You it also know, confuses that's, me. That's not a good because what exactly no. made her fall in love with him? Like when he his, was trying he, to she kill liked her. His <laughs> when he was trying to yeah, kill her. You look, you look nice. <laughs> like, Maybe oh, this is. Yeah. Maybe this is like are they are they both Chinese? Maybe this is like a Chinese thing, where and it kind of like how in Korea, if you want to marry a woman, you have to you have to defeat her father in StarCraft. Maybe oh. this is some kind of like a like a Chinese sort of a, a kung fu battle of love or something like that, and you have to maybe that's what it's in reference to. But um, in any case, the they basically the the logic is well. I left and I lost my powers, but he gave up the rings and and gave up his yeah. evil criminal empire, and they yeah. settled down and they have their little family. And the but obviously the important detail about that is that uh, she gives the son and the daughter a little little necklace each that has a little little pendanty thing on it. Um, yeah, that that will be right. The shape of an eye. Couldn't, couldn't yeah. forget about that. Yeah, Just make sure you know, got to put that, that. So that in She there. gives the son and the daughter. A a necklace that's mat that 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 are like well, have some of the green pendant, pendant, right? Yeah, like we don't green know what pendant, they do. Just yeah. I'm just making sure you're aware of them. That's all. All yeah, right. So like, when they, they meet up later, they, that's how they know that they're going to get split off and separated. And so that's how they're going to know that they're brother and sisters because they each have the pendants. Uh, not quite close yeah. enough. Well, well, they, they, they know who, they know who each other is anyway. But yeah. it's oh. more that the, the the pendants will serve a purpose. Are are they magic? Yeah, here, wow. when she hands Kung over, Fu? well, when she hands over the pendants is essentially saying, here is a plot device that we can exploit for whatever we want later on. Okay. So anyway, that, uh, so yeah, everything's great, right? But then, no. but because the, the rings, he's not doing evil ringman things and she's not doing. So, she st <laughs> so he stops being evil because of her and she stops protecting the forest because of him yeah she leaves yeah. the forest so presumably someone else will protect I, it i don't fucking know and well, i guess the trees can there's... protect it right yeah. or unless <laughs> someone flies in or brings a chainsaw that that's true but it is, wasn't there it also established that there is a village beyond something beyond the forest that that's where the uh kung fu of the gods lies how and did that's they get out of the forest and she specifically <laughs> not when she left the forest she left her village the village that she yes. had originally yes. Sorry, come from the, how, how did she, how did she get out of the forest she probably knows the pattern free and she ran yeah. she ran real fast did, you would have to, wait so have she to recognizes drive. the so she could memorize the pattern? So, Rags, maybe she could memorize the pattern, but the problem is they were, are driving smart. In a, they were in a car and that was not fast enough for them to like. Oh, not so die. even if you do remember it, you can't like take advantage of that. Infinity. Because no. slow it's, it's, it's literally you any... need like some kind of high powered high speed she can fly. vehicle to get through this. Do they make those? She can. With no, mad... but she could. I mean, I well, she gave the rings. Could she have controlled the the forest and just caused it to part oh, for them? Maybe. We never find out who. Wait, so she can fly without the rings, or did she fly with she the rings? Have... When she... she well, I if you watch the fight, back, right? she does. She does she a bit of flying. Fly without them. 
Yeah, yeah she can levitate herself for brief periods of time with her airbending. <laughs> it's the power so of the dragon. The MC... Sh Sh so in the MCU, Sh Sh what is that? Right? What is that? In the... Is that a new power thing that they're introducing into the MCU? Or is this like the Scarlet well, Witch magic or... So it's the power it's of the like, dragon, it, uh, yeah. and we'll have to talk a bit more about what the implications okay. of that may or may not be when we get more on it, which we will as time goes on. Um, oh boy! Yeah. So, That's thing is, right? Saying. Everything's picture perfect. It's the perfect. Everything's perfect. Familyisms. Woo hoo! Dad goes off. It's like the Mortal Kombat movie that came out recently. The dad goes off and does his dad things in the forest or whatever. Unfortunately. Sorry. Can I just interrupt here? Because already at this point in the film, I was not sold on the villain. Uh, I, he, he didn't feel particularly evil or power hungry in the flashbacks of him being a warlord tyrant. Yeah, I wasn't sold on the him falling in love with this no. other. Like, like I, so much for me misfired with the delivery, the performance, the execution of this guy as the primary cause of most of the conflict in the film and uh, because of that uh, everything was falling flat well, for me and even at this well, point so right, he wasn't, it fails to so establish him like as a threat no. because he gets his ass kicked the first time oh, he gets into yeah, a, 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 a major <laughs> conflict with someone well are you talking about the 95 fight yeah I, well because that's his first fight is against the whole army that he destroys right well yeah but i mean that's not like against a significant character so, like, that's fine, it establishes him as a conqueror, but then when it's time for right, him to actually, right, right. like, go one-on-one -on -one with someone, then he gets his ass well, kicked. And I agree, because uh, I was like, how the hell did she beat him? Isn't the whole point that he's, like, supercharged? And over okay, and it's just, like, power of the dragon, baby. <laughs> like, okay. okay. Um, can he, can, is, a, is the power of the dragon something that you learn, or does the dragon, like, give you its power? Again, we'll, to, we'll, we yeah. can do a bit more speculating once we get more, because we will get a few more references for that, but, um... I realized, okay. I was about to say, so all we know, we know that, and I think they don't give us more exposition on the history until a little bit later, so you get that as your, like, primer, and then we cut to modern-day Shang-Chi in his job with Aquafina or Marvel's Katie, as she was uh, promoted, and they're both valets, um, and I think... That's probably the, that's essentially where the, the you know the the exposition has stopped now and like the story is beginning. Um, wait, so wait, why would they have like normal jobs if their parents are who they are? Do they not have like special well, guardian things to do? Or Kate, does get Katie, to... Marvel's Katie is not his sister. Like that's someone else. So yeah. he is Shang Chi is Ran the only one. So we random we... friends. Yeah, I was gonna say we yeah. don't we don't have the connecting pieces for all of it yet. Uh, there should probably be very reasonable questions, and they will have some answers. Um, I'm just trying to think of how best to sort of explain it to you. It's like, should I jump ahead with some of the more uh, bits and bobs for like exposition, or wait until they do it in the film? I just, you know, um, all we, yeah, it's it, 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 like. it's, oh, it's was, tricky to tackle his yeah. characterization without talking a little bit about his history, but then you can't really do that until it gets revealed later in the film. Yeah, like you, I guess we should just describe it in the way we, way we saw it, because then. As, yeah, we'll do yeah. the best we can, obviously. So, because there's still people in chat who are just like rags, listen to this, like, what is this story? I don't know if you know. So, you should feel like, hey, we went from that exposition story that ended with them being kids, being told a story by their mum, getting those those necklaces, and the dad not doing the rings, and we've cut forward to Shang Chi's not with his sister or his family, and he's a valet in America. So, what okay. happened? And we will, yeah, we'll 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 get more on that as time goes on. But they, um, of all the sins you could have in a film. Like, just, I hate that casual dialogue is just so dead in the MCU. Yeah. Um, and so, like, because they... Everybody says exactly what they mean, and it's all relaying important information in a way that it's impossible to misunderstand. Um, like, in the first scene, you just have lines like, you know, it's kind of like the, you're my best friend dialogue, or I don't yeah. know what I want to do with my life, or, ah, uh, see, my mom, she has this perspective, and it differs from mine. It's that yeah. kind of dialogue. I hate it. Oh, okay. <laughs> See how the, the, the even the jokes, like they used to be kind of snappy and quite witty. And yeah. now it's just now it's just really labored crap. Like the, yeah. the whole like um you know that, that joke that Aquafina makes about him changing his name from like Sean water Chi brand. to Sean. Is that a is that a joke that she's called Aquafina? Because that's like the a brand of water. 
bottled water. Well, before this movie be. started getting promoted, I'd never even heard of her, or at least if I had, I didn't remember. And so I was super fucking confused when people said it's starring Aquafina. I was like, what does that Wait, mean? Wait, so it's an. Oh, that's a real actress? Is Aquafina? Well, well, I think we're going a bit far calling her an actress. Like. I, don't, oh, I, I have no I idea what her career is, honestly. I just know that. I think she was singer before, actor. Really? Um, is, yeah. I thought I, so. I thought she was going to be one of those um, uh, supposed comedians with an annoying voice that they wanted in the film. For, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, like if she means. if she has been is a she singer, she has James just, Corden. She has destroyed yes. her vocal cords in her music career. In that yeah, case. I don't know. <laughs> her, right. She sounds like she has a bucket of cigarettes rapper, just in okay. her throat at all times. Like, oh. That's not good. She, she talks like this a lot. Uh, <laughs> Shad? Shad. <laughs> oh my god. And it is honestly distracting. I was like, holy fuck. I guess it's because I just haven't heard much of her before, so I was just like, whoa. Um, Aquafina. But yeah, she's our, what you would call at this point, you'd easily assume it's like, oh, she's comic relief, I guess. Okay. Um, oh, and as, fucking hilarious. And as Fringy uh, just said, the like I think one of the first lines she shares with uh, Sean is what <laughs> was what he's called right now is they, they he like she jumps in a car and he's like we can't play with this car like this is a really expensive car and then she goes Sean we've been friends for ten friends years for, yeah and it's like, like, uh, man, awesome so slick isn't I've it? never told my yeah growing up like when I had friends we would we would first off we would rarely ever even refer to the fact that we were friends because that's information we are both aware of and we do not need exactly. to tell each other this like it's news exactly. Yeah, um, well, and then, but, yeah, especially not. Yeah, exactly. I've never kept track of the time either. Like I remember <laughs> sometimes, like how long have we known each other? I have no freaking well, idea. Where Gary, did we meet? Uh, Gary made this joke on Real BBC. He said it to me. He was like, "Well, we've been friends for like a year and a half." And I was like, "Have we?" <laughs> I, was like, I don't even remember. <laughs> was it been that long? Or has it been longer or shorter? I don't know. Nobody fucking keeps track of this shit. As if like you write down dates and times. Come on. <laughs> and also, like pet peeve. It's always 10 years, or 15 years, or 20 years, or 5 years. It's never like 4 years, or 7 four and a half. years. That yeah. just really annoys me. I don't know why. It annoys me when everything lines up on 10 year marks. Well, I was gonna say, like, 10 is probably the most 30. generic, honestly. Like, 10 is the most generic. Is 10, I, one is too years to a decade of friendship. Huzzah! Yeah. Um, they, they go to like a, a dinner with her parents, right? Ah, uh, okay. yes. Um, well, what, they're, what, they're on house too. Too. well, it's, it's they're on a double date as well, aren't they? With this other couple who oh, are really oh boring. right, to, yeah. Just to interrupt, interrupt briefly. They steal a car they were supposed to park uh, and go on a joyride. Yeah. And I'm watching this and I'm thinking, hmm, it's not very heroic. I've, 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 okay. All right. All right. To, okay. Listen. The okay. The MCU, though, I was a valet. Yeah. I did that. That was something. That really? I've, <laughs> I've. I. Yeah. I, my first job was a like... valet, and I I have done that. I, oh, I, I did a few. I did a few. Mind, and he was and like, oh, and... "I need to I need to run some errands in my car, but go get it's it." It's a harmless. Like, it? It's a harmless thing to it do. It can be harmless. It can be harmless. It could also go horrifically wrong. But there there are different levels, you right. know. It's right. No, you're a terrible person. You should feel ashamed. No, How dare you? <laughs> no, I'm, I I don't feel bad about it at all. You know, you know what's uh, it's interesting though as well. Like he's sat in the passenger seat, just scared shitless, yeah. while she's just having the time of her life, and I'm just sitting there thinking, what a hero. <laughs> <laughs> you, this guy's badass, man. Yeah, you'd hoped. Well, all I can say is I don't know if they were intending. Is he deliberately doing that? And that's the point. He's coming across as like, oh, I'm scared. Because if you remember be. the, the yeah. bus scene, he's like, she's like, what the fuck? And he's like, I'm not the person you thought I was. That sort of thing. I yeah. honestly, the characterization is so fucked in this. I agree. I don't I, know if I he's acting like that or if he actually is feeling that. It's just, I don't know what this character is. I don't know who he is or what he's trying to be. Um, but yeah, the rags, could, just, just rags. Could you, what type of car did you, you know, hijack? What type? I, I remember them all. Um, Dodge Vipers and Mazda Speed Threes and Miatas and the oh stuff, you know, wow, stuff. It's pretty cool cars. Nice. Yeah, Dodge we Viper. Pretty nice. I, oh, look, I, I can understand the temptation. You know, getting behind. Did you ever joyride a Pontiac Aztec? Um, no, we did get some though. Every once in a while, we get a Pontiac Aztec. Popular cars. 
You you never they're they're not special. You just it's a car that you look at and you never forget that you've seen it. <laughs> uh, uh, wait, did someone clarify by the way? Because I, I genuinely don't know who are they going to dinner with. I don't remember. Uh it was, was it her it, parents. It was Katie's no, family. it was Katie's family. Okay, wait, I, I uh... wait. Oh wait, sorry, I'm mixing them up. No, they went to dinner with like their friend. Yeah, it was like think, their childhood, her childhood friend, who's like a lawyer now or something, and like they're getting oh, chastised because they're fucking valet parkers. Sister? I think it might have been. Her it might be her no. sister and her boyfriend. Is that who it is? Uh, right, I don't know. Remember. Well, oh the God. reason why I was trying to get it a vague idea is because of just how cringe the dialogue is again. They're like talking about how they enjoy riding; it's super fun, and then um, they they can't like the other people. It's in, the, it's in the name. Yeah, um, and the other people are there and like sort of look at them like, eh. And then uh, Katie is like, you you guys used to be wild, what happened? And then she goes, I grew <laughs> up. I grew up. Ugh. And then she goes, like uh, the coward just cuts on her and is like, what is that supposed to mean? And it's so like, uh, <laughs> Yeah, we are expediting our exposition right now. And then, and then like, well, look, you need to figure out what you guys want to do in your lives, you know? You can't just be valets forever. You've got that's look. not true. Valets make fucking bank. And another line well, is, oh. you're a valet driver with an honors degree from Berkeley. <laughs> like, okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you for telling me not only what I <laughs> have, but where I received it. Thank you. Yeah. I didn't know I, I'm sure, is there things. not... Is there not a lot of, another line like, oh, we've known each other since we were kids, and like, <laughs> you've always been irresponsible or something? Oh, <laughs> Just again, that, that another, what? like, I need to remind you that we're friends and we've known each other a long time. Um, someone asked, why am I not playing the movie? It is, uh, there is no copy available that isn't blotchy. <laughs> Let's put it that way. And I don't really want to repeat three minutes of trailer, like, throughout the whole thing. So, uh, enjoy the EFAP tile. It looks gorgeous, gorgeous. look at it. Uh... Yeah, because th this movie did not get released on streaming, much like uh, Black Widow did. And mm -hmm. will the Eternals? Eternals is theater exclusive as well, right? It's it's going to theaters, yeah. And then Spider Man will be too, and if they event like that'll just well, yeah, like, so that that's kind second. of like the that's the meta story is that Shang Chi was successful uh, more so than was expected, and now it seems like theaters that's the thing that's happening, and I think our film got pushed up two weeks. This because is really that, showing how much Scarlett Johansson got shafted on the release of Black Widow then. Because if that was I, a cinematic exclusive, I probably think it would have made done a lot better. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah, I like, just, that's, that's what happened. That's what, maybe I mean, this would be used as evidence in right? court, potentially? It, or, it could be. Could be. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That would be the thing is, like, if, if like 300 million worldwide is like a success, I don't want to know what a failure looks like, man. Well, it's just... Um... COVID times, right? Like, uh, and I think I think that it's probably going to do more than three hundred million by the time it's done. I mean, yeah, probably four hundred million might be optimistic, but it seems like that uh, that bet is is going to get one. Maybe you never know. What if interest completely drops offering and no one watches it ever again? Oh yeah, maybe. I guess we'll find <laughs> out at the end of this weekend, right? Yeah, this weekend will be super interesting again. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the the it's the that scene where they're just talking with those people. It's the the scene of like these people are not sure what they want to do in life. Okay, you're like, yeah, I got it. It's fine. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, and then I think they go and have they like party in a, like a club. That sounds cool. Karaoke. I love watching people I don't care about have parties in clubs. It's some. Um, they, 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 no, they they're, do they're karaoke. Singing funny. Yeah, yeah it's singing like a, funny, and they're having fun. Well, it's, it's just like the uh, the one that happened in Captain Marvel. If you guys remember, she has like a montage where she remembers, or she sees memories of her and Monica, Monica Rambo's mum. I forget her name. Something Rambo, right? Maria. Yeah. Miss Rambo. And they do karaoke as well because karaoke together is just like, oh, they must be such great friends. That's really fun. It's yeah. so relatable. Mower, it makes me feel like they're people. Yes. Mower, consider the, the amazing bit of setup as well for re later in the movie where she mentions that like she sings Hotel California when uh, like yes. someone's threatening her because it blindsides them or something. Yes. It pays off so keep, well. Keep that in mind, right? She mentions that when being attacked, she will sing Hotel California to distract. Why doesn't she, why doesn't she go, ah, yeah! or something like that? I, I don't even know what you said, because it, it, like, all muffled <laughs> from the volume. Oh, oh, it's, it's, oh, I scream, I screamed, ah, as one might do when they are being oh. attacked. Well, so the idea is that if you sing the lyrics to Hotel California, it'll confuse them for a few seconds. 
you know, because they'll be May so like blown away by what maybe, you've just done, they'll stop attacking you. Maybe just for a couple seconds, literally, literally, but they're just gonna be like, "That's weird." As they continue to, but right, like, okay, okay, you, all right, wouldn't all right, that be funny? guys, guys, no. I have a, I have a different. It's tragic point of... that someone's being assaulted. <laughs> guys, guys, I have a different point of uh, information on this. Okay, right. so. Sometimes randomly, uh, I'd actually haven't watched many of these recently, but a while back, you know, you watch some dumb prank videos now and then. And so I was watching this one prank one where they, this guy went to a rough neighborhood on purpose to try and pick fights with people. Oh, and yeah. Uh, do you know <laughs> what I'm <laughs> talking yeah. And he would pick a fight yeah. with someone, and the guy, and the, uh, the guy he's picking a fight with, gets really just ready to full on smash the guy down, and then he drops his dax and he has a strap on. <laughs> on his thing and he starts that. to wobble and chase and the guys just completely freak out and run for it they're ready well, to yeah, fight because... when they, he does something so crazy random and and just out of the bounds of normal human interaction and decency Wait, yeah. <laughs> they just so, nope out and they run it's worth clarifying everybody remembers these right in the hood pranks i'm my criticism is much more on, um, I just don't think it's funny, that's all. <laughs> like, uh, the idea that it might work, it's like, yeah, it might give you a few seconds. Yeah. I, um... Yeah. I'd, like, I'd like to point out that the person it works on later in the movie is a trained killer, a trained assassin, and it's in the middle of a massive battle. It's, um... Oh yeah, I'm not saying, uh, like... Maybe if she actually did do that, that would freak him out even more. But, well, I think um, it only buys her a literal couple of seconds, right? I think I, I, I guess if if you're if you're expecting to be attacked to the point where you have like a plan, it should be better than I'm gonna hope that if I do something strange, it will buy me a couple extra seconds. Um, I mean, again, it's it's for memes. Like, it's not really like a strategy. She doesn't intend to fight people or whatever. It just ends up getting paid off later. Um, okay. And just on the note of the video, yeah, I'm aware that it's very likely fake as well, but I'd probably run if a guy did that. Um, just well, I mean, those those are uh, those those pranks were really stupid. Like, there's there's not really a yeah. prank of like, hey, I want to step on your shoes. It's like, oh, thanks, you have stepped on my shoe. Like, where's the prank? That's not a, that's not a prank. No, yeah. I know you just, you're just yeah, you're just being like an asshole. Yeah, you just stepped on my shoes. Yeah. Like, I'd be pretty mad. Well, you like, yeah. Dick. Exactly. But then uh, the fact that they just scream it's a prank while crying, it's like, <laughs> it's an old man. What were you expecting? So then we get the bus anyway, scene. Continue. The bus scene. Which is, um. Ah, yes. Uh, I'll go. Oh, to... oh, oh, oh. Do they get their shang chi on the bus? I'm afraid not. Oh. Depending on your definition. Um. So. The, 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 I'm trying to think of like how best to describe it so that you get everything and then you guys can they're, they're talk about it They're chilling out on the bus. I, I, I remember this. So they're, they're chilling out on the bus and there's some girl piping up something on the laptop and they make fun of her for no reason. Like, oh, look at her working hard. <laughs> like, that's... I don't yeah. know. I just wanted to be valets. That's that's what I want to do. I don't have... I'm not I'm not having an identity crisis. Not at all. And then uh, some dude walks past. Some, some sketch-looking dude. He looks at the pendants. And um, yes. and then, like, Chong Chi gets grabbed, pulled off of his seat, uh, and and then they like give us the pendant. Now you might All be right. thinking they're just robbers. Just... Well, so we'll, we'll find out eventually. But the first question you might have is, why would you restrain him and not just take the thing? Why are you asking him to give it to you? Just take it. That's what you're here for, right? I mean, I guess he's hoping um, for that zero point zero one percent chance that he takes it off and goes, "Here you go." <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sure. Well, but, uh, as you find out later, they are trying to provoke him into fighting. Why? Uh, to find well, out if he can. Well, yeah, but but we'll get to that. But, but not anyway, just assume like, he can and avoid that. <laughs> well, I mean, well, I think it's... it would be safe to assume that he can, given the information that they're aware Chinese? of. You find out. <laughs> well, they That's they kind know of who fucked he, up for me. They There's they know who he is. They know. There's certain things they know about his past that make it weird that they would treat him like he is not entirely fully capable of doing the things that he can. Um, so they think he case, might have like magical powers or something like that. Oh, just because like, of his lineage. Nothing magical. No, no magic. Just they oh, know who I he mean, is and they know what his past it, is. So. If it exists in real life, it would be magical past. to the level of his combatability, but yeah. 
Yeah, so they, sure. why, why I, I don't think I legit don't think I don't follow what you're saying. They know it, his kinda, history. It's... They know his history, so they know what he's capable of doing. Shang Chi. You well, Infinity yeah, Flags yeah. doesn't know Shang Chi's history. Oh, well, yeah. So I, it, what did he do so in his history? Well, yeah, it's kind of hard so you, to. Okay, I was well, going to say you get they unravel in the whole story. You get you get it right after the um the bus yeah. scene, so we can we can tell him at this point. Is yeah, that, um... like he, he learned how to fight. He well, got wait, trained. wait, hang on, hang on. So last right, last right. you heard was the yeah you're skipping. Last the, last you heard the family was really happy, right, Rex? Right? No rings, no dragon heart powers. Everyone was just happy. yeah. I asked about yeah. I think yeah, I yeah, asked yeah. about well, how come let's, he's a valet and yeah. Yeah. So let's pretend it's really weird the way they do it in this film. But um, after the bus scene, which we'll go back to, he's explaining his history to uh to Aquafina. Basically, one fateful night when the dad's out doing his dad things, a, a rival gang that's got issues with old Dad Aruni, like imagine he has a lot of people on his shit list for all yes. the conquering and warring and whatnot. Yeah, they come in and they're like, and and the mum is like, uh oh, and tells the the kid to to, to go away because obviously super young, and she fights them. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, does she like kill them all, but they kill her? Yeah, there's I like a mountain her, yeah. of bodies around her because she's that good. So mum dies, and the dad comes home, and he's like, "The fuck!" And uh, the way he describes it is, the dad basically goes on a warpath. He gets the rings back on, and he tries to find out exactly who did it, why, all that good stuff. So he gave up using the rings. But yeah, he gave them up when he, for the family. Yeah. Yeah. So he had a few years of just trying to be a regular family man, um, uh, and that's that when didn't work like. Out. Yeah, that's Sorry. when all these gangsters, like, past enemies, caught up with him. And, yeah, then, and it's and funny, so... like, did he not consider that? It's like, I'm going to be a regular family man, though I've made, like, <laughs> thousands and thousands of enemies, but I'll just leave my home well, completely unprotected, and... It's also sure, amusing okay. the shame they turned up when he wasn't home. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Because you just pop the rings on and fuck them all up, but you know the the point is that he, he gets very angry and to the point he's like, I'm I'm going to make it so my son is a hypercharged man, and from like I don't know, super young for I think a very long while, he gives him some of like, most rigorous years. training ever. Uh, and With actually, like firearms, right, or something? No, good old like... punching walls and stuff. Yeah. They, oh, they hit him okay. with now, yeah. They, they hit him with sticks, and and that makes him strong. <laughs> now rags. Keep in mind as well, right? Between Shang Chi and his sister, only okay. Shang Chi is trained. He is trained is harder he? and longer than any other member of the Ten Rings. He is like the Black Widow of Black Widows. Wait, Widows. the Ten Rings is a group. The organization. Yeah. 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 He named so the like, organization after his rings. Yeah, <laughs> I, I forget how much there Not is too to imaginative. explain sometimes. <laughs> like, this... Yeah. Oh, okay. I was okay. I got. Yeah. It. Anyway, the big takeaway from this is like Shang Chi is like the best fighter that they've ever produced. Like the best yes, assassin. I'm, and everything. As okay. the others may have noticed, That's I'm deliberately them. avoiding detailing a particular part of this family history until yeah. we get to a certain point. So don't yes, worry about agreed. that. Agreed. I, I, yes, it's yep. going to be great for ranks to experience that as the story but, lets you know about it. But, but they're pretty but the explicit in, in, in showing how intensive the training is. He is hitting wooden, you know, poles until his knuckles are bloody. Yeah. He is getting smacked with other wooden poles to make to increase his pain tolerance. And He's he has mastered. Yeah, treatment. There, okay. yeah, there, there, is, there is this master with this mask on who is this super ninja. And this super ninja is training him. And it's important that you recognize the super ninja because well, the super ninja comes in later. So it's that's worth, death dealer. I was about to say, it's worth mm. saying that comic fans and so that wouldn't include rags, but it's worth saying as a point of just reference because it'll come up later that he's getting trained personally by Death Dealer, one of the, uh, the yeah, I don't know who that is. big baddies for would that be for Fu Manchu's baddies or Mandarin's baddies? I don't even know, but and uh, comic character. Um, oh, okay. So I guess that makes more sense. The, uh, the just it's just kind of like a neat little look, and it's like your first glimpse of being like, oh shit, there is Death Dealer. Um, Wonder what they'll get up to, sort of thing. So yeah, um, but so he's the had reason a... for all that history is yeah he's been trained extensively. He is very okay. good at fighting. So obviously very they good. would be stupid to just walk up to him without yeah. sneaking up on yeah. him and putting a yeah. bullet in his yeah. head or something when he wasn't like, yeah. oh, so they're really dumb. Exactly. Okay. But but yeah, so so they've got him restrained and they're like, yeah, give us the pendant. And Katie's like, oh, does he look like he can fight? 
and then they like push her over, and that makes Shang Chi very. Yeah, it's, upset, it's a nice so little he punches... hero moment yeah. you can call it, where he's like refusing yeah, yeah, to he... fight and trying to come across an old and person. Then... The second she gets hurt, as soon he... as his friend gets hurt, he yeah. exactly yeah. don't touch my friend. Gut. And, yeah, uh, I'll give her credit for nice. that. That was a, that was a good that's moment. Good. Also, yeah, so that, nice that's what you. That. It's what you'll notice as the through line here. Rags is like of all the Phase Four guys, <laughs> like he's actually a good person. <laughs> so oh my like, god, our superhero is a good helps. person. Which yeah, that actually helped out a bunch. Like, so it's a great film. You're like, why? <laughs> why, <laughs> why is that our metric for great? That our main character is a good guy. But uh, uh, yeah, then he beats the shit out of all these guys on the bus, He's including Razor Fist. Well, I was, about, I was like... about to say, yeah, we got a character Rags who's got half an arm off, but a, like a metal plate on it, and out shoots a sword that has like Holy a, a flaming edge on it. Oh, so you're fucked because you can't. <laughs> yeah, so you're 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 fucked. He beats I him mean... pretty easily. Just think yeah, as well I'll... of all the things you could attach to like a cybernetic arm, <laughs> like a gun. Or like some kind of taser, or flamethrower, or, or, or a fucking arm with actual yeah, hands and fingers. How about an arm? That could yeah. hold an arm. <laughs> yeah, an arm is a soldier. to many weapons. They, they just they just choose a flaming sword that's literally only usable in like a close combat situation. It's like as much as I love swords, it is profoundly dumb. Like the MCU has established robot arms all over the place. Uh, like, and uh, for an organization with supposedly as much power and resources as the Ten Rings, they'd be able to get their hands Ooh. on one or develop one or any no, number of things. It looks shit. Like you should be able too. to. Yeah, like I was going to say as well, this this sword is fixed at the same angle on his arm. Like he can't rotate it or yeah, anything. And I'm going to say, exactly. I'm going to guess, Shad, that you would have a few things to say about that. Because I'm pretty sure swords, you're meant to be able to like rotate them, like change your grip on them and stuff. Like that's part of how they're so usable. It and really just... does limit, yeah, it limits the angles of attack that you use. Though the interesting thing, the historical comparison to it is actually a thing called the gauntlet sword or pata from India. And uh, and that is actually fixed in the direction of the point of your, so your knuckles are pointing forward. The sword is extending forward from the knuckles in a fixed thing. And I actually made a duplicate. I have a whole video on the pata. And it's interesting. It does limit your range of motion. You can fight, but the thing with the pata is that the reason why you can get away with fighting it is because the blade is long enough that you can still keep people at bay and get the angles that you need because of its length with the length of sword that this one has with where it's projecting from which is like his arm is chopped off really just up past the elbow a little bit his range of motion would be very limited and his reach would also be really limited it's it's an extremely dumb option especially when he could have just had a robot arm and then he could have held a sword, a sword or yeah. held a gun yeah. <laughs> or, or a gun and just shot yes the thing you or have to stop this kung fu master. He's um, like, all right, well, I'll just shoot him then. And it's worth mentioning that one of the first things he does is attack and miss. The sword goes through the floor and it cuts the brake lines. So we're on a runaway <laughs> vehicle now. In San Francisco, so nice and Oh my goodness. As well, just so Is that where the brake? Okay. Yeah, of all the things he could have cut, you know, just, whoops. Yeah, the one thing you don't want to cut. Um, also, oh, the, the, during it, the driver hits his head on something, gets knocked out, and so it's up to Marvel's oh, no, Katie to drive yeah. the bus to safety. Yeah, you gotta give something for it's... her to do, you know. Okay. And again, the other lackeys, like the other goons, no one decides to just bring a gun, which would have made their job so. Well, yeah, because much they're clearly easier. trying to kill him. They are absolutely yeah, trying yeah, to end yeah, his yeah. life. Like, yeah, they're yep. trying to kill him. And um, yeah, guns, no guns. <laughs> Remember that though, Rags. Remember that. They are trying to kill him. They are making a very serious attempt at ending his life. Why not? Right? Yeah, then why ask him? Remember why not that. just kill him and take it? Oh, well, there's another reason why you need to remember that. Right? <laughs> um, I was going to say, is there anything else about that scene worth mentioning? I mean, the, there's some fighting I mean, in it that the, I think a lot of people actual, loved. Yeah. The fighting I found enjoyable. There, there was yeah, that's good, fine. Good top tier action. It's fine because yeah. there hasn't been we, a good we, like combat thing in it's Marvel. Probably the, yeah, it's probably the best in Phase and, Four. I'd say that. We'll the, that's yeah, the, the fight was... with um, the fight with Death Dealer later on in the movie. Oh, yeah, 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 that's really cool. But this but, one, but, like, whenever Razor Fist gets involved, like, he's just so, like, as big lame. as he is, he's just slow and lumbering, yeah, and it's, like, loads of slow-mo shots of the blade just going past Shang-Chi's head, and it's, uh, it's boring, but, like, yeah, the, the sort of decently paced kung fu stuff is fine. But unfortunately, this film turns into sludge, so that is eventually... Well, I was gonna say, because, yeah. like, it's, it's, like, at this yeah. point with everything we described, there are loads of problems, but, I mean, it's, like, uh, it's, it's not terrible. Fine. It's just a lot no, of shitty world-building. 
And this yeah. is, uh, I was going to say, that's pretty much, again, is that it for the for the bus? We go with well, the bus? Yeah. Well, at, also, I want to say, okay. at this point, I was thinking Shang-Chi could potentially be an enjoying protagonist at this point in the film. I was like, perhaps there, there might be something here. Right. Um, but it does not go well after this point. And uh, mm. I do not get sold on his motivations or his desires. He doesn't strike me as a superhero by the end or someone who is invested in trying to help other people and say like from here on he's just kind of dragged from plot point to plot point with no full agency of yeah, himself this except is, for if, only a couple if, of vote yeah if he had gone from like the the kind of affable buffoon that he is you know initially and then this scene on the bus just flips him into full-on badass you know assassin warrior mode and from that point on he was just kicking ass and he was in control of himself great i would have been fully on board with that but he kind of flips and flops between this and the dumb gullible kind of personality that he has at the beginning yeah, of the movie uh it's unfortunate he, we can't have like because they really crank the um the silliness as well in marvel all the time we can't have like a stoic doctor strange is like the closest we'll ever get probably now but, but yeah, even he seems to yeah. be fucking around in uh, the next movie he's gonna be in so who knows it it yeah like we can never have we can never that have man. a a hero yeah yeah kind of we can't have a batman they they always need to say something funny or be awkward or snarky like you can never have somebody who is actually taking everything incredibly seriously all the time yeah because i think dr strange often does that and even exactly. like whether it's fights or normal well, conversations he'll be like domineering and this is serious mm -hmm. end of the world stuff all the time instead of this whole like whoa and I feel like that that has to be deliberate, right? Because there's a, maybe a belief that they have to be more approachable, and they're more approachable yeah. if they're like kind of a goodster. So oh. you don't end up with anybody who's just with, like. We're mentioning know. he loses the pendant. Uh oh yeah yeah they so the the whole fight scene happens he beats the bad guys saves all the people but they lose the pendant and also cause a lot of damage. <laughs> like, yes. Just a lot yeah of, they destroy, they destroy like, a, a lot of cars. cars. Um, but yeah. he does manage to give the bad guys the slip because it's like the bus is in like two sections and I think it like yeah. cuts it in half, half so like they're yeah. on one and the bad guys are on another. And but nobody really gets hurt. He's trying to the bus so there's that. You know, he's okay. trying to help save people. Alright, that's good. That's yeah. nice. Um, so uh, to connect us almost to that plane ride, he intends to go and see his sister because he knows now that being after the pendant means that they're probably going after her as well, I think is how and he concludes he that. Sent he got yeah. sent a letter oh, right. or, or a postcard earlier from his sister in, um, is it Macaw? Is that how you pronounce it? Macau. Macau, right, yeah. Uh, um, what did that this, letter say uh, specifically again? I it, was it was just... A, it had it's a dragon like, on it, right? We have a... It could have said, it's a, it could oh, have said, right. ah! This, or... this is how yes. weak, this is how weak the connective tissue is in this movie to get you from, like, point A to point B. It's like a postcard, basically. And that's the that's, that's the thing that closes right. him in that he has to go to find his sister, and it literally tells him where he has to go. And if I remember correctly, there's Sorry, no, there's the, no the, words the, on the, it, right? There's just a dragon. Yeah, I think. The letter has the address on it with a dragon. <laughs> yeah. Is that what it yeah. was? I think that's. Yeah. Right. So this is this is important then, okay? Because so, it establishes something. And he has no way of knowing that they haven't gone to his sister first and stolen her pendant already. He, He's just like trusting that nothing. they went to him first, I'm even though no way to contact her. Without being in person. By phone. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, like email or <laughs> <laughs> email. <laughs> um, the only thing, because obviously that means he's going to be on a plane, so we're almost to where we were saying about where the exposition comes from. But the last thing I want to say is, uh, Rags, you might be wondering why the fuck is Katie coming, right? Like she, she's yeah, she's a civilian. Because she's just a valet. Yeah. I don't um, even. I don't even know if she's a good one. She seems to be a bad valet. So she's pissed at him. But for lying about all this stuff, which, you know, okay. Um, Understandable. And she begins to leave the room, and she's like, you can explain all of your history to me on the plane. And then he's like, wait, Katie, you can't come. And then she cuts him off and says, you can explain on the plane, Sean. And then and he just lets she comes. them on the plane. It's, it's worth like, pointing out, they're going to China, and she doesn't even speak Chinese. Aside from the fact that she has no combat abilities, no training... Yeah, like, it's absolutely you, like, no skills of any use. She's entirely yeah, like, useless. It's established, guys, it's established one skill. She can drive. Because when they she went on that joyride, every, she, but everyone she was can a, drive. I can't. Oh, but this is <laughs> like she was Mahler, driving really fast. <laughs> she was driving really, really fast and weaving through other cars. And Shang Chi was freaking out, saying "slow down." And so that means she can drive good. That's it's, that's it, that's it. I mean, that's 
yeah. She's Drink going to be her, able to. The connective tissue. It's just the. There's no fucking way she would come, and they're just like, no, nah, she did. You're like, okay. No fucking. Yeah. Way. All of this is just. It's, yeah. it's like it's like in Black Widow. It's the same degree of stupidity where it's like, oh, she's been sent like uh, a package from her safe house in Budapest, so like she knows exactly where she needs to go after she's been attacked. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, it's just can't I mean. think of any it, other clues. To... When you when you break them up like that, I honestly structurally Shang Chi and Black Widow share a lot. Um. In terms of just like like how they're their approach, but I just think that it made way less sense, even so, in, in Black Widow. But it's because I think honestly, him deciding to attack people to save the civilians did a lot for me. <laughs> like it's been like, oh man, he cares about innocent people dying because they've they've really stopped doing that in the MCU. Like the average person yeah. getting rescued and being cared about. You remember when he because he yeah. shuffles all of the civilians from one part of the bus to the other before he separates them. It's like, oh yeah. look, look, he cares yeah. about the. Oh. And like when they uh when they get hooked up on the um uh, the the other truck to slow down, he like catches people before they fall out through the window. It's like yeah, and meanwhile in Black Widow, that guy gets killed by that giant uh, APC, and they're just like care, they give a shit. <laughs> is is that strange though? When you have, I uh, you said he was trained as an assassin. Yes. Is so why is there any reason? why he's not like just like his dad just this evil murderous assassin um, that's no, a good should, question should, uh, you uh, think after a lifetime's conditioning and and manipulation and brainwashing there might have been something there that made him an unbalanced individual but no he is he's perfectly you know he's quite well, well adjusted. Balanced. Yeah, you, um, he's, he's, adjusted. Yeah, you yeah, like yeah. I'm, I'm not because I, I really agree with you guys. Like, uh, as much as someone can be like, "Hey, anyone can grow up, even with conditioning and break it." It's like we don't really get to enjoy that sort of insight. That could have been her role. That, that could have been Aquafina's role. Is that she's like the normal human person, and she's like, "Yeah, we could that uh, karaoke's great," and that's where he start. You could use that scene to get him to break out of his 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 uh, assassin kung fu shell. Because maybe he wasn't allowed to have fun and have a normalish life in his, uh, I guess, his existence as a as a fighter man. So. Yeah, well, imagine I, I, if that was the dynamic. And in this film, he was this like damaged, um, brooding kind of assassin that's you know done terrible things in his life, tried to put past it. He's tried to move past it, but then it's been resurfaced again, and he's had to become that guy again, and he's doubting who he is and yeah you know he's he's really questioning whether he's a good man or not and she's has to help bring out that good side of him again wouldn't that be an interesting bit of character oh, would it, that would have been so much better and another thought i had is like um when he was being trained and and i won't spoil any of the things that he was uh, sent to do and stuff but maybe that he got really afraid of this violent side to him that he realizes he has this side that is so much like his father that when he gets in that you know fighting mindset he just lashes out with uncontrollable rage and almost bloodlust and it scared him so much and that's why he you know tried to escape to escape that dangerous side of him that he doesn't want to fall into or let it control him and stuff there 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 were things that they could have done in this film with the the pieces they had available and they don't do any of it and it's there's so much it, lost opportunity I, again it comes down to their desire to always keep that comedic light-hearted tone and then yeah. so uh, out of step yeah. with the character and again those desires to tell a specific kind of story ahead of what you're writing your character to be he is so well adjusted he's just like yelena where you're like, how are you this normal? You like fit in with everyone. You get along with every like. What is? Did did they? Because I don't. Want to, this is actually something I got. Um, I watched High Top's video on Shang Chi. He did not like it, by the way, guys. It's shocking. I, I thought he liked a lot of, but you know, he did not like this one. One of his reasons, which is like, I I would agree with him in essence. Uh, maybe not with how he put it forward, but you know. This um history that we've been telling you about Rags about him being like brought up hardcore training constantly because his dad is on a revenge mission to kill the people who uh, came after the wife and so he's just which like, seems like it would be easy to do if you have the ten rings if you could conquer the world with them just I think it's about finding them um okay all right less to do with it, like, yeah uh but meanwhile he's just like forcing his son to just grow up solely as like a soldier which is just like okay and like they give it across really intense to the point where he's he's doing another fight with Death Dealer, and I think Death Dealer like wins and almost puts a knife in his his eye. It's just like damn, it's pretty intense for like a teenager. I wonder what's that gonna what's it gonna do to you? And it gets interrupted halfway through, 
because they're on an airplane, and this, like, hostess is like, would you like the vegetarian or the beef? Like, it, the idea being, how funny is that, that we've got this really dramatic history of a child being, like, fully indoctrinated into a vent revenge sort of life, but then you've got someone asking whether or not you want vegetarian or beef, isn't, isn't that...? It, it, it honestly oh, feels oh, oh, like... It, it, it feels like the, the, the writers originally were, were going for this really serious story, and they were halfway through this pitch of Shang-Chi's background, and then it's like one of the executives just, like, slams his fist down on the table, and he's like, I don't hear anyone laughing! Yeah. We need more jokes, people! It's and so, it's like, that's where you have to slam in something like that. You know, it's so jarring and unnecessary. And it, and it doesn't stop there because, like, they, I think they both are like, oh, vegetarian. And then she, like, walks over and then she says, oh, actually, we're out of vegetarian. And then they go, yeah, that, <laughs> like, that, well. That's the punchline. It's like, do you want, you know, veg or beef? And I think they asked for beef first. Like, oh, correct, we're out yeah. of beef. <laughs> so funny. So girl. funny. And, and like, because I'll, I'll, High Top was saying, like, he was getting invested in the backstory and then they just cut it off with a beef joke and then it sort of ends and you're like, huh. Oh, well, never mind then. <laughs> it's, it's just, every time, the, the, I think the Marvel Universe will never be able to take anything seriously ever again. Like, the, they themselves rather than us, I mean. You just mm -hmm. can't for risk of uh, people not having their funsies out of it. Also, just on the note of him being so well adjusted... There is very little in the film that Shang-Chi actually expresses that he resented being trained like this by his father. There are other things that kind of come up where he says he was, you know, uh, regrets and stuff, and we'll talk about them as they come up. But I saw nothing that came up that made him feel like his father was torturing him and that he had a terrible childhood and that he didn't want this life or anything like that. And that makes the conflict in the end so lackluster for me because it didn't seem like he was too bothered by it. He kind of likes that he has these Kung Fu skills and, and the conflict between him and his dad already is not being well established. And the whole film is trying to ride on that conflict for its payoff. Agreed. And nothing you is could, properly set up. You could either go the, down the route you've described, which is great. Again, you get a great conflict because he's got a genuine grievance against his father. Or you could go down the opposite path where he's actually tempted to join him. He's tempted to listen to him because maybe his dad yeah. has instilled so much authority in him that he's compelled to obey him almost. And he has a real struggle to try and break that conditioning and be his own person. And that's what then turns him against him. And then they have their, their conflict and their, their fight. Either way, it would have been great. And it would be so much better than this weird wishy-washy thing that you actually get where he's just like, meh, you know, I was trained to be an assassin, but you know, I'm over that now, so... Let's just move on. We've been talking about this sort of thing since, like, fucking TFA and earlier, right? It's like, Finn, they couldn't make him serious. They couldn't. He had to be a clown. It's like, why? With the history, he should be serious. It's like, no clown. It's like, okay. And no, no details as well. They only, like, pay lip service to stories and histories. Um, but yeah, that puts us firmly, I think, at the beginning of... I guess you could call this Act 2. I don't know how far we are in the actual timeline exactly, but they go to the place and they're about to see the sister. And, um, do you guys remember why he signed something? Um, I don't know. I think he just got the thing said and it, it said sign. I can't remember if they lied to him. Like, it, 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 it was like, like an entry. Place, you've gotta, yeah, you've got to sign. Yeah, I think it was like you got to sign the, the entry book or something. Bullshit well, like that. And he just does it without yeah. question. So they, they get, uh, there's so many. And it turns out it's a fight just, club. Yeah, I was going to say, there's right. so many things to criticize in this selection, it's going to be really hard to figure out how to explain chronologically what happens, but then also make sure we catch every sort of insane thing that we learn. But I think that's a good start. Uh, it's a fight club. The, 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 this, the organization, I guess, the building, whatever, that they're entering to find the sister and, is a secret and that's underground the fight club. Yeah. And it's the address yeah. that he had from the card that is going to. Yeah. Uh, is, yeah. And it's in like a sky a skyscraper that's currently under construction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a very strange location. I was like, okay. And, um. So, do you love as well how the scaffolding, which reaches like a hundred stories tall outside, is all made of bamboo? <laughs> I, I, like, I shit you not, it's made of bamboo. <laughs> I think it, yeah. Uh, the, there's so much bamboo. It's all bamboo. I didn't. I didn't understand a lot of all of it, um, but I think. But yeah, the, the 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 important thing, Rags, that you should remember is that the person who sent him that postcard knew the address where his sister was at. 
that's that's something well to he keep believes in mind. the sister sent it at this point but that's, yeah. Yeah, that's fine um as they're walking through rags they spot one of the title fights happening right now and it's you you remember abomination from the incredible hulk from 2010 right nope i <laughs> is it eight <laughs> i yes. don't is, i thought iron man was 2008 yeah, yeah but i think incredible, she, hulk. Um, incredible hulk came out the same summer oh did yeah. it okay yeah. But it was kind of a flop, yeah. actually. It was like 270 million, I think it, it made. made but they were able to kind of hush things. it up because yeah. Iron Man did so well. Um, okay, well, so the, the big bad guy in that movie was basically Evil Hulk, is how you couldn't summarize it. But it's, uh, it's Tim Roth on steroids, and he became a giant mutated super Hulk thing that Hulk beat. Yeah. Um, but didn't kill. And so and this he's is where he is. Wong. Yeah. And yeah, he's by the way, yeah, his Wong. opponent is yeah. Wong. You remember, you remember Wong, Wong, right? Yeah. He's Wong. Asian, so he has to be in this film. It's uh, Doctor Strange's so, pal. from Doctor Strange. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah I was just making sure. Wong. Uh, why they are fighting, I don't think we get that, right? I'm sure nope, we'll nope. get that in... The I mean, it, it's implied. <laughs> it, it's kind of implied at the end for the funsies. The training. He's like, oh. Yeah, like, yeah, he, training. He, he, it's just like, he was like, good fight to um to Abomination at the end. And then I, the I, I, I'm so confused. So I have so many questions about this. And then he opens the portal back into hey, what looks like the the raft, the prison that Get Abomination is staying in. One. And Get. and and Abomination happily Stop walks back into prison. <laughs> I'm just, like, Abomination's happily product, walking right? back into prison. I'm, I'm so confused. No, <sighs> it, it, you got to Look, you just got to be excited for the next product, all right? The next movie, all right? Stay um, tuned for Abomination's Adventures. A couple like, people have said, by the way, goes. bamboo scaffolding is apparently a thing over there, so maybe that's fair. Like I said, I, I don't okay. know. I don't know enough about scaffolding to say one way or the other. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm willing. I think that's right, that it's scaffolding, but on a skyscraper that friggin' high as they show in the movie. That's a that, surprising like, to me. This yeah, is a skyscraper like, in, in, in Macau. Like, it's... Uh, yeah, yeah, you know... I would need to see a reference. Um, yeah, awesome. Seeing those two fight, right? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess I, um, to because I can't. I because I know Wong. I I don't remember Abomination. Uh, Wong and, wins because he makes Abomination punch himself with his portals, which is uh, uh, neat. I guess it's the kind of stuff you're gonna want to see. And, like, yeah. yeah. The, but, it was the thing that... I loved about um, Blink, I think her name was, in X-Men Days of Future Past. Doing some clever use of portals, essentially. Okay. I don't know if... And, they... um, okay. I think I, I it... think I remember what you're talking about, yeah. Um, and so, for me, I thought, like, Abomination being featured in the trailer, there was going to be something significant about it or anything like that. Like, maybe he would be involved in the plot or story. Shang-Chi would have to fight him. Something. But he's there, and then he's not. And that's it. It was literally just like a carrot that is, like, dangling in front. It's like, hey, you remember Abomination? Here you go. Yeah, there, there, that's the carrot. And that's it. Yeah, yeah. All we see, was just to clarify for anyone else, is the... I think as people are walking through the area, it's just... Wong and Abomination go through a portal into a different movie that we'll probably see them in later. So how exciting. Um, Very exciting. Anyway, they tell Shang-Chi, it's like, well, you're up. And he's like, what? And they're like, yeah, you got you got yourself a fight, buddy. And he's like, well, no, no, I don't. And they're like, you signed the thing, you got a fight. And he's like, what? And they just sort of drag him away, and, and it, it all just sort of happens. And, and he just lets it happen. Yeah, like, he doesn't as, as if anyone. I would give a shit about a contract that I signed in a place like this. <laughs> like, what are and, you going to do? Like, assume? <laughs> he is a powerful then, guy. Like, he doesn't have to go. Oh no, I bet. I hope they don't hit me. I better go. He's like, no, these are all. What do you mean? Stop it. <laughs> and well, the justification in the scene is that if you do this fight, where you'll, you know, the context is you'll probably potentially die. We already saw some fights where serious blood was shed, so these are life-threatening encounters. But no, if you go do that, I'll help you find your sister. That's that's what convinces him. It's just like, oh, okay then, sure. And uh, Oh, and the girl, his friend, wants him to fight as well. She's like, go fight! Yeah, yeah. she encourages him to do it after she watches the enormous beast getting, like, nearly killed in front of her. She was like, yeah, go do it. I remember being like, you are not a good friend. She even <laughs> places a bet against him in the fight. That was going to be something I was going to reveal a little bit later, but, uh... Oh, sorry. It's, it's fine. That's worth knowing in terms of... It's part of why I don't like her very much. Uh, there's other reasons we'll get to, but, um... 
she literally put a put a bet that he would lose the fight, Rags, in a place where you could easily die. Oh, because because that could meaning, mean you die. Yeah, meaning she encouraged him to go and fight and hopefully lose so that she could get money. Just yeah, oh. it's funny. Just, just laugh. Like that's don't not... question it. Just laugh. It, like I don't understand. I don't know why they would write that that way because that's that's not it's, a friendly thing to do. Really. That's a horrible thing to do. If, if I learned about that after the fact, I'd be like, oh, we're not friends anymore. You, you know how people accuse the Marvel movies of having no real stakes? Well, <laughs> case in point. <laughs> yeah, because they think, that, again, they have such a backward understanding of how anything works that they think that that's a fun friend thing to do. Like, encourage a friend to almost kill themselves and bet that they almost will. <laughs> it's like, what does it want? we're such good friends. Like, okay. Pretty fucked up. Um... So, yeah, guess who he ends up fighting, Rex? He, oh, ah, ooh. And this has, is like, have, has they, have they shown up before? No. Uh, or is it a new person? I, I get, new. so without giving too much away, I guess I'll say, like, you will have awareness of this person in, in, in some way, shape, or form. If I was to pro, I think if I give you more than that, it's probably going to give it away, but I don't, it would be fine. But uh, the one thing I just wanted to make sure was, was said is a, uh, uh, drink a shed. Is this random that he ends up fighting this person, or is it planned? It's planned. By the person? Yes. I think it was, yes, by the okay. person. They they wanted so, to fight him. Exactly. There was a certain, you know, action that they wanted to do specifically in this fight. Alright. Rags, who do you reckon? Hmm. It's not Marvel's Katie. Is it so? It's not the mom. Oh, she's um. I thought they were actually going to do a twist, but I mean, well just not. Uh, she's dead. She definitely died. She's dead. Oh, okay. Um. Oh no. Um. I don't. I don't know. Someone he's uh, looking for. <laughs> well, Snidely <laughs> Whiplash. Dude, I fucking love it. From, if it was Whiplash. From 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 the incredible Brendan Fraser film Dudley Do Right. No, but I think that we do see them fighting in the background at one point, so it's a fair guess. Oh, that's amazing. That's really yeah, great. Yeah. I don't know who who they fight. It's his sister. Oh my gosh, he's gonna beat the shit out of her. Why is she here? <laughs> <laughs> why why how is she here? Why what is her business here? What has she been up to? Well, so I well, guess we'll remember go he's over looking that. for her. Well, yeah, he's looking for her. Really. This is the address he believes her to be at. Um because he he's come to warn her that she's in danger of having so, like these guys come in and steal her pendant. Yeah, we will her. we will get all of the context for that in a moment. I just want to make you might sure. Do I be in danger in a place the, like this? We'll go over it in just a sec. I just want to say they do have their fight rags. Who wins? Oh, she does. Of course she does. Yeah. Uh, and everybody Not who's ever watched this I... film is like, huh? <laughs> like, it, like, and she specifically kicks him in the balls in the fight just for good measure too because yeah. you know guy and girl is and do you want to know why she's so good at fighting is that sexual assault to kick a man in the balls maybe you know i think i think like it's a it's a pretty low blow dirty thing to do you know, like and it's specifically targeted at a guy for being like you know like and you know they that's awfully. That's an awfully gendered move. So. I mean, imagine yeah, if he done, if he had done that to her, kicked her in the balls. Yeah. <laughs> well, in the groin. Yeah. yeah. Kicked kick her in the ten rings. <laughs> but, uh, I believe it's called a clam slam. Is that the correct term? <laughs> <Clam slam. laughs> <laughs> hearing hearing right. Shad say clam slam <laughs> is great. But maybe we should get some speculation from Rags Fist. How did she beat him? What could possibly be the reason? Maybe maybe she's a super soldier, right? Oh, maybe Winter Soldier mom, Serum. Mom trained her in secret. Not a, not a, you know, what's, that's, that's better than what it is. Would have, yeah. that would have made more sense. I know it's better than what it is. <laughs> um, um, let's see. So if, if the mom didn't train her in secret, because I was thinking, oh, maybe the dad was like, no, only the firstborn son he shall learn how to fight. Because that's how Chinese people talk. Mm -hmm. And so then, you know, he trained your, uh, he trained him, and then the mom was like, oh yeah, well, I remember I beat you inexplicably, so I'm gonna have to train the daughter. And so they do that, and then everyone's like, oh my god, how did you learn how to fight? It's like my mother, she told me to. And then as she explains the story, you have a little bit of a montage of her beating wood and kicking balls and stuff. Uh, hmm. As what someone in chat just said, Rags, you gotta think stupider. Think stupider. Uh, 
Think she watched Ray. YouTube videos. <laughs> think think Ray Skywalker. Dude, yeah, I want to I want to give it to him. I feel like he got it. What? Really? Just close enough. No, 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 even that would still have been better. In that would have been yeah. Was, she did. I still feel like better. it's close enough. We, I want to okay, give him well, a trophy. Yeah. For I need, that. Okay, she too. she had a <sighs> Because if we have to go less than watching from YouTube videos and learning that way, the only thing less than that would be like just making shit up yourself and inexplicably it's, becoming a kung fu. There we go. You well, it. it's, it's a it's a cross. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. It's a cross between those two. I think it's fair to say because okay. the ultimate truth, rags, is that we find out in in the context of him being taught all this stuff by Death Dealer, his dad, doing all these horrible hard things. She was always in the corner watching, and then, in her that time, mean shit. and then in her time, she would repeat what she saw, or saw and, and, and do memory? it, and do it better. Yeah, yeah. she taught herself better by looking she... at people. So she watched him being trained with the trainer, and just by watching them, she was able to become better than him. Become better it, than it, him. It's like how I learned to drive just by like watching my dad drive the car, and I didn't need any lessons or anything. I just why didn't he just became... train her too? If she was always just sitting there staring at him, I guess nobody cared about what she was doing with her whole life. No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> um, a reason. There's it wasn't a reason a given. Yeah, it wasn't a sexism yeah. thing. It was because she reminded him of her mother too much, and he couldn't bear good? to see her. It was something. too painful to look at her because she reminded him of his dead wife. The absolute what? Yeah. <laughs> well, he... did his did, did looking at a son not remind him of all the horrified men that he slaughtered over the centuries of conquest? Nah, no. they're fine. Mm, okay, they're fine. Um, that's right. So this is what I mean. Like, there's so much stuff in this movie that is just so shittily written. But yeah, she's she's so now. He, she beats him, and then he's like, wait, I gotta tell you about why I'm here and all the stuff's going on. And so we get the full context of what's going on here. Rag, she, um, I, I think we get this a little bit later, but I think we can we can talk about it now. It's like, what happened between those two, right? And what happened is... I mean, well, I, to do that part, we'll have to do a little bit more as well. So, like, I'm assuming you guys think it's probably alright at this point to talk about why Shang-Chi left his dad, right? We're probably yeah, good enough. I mean, yeah, uh, I think we kind of need context. to now. It's revealed a bit later, like um, yeah. in, in the film, where he's sitting down with his friend. He reveals the reason what he did, and uh, and it, the reason uh, it's it's weak. But anyway, well, uh, I mean, you can do it if you want. Like, why? What happened well, between the dad training him and him being a valet? What 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 happened? Um. No, I mean, for, I meant for Chad, but I mean, you can speculate if you want. Oh, 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 I, oh, I, oh, I already, already had a good right. session, so. Okay, yeah, what's what's your guess? So this is after the mom dies? Yes. Yeah. Now he, after all the training, all the training. So after all the training, her. why how did he get from uh, assassin trained kung fu man to being a valet? Mm -hmm. Um did he learn about his father's real past and he was disgusted with his horrible behavior and so he left out of uh, disgust? No, he, in context, he already knew about all of that. Okay, all right. And um, and he was and he was seeming and it supposedly he was fine with it. He like Shang Chi never actually voices any true, I guess, um, uh, disagreements with his father's past. And in fact, he's watched his father brutally kill yeah, multiple people. Yeah, figure he yeah, might. And he, he was perfectly thing. fine with it, seemingly. Um, did his father hit his sister? No. Ah. Did he... Did he say baseball wasn't boring? He may have. We don't no, know if he not, said that or but not. That, but that didn't prompt this to happen. I, I, I have no idea. Um, so... Kung Fu training is all done. Uh, you'll have to correct me on some of the finer details more if I go wrong, but I won't do the big spoiler. But basically, Father reveals that he has discovered or finally found the people, the, the leader, the main guy who murdered the mother, and then he is sending Shang-Chi on a mission to go kill that person. 
Yeah. So, I'm sorry, say that one more time. He... Then she. Okay. Yeah. Was sent by his father okay. to assassinate the person that killed his mother. Okay. So this, this was going to be Shang Chi's first mission in the fields. It was like his oh, way of man. proving himself to to his father. Wow, what a mission and, to prove yourself. Yeah, and it's established. I think I would have done it. Okay, okay. At, I believe in this point in the film, it's the film establishes that instead of doing the mission, he uses the opportunity to just run away and leave. But why? Well, he Good says. Good question. <laughs> He, according to Shang Chi himself, he couldn't go through with it. This is what he tells us at this point in the movie. Couldn't like he go just through didn't with, have the stomach to kill. Yeah, he couldn't go through with killing the guy, and he just said, "Fuck this, I'm out," and just ran away. He has away. killed a lot of people but up of, to this point, though. In the fight but scene. of all, but this guy deserves it. Well, well, we'll hold on to that, that thought. Hold on to it. Yeah. yeah. Um, the reason you needed that was because the uh, the sister says that when he left, she waited for him. I think for, did you say six years, and then she was like, and then I decided, <laughs> fuck you, I don't need you, and then she did her own thing, and... She Rags, left herself on her own. She decided to leave, and at the age of 16, start and maintain a highly successful underground fight club. 16? Well, underground, it's, it's very above ground, actually. It's incredibly above it is I, well, believe, I believe the free I, I, I believe he was she was speaking metaphorically underground. Yeah. I guess that's I my, just, uh, I, that's no, my guess. That's I, my guess. Now I I would imagine that's true. I just find it very funny that this <laughs> underground fight club is very high above the ground. Just amusing to me. Mm -hmm. And it's that's not hard. Last, well, that's it's not hard to see fringy. either, is it? Be because fringy. it's like yeah. That's the last place that you would look for an underground fight club. <laughs> that, and so maybe that is big. Man, she's so smart and talented. She like, taught herself. She, You see, she, she watched well, her father teach someone else entrepreneurship. And so she watched that and she she learned it. And then she taught well, herself to be a businessman probably, way better yeah, herself. She yes, her, well, yes. just think about all the things she's, she did. She's like, taskmaster. Well, Maybe she is. Maybe she she is. got away with it. Oh yeah. I, I guess it's just when you start lining up all the things she did, Sh Shang Chi had to be trained by people. She trained herself and is better. Shang Chi had to be taken to a different country to then use that as a means of escaping. She escaped on her own from like a mountain compound without any help at all. And Shang Chi is a valet driver. And she's like doing this massive fight club that makes wow. lots of money. Presumably. They make sure she we understand. Incredible! She did it wow, at age sixteen. It's insane. Yeah, I, they so that knowledge. she is better than our protagonist in every possible How way. How did she? Much. If it's not an underground place, then it's a legitimate business. How did she fill out all the, like the paperwork and everything for that? <laughs> let's, let's not even. Let's she not. She taught herself. She saw her she dad herself. signing a document once, and she taught herself <laughs> she like taught herself all this stuff. taxes. She yeah. had to do it better. Rags, one of the quotes from her is, I built this place on my own. I didn't need you then. I don't need you now. Yeah. Like, okie dokie. So wait, she runs this place, but she participates in fights where she'll die? Well, she's that good. Well, I she's don't so know good. if she, she does that on a regular basis. Win. But just think, to be able to kick it, her brother in the balls for leaving Yeah, I think she just, yeah, her. did this. As, oh, no, because it did say that she, she was like she be happy that her brother got out? Yeah, they said she was the champion, so she actually. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes. she does. She does actually. She's the, yeah. And she's the champion too, of course. Holy fuck! <laughs> she's Who just, would have thought this go, in a Marvel girl. movie? Yeah. Oh, it, it, dude, it, it is you go girl energy all over it. It's insane. Like yeah. she's and, she's also got a stick up her ass, so it just makes her really hard oh, to yes, even listen to. Yes, like it's completed a perfect round picture because they make her one of the most obnoxiously stuck up a-hole characters in the whole movie mm -hmm. like we're gonna reach one of the big a-hole moments where she's just a loathsome jerk well, and it's like i guess uh it's it's one of those issues of pov right it feels unfair to so harshly criticize when shang chi was like 14 or 15 when he left that he couldn't come like you were judging him incredibly harshly for what was a quite a difficult situation for him and so it's really exactly. awkward. And she has well, no idea. That, this, so, is, this is what I mentioned in, yeah. it, when I reviewed this, right? It's like, he shows up out of nowhere in her fight club after not having seen him for like 10 years. She doesn't wait to get any kind of explanation for what happened to him, like why he didn't return. Maybe he ran into 
completely unforeseen problems. Maybe he was yeah. imprisoned. Who knows? Wants, Why is he here he now? Maybe he's got her. some really important things to tell her that she should mm -hmm. probably listen to. It's like, nah, I'm just going to waste as much time as possible by like kicking him in the balls and fighting him and insulting him and bragging about how awesome I am. Like, this is just the worst kind of like character decisions imaginable. And he he didn't even want to fight her, so it's like, man, you're making it real. And then she abandons him later on, but well, we'll yeah, yeah, like part. when because isn't the fight interrupted at the end after he gets beaten down though? That there's an explosion and the place gets under attack because so we now... oh oh yeah, we, we're up to that part, aren't we? Because she, yeah. he beat he beat, she beat him, and then they have the conversation, and then she says like. He's like, I got this letter, you know, from you. And she said, I didn't send a letter. It's like, oh, no, who did? And then, yeah, there was like, uh-oh, there's Goodness. something going on outside. People are getting in. There's bad guys coming to get us. Um, and then she abandons him. Like, she she leaves. And I think she locks. She doesn't lock him in the room, but she takes, but like, the, the letter. And... But this is, like, her place, right? She's the grand champion. Yeah, but the the ten rings they they're coming. They're here to get her. Yeah. Like, and oh, together. the ten ring. They want her back. The, the gang. They want both the father's yeah. gang. It, it feels weird. The an underground fight club with these levels of powerful people are all just like doesn't have great security. Yeah, their security yeah. is pathetic. They get taken over like in a second. They're Dude, like, oh. abomination fights here. Like, how, yeah, how do you not have and, good security? And extremist and people, and the Black Widow. We saw, like, an, a Black Widow agent fighting us, an extremist dude. Yeah. So, like, mm -hmm. there's a lot of powerful people in this place. So, also, something that I find really Well, there's a lot of powerful people and a Black Widow. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, true. Um, I'm pretty sure the Black so, Widow is beating the extremist dude, though. Yep, yep. <laughs> like, of course yeah, she yeah, is. Yep. <laughs> the context <laughs> of the reveal, that when it's like, I didn't send you a letter... In the context of that scene is like Shang Chi. You're such an idiot. You led them right to me. That's the context that's As if being that's implied an in the scene. Yeah. But the thing is, the letter was sent to him by the father, which meant she's, he knew she's a legitimate business. Knew... She's in the phone book. Well, well oh, so we... but, Chad, but if the context, the context here, yeah. is that, yeah, if the context is that Shang Chi led the father to where the sister was. The father was the one that sent Shang Chi the letter with her address on it, which meant he knew where she was in the very beginning, and so it well, wasn't his mm -hmm. fault at all. Yeah, exactly. Well, so that, there's a lot of things going on there. So you sent the letter to Shang Chi to get him to go to the sister, which means that you know Shang Chi's address and you know the sister's address. You know where both of them are. You know where they you live. You sent them letters. What? Yeah. So first of all. You tried to get so Shang Chi while Who he's sends in San people letters in 2024. Was, oh, so there's there's that. So there's some. I, I, this is clearly a mentally unstable person. But but anyway, like they send they go to get Shang Chi in San Francisco. They try to capture him there. Why? What does the letter achieve at this point? Like you you just want to get him, or you're trying to kill him actually, the, the, and you want to yeah. get dependent. Why would you need to lead him? And then that's the second question. Why would you need to lead him to a location that you already know of? That makes this, no sense. This is where all. this this is where the script tries to really awkwardly explain that because they obviously thought of this same problem and it's like shit. We need an explanation for why the first like hour of this movie actually happened. And the father's explanation is basically, I needed to know if you could fight. It's like oh, I sent my men to kill already... you because I needed Wait. to know if you could defend yourself. That's literally they, his explanation for the whole thing. It, well, the line I think and he says explicitly is, they fighting Shang-Chi? Wow. I thought he he needed to see if Shang-Chi needed to fight or wanted yeah, to no, no, it, It's like he's testing to see if he's he, still got it after being like yeah. out of the game for 10 years or whatever. And, and Because ultimately what he wants is for Shang-Chi to join him again. Yeah. Which yeah. again is it's, okay. it's stupid I, because he ran away I, for a reason. Yeah, and you, you'd oh, think... I don't know like, what the reason uh, is, though. <laughs> so, no well, one the, does. The reasoning is nonsensical, because the dad ultimately wants his children to join the Ten Rings again, and so it's a, it seems like his plan, then, to get his son onto his side is to send people to try and kill him. Yeah, that's going to make your son like you, you friggin' moron! Well, okay, like, but also, like, also, you absolute yeah. idiot. Can I also say, Rags, like... Ultimately, he doesn't really need either of his children to join him. What he right. really needs is their pendants. Maybe it's, maybe it's sentimental that, like, he well, wants his kids to be well. Made, yeah. Oh, this is you this is like that, the right? Vitali Versace film "Born into Mafia," where the um, father wants his son to run the family business because maybe he doesn't trust anybody else. I feel like the only person who knows what's going on. 
I'm, I'm, <laughs> there, there's only so much I can say without giving away the whole rest of the plot, and I guess I don't want to jump ahead too much. Well, I, um, I mean, but yeah, I there's like something he could do quite easily that would probably win them over if he waited until he'd done it and then approached them from his point of view anyway but like i guess we'll get to that well instead, chat brings up an interesting was. question is this a film about family yes it's kind of trying to be that yeah uh, yeah. yeah but, but, but we the, are. The dynamics like we are. and the re- yeah the dynamics of the relationship between these people is so horribly established it's that the uh the emotional payoff they're going for it just is pathetically flat at the end um, and we're seeing all the issues already here. We're like, what is the dad really want? He's wanting their son, the children to join him on their side again, but he also wants their pendants. And if he wanted them to join his side, maybe trying to kill them is a bad plan to do that. You could have just rocked up. And yeah. Just said, if someone tried yeah, to like, kill me, I wouldn't pro- like cooperate with them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think really what he could have done is just approach them and like, I need your pendants for a couple of days. Like I'll get yeah, them right uh, back. And, and the I'll reason... The reasons he have for wanting dependence is a, is a something that the children would probably be quite convinced in. It's like, oh, if I give you the pendant, it might lead to this. Okay, I have my issues with you, but that probably would convince me to rejoin, you know, the compound. Like- There's a little <laughs> speculating while avoiding information you can't use because we just wait for the father to turn up and we can talk about all of this. <laughs> He's not here. Yeah, yeah, we're just so excited to talk Why about doesn't he just, Why doesn't he just show up and say, hey, son, it's me? Um, well... So- Listen, well, uh, we're almost so get up on the wrong. <laughs> yeah, because oh, so, we were up to the part where it's like, oh no, you led this, you led him right to us, and the sister yes. abandons. Uh, uh, well, yeah, she literally the, the... leaves him to die. She's like, yep. yeah, we're under attack. Um, yeah. see ya, have fun. You can um, die, and I'm gonna leave. She abandons her and, business and her fight thing. Yeah, basically, and, yeah. is that true? Okay. And she has so no now, systems in Shang-Chi... place to defend it either. She just sort of leaves. No, she just runs away. But but then Shang Chi's like, oh shit, well. We're fucked. Like, so he, I think they break the window and it's like, all right, let's go <laughs> onto the bamboo scaffolding. Let's go. Like, this is our only way out. And then a massive fight ensues on the bamboo scaffolding. Yes. Um, everybody was kung fu fighting. Yeah, you're fun. It's absolutely nuts. Fun back and forth fighting stuff. I have things I want to say about it. I'm assuming everyone does, yeah. but I will. <laughs> Those chat have already heard it. So. Aquafina screams in this scene a couple of times, and it's really funny. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> <laughs> "No offense." Um, one thing I did like, and, and I don't think it was that deliberate on the part of the writers, but I still like it. Was um, mm-hmm. that when she's in peril, she shouts out for Sean, not for Shang, because she's known him as Sean for the ten years. Good, yeah. Okay. Good that she I says that, it. not the other, because that is what you would do in a moment of panic with someone whose name you've known. For that long that way. Yeah. Like, sure. good. Okay, Mara, yeah. Can you can you really tell with her voice? Uh, honestly, like, she could have been I wasn't, shouting anything there. I wasn't one hundred percent sure, but she calls him Sean again later for sure. And I was like, okay, I'm pretty sure she's calling him Sean throughout the film. Actually. And this has to be deliberate. That that has to be the mm-hmm. I don't know how much that's worth, but like that's something, you know. Yeah, it's tiny, but it's just you know, it reminds me of the whole like Kalel. It's like stop calling him Kalel. You fucking stop shut up. That is clock. <laughs> He's Glog, you should know Kalel, fuck you. Um but yeah. Kalel, no. uh, that this up- fight is incredibly dangerous as rags. You just gotta understand this fight is so perilous. Like well, you talked about bamboo scaffolding and stuff like that. Yeah. It seems if Dude, well, and just what, the amount of people again, are falling off and dying, it's like, dude, it's pretty crazy. I wanna fight like, out there. Sean Sh- 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 could lose this death <laughs> and just die and plummet to his death. Like that could happen at any moment. And Grags, do you want to guess the weapons that the bad guys are using in this fight? Oh, oh I'm going to go with uh, quarter staves. Close. They're, they're actually oh, like oh, sci fi. Oh, Naginatas. No, no. They're, they're uh, sci fi versions of Chinese hook swords. Because they hook onto the bamboo to like swing around and stuff. I guess it doesn't cut the bit. Ba- Would that not cut the bamboo? Uh, I guess the, ins- the really inside hard. isn't sharp. If the inside isn't sharp, right? It would. Oh, oh, they're they're electrified, okay. kind of. They're like taser oh, sticks. Yeah, that's right. They they're are. Patterned. But of course, no guns anywhere. If any of them had a gun, and they just point at Shang Chi on the bamboos like surrender. He'd be screwed. He'd be able to do nothing. But no, no, no. no he's they're, they're he's terrorist the organizations. Right. They've abandoned guns. They're very progressive. Unfortunately. Shang-Chi is unable to save Aquafina from falling, and we have to accept no. that she's about to fall to her death. Nothing to be done. 
One of oh, the no. few moments in this movie where I was genuinely excited. <laughs> like, yeah, she's going to die. She's falling to her death. Nothing to be done. It's all over. And then the sister grabs her. Um, grabs her. Oh, yeah, so she came back. back. It's, it's honestly bizarre. Yeah. It's like, did you plan to... <laughs> be but, down there to but, grab this but, person? But, or? but Rags, for perspective, she falls at like a good four to five stories before she gets yeah, grabbed. Yeah, the momentum like, is gonna hurt. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, like, her hurt, shoulder hurt. is gonna be dislocated to fuck. Hurt. Like, there's no way. Dude, it's coming just... off. It's fucking, yeah. it's coming off. Like, that <laughs> it's, gonna, it's, coming gonna, off like it's gonna yank you off before it yanks your arm off. Oh, yeah, true, true, actually. Yeah, you're, you're, you're going to go down again. with her. If you grab her, yeah, you're going down. If you, if you hold on, you're going down. Yeah. You have committed to an action that you should not have. I mean, well, were we the... talking about this before where it's almost like they couldn't allow Shang-Chi to rescue her? Like, well, it had to be a woman of... that saved her or something. Like, he he it nearly just... saves her, but then he gets tased. And then yeah. it drops, and then the sister gets her. I think it's one of those things of, like, see, she's a good person Yeah, it's all. Try it's like, do there is deliberateness. It's like, look, she's not evil. She's definitely on our team. She's a good guy. You're like, okay, fine. Yeah. It's just that see, it's... See, I, yeah. I, I wasn't sold on that at all, because in the fight when Shang-Chi asked her, why'd you come back, or, you know, why'd you leave, why'd you leave if you came back, or something like that, her answer was, so you, knew, so you know how it feels. Uh, it's like, oh, oh, it's like, man, so you were so you spiteful. Did, you could have died you so many him. times. Exactly. It's well, like, yeah, are you kidding me? I think she says at one point, did America make you soft? It's like, <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> what does America have to do with being soft? I don't. So like, so he's like, yeah, I, I decided to not live a life of horrible crime and death. So. It's just, it's just funny. You know, I, Bruce uh, Banner's pretty American. Let's have the Hulk punch her and then see if she says that again. She'd beat the Hulk. She would beat the Hulk. It wouldn't be hard. Um, she, she, taught, she watched people fight. She knows how she can beat the Hulk. But yeah, then we end up getting mm -hmm. the first proper scene for Death Dealer. Who's like the, oh my the top notch fighter for this sort of the bad guys. Uh, opens he the fight with cool. like a bomb. He's like throwing knife bombs. I think is what they are. They stick to <laughs> glass windows and they can stab into things and blow up. He looks oh cool, goodness. moves fast, and I think the fight between him and Shang Chi in this like part of the film is probably the best part of the film. Yeah, um, I would right. say so. You it's can tell really that they're cool they're both thing. good fighters because like it, it's long, continuous takes. You don't have constant switching of cameras. To well, try and hide uh, all the mistakes. Is a, uh, he's a martial artist, right? That's yeah. He's he, a stunt man. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it and it shows because yeah, you're right. Like they have long shots where we get to actually see the and fight. Thank take fucking place. god! And this, and this cool camera know, work yeah. where they pan That's above cool as the knife yeah. is knocked out of Death Dealer's hand and flips all the way up into the air at the camera, and then back down, one of them and, grabs uh, it, sort of thing. Lighting of the Ooh. scene is really cool because you've got like the neon spilling into the uh into the area. Yeah, no, De Death Deal is really cool. And let's um, just say it's really cool. We don't get an ending to this fight. We don't get to see who would have won, and it's going to be a great little. It's it's the kind of thing you see in the movie. Where you're like, I can't wait for them to to have their yeah. fight in the final act. However, that's going to yeah. go. You know. Okay. Um, he's the mini boss. And it's cool yeah, because cool. he is about to stab. He's he's almost won uh, Shang Chi the fight, and before he considers stabbing him, he has a flashback to all of the like torture slash training of his life from death dealer so there's a personal connection there too and like then he go i think yeah. he goes to commit to kill him but then he's he's pulled off before the, the yeah. fight can end um and I, yeah the, the... i think i remember being i think i remember being surprised that he was going to go for the death blow he's actually going to commit to it and kill this guy um and i was like oh maybe this sure has balls but yeah, this well, is this it, is the one little glimmer of like Shang Chi having a darker side, and you think, oh wow, this is they're they're going to start to take him down this path where he's going to be conflicted between the light and the dark. That could be something. Mm -hmm. I and feel yeah. like death. I feel like Death Dealer is a pretty valid target to kill. Well, that that's why it's super interesting. You mm -hmm. you can do something with this. This yeah, because I'm like yeah, because if he killed Death Death <laughs> Death Dealer, right. Kind of like Martian yes. Manhunter. <laughs> yeah, then I'd be like, yeah, it's a totally valid target to kill this guy. Yeah, fucking, fucking do it. Well, yeah, I guess. Uh, but but that's the thing is, is like when we have this character who has kind of been a bit scattershot in terms of who he is and what he wants. This is something that's a little more concrete and interesting and not watered down or sanitized. Yeah, like I can't um, kill you even though you're a horrible assassin and well, you're going to come back for me and kill my family or myself later well, feel, if I let I you like live. A, and... 
exactly you, you can do you can have a matter of like well why am i doing this like what are my motives to kill this guy because that might be more relevant than the action itself that you commit to there's something here and hopefully we'll yeah. see mo some more really cool conflict with death dealer going forward in this yes. film but not um, right now it's interrupted yeah okay yeah. all right uh, i gotcha okay the uh the i guess the 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 dad turns up and he's like I told my men they wouldn't be able to they kill you if they tried. <laughs> and it's just they like, really got oh. close, man. They got so close to killing him, like on so many and occasions. If any of them bothered to use a gun, they would have. Exactly. <laughs> and Maybe also, that's why they didn't like, use a gun. Isn't this a tremendous waste of resources as yes. well? Like, even if you're a hundred percent confident that your your men will fail, how why send men? them on a mission you know they're going to fail but, at, and they could it, potentially how many men killed. died? But it generates many, action like, scenes, like, and that's what matters. Well, I mean, well, if well, if Death Dealer, if he doesn't agree with the boss in terms of they'll be able to succeed, but he is the boss, so he does it anyway to make sure that the men can do it. Like, if the men can't kill Shang Chi. Then he's supposed to finish the job, I guess. Well, that's that's not what's happening because he don't want to kill Shang Chi at all. Like he, he really doesn't. I guess yeah. Him. The I guess the dad doesn't because he went. It's a very confusing plan. <laughs> it really, yeah, really, yeah. really and, weird. And if the dad just wanted to test if to see if there's, he could still fight, he could have done it himself and not sent all of his men to die. Or yeah, he could have shown up and killed him. Yeah, yeah, you have so the ten rings them. as a backup just in case, but you could have fought him with like your hands and legs and yeah. stuff. Yeah, this Not absolutely feels. Thing. This absolutely feels like they wrote the first hour of the movie, having no understanding of how they were going to justify it, and then later on they tried to come up with an explanation right. for why it all happened, and this is what you get: this weird, right. convoluted plan that doesn't make sense. Also, Drigga, I'm glad you said it was an hour, because it's not. It's 45 minutes. Like, <laughs> once you reach this point, you're not even halfway. This is the first act. Like, oh my goodness, I thought this would be like the end of the second act. It's not. I So when I was watching it, I was like, dude, we are fucking flying. We, like, we, well, we are just going. I realized... Like, in a, good, in a good way or a bad way? No, it no not in a good way. <laughs> it might have been good okay, if you could right. keep up the pacing, but, like, we are heading for some really long A dips. drought? Yes. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay, all right. So, um, I suppose to get it, like, like, the idea is that the dad is like, hey, I need your pendants because they give me access to the pathway into the forest where I believe... I don't think I'm supposed. This is literally what he says, right? You guys can help me out. I think he says this. He he's like, I believe your mother is trapped behind some kind of magical wall thing in the area in the forest, and I need to get there to free her with your help, hopefully. How did she get there? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a he, good question, considering Rag. he also saw her dead body on the ground, like it's a bit weird. It wasn't like she she didn't just vanish one day. She literally got killed, and he found her dead body. But now he still believes that she's alive, and she's behind a magical door in this magical fairy tale land that he can only get to with the pendants. by going through the forest yeah. to get there. But he doesn't even need these pendants to get through the forest because he made it through by himself the first time back in the nineties. And that's not even rings, right? considering that he could just fly over it in a chopper or whatever. Yeah, so so the that's the 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 justification, the logic is well with these pendants, I'm gonna put these in these little dragon eye slots, and then this crazy water map, like this magic water map, it's pretty insane in terms of just full like, on magic, like like confusing yeah, um, full on magic. Mm. Yeah, basically full on magic. And so that reveals a map of the forest and how like, oh, see, the trees move and that blocks the path. But on this particular day of this, it's it's a it's it's some kind of Chinese uh, <laughs> holiday or something. Like, oh, the tree new the, year. Uh, something like that. And um and yeah, on this one day, the path is opens and becomes really easily accessible. Mm -hmm. Um that's why he needed the pen. Why though? So that he can go in. Oh, why does it? I don't. I have no idea. Like, <laughs> yeah, it, this. Is, yeah, like why? Like you know how like bad guys will have all the traps and stuff to keep you from getting in, but there's like an obvious, like oh, just time it right and then go instead of just making sure there's no gaps to walk through with the swinging blades or whatnot. I don't know. That's just how the forest works. It opens up, becomes yeah, right. accessible this one day every three years. The the question uh, I have wondered about. Up as well is like you know that this map that's just like a waterfall kind of thing that moves on the floor for a few seconds yeah. and then it just falls to the ground 
How the fuck does that translate into like geographical coordinates on the ground, like for real? You know, how would you be able to look at that and think, oh, right, cool. I need to go in at this particular point and I need to turn left here and right here and go for like 500 yards this way. Like, it's literally just a map. Yeah, because a map needs to be like a, and there, I mean, if the the place is changing, there needs to be some like temporal element to when. I you know, go, or... because you you it only works in this one specific place. It's like a temple or something. puts the you put the dependence into this dragon statue. It makes the waterfall map thing appear for a few seconds, and then it just falls away. And that, that's it gone. So you can't take it with you or anything like that. Oh no, yeah, it's it's a yeah. worthless map. Like in terms of yeah. usability, there's no scale. <laughs> you, you have were no idea to get where your it phone is. out and hit record. That was what you're supposed to do, yeah. And that'd be really hard because it's water, and water is like <laughs> transparent, so it's kind of hard to see. What was there anything? Also, do like, you guys remember anything being said about hey, the statue? If you, that um, does it? if you get yeah, well, adopted, uh, is that transparent? So nothing is actually just on Waller's question. Nothing is established how the mother right, made this map. Like, <laughs> sorry, we'll get to your question, Rags, but Mola had a it wasn't a question. It, was, it wasn't a question. Uh, well, I guess it was uh, sort of a question, but it wasn't like a question question. It was more like a, it, it's fine. It was it's more right. like it's a kind good. of question. Yeah. It was like a, it was a joke that was framed as a question that wasn't meant to be answered, except in uh -huh. laughter. <laughs> it wasn't, though. You just you you, you kind of saved it for me at the end there. Yeah, that well, that we was, had to go into extra joke. innings, that but we right made it there. happen. That one right there was a good one. I was happy with that joke. And now <laughs> it's up to Shad to rebuild the momentum. Shad, you may yes. proceed. Okay, I shall. So nothing was established about the statue, how the mother made it. She was supposedly lost her powers when she left the magical bullcrap village, and and so like it's so strange she still had magic to make this weird map and all the father says is that you know the mother had died but she left clues or uh, she left me messages or something like that that somehow the father found out or figured out that this statue the mother the maid has this magical map that if he puts the pendants the mum gave the children and all the map will come out it's just so bizarre on uh, so many levels and so i'm just left with these questions of how why nothing is following through naturally as in this would logically lead to this next step and this would logically lead to this next step and this is how it all makes sense and then on top of all of this the dad, like, he just suddenly believes and knows the mother is still alive. And, you know, just like Drinker was pointing out before, he saw the mother die, her dead corpse. I'm assuming he buried her. And, like, the dead corpse? Truly, I knew yeah, you'd say it. I knew it. I knew you'd yeah. say it. Go ahead, Shad. What? Keep going. <laughs> uh, fine. 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 All right. Um, you'd think the first thing you would do if you see, you know, start to suspect that you're deceased wife would be alive would just be a to trap. double check well yeah like this could be a trap or yeah. something trying to confuse me maybe uh, look I'll, I'll even go as far to exhume her, her her grave just to make sure she's still there and i'm not being tricked in anything oh i thought you might meant like been, put the grave be, on, like, be, zoom uh, on the computer the, and like might, all the well the actually might it be work go ahead actually um, well, I was going to say as well, like he, the only reason he believes all of this is because he's heard her voice in his head telling uh, yeah, him, I was about you to have say, to come and yeah. rescue me, I'm strapped behind a door thing. <laughs> you Wouldn't you just think that's that's really suspicious? I'm not sure if I trust this So first thing. instinct of like, <laughs> fuck, I've got insane, damn it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The other um, thing, right, oh, is that why does he wait, why has he waited 10 years to put this plan into action? Because... He he mentions at one point that he gave his children ten years to see what they could make of their lives. So he's presumably known where they were this whole time, and he's presumably heard these voices this whole time. But he's left them alone for reasons unknown to just do what they want. Now he is immortal because he's got the ten rings, but his children and his wife are not. They age these people, and so he's if if this is right and he believes that she's trapped. He has left her trap for 10 years, like languishing in whatever prison that she's in, in his mind. And only now is he going to go rescue her. And there's no reason why he's waited so long to do this. Because he can I go don't... through the magic bullshit forest like <clears throat> once a year. I don't remember. Do they tell us when he first started hearing, hearing the voices? I well, think it's sorry, been a while. I, do, you, do you remember later in the... Because there was... I, this is kind of jumping ahead. Later in the film, Michelle 
like yo says uh oh has he been hearing the voices since he put the rings back on now seemingly that has no relevance at all like the fact that yeah. he, you're right i don't know what the, i don't know what the causal link is between wearing the rings and hearing the voice but that's what they said and if that's the case uh, j- that just to jump on years. that friggy, yeah, that's ten years, yeah. For, yeah go, ahead, go for it so go you're right friggy but just on that maybe we, we should address it when it comes up but yeah when she says you know has he been hearing the voice since he put the rings on it's like uh, i think shang chi says yes how and then she says let me explain and she does not explain it at all <laughs> no, she it's a completely <laughs> different explanation for a different thing <laughs> and she doesn't explain how the voices are connected to the rings yeah. in any way i <laughs> was very presumed... confused the, the presumed reason is because the, the the thing that's controlling these voices knows that the rings are the only force that's capable of, of breaking down the doorway. But yeah, why? <laughs> but the... why? I feel like a tactical nuke would be yeah. Yeah. I mean, like drive a tank into it or something that would probably do the trick. Uh, but yeah, we're we jumping ahead, aren't we? But yeah, we'll yeah, get yeah, there. We'll get there. So yeah, what if Iron Man wanted to do that or something? I feel like he could, could probably smash it. That Hulk? Absolutely. Dude, Captain Marvel, she'd blow right through that thing. Like, it's gone. Yeah, because trees aren't, like, that intimidating, because, you know, you just... It is a tree. Look at those fuckers. It's kind of amusing to think about. It's kind of amusing to think... I'm just now thinking, Captain Marvel, like, kind of ruins stakes because she's so powerful. I'm just thinking, she could beat the thing at the end of this movie easily. She could beat all of it, yeah, easily. They're they're just Um, gonna have to constantly have her be like, oh, I need to go, there's another planet that needs me. So um, uh, that, to yeah. rewind, the trees that, on this yeah. planet need me. <laughs> rewind, rewinding a little bit though, he is. Uh, yeah. There is a something he's going to say that'll set up something we're going to get to very soon but in terms of little clues. But he says uh, at the little dinner party when he's got them over, you know, it's chill. He's like, some years ago, a terrorist needed a boogeyman and appropriated my ten rings. He chose the name Mandarin. He chose the name of a chicken dish. And I remember chicken being like, dish? wait, what? It's like a, Mandarin is a is a form of a it's chicken a dish, whole, I guess. Like, but like, it, what a stupid way to look at words. <laughs> there's, there's lots of words. the name of a chicken dish? I, I pointed out how he belittled, you know, the Mandarin title. And uh, there were people replying in my comments saying it really didn't make sense because it's actually got a lot of respect in history uh, behind the term Mandarin. And that it's perfectly appropriate for the name of like, you know, some right, person right. they wanted to adopt it. That's a lack of research, then, I would assume, on the part of the writers to not find out why. Like, oh, it sounds like a fruit. It's like, yeah, but there's probably a reason why they chose it, you know? Like, I doubt they were like, ah, that kind of orange thing. What a great name for our villain. (laughs) If there were, like, a curry dish called Dragon Fury, and then I'm like, it's the fucking name of a food that you named yourself Dragon. You're like... I mean, it's the name of a lot of things. Like, why, why would you say it like that? That's so strange. It's weird to it's weird to say like, oh, you named it after a dish. It's like, is the language that you speak not Mandarin? <laughs> like, what? Why are, you, why, are you, why are you making fun of your? Like, and, like, but the uh, to to clarify though, I think the reason it's all like that is they're trying to humiliate Iron Man three, like or at least yeah, that portion like, of Iron Man three. They're like, fuck that mm-hmm. Mandarin. I'm the real deal. You're like, okay. I mean, mm-hmm. no, oh, people this, were this is just, chat. this he is the whole, like, you know, this is the whole, this is just the whole cultural appropriation argument just thrown into a movie without any real context. Is it what well, I, I was? So people can, confused. just so that people can feel good about it. It's, it, still, it's, it's yeah. Marvel, it's Marvel just trying to say, look, we're doing so much better now. Praise us. I, I guess, but it feels like, it feels like you just, Put, insulted really uh, yeah and you it feels like they're insulted a, a whole culture with by doing that like mandarin is the name of a language that, yeah. yeah well it's like it's, it's like clumsily trying to do it but causing more problems along the way i suppose and that is some oh, and... tunnel vision right there that you're so like you're like oh that's a fruit like mandarin's <laughs> a fruit and it's like oh yeah that's all it is guys it's a fruit <laughs> it's a tangerine okay um I, I, I wanted to mention as well, at this point in the movie, I was starting to think about just the acting in general, and I was like, uh, Shang-Chi's dad is like the only person that's really convinced me a lot of his like, he's delivery great. of his story yeah, and stuff. He's a good actor, yeah. yeah. Um, he's, got, he's got kind of authority to him, I'll give him that. Uh, Simu Liu or Liu himself, I remember being like, man, really not feeling it with a lot of his uh, more emotional stuff. Very, very bland. Um, in the... Kind of a 
area, isn't he? Kind yeah. of. Wasn't wasn't getting See, gripped like, at all, but I was with his dad, especially the dad describing the story. Really? His, yeah. Uh, the dad did not land for me at all. He felt so weak and just like like a wet rag for the whole thing. I, he like when he was angry, I didn't feel any menace or threat from him in any measure. Um, well, I, I think say... he's, I think there's a difference between the writing and the performance. I guess with this. Yeah, like, yeah. I think, I think the actor does fine. the best with what he can. I will. Say, it might. We might be having the issue of. Um, remember, we brought this up for Kang. Um, not quite what I was expecting for the history this character has at all, and I don't necessarily feel that. But I still feel like he's trying to push put forward emotions that I can detect. <laughs> that is my well, praise. It, it feels like he. Uh, it feels like if it was somebody else, it could have been a lot worse in terms of the interpretation of the material, even if the material ain't great. I think that would be the, the qualifier. Like, I liked when he was talking about stuff on screen. Like, I preferred seeing what he was up to rather you know than what I, heroes. You know what I would have loved a, a bit more out of this character is just some sense of his age. You know, this is a guy who's yes. been around for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. Like, can you imagine how, like, weary of the world you would be after all of that? Yeah. You know, like, just yeah, some kind of sense yeah. of, like, what he's seen and what he's experienced and, like, that, that kind of impact that that's going to have on your psyche, because... Like, how, this is yeah, presenting a character who's supposed to be super old, who's been around for this long, but... Oh, this is kind of like the Vertali Versace film, The Last Vampire, where you have the, the, the main character uh, who's portrayed as someone who's thousands of years old, but the... Uh, but, but he just seems like some idiotic kid who isn't aged or or learned or educated very well known has anything insightful to say yeah 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 and like the the amount of people that he must have known and probably cared for to some extent in his life and they've all like gotten old and died like that's again bound to take a toll on you as a person but like, i can believe that just... elrond was there three thousand years ago you know yeah, I mean, this guy just kind of, like, he just seems like a regular person for the most part. Like, he, the way he interacts with people is just like you would expect from any guy of his age that was just born in the 20th century. Like, it's, it's, there's nothing yeah, to it. It feels, doesn't, it doesn't make use right, of this, feel, this crazy background that he's got, and it feels mm -hmm. like such a waste. He feels like he's, his age, the actual actor's age, like 50 or something, rather than a thousand. Yeah. Um... Or maybe a little bit older, but it's like, yeah, you... Because it feels like his history only really begins in the 90s when he had his family, but he has a lot of history. Yeah. Like, a lot. Yeah. Um, it, Like, that. I feel like you could be playing around with something of, like, I'm a dude who you killed my, my dad, like, when I was five years old, and now I'm 70, and you're still, like, the same person. And you, could, you could do something with that. But, um, but I feel like that, yeah, that's tough. That's tough for the right. But, you know, like... That's your job. Um, but yeah, they um they say no, Rags. They say no. They don't want to do it. Mm. They don't want to do this crazy plan. So they get imprisoned. Oh my goodness. Yeah. This is this yeah, is a very loose um, interpretation of imprisoned, well, by the way. <laughs> just to jump on this, right? The the kids so far, like, they're all on board. They're like, okay, go to the village, save our mum. That seems all right. And then it's like, and if they don't let us oh, get right, to the yeah. mum, we will destroy them. And they're like, oh. Hang on, we don't want to destroy them. You must be a bad person now. And then it's like, if you won't join me, you'll be imprisoned. Yeah, it's very uh, cartoony. Yes. Now, again, Rags, I'm going to ask you a question on this one. Like, if you have no, got two no, I'm ready. children who are highly trained assassins, like adept in the arts of, of escape and evasion, um, sneaking into fortified compounds, they can take out security. They are they are the the best of the best, and you've trained one of them yourself. You know, and you have to put them under guard. You know, you've got to imprison them. What kind of situation would you put them in there? Like, how I much would, resources would you devote to that? I mean, probably a bunch. I just put them in a. a I just shackle them with iron chains to the wall in a dark room that's just a concrete box with an air hole at the top and there to be iron doors with big bars and I'd have the key and I'd eat it so if I ever needed to free him I'd have to poop it out so I'd really have to think about <laughs> if I wanted to let him out now, that's pretty much the answer I would expect. Now, what I wouldn't have expected you to say is I'd, I'd just put them in the basement and kind of give them free reign and just, just hope that they don't do anything naughty. What do you mean? Specifically, in the, the basement. basement, 
Yeah, in the, in, well, this it's like a prison basement that has rooms and and hallways to other rooms where other prisoners are kept specifically. With an yeah. array of of you know, there's there's all kinds of things down there. You know, props and and like there's I think there's a TV and stuff. Like there's there's just loads of things lying around that you could potentially fashion into like escape uh, tools. And it's all just there. Nobody's watching them. There's no maybe cameras, this is, oh, no guards, maybe nothing. This is this could be one of his tests, like he was testing them earlier in that really weird, convoluted <laughs> way. Maybe this is another one of his tests to see if they're really assassin uh, material. Mm, no. but, <laughs> well, you know, not. now that you've kind of given it, like, who do you think they're going to meet in this area, Rags? What special guest? Oh, another. Abomination. <laughs> if only. Oh, close. Yeah, it is kind it, of an it abomination. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not abomination. In fairness, I don't right. know that you'd have any reason to guess this one, this is, unless. Well, but, oh, there, well, there is a reason. There was well, a short made, a, a little MCU movie short, where this character gets kidnapped by the organization of the Ten Rings. Okay. And so, if you had watched that, and I had, it was like, and okay, it, this makes sense. Yeah. And it's it's someone that they were laughing about just in literally the previous scene. I don't know. Come on, Rags. I believe in you. I, well, no, I, I honestly think it's fair that he wouldn't think to guess this. Like, it, I, all right. Do you remember um, Iron Man three very well? <laughs> no, I haven't seen it in a long time. Uh, well, you remember Ben Kingsley, right, as an actor? Yeah, I do. He was in that, yeah, and he was the Mandarin. Well, the not Mandarin, I guess you could call him. Um, Man who in he, he impersonated the real leader of the Ten Rings, and yes. that was his first mistake, um, and his last because they kidnapped him and put him in prison for um, the rest of his life. Doing from that. what he tells us, he was kidnapped specifically to be killed because fuck that guy for fucking with Mandarin's reputation or Ten Rings reputation rather. Um, but when they were about to kill him, he started doing he started doing Shakespeare. I think he says. Mm. I think so. Yeah. And they were amused, so they kept him alive as a jester. <laughs> I can't ben Kingsley must yeah. really feel like his his acting career has really paid off here. So that's what I will say. When he came up, I was like, "Man, feels weird to have someone of such acting prowess being forced into this retarded role." <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> really. Because you do that as like a the, joke, the like, oh, we got this this incredible actor to pr do this goofy part, and it's goofy because, like, it's recognizing the actor is so good. Yeah. What a waste. Yeah, I mean, dude, Ben Kingsley. Yeah. Exactly. You know, what pains me so much is that Ben Kingsley, if they truly committed to the Mandarin role as their proper prota uh, sorry, antagonist in Iron Man 3, that he is actually the villain, and they didn't do that stupid, goofy twist, he would have been one of the coolest villains in the MCU. Ben Kingsley was I nailing it. Yeah, you're selling <laughs> it, man. Because he was—he was, oh, was never—he was never trying to impersonate a Chinese man either. Like no. he was yeah. clearly like Osama bin Laden material. You know, and yeah, that works exactly. fine. And like, and the concept of a terrorist that specifically targeted superheroes was awesome. I was like feeling it. I was like, this could really go somewhere. And then when they just ruin, ah, oh, it hurts me so much because it could have been something so cool. And the and so I get he's also like really stupid if you remember the um uh, oh amazingly so uh, the so this it's... joke it's not this is a little bit of jump of the head but it's just the joke so there's no spoiler or anything he's like oh why'd you get into acting and he's like well when i saw planet of the apes i was amazed by how they managed to do all of that and they were like oh yeah you mean like you know having the fact that because like the they're obviously people in suits and stuff and then he's like no how they managed to train the apes to be on horses and all. I think the way that he says it is like the how they got the apes to ride the horses and stuff, and that's acting. And like the joke to me honestly did not work because I was like, wait, you're saying that he believes that the act of having apes on horses work doesn't usually work, but it does when they're acting because he believes acting he is when you can do something that you normally can't. So, Gosh, yeah, it, the, the punchline was that he believed he thinks that the apes were real, were real monkeys, apes, yes. he, yeah, they, and. That, that they were acting like they were not real monkeys and that they were real monkeys, but they were acting. And that's why he wanted to be an actor to act, to act like the monkeys could act. And obviously the joke is everyone's like, he doesn't know. <laughs> oh my God, what an idiot. So, 
Like, so okay. my, the the cinema I was in was laughing pretty heavily at that oh, at okay. that exchange. Uh, maybe, maybe I just don't get I'm it. I, like, like you know, I, I see a lot of people that that joke landed for him. Do you know what? I, maybe I, maybe this is less funny to you guys, but like I thought the joke when he was building up was just going to be that he was inspired by the monkey characters. He was just uh, you could make it so that he's like, I know there were people in suits. But the idea that a, a monkey could be doing all those things, surely I could, you know? Like, so that sort of, I thought that's what the story was going to be, or some weird way of that. But like the way they went with it, I was just like, what? He thought that they were real monkeys acting on... Why would a monkey see, inspire him, but not a... This is like the he's... shit ver... This is like the it's shitty version of the... He, um... he's... Of what is it called? The oh, in um in the Suicide Squad, the whole you know, if rats have a purpose, that's a da. This is like the shitty version of that. Yeah, it, it's like yeah. they can't just be dumb. They have to be like so comically dumb that it's like no, I think they I actually can't have believe learning you're difficulties. Actually dumb. Yeah, you know, the thing is though, Ben Kingsley is such a good actor. He even did that role like I think so. really well I think in my opinion. It. Like he, he's emoting I, throughout. He's getting all the delivery right. He's, he works yep. hard, and I feel bad for him. So, the, here's my reaction, right? When I saw Ben Kingsley back in, I had the faintest kind of glimmer and hope in my heart that they could do something, but of course they didn't. Uh, they wouldn't have the balls or they'd want to commit to or anything like that. I was like hoping, wow, imagine if this guy, the, the horrible actor, right, um, uh, realizes that the only time in his life where he had respect and people, you know, saw him was when he was, had the role of the Mandarin and he liked that version of himself far better. And then this weird mental thing happens where he creates a double personality that that version of the, you know, actor that he had overtakes himself and he's been playing this double game behind the scenes ready to try and betray things. And at the end of the film, he kills the Mandarin, takes the rings for himself and they restore the uh, evil terrorist Mandarin character as a real character. And I was thinking, oh, that would be so cool if they did that. Bring back that awesome character that they just ruined and uh, and uh, subverted. That it could have been the true Mandarin and stuff. Of course, they would never have done anything like that. That's too yeah. Far could you to imagine the <laughs> reaction <laughs> on right, Twitter right, if yeah, you did that? that. Uh, but I, um, I could wish. I was like, it, I was thinking it would be so cool if we could have that Mandarin and he gets the ten rings and stuff, and then he could be an Iron Man pre antagonist, like you know. I was like, nah, of course not. It, the oh, ironic mm. thing is, like, all this stuff that we're laughing about here, that's not even the dumbest aspect of this scene, which is I just was, about to happen. I was gonna say that, like, Rags, you might think that he's here for comic relief and maybe a reference. He is pivotal. I mean, surely with, a, with, with something that stupid, you wouldn't make a character... Like, if you have a character say something that incredibly stupid, surely it's for comic relief. Why else would anyone say something that he is, shockingly stupid? He is pivotal to this story. We will we will not get anything else happen now if not for him. Um, so super fucking lucky that he's here, that he was spared, and that he bumps into them. But hey, there's also another character we should introduce. Um, yes. Oh, the little uh, piggy thing. Wait, is it hey, Morris? Is the the, the headless wombat chicken. Yeah. Yeah. That's a pretty I'm accurate afraid. description. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. even like words wombat fail me with chicken? this thing. Yeah, it's Headless like wombat a little. Chicken. It's like a little wombat with wings and no face, no head. That's it doesn't no even head, no yeah. head. Yeah, it just his body mm. just stops. Yeah. How does it to, to picture it? Rags it's like a fat little dragon oh, well, let with me no just head. Find a picture. What was his so, name again? Is Morris? Is it? Ah, uh, it is Morris. I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it, it it's based out of like I guess it's a piece of like Chinese folklore or something like that. But like, there's certain things that you probably shouldn't try to adapt into an actual a live action <laughs> movie, and this is one of them. Like, how does it eat will... or see or communicate? Ah, uh, whatever. Anyway, what am I even supposed to look at? That's I don't know. That's just what it is. Well, yeah. Here's like a full view, I guess. Why would you give up the chance oh. to give it like a cute face or something? Because yeah, um, it's, that's the Chinese like mythical is it creature. A Chinese? Yeah, that sounds yeah, like shit. Is... They've got some kind of. I thought we in Scotland had fucked up like legends and stuff, but man, we've got nothing on the Chinese. Okay, apparently it's a, a Hunden. It's a. That's what it's called. It is a legendary faceless being and the primordial and prim and the primordial and central chaos in Chinese cosmology, comparable with the world egg, according to. Comparable with the world egg. They have a little. They have a little. They have I a little heard drawing. all those words, and I'm just that didn't help at all. <laughs> drawing here as well. Oh, that's, well, that's, there you go. that's the drawing. Well, at least it's accurate, so, right? 
Yeah. It yeah, is that accurate. Is, that, that so, is accurate. So actually. this this fucking ridiculous thing waddles into the, the shot, and they're all like, "What the fuck is this?" And you now, know, Bing Kingsley you know, is like, "Oh, thank God you can see it. I thought I was going crazy." Now, like now, and funnily enough, everybody here is shitting on it. I kind of like it, <laughs> but like. Or I, I, I don't know. See, why. I wouldn't mind it I if it was like just the there creature, for fun. Yeah. But it's See, the fact I that like literally it. the whole rest of the movie depends on this thing existing. That's, yeah. that's the thing there, that's annoying about there it. There are so many the, issues. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't like the look of it. I think it looks dumb. I don't as like well. it at all. Like, yeah, it's just this headless weird thing with no cute features you can, you know. I wouldn't say like. that it has no cute features at all. It's like the little body, the little waddling, and the stumpy legs, and it's a big furry fluff ball. Yeah, just because it doesn't it's, have a face. That's, that's too, what I find too, interesting uh, about it. It's too uncanny valley for me. I mean, it's interesting. It yeah, I, I, I think I it's shit. It. I have so many questions about it as well. Because just <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, I, mean I don't know how it works at all. Like, what does so, it eat? What does it drink? So supposedly, like, when Wu found it, like, on one of his exploration missions in this region and brought it back to his hideout and then just kind of left it there and Ben Kingsley has befriended it, um but like yeah. <laughs> not only that not not only that goes further not only has he befriended it he is talking to it and it supposedly is talking back and you'd yes. think if if something like that happened you have this magical creature from the dimension that you're trying to access where this magical village is you have this creature and suddenly it seems to be communicating with someone that would be really friggin important to take note of and try and figure out if you could get information from it oh well, yeah that, i'm are, just curious uh, yeah. as to how he found it in the first place because they, it, it I, only I, exists yeah. in the magical fairy tale land which means he would have <laughs> had to gone there to get it in the first place and if he could get it then he fucking knows the way to get there anyway so why does well, he need it why does he no, do any of this stuff? No, I, he went I think there to get it, it or fell it was through there the whole time. No, no, I think <laughs> it fell through. Yeah. I think but it then, fell through and it was just movie. wandering. <laughs> I, love it. I, I thought it fell through and was just wandering through the forest. And well, it just kind of plopped out like a turd or something. Yeah, 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 exactly. Well, wait. So, is the forest? <laughs> does the forest kill you if you try and step into it, or does it only kill you when it's closing in on you? I, I think it's when know. it's closing in on you. Because at that makes point, you wonder, you know, so it squeezes you to death, it squishes you. I guess. I mean, if you're in a car, would it be able to crush the car? What if you were in yeah, one of the I trees, like just, climbed them? I know like, we've gone. we kind of talked about it, but I'm just sitting here like, you, have, you can move these trees at will, like, and the. What is this a power? <laughs> Who is doing this? Like, what does it mean for the rest of the world that you can create forests at will? Like, it's, I don't know. But obviously, there's no answers it for solves this. Solves the, I don't. Yeah, maybe it's but, just. Uh, that sounds like but, like a poison kind of power, like to to grow trees and forests. Like you're you're a. You're, oh my God, you're a Dom DeLuise, and that's what you do. You use your magic green thumb and you make like flowers and stuff appear, but they're like sapient flowers and they have emotions and expressions and thoughts. thoughts. It's actually kind of horrible. I was oh I was God. thinking more about that. Did you ever see that Don Cheadle sketch where he's playing Captain Planet and he just starts zapping everyone yeah, and turning yeah, them all yeah. into trees? <laughs> 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 I just picture it like that. <laughs> Fucking turn the whole world into trees. <laughs> um so yeah, we kind of uh, alluded to it, but we may as well just confirm it for rags. This creature can get them to the village. It knows the way through it the village. It wants, it wants to return why home. Would, why would, oh, so it wants to go there. So this this thing shows up, who happens to be from that place, and it will conveniently take them there, and it can communicate with them in a way that it will show them. Yeah, so, yeah. so rags, okay. we made a mistake. We mistakenly thought he was called Morris. His name Watch is actually MacGuffin. His name is MacGuffin. Oh, yeah. oh I see. Name. I see what convenient, you mean. Is, convenient plot device. He is, he, is, he is very much a MacGuffin. Um, and also, do, do we mention that um, that Trevor um, thought that he, wait, it was, he was tight? Like, that he, he, was, he didn't think it was real. He thought Morris was in his head. Because, yeah, I like, mentioned that when he shows up. Because yeah, yeah, everyone's exactly. like, what's this thing? And he's like, oh, I thought it, only I could see it. I thought it was going yeah. crazy. Oh, and then, so, to yeah, be like, fair, if I saw something like that, I would, that's, uh, I would assume that it was a horrific hallucination. Um, I guess you could assume that, but it keeps coming back. And it, like, you can interact like with it. Like hallucinations? Yeah, I mean, well, if you yeah, can physically touch, touch it, it, then it's like, ah, oh, it's probably real. 
Well, I maybe it. it's oh yeah, I guess at that point. I would I would ask other people if they could see it as well. And if they said that, I'd be like, okay, so this actually makes the world even more confusing. But all right. So um just because we're ultra nitpicky and people always correct me on it as well, technically a MacGuffin has a more strict definition. I was gonna uh, mention that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, technically, yeah, this is just a plot device. Um, uh, but even though I will uh, acknowledge that the term MacGuffin is being changed in just common language to mean plot device these yep. days. Uh, yeah. I, I should also say as well, now, this is all great. They found Morris um, and he can show them the way through the, the bullshit forest show to the fairy tale land. But they're still trapped deep in, in yeah, when what are they Blair. Do? Rags, how, how are they, are they going Tell to us. escape, Rags? They... Oh, does do the, does one of the, oh does it transform into a massive creature and they ride it to safety? Nope. Nah. <laughs> that, that, no. I still would have thought that would have been better than what. That, that, I think that's better happens. than what happens. <laughs> oh, well, that's not. Um, oh, does <laughs> one of them discover a question. secret superpower that they just use? I mean, you're not far off, really. Honestly, I was gonna say like, <laughs> I don't know how to direct you toward it, right? But you, you will be surprised because it's dare I say it's just so simple. Oh, do they just run? I mean, that's half of it, but how do they have the Do they run of... really fast? How are they able to <laughs> simply run away? Oh, um... Um... Does it, like, um... How are they able to run away? Like does a... it, like, guide them? Well, so what I'm suggesting is, like, if they have a guide, and they're able to run away as in their legs work and stuff, but there's walls, what are they? What, what can they do? Oh, do they like burn the trees or something? No, I mean no, the walls no, they're, still trapped. Tower? they're still trapped they're in, in the, the basement. Yeah. Oh, do they climb the trees? Oh, in they're the prison. In the oh, prison. sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm thinking <laughs> trees. I don't know. I'm thinking trees. I got trees on the brain. Um, uh, they. Oh, do they start singing weird songs and then the guards come in to check <laughs> to see what's weird no, about that, them? Why, why are they doing that? No, that makes uh, more sense. Less sense. Less sense. Less sense. Dumber. Oh, uh, they they simply believe that they can <laughs> break out of their bonds, and then it happens through the power of belief. That's good enough, I think. He's yeah, got it's it. pretty close. Yeah, the the Is sister it? just breaks a wall down right behind them, yeah, and sure. like she's like, "Oh yeah, we we used yeah. to play in the tunnels around here. There's lots of hidden tunnels that our father doesn't know about, and I just broke yeah. through one." And Let's then she go. says, I, I used them it? to escape last time. This is so I already knew about the tunnels underground. And wait, how does she break dad. it with explosives? If it no, no, she just kicks like the wall down and it, it, it just falls apart. It. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. What do you mean kicks with her like foot? Kick. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like the, the wall. walls made of paper mache. It's like it's, it's, like it's no stronger. Is this a pinata fortress? together. Well, if you remember, she's pretty strong, you know, as well as her foot being really strong. What's so hard about that? So that means that so that means anybody could kick it down if she could, right? I mean, it's so weak that, like, it's like if Trevor had leaned on that section of wall at some point, it probably would have just given way. Yep. And so that's that. Um, obviously, you might be thinking to yourself, right? It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. There's going to be cameras and guards, right? Like, well, well yes. Yeah, surely. Yes it's to cameras. surrounded by guards. Pretty much no to guards unless alerted by the cameras. What's the point of the cameras? cameras? Well, see, the point of the cameras is to be something they notice way too late. They're like... Oh, wait, they're escaping. Yeah, but, ah. you, well, you know that because they won't be there anymore. Um, well, they get an action scene out of it. They attack their car as they're driving away. They got a car? Yeah, they, they go to the... They go, into they, the, they go into the garage yeah. and they steal Razor Fist's car, which yeah. is... How could they steal it? Do they need... Don't they need, like, keys and stuff? I think there's... The, is the keys just keyboard. in it? I don't remember. <laughs> okay. No, I think there's, like... Is, is it not because, like, they're valet parkers and so they know that the keys are all kept in, like, a... A big, like, key uh, thing. Yeah, yeah, an office or whatever. Oh, they use their special valet powers to know where the keys yeah. are. There you go. Set up a payoff. Yeah. It would be super valet genius. if Razor Fist kept <laughs> keys, like, in his pocket or in his bedroom or any place other than right next to the cars that they could just get into that nobody guards. And the best part is, like, he looks at the camera, it's like, they're stealing my car. Um, they're cameras. What? <laughs> By the way, how do you even a drive a car, Razor Fist, when you've only got one arm? When you have one arm, yeah. You could drive a car with one arm. They are. I just, I just change gear. You could do that. You can do that with one arm. 
I mean, you could, but well, like, you'd what preferably. You it wouldn't be preferable, but you bet your ass you could do it, especially if your life depended on it, or if it was really yeah, important. You should. I was gonna say even either arm, you'd probably be able to do it. It's gonna be rough, but um, there's one arm. It, like depending on which side the the wheel in the driver's seat is, you're gonna want one of the. You prefer that uh, the gear and wheel arm are the same arm, right? As in, do you know what I'm trying to say? I'm trying to fucking account. Like the, you'd want it on the it's, same it's side. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Your stick's gonna be in the center, so you kind of want it's your arm to be on that side. It's, it's doable, but it's wait, more difficult. but the, but his so his his razor fist is on his right arm, and this is a car that is the the driver's side is on the left hand side. You could do it either way. You could do it. If it's you just have really one annoying. arm, you can drive it. I mean, that it would be, be a, very that'd be a rough way to drive. That would yeah. be. It would make it a lot easier you for him. Well, in fairness, if, if his, if you know his arm was like an actual arm, it's, it's probably custom made the car to account for his lack of a second arm. Maybe yeah. it is. Yeah, it has probably, a almost side. certainly. Yeah, yeah, yeah um, probably. A fair inference. There you go, Shang Chi. That's great. You did it. Uh, something I wanted to bring up was the they described the plan before enacting all of this, as we've been describing it. And um, they ask about the whole going through the forest thing, considering the forest can kill everybody if they don't do this right. And they go, what is the ch like likelihood of this all being something you understand for sure is going to work? And the little monstery thing is translated by Ben Kingsley. And he says 90%. And then they go, wait, oh, 90%? That's great. Yeah, let's do it. And then he goes, no, 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 19%. And then Marvel's Katie says, I've done dumber things with worse odds. Like, uh -huh. let's do it. It's like, I'm sorry, I'm not agreeing to a plan that's 19% likely to work. It's no great. This mythical, well, this mythical Chinese monster has got a grasp of modern mathematics and it can <laughs> calculate percentages. Like, okay. also, just I, I, can, I yeah, too, I guess. oh, the a Asians are good at numbers. That's not mm. fair. Just want to point out how astronomically convenient it is that this monster just rocks up and knows exactly, he, he knows how to get into the forest. The thing that the dad has been searching for for 10 years with difficulty, yep. they is like, oh, we need to get there. Luckily, oh, here's a monster and gives you everything well, you need right there. No and, any well, effort at all. And when his dad said, like, you can only go in one day per year, then the monster basically says, nah, that's bullshit. You can go in wherever <laughs> you want. Yep. <laughs> you just Why did you establish know? that then? <laughs> You just need to know the pattern or something, and luckily they have the creature that will show them the way. It, it's, it's just literally uh, insanely it, convenient. It's because um, the script needs them to get there a day or so before him, so that they can have yeah. their really yeah. slow scenes once they're there. Yep. Uh, and the fact that the, this creature, who has all this knowledge, has been sitting in the very compound the whole time, right under the dad's nose, and he never tried well, to get any information from it. It's like <laughs> uh, it's like TLJ, where they get trapped in the thing, and then they meet someone who's just the perfect person they could ever meet for everything they need. It's like, oh, this is good <laughs> writing, guys. They learn so much. That's good. That's good. Um... So yeah, the, the they drive out, they escape, and then I think we just see them waiting for a while until they're like the time is right. And I think they try and make a joke out of that as well. He's like, it could be. Well, well this is this is where the monkey joke comes up as well. In Very the waiting. Um. Yeah, and and then I think they're like, it could be ages that we wait till, and then they start talking about other things, and then he goes, oh, go now. Like, <laughs> and it's like, oh, and there's. I remember being so distracted because um at one point. I think the, the the forest is closing up on them to the point where it's like easily about to kill them. And I think Ben Kingsley is like, you should speed up. And it's like, man, you sound real worried about... <laughs> I guess the... Because like, the point of his character is he's like constantly aloof. I guess. And okay. like, the lot of them are dealing with the situation where they're all about to die. Like, they're inches away from it, and they're all just kind of like, hmm. It's uh, close. Hopefully we can make this through, hmm. Quite a consistent with the character so far. I mean, like even when they guns are pointing at him, he wasn't freaky. I was like, oh, oh yes, well, I could do this instead. Or and you know, um, he has a very placid kind of that's uh, what I'm saying nonchalant props, reaction. Yeah. Props to the fact that that's how he's always. I just wonder why. This, this mm. is the thing they give him so much screen time in this for someone who is yeah. like not meaningless. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's like just he's, a nod. Yeah. He's only here to facilitate the other character's ability to move through the story. Like he has no other. The show does the, the film doesn't care about him. It's just like he's just yeah. There. I he does nothing at the end. Basically, is like um is there. They show it you know, and and there's no payoff, no no arc for him or anything. It's just a non-character really. That's just a plot device. You're right. Are um, they taking this car to the forest? Yes. So they can just. It's a place you can just drive to. Well. Yes, and the interesting thing about it, really, is like, as I think Drinker mentioned, there's no other way you're going to get through that forest 
like it it's like car only <laughs> pretty much like the speed at which the trees open and close yeah, yeah and the, uh, the yeah. spacing they, of it and the speed like in. i can't think of any other sort of typical vehicle or transport or any kind Unless of thing you have like a really fast horse maybe yeah <laughs> maybe? yeah no this car but, is yeah. going like 40 50 it's miles an hour yeah. easily no horse yeah, is going to get true. you that speed um uh, yeah, also so this is this is where uh, you know one of the so what's the point of it having asks, the opening Good the push. opening well this well, is like if you use it at the right time you know but but like, like what... the, the the people on the other side don't want anyone to come through and well so... i don't know that they, do they control the forest i don't know that they do like they i don't think they do. i thought they did i thought they made it oh like, to prevent people i i just thought the forest was its own thing <laughs> it's, it's just, it's... oh it's oh is it not like is there not like a dragon in the forest i thought there was because the guardian yeah. lady was there and she got the dragon power i thought the dragon yeah. lived in the forest somewhere no the... Neither. the dragon lives in the other dimension with the village but gives them all their powers still oh the village supposedly... is in a different dimension yeah, it's in yeah. a different Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand. Okay. <laughs> no, none, <laughs> no, of none of us do either. Understand. Been... So, to, to, yeah, so basically there's this... The forest moves and it just does that. And then once you follow the path that opens up, that takes you to, like, a portal that you drive through and then you're in the village where the lady came from and, and where all the mystical animals and stuff live. And ironically, there's another portal sense. on the other side of that village that leads That's you to right. a different dimension. Yep. Is that ironic? Uh, no, <laughs> no, it's no. We get the rag that, story. Just the it's just, a, yeah. it's just a freaky Remember. fact of the world. Right, so <laughs> it's, I it's actually like... don't. No, I don't mind the fact that the village is in another dimension. It's actually consistent with the world building of Doctor Strange that there are other dimensions and stuff, um, and that I, I kind of like that there could be natural doorways between the dimensions, and there might be some dimensions that have no doorway to Earth, but you could get to them through other openings into other dimensions that then lead to them. I think that were, all worked all right. I like that type of world. I feel like if you think about fine. it for a lot longer, it just what the so this group of people are just this. The generationally, these people just live in this other dimension that's in a tiny pocket. Well, no, th this other dimension where the village is is an entire world. It's like a whole other planet with their own civilization. Do they say that? Yeah, yeah, she actually oh, yeah. claims that they have got more advanced civilization and cities and culture than anything in our universe. That's literally her so, choice of words, but they choose to live this, in like a medieval village. This just opens up a huge amount of things. Like, do they not care about Earth then? Not no. well. Are there not any really, in but but they don't they the don't want over? the bad things to get to Earth, but they're still that... more concerned about protecting themselves. Like, um, I I feel like this you you can't just say like oh there's this dimension that's filled with an entire civilization that just operates independently of Earth but is connected to Earth. I feel like you gotta hang on. No, no, that's established in Doctor Strange. Like um, the ancient one says that there are. Other worlds well, with okay, people well, sure, uh, populating uh, them and stuff. Sure, but but the difference is here is like so there is a portal that can connect you to Earth, and apparently you're more advanced, and you just don't care to go out there. Oh, yeah, like that, that side of nobody. the stuff, yeah, the, yeah, that side of stuff is all d really badly done. As in, you know, why are they not using this advanced technology they supposedly have, and they're living in primitive states? And all, all that's bullcrap. Also. I just liked uh, the execution of the fact that they are using the additional dimension kind of aspect of the multiverse and, that supposedly exists. But I would also like to ask, like, obviously one of their, their key goals is to prevent humans coming through this portal to their realm and fucking with things there. That sounds so, like an easy thing to do if that's yeah, just a well, job. You could just bury the portal wall. under a mountain yes. or, or, or yes. have, like, well, yeah. all kinds of troops and, and, and resources allocated to guarding it at all times. So the moment something comes through, you can take care of it. But no, they just leave it. You so can I go right go, through, nobody's watching it. I want to go further with the criticism of this, because, like, I, f I feel like it's a very surface-level praise that it's like, oh, it's another dimension. They had dimensions in Doctor Strange. It's like, they don't execute this well at all. If we're supposed to believe... This is a whole other like is it like a mirror of earth but on a different timeline or something or just they're all because i don't know what the species of people here are i'm assuming they're human um but they, well, yeah, like, like and uh, their primary the concern which we're pretty much at this point in the story so it's fine for rags to know their primary concern is preventing this gate from opening that's covered with like stone and magical oh, well, stuff. Well, hang on, because if we're going to mention that, I think we need to 
give it a, a, a decent more uh, acknowledgement because to me this is like we they finally get to their alternate dimension where this village is and a whole new plot is revealed that is uh, only slightly intertwined with the story of the mother and things and it, it shifts the entire I guess structure of the film at this point and uh, I found that a pretty significant like well, you okay. know, change of pace to keep I mean we've mentioned it a couple of times I'm trying to make it as simple as possible their goal is to prevent as you guys imagine any humans from not only coming through but fucking with in any way something they have and like yes. if that is which by the way is fair when we find out what it means that their whole world should be concerned about that they should not only have yeah, this thing blocked up but they should have way better defenses here than what they yeah, have Where's oh, the yeah. The Especially if they're more advanced actually, than us. Where's they should the military? Have, yeah. yeah, they need to have a bunch of, like, really... Like, not technically Amazons, but, like, big, burly women well, who have, like, spears and swords and bows, and they have, like... Well, it, it's by a cliff, right? They're gonna build this facility, and it's, like, big in stone, oh, oh. and they're always, like, looking at it, and they always got arrows pointed at it, oh, and then yeah. if anyone ever comes through the portal, they yeah. blow it up. They drown themselves. Yeah, snap yeah. them straight away. <laughs> Just but to show also, how serious they from, are. From their perspective, what Drinker was saying, they have no reason to actually allow the portal to stay open. They don't need anything from Earth. They don't want to send anything to Earth. So literally, just cave in the well, portal. It's going through a cave. I, 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 just bury it. I will it. say, as well, though, like, I'm not sure, because if there's a portal to another dimension, and that's just the thing that exists in the universe, why would that also entail a magical forest that opens and closes to act to allow you to access the portal? Yeah, we, like, why, what, what why is this None, of, yeah, yeah, none of this yeah. is explained. Yeah, it, it's not explained. My understanding or assumption was is that the village people use their dragon oh, the band. to to yeah. make the yeah the, to make the forest to protect the I can door believe on they're the other from side. another dimension, to be fair. Well so yeah, but I I, I guess when it comes to this I don't know how much it's worth for this film to be like, oh, there are other dimensions that was mentioned in another movie, but like everything to do with how they explain it and execute it is terrible. Crap. It's it's all <laughs> just stuff that's thrown in at the last minute with no yeah. real build up, no significance, nothing. Yeah. And it's just you but, cannot buy into it. Like Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 I totally agree with that. Another... Yeah. Yeah. My only point like, was that I had no issue with the village being in another dimension because that is pre-established world building. I was like, yeah, that makes sense. It all fits. Um, um, but I, I guess, totally agree. I, the execution is very poor. Well, I, I think when it comes to the whole thing of like different dimensions, that was established, but I don't know that what that meant in Doctor Strange is what it means here, that there's like another dimension that has human beings and, and Earth and like mystical creatures that has a direct pathway that you can like walk through. And that whatever happens in this dimension can just spill over into ours. And it feels like more of this incredibly Earth-centric shit that I really don't like in the MCU. Everything is about Earth. Everything happens on Earth. It's, it's all humans yeah, and everything, everything happens everything on Earth. Everything is really important and all the most important things ever are on Earth and human beings are awesome and amazing. Like, it, it feels yeah, we got three incredibly, of like, geocentric. Well, well I, mean, I mean... Yeah, there were three of them at the same the time. Thing is, though, Threats from other dimensions that can spill into Earth, uh, that has happened already, again, in Doctor Strange with Damamu from well, the Dark Dimension. And I'm so, assuming it, like, means literally spill. Like, if they spilled a cup of water, yeah. it would end up in Earth. Uh, as, well, as in, like, a dragon could just be like, I feel like going through... I mean, Morris, he went through the portal. He just went oh, through it. Like, oh, see, again, through it. I, like, I actually like that at least they said the mystical creatures come from this other dimension. That's where they're located. Because if they tried to say that there's just dragons on in Earth in its past and uh, they're just hanging yeah, around, that would, be that, for sure. that would be like, what? Because, you know, how did that affect the history, the MCU and all that stuff? So I like that they tried to contain the mystical creatures and stuff in a whole other dimension and only occasionally could one or two ever slip through and end up in our world. But I, I also... And uh, that did obviously affect Chinese culture in the MCU because they're explaining that a lot of the, you know, traditional Chinese mystical creatures actually come from this dimension because they have the multi-tailed foxes. And so they actually have other creatures from Chinese folklore being shown in this other world. I guess that's, that's, that's almost like, I feel like that's kind of the issue, right? Is that if you have these based on creatures that actually exist, it's like, so the mythology is based on something real, which means enough people have seen these things like novel idea that they yeah that that it's just accepted of like oh this morris like four-winged faceless wombat like that's just a thing that's known to, or not known to exist but enough 
people saw it, that it was documented, and people have a clear understanding of what it looks like. That means that this uh, this mystical forest society, they have some level of influence over human history, and it, it just it, starts uh, to make me wonder, huge. like... I, I mean, if it influences I, I, the culture I, I, of the most I, I, populous I, I, country I, I, on Earth... This side of stuff, like, yeah. This side of stuff I'm I'm perfectly fine with. I think it mirrors other kind of mythologies and things like um, with uh, Norse mythology where elves come from another place. They come from Elfheim. They don't come from yeah, Earth. So they come I'm... from another dimension, essentially. Um, and so I kind of like that there was the that type of thing. I agree that their execution, though, for the people that they come from and how their civilization was established and what they're doing to protect the barrier between their world and our world is a complete mess. That's horribly done. Um but just this, ve like, base level world building that, you know, the village is in another dimension and that's where the creatures come from. I was like, yeah, I, I like that. Um, I guess, I guess the thing is, is that I don't, I don't think. I guess I've seen that 78 times now. I just don't care. We have seen it a lot. Mm. That, that tends to be yeah. a, a common thing. I guess I just, I don't know how much it's worth when everything that supports it is just horrendous. Like, I guess that's, uh, that's, that's well, kind of my feeling on it. I guess it could have been done so much worse uh, that, you know, where Man, there were magic sure creatures everywhere. <laughs> well, no, they, they, could have, they could have had the village always being on Earth and then, okay, yeah. where, was the magic, where was the people? Why, where are all these creatures coming from? If there's the vast amount of magical creatures on Earth in history, where were they? Why aren't they represented more in the but past? I mean, and affecting, here's a question, you know, though. If, if, if we have, like, the mythology, like Chinese mythology being... In, in the MCU based off of things that actually exist that come from different dimensions. Is this something that Doctor Strange or like sorcerers in general, do they not give a shit? Like, well, are they aware that's of this? Kind of implied that they are somewhat aware of it with Wong coming in and saying hi. I, I guess that's the question then, right? Is like, yeah. surely there should be resources dedicated to keeping well, an eye true. on all this stuff. That's true. Like, like, if, if, Doc, like if there is a world, if, yeah. If there is a universe-ending entity on the other side of this portal that's locked behind a door, uh, yeah, that might be something <clears> that the uh, mystical people would yeah. uh, be concerned about. Doctor Strange. I, I guess it's, it's, it's called, it's called like people of mysticism. Right. Yeah, but I, be racist against the magic people. But um, magic. Uh, we, magic sorry. we talk about this society in the forest, though, because holy crap! Like what? <laughs> So, like the dragon well, well, scale, which is yeah, like, yeah. Let, let's oh, let's go there because they get through the forest, but this is where the the friend gets to shine. She like gets to justify her arc. Remember how she was a really crazy driver at the beginning? Well, who's going to drive them through the forest where they? It's going to take extra like. This is where I'm not sold on because the level of skill it would truly require to know, oh, you're told to turn right here with no cue in in what's in front of you and you have to turn at the exact right amount of degrees. Otherwise, you're going to run into trees and stuff like that. And it's all- Plus driving on based. dirt. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness. Like, remember yeah, how in like, actually, um, remember how in, in what's that movie with uh, Lightning McQueen? Uh, Cars? Uh, that's like a whole plot point is that, oh, you're not used to reaching on dirt city boy. <laughs> Are yeah. you goddamn zoomers? And, and so it, that was like a big thing. It, it's all like you say, Shad, it's always really like vague, just um, sort of instructions, you know, turn right. It's like, okay, yeah. do you mean like 45 degrees? Like hard, exactly. right? Yeah. Like do I veer right? Like, can you tell me a bit more? What speed should I be going to get through, you know, like what exact speed, slow down, speed up, like. Fuck yeah, it's just like she always just knows the exact turn to make at the exact time. Yeah, and if you screw it up even a little bit, you're dead. Like you're all dead. You get gobbled by the trees. But that she got her arc. She, she like she's if she wasn't here. If she didn't insist to be brought with Shang Chi, they would not have been able to get to the forest. Right? Well, yeah, it's not and just it's not this, though, is time. it? Not the last time she saved the day. Well, I was going to yeah. say, like, she completes. Oh, don't get me started. Oh, she completes her car I... arc, and she's going to start a new arc. <laughs> oh, great! Oh, yeah, I hope I she have... doesn't. I hope I she doesn't saved... learn a, a really difficult skill in the space of like a few hours. <laughs> I, I have personal issues with that. That just piss me off. I can't stand it. Anyway, we'll get there. Yeah, um, well, they arrive, and, um, well, does anyone want to explain? They have a back and forth, but I can't remember what they say. Well, I think I, there's at I one point remember. these, they, so they encounter this group of, 
like villagers who are living in basically medieval circumstances. It's just a little village on the shores of a lake. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of them actually tells them to get back in their car and go home. And I kept thinking, how the fuck do you even know what a car is? Like, you've never seen one before. <laughs> but nah, never mind. Yeah. And then Michelle Yu comes forward, is it? And Why do they speak English? Yeah, they speak English. She explains to them oh, that she's cool. uh, their auntie. Because she was like yep. the sister of their mother. Um, and yeah, she kind of recontextualizes what had happened. Because uh, they wouldn't they wouldn't allow her mother and uh, and Wen Wu to stay in the village because he was evil or something. So they left because of that. And she explains that on the other side of the lake, there's a big giant doorway that's protected by dragon scales for some reason. And inside it is an entity that could end all life in the universe because it sucks oh, your soul out. Oh, fuck me. Wow. Yeah. Who, who would have thought? There's this they, new they... bad guy. that it's, the, it's a creature that can destroy everything. This ultimate evil thing. And so they, they sealed it away in. after a huge battle that almost destroyed their whole universe. And it's just been locked behind this door ever since. So they exist to protect that doorway and make sure that no one messes with it. And that thing... That evil entity that sucks out your soul. Mama. That's the thing that's been talking to Wen Wu the whole time. And yeah. so it's it's trying to convince him to come along with his ten rings and let it out. Yep. But for some reason it hasn't so it tried to get, get anyone itself, else right? to do anything about it. It's just him with his Yeah, what about the Nazis? No, 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 what? Just hang on, hang on. It, she does Why didn't it talk to it? Hitler? So the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the aunt says that it's tried to get other people to free it before and they've come through into their world and they've stopped them. But now it's really... Oh, I, I, <laughs> I don't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> I refuse. The, like, you if it got into the head of like Iron Man, they'd be fucked. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and so now it's after Wen Wu because it thinks he has the power when he could have literally spoken to anyone, but maybe it's because it's, he it can manipulate the, um, the mother aspect, but again, this raises so many questions. What what capacity does this creature have to be able to look into another dimension, specifically Earth, yeah. to be able to get enough context mm. to learn that oh, he wants the, his wife, dead wife back? I can then speak <laughs> to him across the dimension. Like, what is this thing's powers and capacity? It's just what like I just. Uh. It probably would have been better off trying like to corrupt that. some of the villagers. Yeah, and why get not them corrupt really the people safe. in the village? Fuck it. They're they're literally like half a mile away from it. That'd be really <laughs> easy for them. I just like the idea that he's like, "Hey, hey, come free me, do it. Let me out. Let me out. This is <laughs> yeah. not a dance. I'm, 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 like, I'm actually a really hot them. lady. You you want to meet a hot lady, mm -hmm. don't you? Come come come, open up. Come on up. You hey, know, like... your sister. Get me out of here. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I just there's so many things I don't get here. Like they they've got an entire universe here and a, a huge super advanced civilization, but all you get to see of it is this little tiny village. Um they they end up basically fighting a battle for the fate of their universe. If this thing escapes and and wreaks havoc, it's going to destroy all life. But they did, they don't they, they don't it. radio for backup or anything. Nobody else comes yeah. to help them out. It's it's just the, the saddest like little the tomorrow war. What re <laughs> the, yeah, kind of the resources that are dedicated to protecting the world from this massive threat is a little village of maybe a hundred people. Maybe Stuck in an maybe era that is far behind yeah. what they need and, to be. Hey, but look, they have but, dragon scale weapons and those can those well, are really good. Yeah, so, so put confusing. those dragon scales into a bullet. That you can load into and guns, then and then you, yeah. you're, the Chinese you're invented gunpowder. If this is like a Chinese land, then they should have those, right? I don't know that this they are the Chinese. Thing. They're in Dimension Two, so I don't know. Oh, they, okay. I thought it was like aunt, a Chinese dimension. <laughs> but the aunt, she shows them like these carvings on the wall of their civilization, and they have mega insane super cities with skyscrapers that are just hot, huge, right? They're showing like this super advanced civilization, implying that their tech level should be crazy. Where is their laser guns and stuff? They were their flying machines, and then they're living in like medieval technology in a village and i think that i i'm not sure if it was stated because i'm so confused exactly how it was but maybe the battle that their whole civilization had against this evil entity that sucks out souls and yes rags that literally sucks out souls mm -hmm. okay oh my goodness um, gracious the souls are canon yeah, yeah. in the mcu now yeah, yeah uh, oh my um, goodness 
Well, you had the and, salt uh, stone, right? Or was yeah, that more yeah, metaphorical? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah mm. okay. And so, and uh, that the Maybe battle with music. this creature destroyed their civilization. That's the only context that might try to explain it. But I mean, they, that's they, they, they shady. They're not, yeah, exactly. They're not clear on it at all, um, that they lost all their technology in the battle or anything like that. They don't say it. They just say, actually, in fact, they say more explicitly, that our, we have a huge civilization that's still alive. That was the context that was coming across. And we're yes. way more advanced than anything you guys have in your world. Yeah, because the, the to explain this battle, like their most powerful weapons and their most advanced technology wasn't able to stop this, this soul dragon thing. Um, it wasn't until the Guardian, that they call it, which is just basically another dragon that lives in the lake, decided to show up and help them, that that was able to drive it back. So yeah, because that's right. Because in the actual fight, when so there's this really, really big bad creature, and it sends out little lackey kind are we, of are we jumping bat about? things. Well, well, this is the context because you find out that regular weapons just pass through them, and the only way that they're able to actually damage these things is with the scales of the dragon. For some reason, it's the scales of the dragon yeah. the only thing that can actually hurt these things. Um, yeah. And because dragon, fire scales. dragon scales, does he give them? Is there a dragon and he just gives it to him? Like when he grows them, he can like lift him up like Draco can. Doesn't, and doesn't tell you. Part or I think. Well, she's does she say that the um the ancient protector dragon, who we do see at one point, is the one that provides them the scales. I think so. That's the. I mean, that's I where guess, I yeah, they must come from. But maybe dragon, it sheds them periodically. Yeah, dragon exactly. scales in this. Are does that mean that? So mm. that can so they can only kill the dragon if they like go up in his butthole or something. Yes. Well, we'll kind mm. of yeah. <laughs> um, the dragon scales are essentially just another vibranium. Like it's the only okay. fucking reason. Yeah. It's just a magical yeah, material that'll let them do a lot of stuff. Powerful. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Um, and also, this is a kind of uh, we don't want to skip over the thing where when they get there, they mention that you know their dad has been hearing voices of their mother trapped behind a wall. And then the answer is basically saying, did he start to hear them when he put the rings on? And they're like, yes. It's like, let me explain. And her explanation is when she talks about the evil creature and she doesn't give the reason how the evil creature is connected to the rings in any, that nothing is completely ignored. We are and not told how, yeah, yeah. there's no again, reason. If it's, if it's the capacity <laughs> for power, there was no reason that they couldn't have done it before he put on the rings. Exactly. Yeah, you why know, would like, the rings allow it on to... You know, like, fuck, yeah. Can you only have no one ring? Given. <laughs> like, can ten people have each have a ring and they could each hear the voice? Or I would think, it be I at a think ten... so. I think so. But the thing is, because the creature had talked to other people to try and help free it, that establishes that the creature can talk to anyone. It doesn't need the rings to talk yes. to it, people. And so, it's a complete... It's just... They hang a carrot and they don't answer it. They just, it's like, hope you ignore it without explaining anything. And then they go on to the big explanation of this is the evil dimension destroying creature that destroyed our, or so we fought it off or we couldn't fight it off. And then the dragon helped save us. And now this is the situation. The dad wants to come and uh, free the creature behind the door because he thinks the mother is the one behind the door and not the creature. And they have to prepare for battle because they are about to be invaded by the dad. That's the context of now, the you... final fight. You might think that it would definitely be a good idea to guard the portal now because mm. the dad's going to come through. <laughs> mm. Nah. Can they close the portal? Can they shut it down for a while? Can just, they halt just, immigration? Just hang at the village and just wait for him to show up, I guess. You'd, well, yeah, you'd think that there's plenty of ways they could do something, but they don't try anything at all. Um, just anything at all? Just like anything. Any effort <laughs> Literally, I put up a sign saying no. Like... <laughs> no. Stop no, here. No, no. Go away. Um... Leave so yeah, the, that's all the stakes are set, as, as Shaz just said. So now what are our heroes going to do? Well, Rags, they're going to train, because they've got to get ready for fights to come. And you might be thinking what to yourself, like, well... They, you, I well, guess... as long as they train themselves, they should be okay. Exactly, yeah. But what's Marvel's Katie going to do? Like, she, you know... Montage. Well, you see, she's like, you know what? I want to make myself useful here. So she sees somebody struggling with some stuff, and helps with it, whatever it may be. And then... Told well, to go no, to it was a, a bundle. Yeah, I, I was I'm a leaving a vague on purpose. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. Oh, that, oh, sorry. She's helping with some stuff, and she's like pulled away, like, oh, you know, you need to deliver this stuff over here. And she's like, oh, yeah, okay, I guess I'll just help. Turns out she's directed to like an, an archery training area. She's holding all, all materials like bows and arrows and stuff. And it's like, hey, 
why not become an archer? You know? But like an art that so that of all the things, if you have a very limited time to learn something, I imagine that archery is not gonna be high on your list of things you need to be practicing. This I disagree. Exactly. This I is think why... that archery oh. is something you can pick up in a second or so. If oh you, shut up! You have the, I am I've shut seen loads that. of archery. Uh, I I don't believe that it's really anything to it. You just put the stick with the thing and pull. Although like, I've watched Robin board. Hood, Prince of Thieves. Yeah. Like I don't know. You can take exactly. this away. I played That's true. Watch. When I All right, I when played I as Hanzo. Yeah, when I escaped that uh, Imperial cart uh, that one time, I went into a cave, and this guy I was with, he gave me a bow and some arrows, and I crouched down, and I, I killed a, a, a whole bear with just some arrows on my first try. It was So I can believe that you could just you sort of... Like Christ of Three? Like, Look at that bow. You just pull it back, and you let it go, and well, then the, it kills the The Lego aliens. guy in Lord of uh, the Rings, he's good at it, and he well, seemed to be Lara easy. Croft, she, like, you know, shooting them arrows, yeah. Yeah. Aaron Lego wrong, Man Chad? from <laughs> What's wrong? purposely torturing me. It's not Chat me. is right. Chat's right. The, a bow is a stick-like weapon. Yes. Oh my goodness! I'm about it's to just have bent an and the ends are tied together. Well, I mean, Chad, I... what 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 is your problem with Katie learning how to like well, be an, we... an expert? The thing oh. is, I was about to say like, <laughs> Chad, well... you can't take issue with the idea that she picks it up and wants to maybe use it. That's fine. Yeah, it's like fine. maybe yeah. if she's like, you know, I want to learn. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to we'll have to get a little bit further before his aneurysm can be settled. Um, before it can be let loose, we have. Okay, bye. Uh, sister is learning how to use. I don't know what you call it, but it's like a a, a dagger on the end of like a, a it's big a long. It's scorpion. It's scorpion. It's scorpion's thing. weapon thing. Yeah. yeah. It seems like a wildly impractical weapon compared to what she it could does. have. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that yeah, seems like a really stupid well, it's, weapon. It's one of those it's weapons like, where yeah, if you, you use it, it, if you use it perfectly in every scenario, it's probably pretty good, I guess. And she's just in that you incredible. Mistake, because like, it, it seems like the kind of thing out. if you tried to use it in the middle of a battlefield, it would just get caught on things. You wouldn't yep. be able to like wind it up. Like yourself. Or... Yeah, yeah. Like you yeah. Have yourself. However, this is Shang Chi's sister we're talking about. Oh That's my true. goodness. Yeah. yeah. And she can throw anything. She's she the can... bestest ever. Yeah, she's sweet. like, uh, she's like Slipknot, but for throwing things. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes, exactly. She... We get I'm a little. So glad. The, we get a montage of her doing that, of 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 Marvel's Katie, like getting really good with a bow <laughs> for some reason. Yeah. And uh, and Shang Chi's learning how to how to. He literally says like, "How was my dad defeated originally?" And then the uh, Michelle Yeoh like. Does air bending and he's like, that's how. Yeah. And he's like, oh shit, okay. <laughs> so, could you give me a little bit more to work <laughs> with here? And he he kind of gets a little good at it, but then she still beats him, and it's like, yeah. ah, see, you're you're still he's you're, you're not your arc isn't complete yet. Okay, once your arc is complete, you'll be able to do with this and wield um, the wind. Yeah, and they just they show that Katie's just firing arrow after arrow, and you know those bullseyes they're starting to hit. <sighs> Oh, oh wow! Because yeah. you know, here's the yeah, thing: if you gave her a, um, if you gave her a rifle in 30 minutes, she would get relatively competent at it. I bet. They don't have rifles in this mystical forest. They only oh, have bone okay. arrow. I mean, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say as well: you, you kind of need a, a fair bit of upper body strength to wield a, a bow what? properly. Maybe it's no, a maybe don't. it's a little bow. No, maybe you don't. No, you don't. Girl bow. You don't need a lot. Those are made of wood. Do you know how light wood <laughs> is? I, I'm just I'm just thinking it would take a while to build that <laughs> no. kind of strength up. No, it doesn't. No, she's a driver, like, dude. Spru well, spruce wood yeah, is light. The lightest. <laughs> she's driven all kinds of things. She's can driven I, cars without power it? steering. <laughs> well, unfortunately, you, it's, it's like you got to wait for the for the real payoff for uh, <laughs> for Katie's. You know, yeah, is it abilities. a problem that she got lucky and got a few bullseyes, Shad? Wow. Okay, women can't shoot apparently. The, yeah, you could probably buy into like yeah, you know, if it come to desperation time in a battle, she might be able to hit a few targets. You know that are relatively nearby. You know, I should get lucky and slow. Yeah, Maybe, yeah. Uh, but the no, you know. on, on drinkers' note, okay. If these are proper combat war bow caliber, like like poundage bows, she no, I'm, she I wouldn't even be able to AI. pull the damn thing. But she wouldn't be able to draw it. She would be able to shoot crap with it. And like this part of the movie, as you can probably tell, is one of the parts that. Uh, 
personally offended me the most. And it's a wholly subjective thing because I am an archer. I shoot medieval longbow, war bow, 100 pound range. And I know how freaking difficult it is to train up to even be able to pull that thing back. And what, oh, I just pissed me off so much. And not only that, getting accurate with a difficult bow that you're struggling to, um, you know, control the poundage is really hard. We're talking months and months of training to even get a, a half decent grouping, right? And this, oh, I, just, I mean, mm. she's a valet. Yeah, right, right. What's the yeah, problem? that means I just, something. I just don't understand how you're confused. She's, she's, you know, when you're driving, like, your arms get a lot of work. So, and she's from San Francisco. People yeah, are, people are tough. She's been there. friends with them for ten years, Shad. <laughs> that, that plays into it. That uh, matters. That means something. <laughs> Because so, this is the thing, right? You can actually give someone uh, like who's never shot a bow in her life, and we, and you know, with all her, you know, uh, you know, skills in driving and valet skills and all that stuff, we're given no reason to ever even indicate she has had any experience in this type of, you know, field in archery. Archery uses a very different muscle set, and so when someone is and driving, first you, picking up, yeah, yeah, first picking up their first bow, right? Their poundage that you need to give them because they've never shot one before is like thirty I'll give pounds. Some poundage. <laughs> it's it's amazingly <laughs> weird. <laughs> they, they can shoot a, like a thirty pound bow if you've never picked one up before, and you'll not you won't be shooting anything powerful or far with it. And then after maybe a good week's training, you could get mildly mildly accurate shooting things in a vague same direction with a basic grouping, but you're not going to be hitting bullseye. Not a chance. Not a friggin' chance, right? And and so you could get, okay, mildly accurate with a week's training, but you'd be using such a pathetically weak bow, it would do spit against anything that has any measure of resistance or is any any range too far away because your range on a weak bow like that is also going to be pathetic. And so, so I just can't. You're saying to fix this, because we kind of like to play around with fixes and stuff, is that she should have said when holding the bow, man, this reminds me of all the years of training I've had with my bow. <laughs> and then, I yeah. shoot bow before. Yeah. What you um, could do is you could stress that there are ways to help that don't involve you, like, picking up weapons and participating in combat. Yeah, you could, like, run support and make sure that we have all of our yeah. equipment when we, Absolutely. when we run out of bows. Can you please go get some more bows for us? Tell you, man, let's just remember us worse. Wounded, can you help us take us over to shelter? Do you guys remember Matrix Revolutions with all the machines shooting? They have many important people rushing ammo refills to them. Remember that? Hey, yeah. yeah. Here's a reference. Battlefield, mm -hmm. there are people on Battlefields who aren't shooting. There are other people who The majority of the people on Battlefields effort. are not shooting. Well, I remember saving team Private effort. Ryan. Upham has to run around with yeah. Uh, the ammo for the heavy machine guns. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I met him. You did? Yeah. Well, you, the the hotel. Yeah. Neat. Oh, boy. Was yeah, he nice? I... He was. Was he too? He was super chill. He was in a black. Uh, Black Suburban, with just friends. He was a nice guy. Cool. Um, but at this point in the film, because I'm skip we just skipped over loads by summarizing it that way, which I like. It's like, there's just these scenes take a while of the whole training thing. They're just battling yeah. back and forth. But there are, there are lots of conversations, too. One of them is uh, Shang-Chi being like, hey, here's the real, real, real history. Okay, because well, they, they don't teach you this in school. Are you ready for this, Rags? Rags, well, get, get say, ready to have your mind now, blown. Now, is this the... the could, we've already started with rewriting history at the beginning of this movie, so, I mean, if we're going to do it again, I'm fucking down for it. Let's do it. I say, why stop at one? I was going to say, go ahead, Shadow, because I've already done, like, the other the other histories, you know, and you might remember better than I do, to be honest with you. Okay, so he sits down with his friend at one point, and I'm assuming this is the part, the conversation you wanted mm -hmm. to talk to me about. It's like, okay, he sits down with his friend, and he's like, okay, you know how my father sent me to to assassinate, um, you know, the person that killed my mum. Okay, well, okay. I did it. I killed her. I actually did assassinate him. Okay. Yep. And, and then... Good. Then he ran away. Then yeah. he ran away after it. Okay, so what does this change? What does this mean? Because I'm like, okay. Yeah. That's, 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 that was, when that I was, was an like, assassin, I, was, I assassinated Except this person really kind of had it coming. Well, so it, and that's it, the only person he assassinated uh, in context, from what I understand. As many other people pointed out, oh. it's like, 
Why wouldn't that be a scene we can watch? <laughs> mm. Like, and then see his reaction and see what made him decide, like, what have I become, and then leaves, or something like that. Maybe he accidentally killed someone innocent, you know? Or maybe just, like, he was incredibly vicious in doing it, like, to an excessive extent. Yeah, he enjoyed it too much, and that made him afraid yeah, of... Yeah, exactly, hey, exactly. There's, there's, you should enjoy what you do. We had. Well, so you, I, I mean, if that's the career you want to go down, but he, he, he don't want to do that, you know? He's a, he's a well, softie, that's what I mean. you we, don't want to... We don't get much of any of that stuff. We're sort of and just that's like... like the most mm. Not only part. that... In, in context, it seems like because he actually did go through with the assassination, it seems like he does not blame his father for getting him to... He actually was okay and agreed with his dad that this guy needed to die, and we're given no true feeling of regret for the action itself, the assassination itself. Like, he, he's, he's more afraid yeah, of how he... his friend will look to him. See, I'm really a killer. What do you think of me now? And What do you think he we're here to do? <laughs> it's well, like it feels like we uh we skipped a step in this story we we skipped from i actually followed through on the thing that my dad told me to to i ran away it's like well there is a there is a really important middle part here of that we need that we don't really get this is, this is the problem like with like, this movie the the yeah. it wastes so much time focusing mm -hmm. on inconsequential crap that it doesn't give the these big you know, mean, supposedly meaningful revelations enough time to get built up and have any impact. And so the yeah. reaction is exactly like what Rags described. You just hear it and you're like, meh, okay. So it hasn't been, has this been bothering you? Because that sound, <laughs> well, that, the person you killed sounded like a real dick. Well, this is the thing. He doesn't look like the actual act of killing bothered him. It's almost like he agreed with his dad that this guy needed to die. And at no point does he ever yeah. yell at his dad for forcing him to assassinate someone. It doesn't come up at all. And, to, and it makes the conflict between him and his dad really hard to try and pin down. What is, what is your main issue with your dad? You, you don't hate him for training you to be an assassin. You seem to actually appreciate the martial arts skills. Yeah, you if my dad really trained me him. as an assassin, I'd be like, it, that is kind of fucking cool. <laughs> imagine, if, imagine if that guy that he killed hadn't actually been responsible for his mother's death. Like I thought that's the angle they were going that down. Yeah, to get him so to do much it. better. And yes. then when so he discovers that his father lied to him, that's enough to break him. And then he, oh, yeah, and his dad he could be like, "End innocent lives. I'm a tool of my father." And the, and and the, dad, would, the yeah, dad could be like, so "I killed the guy who actually killed him ages ago. This is just more so you entering my world now." Like, or if you wanted to to make him a properly evil character, he could have been the one who killed the mother for whatever reason, and he framed these other guys and got Shang Chi to to kill them. Um, and turned him into a murderer at the same time. Like, you could do a, a dozen different things with this that would have been way more interesting and given you a much better conflict. But they didn't do anything. Totally any agree. Totally agree. Well, like as that's well. What if he be... killed them in front of their children? Yeah. I feel like they did the most basic one that they could have done. Like, this is the basic one, and then you start adding modifiers on top to make it more potent. Like, this was the first idea you had, and when you should have gone deeper than that. It's like they weren't really prepared to commit to making anyone bad yeah, uh, well, in this. That's exactly the problem with Marvel stuff. Yes. Which is funny, considering well, all of the evil things that these characters have been doing in the la the latest installments of this series. Yeah, but this... Oh, no, oh, oh, no he killed yeah, someone who Black deserved Widow. it. Oh, no. Unlike Black Widow... Not like Black Widow, who <laughs> killed a bunch of innocent guards and prisoners who still didn't deserve to die like this, probably. Just because she needed to get a fake dad out of prison. I feel like it's definitely if they've they're serving time. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Well, it's the whole idea of like you're in prison. You're not. You know. Like you should. You're allowed to live. You shouldn't die because this person needs to get her dad out of prison. But nah, um, Shang Chi killed one man who was a bad person, and <laughs> while yeah, he was a child, it's just under not really much... stressful circumstances. There's not much on him as a character. It's an, and, and to nope. be fair, all this stuff that's happening now, it's got really nothing to do with him. More so to do with the the idea, like he's being told what the situation is and what to do. So it's like, okay. Mm -hmm. um, which leads us to the, the beginning of the last day. Where the, the invasion begins, the dad's on his way, and they all start preparing. Uh, of course, 
He's been he's given invasion with like his. Does he have an army? Is it just his goons from the yakuza yeah, goons. or whatever? Yeah, his goons. So they're gonna take over the world with his gang guys. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> goons in like maybe four trucks. So I think there's about twenty of them in total. That's gonna invade a dimension. Yep. Yeah, I guess yeah, if you have the twin rings. This is against well, this is against medieval villagers who are armed with bows and arrows and swords, right? So you'd think oh, if these okay. guys came yeah. in with machine guns, with guns. and and yeah. You know, grenade launchers, that sort of thing. This battle would be over in seconds. Yeah, all right, nothing bulletproof. But it's sure lucky oh, that they came through with basically medieval what? weapons themselves. Wait, wait, wait! They had their magic shields, remember? And they tried to—they <laughs> had like an electric taser, weird taser kind of crossbow things that they tried yeah. to shoot, and their magical shields blocked it. So, like, I still think you know some automatic weapons and grenade launchers probably would have oh, done absolutely, the trick as well. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. I'm just getting um, a little excited now because we're getting close to some payoffs. Yeah, I'll wait for rags to find well, out. Well, about. well, okay. Could I derail things then? Just go back in time. <laughs> Not on briefly. this show. Uh, <laughs> um, what okay? He's training with his aunt, right? Did he gain any new capacity or abilities when he was training there with his aunt? I know he gets an, his own superhero outfit, or right? hey, they get their superhero outfit. Oh yeah, that's what oh yeah, yeah that's actually. right. They have suits that are perfectly fitting that are made out of dragon scales that fit them perfectly. Him and his and sister. So they're probably what like bulletproof. They're, they're, they're proof proof. Yeah, they're, they're right? really strong. They're yeah. very strong, like basically vibranium. Zhang Ji's basically even the got himself. Even the helmets that they wear. Oh, they don't have helmets. No, uh, <laughs> like, their heads are totally exposed. Oh well, the yeah. Most, you know, the most vulnerable part of you. He like, doesn't even the most important <laughs> part. Doesn't um if, Zhang Ji, yeah. does he have sleeves as well, or is that cut off? I can't remember. Oh, so, yeah, so this this, um, this was such an obvious sleeves. thing. His outfit, he has sleeves, but they cut off at the elbows, leaving his forearms exposed. Yay. Just like his yeah. dad. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, gee, I wonder who's going to get the rings later on in the film with explicitly exposed sleeves, yeah. just like his dad has. It's like, wow, that's so damn Which obvious. Stupid dark. when you have the option for extra armor on your fucking <laughs> yeah. forearms, but oh well. Give me that armor, baby. Do it. Uh, just to, just yeah. to back up, it is really funny that they have um, electric crossbows, is what they come in with. Like, the. Yeah. the, the it's why? Just, <laughs> like, it's all just. Like, it's the same exact things. They've got swords and clubs and medieval weapons, but they're electrified, so that's meant to make them futuristic. It's just why don't you have guns? <laughs> One this guy with one sense. gun. Fucking toss a grenade and they're all dead. <laughs> like... yeah. Or, you know what? Don't yeah. even get out of your trucks. Just run them over. <laughs> you yeah, how are you going to stop the truck? Just drive straight in and run them remember, over. Because, by the way, Rags, so, like, when it comes to weapons of choice, um, uh, Shong Chi's is, like, a stick. I, I don't know what That's exactly shit. that weapon is called. But it's just a stick with dragon stuff a, on the end. A bow oh, staff. But, but, but the stick can chop through things stuff, because yeah. of the dragon scale. They yeah. show they hit. Uh, they the hit dragon, like a yeah. They hit like trucks. Dragon scale. Yeah. Because you know, very Magic blunt stick. objects are really good at cutting through things. Basically, it's I mean, it's about as blunt as it can get. It's round. It is so. Oh. <laughs> it is circular. Maybe that's the idea it's that they want to use blunt force to get through the armor. You know. Well, guys. Yeah, yeah maybe. Maybe. Like sticks club. are exceptionally powerful. I don't know if you know about big stick energy and how incredible. Mm -hmm. Like sticks are big so stick energy. St sticks are incredibly powerful. They're one of my favorite weapons. So I don't think we can criticize the we're sticks. Not, too we're not much shitting on the stick, okay? Good, it's good, good, good. More okay. so the context. Um, okay. And and yeah, uh, unless there's anything else, the fight begins. We have the good old like shout and run from each side as they clash and it's epic. It's so good and um you get a bit of you know everybody's doing their fighty stuff and then rags because i i'm I be, i'm sure you've just been fucking chomping at the bit for when this is going to come back but michelle yo looks at evil dad villain and it's like oh man we could have a we could have a fight there and then the dad villain he looks off to the side and spots death dealer who jumps in and it's like i'ma fuck you up michelle yo and they go to start their fight and it cuts away oh, i'm so excited i'm oh <laughs> We don't, yeah, yeah. we don't actually see any of their fight really at all. <laughs> it's like, okay, uh, we'll come back to that, obviously, because that's pretty epic. Um, but it's, uh, it's Shang-Chi who's like, my dad, he's, he's, he's walking off. I better go stop him because literally everybody is distracted except for the one person who is trying to get to the one place. Is, that's happening. Everybody's goal is to prevent him from getting to the gate. 
And he's doing just that, because everybody just happens to be too busy to... They haven't even put one guy on the gate, by the way. <laughs> it's, hmm. it's incredible to me. So, yeah, just for context, Rags, the gate is on the other side of a really large lake, and it has this dedicated kind of outcropping platform of rock that extends a good space in front of it, almost like 50 meters. It's like mm -hmm. a 50 meter kind of rock platform right in front of this gate on the other side of the river. It's and the yeah, kind no of place you'd have there. a boss battle in a video game, basically. Mm. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, everybody's distracted from the one goal they have. And then, you know, Shang-Chi and his dad just get to have a chat. Because they're over there on their own. And I, I can't remember how the fucking talk goes. It's generic as fuck. It's like, y you shouldn't be doing this. And it's like, I gotta. It's, it's my wife. And it's like, no, it's not her. It's not her at all. And he's like, fuck you. And hits him. But it's not going to do as much now because he's got his dragon scale armor. That's cool. And, you know? And then they have, the, they have a big fight. And uh, it's, it's like, fine. Well, it yeah. falls flat for me because the dialogue exchange between the two just isn't justified in the narrative of the film that we saw previously. So the dad goes on this big whole thing that it's revealed he kind of blames his son for doing nothing because he stood by and watched his mother die when he was a kid who was untrained and no real power to do anything. But the dad, it turns out, the dad blames him for watching the mum die and doing no nothing to try and save her even though that would have got himself killed so that's revealed in this fight scene and it's just right, like yeah. well, that's that's a that's a bit of a lame kind of accusation and then he starts to accuse shang chi the son of being afraid of him and always being afraid and that's why he ran away and then i'm like hey that that's not shown at all in the whole rest of the film in the flashbacks shang chi is never shown to have any issues with fear yet the dad is doing this whole big thing you've always been afraid you're afraid of this and stuff and so this big dramatic kind of dialogue in the middle of the fight that's supposed to build dramatic tension is falling completely flat and I'm getting nothing out of it. And it just yep. sucks any dramatic payoff that this scene is supposed to have. And it was crap. It's basically like the writers don't know what the conflict is between these characters. And it's like they're just throwing in whatever comes into their head at any one time. That's why, like, yeah, like you said more, the dialogue just comes across as generic and bland because it doesn't really have any connection to these people for who yeah, they like, are. It, it's like, we have to have it, whatever it is. And, you know, to be fair, it made me, like, think for a little bit when it first he first said that, the whole, like, you didn't help your mum when she got killed. But it's like, man, do you think they came up with that while they were making this part of the film because they have no idea what the dad's angry at Shang-Chi for? So they're just like, make something up. I don't know. He was angry that he, he just watched her die. Because thinking about it, it's like, yeah, what the hell would he have done? <laughs> he was like... I mean, just was imagine like a little, if they, they had yeah. a bit of history, like, or, you know, imagine if they'd each lost something because of the other directly. Like, maybe the father had killed, um, you know, Shang-Chi's friend or his sister at some point in the story, and that was a genuine loss that he was enraged by. Um, and, you know... What if Shang Chi had had genuinely been old enough and been in a position to help their mother, but hadn't? You know, again, those are those would have been interesting questions then, but none of it's none of it's developed. It's just manufactured stuff to just give them something to say during a fight scene. Um, and the fight ends with we. This is where we start to really wonder what the hell's going on uh, plot armor wise. Which yeah, it's not going to beat out Black Widow, of course, uh, but still, no, we've got to mention it. Um. So the dad, like, uppercuts him, ready in place, like, he, he pushes him up and then puts all the rings back on and punches him so hard, straight in the chest, that he just flings back, like, we're talking really fast, right into the water mm -hmm. to the point where the, like, he's into the lake, and the water, like, erupts as though the a fucking flying. boulder has fling, yeah. flung into it. Like, yeah, he's like a meteorite going in. Okay. Now, as we know, even if you're wearing armor... That kind of force, <laughs> like it's, um, yeah, it's gonna. The, the, he's dead. Is the point I'm trying to make here? Uh, he's definitely hmm. dead. But you know, no, he's not. He's just knocked out and in the water. And it's, I guess we'll come back to him. Should we say that? Because he, uh, yeah, we'll get back. Yeah, yeah is, I guess maybe it's the magic armor bullshit. You you can oh, you can float underwater for right. for minutes at a time and not die. It's fine. Just you wait. Yeah, well, yeah, well, I guess we'll come back to it. So the dad now having cleared the Shang 
Chi blockade begins to smash at the big gate to release his wife. And all of the fucking characters are like, oh shit, the gate. <laughs> like the whole reason that we're here. I completely forgot. And uh, as Hello. he's as he's breaking it, a little a little goompy demon comes out and it's like, what what is that? What is this little what is this like a little flying thing? What is going on here? And like even some of the bad guy characters, including fucking sword arm dude, is like, lol, what is going on here? And she's like, We gotta fight against the demons from the gate. And he's like, Lol no. I ain't gonna do that. That's dumb. And uh, so now before 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 we get to what happens next, like if the dad was smart in any way at all, or self-aware or anything, right? You'd think like punching this gate and seeing an evil demon creature <laughs> come out of it might have been a clue <laughs> that the How thing does he that know Shang it's Shang evil? Hashtag saying, not all demons. Yeah, yeah not like all some, demons. Somehow I don't think your wife is on the other side of that door, yeah. my friend. That must be her but demon no. friend. <laughs> what, what's crazy, How the more he you? hits, the more he punches this door, like at one point, a massive eruption of demons come spewing out of it, and <laughs> oh, he no. isn't pulled off it on at all. Like, it's, it's oh, just keeps God. punching that thing. You'd think he would have figured out that, huh, maybe the thing that, you know, my son said about an evil something being on the other side of this door could have some le measure of validity to it when he's seeing demons coming out of it. Uh, but no, so, it's just... I believe yeah. it is time, right? So... Uh, yeah. So... This demon, this one little dude, this one little goopy demon is flying over and in the middle of a conversation with Sword Arm Razor Fist Man, where he's saying like, fuck you guys, I ain't joining you to fight those demons, it's fine, who cares? Uh, our good friend Death Dealer is standing quite close to him, right? You remember Death Dealer? I do remember Death Dealer, they had that, that really cool, fight cool I heard about. With yeah. Awesome fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the little demon runs up to Death Dealer and kills him. Sucks his soul right out. Dead. Oh. Remember and, um, when you thought that there was going to be a cool, oh. like, second Why would you do that? I, I couldn't, like, describe it as any lamer. It literally just runs up to him and kills him, and Death Dealer just falls over. Like, oh. Okay. Yep. And then Rise of Fist is like, alright, let's work together. Yeah, it's done the for a big funny. Demons. Oh, right, because, uh, oh, I forgot to, yeah, you can only kill these demons with the dragon thing, so, like, Razor Fist's little blade, it ain't doing anything, it just goes through it like it's nothing. You gotta kill them with dragon stuff. Yeah, they're basically incorporeal to any other matter except the dragon scales. And except the dragons, just, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Death Dealer gets around about 60 seconds of screen time. <laughs> <laughs> Total, yeah, maybe two minutes one, at most. One, like, 20 seconds of fighting that's kind of neat. And uh, yeah, like, that was it. By far the best fighter in the in the movie, and responsible yeah, for yeah. probably the best scene. They just kill him for a joke. It's like, okay, Thank you. But just for yeah, reference, right? The right, joke right. is like, we ain't gonna join you. Then Death Dealer gets killed, and he's like, okay, we'll help. How yeah. how will they help though? They don't have the dragon scale weapons. No, they they well. get they work together, so they all get given dragon scale weapons so that they can help the villagers fight the demons. Yeah, and then right afterwards, they just go back to fighting. Try them. Right? Yeah, <laughs> that's, I mean, like, that's a good thought. Time. I guess um, I don't really want to conquer this place because we work together to kill some demons. Well, I guess we'll have to see. Will yeah, they defeat the demons? We'll have to see how it all. Know? This is a Marvel oh, movie. Yeah, that's true. I suppose you never know. Maybe the demons. You never know if the heroes will win. So, and yes, yeah, true. for reference, all that's been happening, right? And they're preparing, and they're getting weapons to everybody, and we see them setting up, and then it cuts back. Chang chi is still in the water. And it's like, yeah. wait, so he's dead now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is this is like five minutes of screen time. <laughs> easily. It feels like they forgot, because uh, it's only a little bit later that we start seeing oxygen being provided to him by little water bubbles flowing into his face. <laughs> and it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what is happening here? What is going on? Uh... But yeah, of course, all the army of, of demons are now attacking. We get our fight number two, where everyone is just using their... Uh... They even give him a uh, a dragon scale sword attachment for his razor fist arm. That's right. Uh, ain't That's that right? They ri he rips off the other sword, and he gets a dragon scale sword that just jams in the socket, yep. and it's fit fine. Perfect. Wow. Perfect. 
I mean, I'm sure that their little the guys could come up with that real quick. <laughs> Why not? There's also, it pans to, like, Katie, and like, oh my god, I get my bow and arrow, the sister with her weapons. And then it just has a shot of Ben Kingsley, and he's like, ooh. You know, and it's like, what? I forgot you were here. <laughs> like, why? What is <laughs> Why are you here? Like, what? I, I just, I don't know. He's, he's still there. That's the important thing. Um, and, um, probably worth mentioning, I, I was trying to think of what next, because there's another big thing that I can't wait to talk about. I've complained on it, about it in many streams. Um, Trini knows how much it upsets me. But I think we're, yeah. uh, I think we're at the point where the reveal of, of, of Friendly Dragon, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, Shang-Chi is, Blake, is, is yeah, he's still sinking, and suddenly you kind of find out that the bubbles that he was sucking in to breathe must have been provided by magical friendly <laughs> dragon on I the like bottom of the lake. Must have been provided by a dragon. <laughs> like, yeah. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, like, all of our team are preparing to fight. The army of dragons coming out, or the little demon, sorry, and, uh, to their surprise, a dragon bursts from the lake with oh my god, Shang Chi is riding it. It's wow! So is he gonna? Neat. Is he gonna come up? Uh, is is there an army of crab people nearby he can massacre? No, it's again Shang Chi is kind of like a good guy in this movie, honestly. Oh, okay, it's kind of right. neat. <laughs> like still kind of taking me for a loop here. This, mm -hmm. this superhero thing. Um, it's still like when you see him riding a dragon, it is still kind of just like what the. Fuck? You know what the I mean? hell's like, happening in yeah. this cinematic universe? Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> I, I long for the days when it was like a guy who built a suit of armor that he just like it's Shot just flies around in that and fights from, terrorists. Yeah, yeah it's like I remember when it was kind of grounded and somewhat coherent, and then you've just got this absolute nonsense. Yeah, it goes off the wall, just crazy things that's hard to follow with yeah, just demons and dragons and a giant demon monster and and dragons. other dimensions <laughs> oh, like oh. magic dragon skill weapons oh, just Soul, makes me tired well, was literally say, this is, being sucked out yeah. yeah and this is the portion of like what is like this is the con condensed like sludge thing where you're just watching it come out and you're like i don't i can't i don't want the fuck like, oh. oh yeah i was at this point in the movie, I was so uninvested by the crap payoff, so I didn't care about anything. I was just boring crap being spewed across the screen that I had no investment in. And could, this is yeah, the movie I mean, you was well even, and truly dead. Even if we got some kind of insight into this this soul sucking mega demon thing, like, what does it actually want? Why is it doing this stuff? Like, what is mm -hmm. its actual like? Motivation, anything. Yeah, this is just a big thing that destroys stuff, too, right? Um, I mean, it's just yeah. There's just nothing. I, I don't care. This isn't a threat. This isn't a character or anything. It's just a big CGI thing that's on screen for a while. That's all you get out of it. And so, the water dragon delivers Shang Chi to his dad, and they have fight number two. And now, if you remember, Rags, when when he fought, um. The, the the defender of the forest, the the to be wife. Remember how she was able to just steal his rings off him for no reason? Yeah, I remember you telling me about that. It can was confusing, you, but very convenient. Can you guess how Shang Chi manages to defeat his dad? The spirit of his mother gives power to steal rings. <laughs> I don't even maybe like, but he just steals the rings because why not? You don't know. Oh, yeah, like in the middle of a fight. Oh, shit, suddenly... how come people didn't do that while he was conquering the world <laughs> I, I thousands of years ago? I don't know, they didn't believe. Like, damn, girl. Well, then, wait, it required he... the magic god martial art powers that he uh... learned from his aunt or something. It's just... But it's so arbitrary and, like, because these rings, there is no established connection between the rings and this land and their magic and the dragon or anything. There is, There should be no logical reason why he can suddenly gain control of these rings through some mystical martial arts from another dimension. It doesn't freaking make sense at all. Yet he just does it. So I'll take the rings now. What? Yep. Anything can happen at any moment in this movie. It's that kind of film. Yep. Like where you you can't really care about any of the stakes because there are none because anything can happen to undo everything that's going on at, at any moment. And um, because he's our hero, he uh, he prepares to do a giant ring laser, and then he drops the rings. He's like, "No, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna kill I... you, Dad." 
But he can keep the rings. But all you just here's the thing: you can keep the rings and also not kill your dad. Because um, if you yeah. if you drop it's, the rings, your dad will pick them up. Yeah, so you have to take them away, and you have to be like, "Dads, I'm Enough gonna let you go rings. on this one, but you have to promise <laughs> not to release any more universe-destroying demons." Okay. Yeah. Enough of that. It's ridiculous. Um. And so, I, I get. I'm kind of confused as to, like, yeah, maybe he doesn't want to kill his dad because he's not. He doesn't want to be a bad guy. So it kind of follows through, but it seems like he is the the movie is trying to make it sell like he's doing this big thing by choosing not to kill his dad when it's like it doesn't come off as anything significant because yeah kind of makes sense yeah but then like if he did but this is the why it's so this is why it's so bad if he did kill his dad i still probably would have had the same reactions like ah uh, yeah okay yeah like, his dad was a bit of a dick well yeah, his, his dad like, literally like will he, he's doing the thing where it's like there's only demons coming out and he's like no i'm pretty sure my wife is in there <laughs> like, <for laughs> sake. He's not gonna let that go <laughs> Um, and so, big spooky, horrible demon boss dragon comes out finally, and it's like, oh, I'm gonna take over the world, Ooh, and the dad is like, oh my god, you know what, I might have been wrong. <laughs> like, what see it, see what the could big... have given me an indication <laughs> that that was the result? <laughs> And, well, and um, what if the demon tricks him again? What if the demon's like, oh, you know, actually, okay, that last time I was pretending to be your dead wife. Sorry about that. Um, well, but this time I've actually got like, this one's real though. This next one. So, can I just answer someone in, in chat who was responding to kind of how I felt there was no strong payoff or reasoning for wanting to save his dad's life or not save his dad's life? And someone responded saying he wants to have a good relationship with his dad, give up the rings and, and be a good dad, right? Thing is, again, that's not established in the film. If anything, the film says that Shane chi wants to freaking get away from his dad because he ran away to live for 10 years on his own. And there was nothing ever indicating Shane chi wanting to have a good relationship, rebuild things. I don't want to have a good relationship like with this asshole. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, that's why the motivations are so unclear. I have no idea, like, if it makes sense for Shang Chi to want to be with his dad or not, or to kill him or to save his life. It's just a mess of contrived garbage that is not explained, and you don't have proper motivations at all. It, it's a mess. It, it could have been a nice payoff if we'd gotten to see Shang Chi kill that that guy that he was sent to America to kill uh, on, on his first mm -hmm. mission, and you know he killed that guy yes. out of anger, and then this time he was able to put his anger aside and and take exactly. the, moral, the, the moral high ground. But because we never saw that, it doesn't mean anything, this choice. Mm -hmm. um, we, we get nothing out of it. It's hollow, pointless, and just nothing. And honestly, before you have time to even consider all that, we get another big payoff, if you could call it that. The dragon's out, and it seemingly goes to attack Shang-Chi, and so his dad is like, no, and puts on the rings that were dropped to the floor, uses them to fly over and push Shang Chi down and thus he takes the hit from the dragon that grabs this is I'm doing this slowly so you understand exactly what this the the scenario is it's not working the dragon grabs the dad wraps him up and pulls him let's say you know just a few meters above and so the situation is dad is captured by soul sucking grand demon and Shang Chi is watching him now, if you're the dad, Rags, and you got the rings on, what do you do? So, okay. So the dad bumps Shang-Chi out of the way so that... No. I can... I can Dragons <laughs> come... Say it, yeah, say it again. Say well, it again. To, 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 I don't, I'll cut away all the useless stuff for now, because this is the important thing. The current situation is big spooky demon dragon has grabbed the dad... The dad is wearing the rings. Shang-Chi is watching this happen. What do you do if you're the dad? I use the ring to kill the fucking dragon. That's one idea. One idea. Um, I use the ring to... Do that? Because he... the dragon's probably like, trying to eat me or something? Or well, kill me, yeah. Or but, it's, but why I, is it bad? Why would you want to just for context, it's not the good dragon, it's the evil demon yeah, thing yeah, yeah. that's holding the dad at the moment. Well, no, why would he want to save himself, Rags? Yeah, because what? Why? Because, what do you mean? <laughs> like that's why would he want to save himself? Because I don't want what to do die. What do you mean, Cort? What? I mean, you sure that that's how he feels? 
I mean, he like he he like used to conquer the world, and he wanted to conquer yeah, this no, universe, I, I, and I, I, I don't he seems to want power. Fun. And hey, look, that might make sense, but have you ever considered maybe he wouldn't make that decision? Well, <laughs> no, not his, for a nanosecond. His his <laughs> his just to clarify everything, right? He is in the moment getting his soul sucked out of him, and he can make a decision here. And so he decides, instead of using the rings to attack the dragon and hopefully release himself to thus be alive, to be with his family that he clearly cares about and has now changed his mind on since he nearly killed himself yeah. to uh, save Shang-Chi, he instead releases the rings to put them on Shang-Chi. He, he fires them over to him as a sort of like, I'm done, son, you, you go ahead. And, um, well... That, that happens. Shang-Chi receives and, them, and he just watches his dad die. He watches the completion of the soul suction. He doesn't do anything. Oh, um... So, so the dad basically commits suicide, and yeah. Shang-Chi okay. just stands and watches. Neither of them do anything to save the dad's life. I was pretty weirded out watching it, to be honest with you. <laughs> I was just like, okay... <laughs> Uh, it, I could see what payoff they probably wanted to have. They did not do it properly. Uh, if you want me to believe he... Because I know that some people are going to be like, he couldn't use the rings. It's like, he used them to magically pass them over to Shang-Chi. Move could use them on. He used them yes. to give them to somebody else. Yeah, he, that's so. <laughs> using them. He could use them. Um, and if he couldn't, why couldn't he? Would be the next question. Yeah, and then why wouldn't... Even if he only had a couple seconds, why isn't Shang-Chi doing anything to try and help his dad? That's the well, other part of it. And of course... You could even be like, well, pragmatically, is he sure that Shang-Chi is capable of defeating? You've had, like, a, a, a millennium lot of, of these. Yeah. Yeah. He's had, a, a, like, literally about, what, two, three minutes? Yep. Well, you don't want free. Nah, you, got, you got this, son. That's let's okay. hope Shang-Chi is able to yeah. pull this off, considering he's only just used these things, like, for the first time ever, yeah. so... Man. Gee, I, I hope... That'd be... <laughs> I, I hope that he knows what he's doing here. Um, and so, yeah, the dad's dead. It's, it's whatever. Uh, yeah, he's gone. Bye-bye. And Shang-Chi has the rings, movie. and he and his yeah, sister gone. start riding the good dragon in the hopes of battling yeah, the bad dragon. Yeah, she's got incredible grip. Oh, that yeah, sorry, we didn't... Is. So, oh, just, if just she can drive a him, car, she, she can drive a dragon. No, it's that's, like dodgeball. that's Katie, that's the other one. It's like dodgeball, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> no, okay. the sister... Hey, look! If you can, if you can throw a, a scorpion thing, you can you can uh, ride a dragon. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Um, so Rags, I'm gonna say what happens next in full, and I'm j I'm sorry, okay, that it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> they take the I good dragon you. down into the water, and it casts some kind of spell. To... By the way, before you continue, I just want to say that this movie just sounds like a horrific acid trip. It's yeah. <laughs> Yeah. At this point, at this point, there is so much just crap happening on the screen, and it's a bit um, like that. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's a big, it's this weird monster fight that you can't actually properly follow yeah. exactly what's going on because there's so much being thrown at you, and it's just a mess. And yeah, it just yeah, it just comes overwhelming. Um, um, the best of Phase Four, rather. <laughs> yeah, and so, and and just in case anyone's like, what the fuck? Uh, Shang Chi's sister threw her little scorpion weapon at the evil little pesky demons on a dragon. That's why she earned its trust to ride it. I guess that happens at one point. Damn, dragons be trusting bitches. Bad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, and when that happens, like the rope thing that she's using magically extends to like an insane length to reach the. Yeah, it's like a half mile dragon. long. What is it? The last <laughs> like, truth. What? Oh yeah, it's like it's what like the, the freaking hell? The last of lightning. Oh. Yeah. Um. So, bad. so again, just to make sure you understand, I just want to make sure you get it right. Emote, which is amazing. She and Shang-Chi are riding the water dragon. They dive down into the water and it casts a spell to be able to summon a water tornado to capture the evil dragon while it wraps around them. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, when I was watching this part, I had no fucking clue what I was supposed to think about any of it. I was just watching stuff happen. I don't know what to think. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know what to... Because... So here's the thing, in my head, as you're explaining this, I really am doing my best to just visualize this and picture it. I've got this lake, and I've got the dragon in the lake, and the water tornado, and I eat my finger even to the little spinny thing as I was seeing the tornado, I was like, okay, all right. I so, don't know. It, well, that's only part one, you know, and I gotta, I gotta keep going, because you gotta know what happens next. 
the tornado of water begins to like freeze naturally and obviously the evil demon is like ah this is really getting to me i might be screwed now Ooh. but then the little floompy mini demons start providing its souls to eat and so it breaks out <laughs> and that makes it stronger it abuses it with strength it, it, yes energy bar goes up um yeah and so obviously oh no <laughs> It's so funny to me oh, because no, the they, they talk about film language, right? It's like, we don't know what you want us to think of this. You're like, oh no, the bad guy is getting its second wind. And I'm just sitting here like, I don't fucking understand how any of this works. What, I don't understand this <laughs> dragon. I don't know what it does. I don't know what it wants. I don't understand <laughs> what's happening. It wants to be evil. <laughs> um, And so, Rags, real, real fucking bad thing happens. It breaks out. And it like wraps oh around good guy dragon and starts sucking out its soul. And oh my gosh. The show Yo says, oh no, if it sucks the soul out of that dragon, we won't be able to stop it. It'll be too powerful. We so, gotta save that dragon. It's the kind of exposition. Oh wait, no, line. it was the archer friend, wasn't it? I think it was the yeah. archer friend. Which, yes, yeah, she, yes, she yes, helps please. them out, buys um, them some fame. So, um, yeah, I just like lines of exposition like that. It reminds me of the, um, yeah. Oh, he's landing in blah 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 place. That place is unpopulated. <laughs> like to make sure no one. <laughs> Good old yeah, Zack Snyder reassurance. Of All right, awesome. So we can finally get to what pissed me off the most in this whole movie, and this might surprise some people because it's oh, so small. Oh, this is it. Yeah. Well, it's, tell it, you what. Since th this sounds like um like we're approaching a a I climax. Yeah. Oh, you can, yeah, well, now's the time to do it. Uh, I'm gonna go get a drink if right, you I need thought, to go use I thought you were gonna say, that was, I was guessing. It sounded like you that were wrapping up to. That is a good guess. That is a good guess, because I do I mean, drink I lots of water. Totally I pee often. You're... I do pee often, yes. Mm -hmm. Hey, look, drinking water, it's a, I, I can attest to it. It's it, is, cycle. it is one. Thumbs up. Thumbs up for yeah. drinking in water. In and out, in and out. Rhymes. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, yeah I, I'll do that while I'm away. I'll, I'll be just a couple minutes. Then we'll get get to our... Maybe if anybody else needs this opportunity, like yes, now yes. might be the time. Go for it. Ah, uh, I can hold it because it's, it's an opportunity Shad, you to talk. Shad, you, do you well, it, the funny thing is, Shad, I'm not sure that you you probably think I'm going to complain about one thing, but I'm actually probably going to complain about the thing that happens right before it. Um, uh, but but you're so uh, close, Shad, to being able to uh, unleash. Yes. Your, oh, uh, your pain. <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, it in I'm just a little long time. <laughs> yeah. um, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, it's funny. Mola probably hates one thing the most, and I hate something well, that happens. My thing I, know, happens. I know what Mola hates. Yeah. My, I know yeah, what Mola hates. I'll be able to yeah. explain mine, and then you'll be able to explain the big payoff of the movie and why you hate it so much, I'm sure. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I love how it's a big payoff, and it's like the worst shit ever. <laughs> 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 like, it's meant to be good content, and it's just not. Oh, well, but still, like, well, as to phase four. Yeah, Twitter seems to I think it's really it. good, so I don't know. Everybody seems to really like it. It's bizarre. I don't get it. I, 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 I'm at a loss impressive. to explain what people are seeing in this movie. Honestly, yeah. I think it's just spectacle. Martial arts, fighting, and flashing Maybe? lights, and yay. It's the Transformers thing. They're just enjoying, you know, like... I feel like yeah, people are giving it more praise than just the spectacle. That's why I find it so confusing. Like, if somebody just said, yeah, no, it's just fun sludge... I would get that, but people are talking about this movie like, no, it's actually really good. Like, the actually really good qualifier, you know? It's not oh, just really. good. It's really good. We, it's surprisingly good. I mean, is there has there been much in the way of, like, video essays on this yet? Like, praising the hell out of um, it? Apparently, I'm Brown sure Table is going to make one, because he loved this movie. Oh, boy. Thought it was excellent. Oh. <laughs> all right. Fantastic. You know, look, all right, you might have that opinion, that's totally fine. All right, that's what we're, we, we're here to talk about. Uh, this movie is a triumph. I know. I know it's a triumph. I, I can understand. I, I, man, yeah, maybe I keep seeing it described as top three MCU films. No, stop it. Don't <laughs> tell me. It's top three of phase four. Like, that's, I think that's, uh, that's not in doubt. Though, admittedly, like, this so movie How many movies fun. have been in phase four, though? Oh, I mean, like, of all of the Phase 4 content, if we include the shows, okay. I would say that this is the best. But, 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 understand that when I say the best, we're talking, like, a three. Like, it might even be lower than that at this point, like, the more that I think it's, about it. It's, I was gonna say, you can sick. make a lot of, we could talk about the world building for a long time. The character, yeah. the character is, like, yeah. It's rocky, but it ain't as catastrophic as, like, everything that's come before yeah. it so far. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's it's, it's, it's thin. It's yeah, frustrating so I, because like character... when we, yeah, it's frustrating. I agree. When, when we've been talking about all the things that we could, they could have done with with Shang Chi and and his dad and all the other characters, like all the different setups and payoffs you could have had with them, and they seem to have taken like the least interesting option in every case. It's it's annoying because I the building blocks are there. there. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, there there is there is a potentially good story in this very not good story. Oh, and Owen, to, oh. to clarify chat, Spider-Man is technically Phase 3, but if it was Phase 4, then yeah, I think Far From Home is categorically the best one compared to this It's shit. better than Shang-Chi, yeah. It yeah. way better, yeah, it's, it sounds like it's way better than this crap. Um, well, as someone who didn't Shang-Chi. like Far From Home, I will concede Far From Home is better than this piece of crap. Um, this movie is a goddamn disaster. <laughs> like, <it's laughs> well, just... <laughs> shall we, uh, shall, shall we, Rag? Shall oh, we? yes, yes. So... Bef- like uh, you know what's happening big dragons are tangled up and oh, evil one is sucking the soul out of the good one terrible and Awful. they they pause yeah that's right Mahler. This, like, i do know what's happening i know exactly what's happening the truth, yeah uh, but but they pause on this moment showing the dragon struggling and people reacting and they're really building it up to be yeah, this yeah. is a so, pivotal well, moment in I'm, the fight i'm actually going to give him a bit more backstory i'm going to become episode 9 of blind manor i'm going to i'm going to take us back Woo! so that you can get all the context you need for this big payoff is coming right Something I kind of left out on purpose, when um, Katie was grabbing those things uh, and she goes to the archery place, the first person to see her is like the archery lord, let's just, I don't know what the fuck's name, he's an old dude. Very stereotypical kind of like, I'm the best, like the the teacher of the archers here, you, you're you're an outsider, you shouldn't be, and then um, she's like training more and more, and when she's in the montage, like, oh my god, I'm doing well, she looks at him and he's like frowning, like, ugh. Fine. And then um, when the day comes, she grabs a bow, and he's like, no, 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 no. Like this, I, I don't remember what he says. You're not, re- you're not ready. But yeah, that, that sort of thing. Like, no, no, no. But then when the wall starts coming down, and the demons start coming out, she goes to grab it again, he, he sees her, and I think he approves. Because, like, basically, like, we're at our wit's end now. So, like, yes, we need everybody doing everything they can. And um, yep. they're, uh, they're together throughout the fight scenes, doing the doing a little thing and uh he spots it and points out like oh shit this is big big cheese we gotta t- this dragon's gonna fuck everything up and so it's almost like they're setting up it's like it's up to these two <laughs> <laughs> wait <laughs> so it's up to the archer girl who started practicing like, yesterday it's, it's, it's and a, the yeah. universe eating dragon it's like no, yeah, it, you could call it archetypal where you've got the guy, the untrustworthy student who's learning and is kind of brash versus the veteran who's trying didn't really want anything to do with her but is forced to stick with her and they're gonna have to do this together sort of thing and to me, yeah, they they need to work that's... together to save the, dra- the dragon, basically. Because if they don't save the dragon, the world's gonna end, basically. And to me, that's like, all right, there is a through line here, and I can appreciate. You There's know, like I told there, you, yeah. I can appreciate the fact that Shang Chi only fought back once his friends were threatened. Stuff like that, I like it. I'm yeah. like, yeah, yeah, you're satisfying me storytelling wise. You just do little things like that. So okay. they get closer and closer <laughs> to this dragon. They realize what they're gonna have to do. They have to just, shoot it with arrows, dragon scale arrows. I mean, yeah, I'm thinking about well, exactly well, how remember, I should explain. So, like, the demon has the good dragon, and if the demon sucks out this dragon's soul, it's going to be unstoppable. This is the pivotal, epic moment in the fight. That oh no, they they can't really. Who can save the dragon to save us all? And remember, dragon scale weaponry does affect these spooky demons from this other realm or whatever the fuck. So, yeah, it's going to be down to, potentially, any other players who can do anything at this point, because our players are kind of, like, struggling with the whole soul-sucky thing. And so, yeah, uh, a lot of people have been dying, this whole battlefield's happening, and we see uh, Katie and her veteran archer friend heading over to this soul-sucking business, because he recognizes this is the end of the world we're dealing with, we don't stop it. Unfortunately, a little... Really serious, you know? A little, little goompy demon... Grabs veteran archer man, and uh, and kills him. Oh, okay, that and, sucks. Yeah, it might and be Katie like. doesn't help. I was gonna say the context in which he is grabbed is he's picked <laughs> up, slowly moved relatively high, and then it sucks his soul out over a couple of seconds until it's completed, and then drops his body, and she watches the whole thing while holding a bow, <laughs> and arrows. Oh, makes you wonder. 
Like, why both. did you help? Um, yeah. I was talking about this on Real BBC. It fucking angered me watching that. I was like, <laughs> you piece of shit. Like, you could have just let him die. It's it's one of those moments, isn't it? Like, when you're watching a movie and somebody who you don't want to die because he's just, like, a good person helping out just dies in a really shitty circumstance. Yeah, and... Uh, like, one of those moments. Do you think the the people, the writers of this, and the director, like, paused for a second just to consider this implication? Mm. Or were they just like, yeah. nah, no one will notice? Well, so... It's sad! We're gonna- <laughs> we're getting to the, the, the other thing, and I'll let Shad take the reins when we get to the other thing. There is a reason why they need him- they need her to be the one that's going to be firing, okay? Now, if you're a shitty writer, you just go, let's kill him, so that she'll <laughs> have to fire. <laughs> <laughs> no, he he gets hurt and he breaks his arm. Exactly. What you? Yeah. I cannot do this... it. You have to do it. But I'm not ready. So, Believe in yourself. Exactly. And then she does it. All you had to do was have him get picked up. The thing carries him a couple meters up. She shoots it. Uh, maybe even misses the first shot, and he lands on his arm. It's busted. He cannot use the bow and arrow anymore. She's struggling. She's sweating. She doesn't know what to do. And he gives her the advice she needs and focuses her and puts. Remember her in right your place. training. Watch your breathing. Take care of the wind. All that horse shit. And and you get the it. arc. That would be the. He trusts her and she manages Literally. to do it. <laughs> and, but no, dies. instead she just watches him fucking die. <laughs> I don't get it. Like we, I haven't even seen this movie. I've just been explained to it, and instantly off the top of my head come up with something better, and you're like, how? How, though? Exactly. How do these professionals who have all this time and all this money just, like, well, not The, the funny it? part is, is, the suggestion is the normal meme. This is, like, the normal thing you do in a story. Yeah, like, and then he can be you. alive to keep training exactly. her so that she could show up in later uh, installments oh, she, if they really want to fucking yeah, bring her back. They are, they are, yeah, she's, well, dude, dead. she's <laughs> come back. Dude. You can, you can <laughs> see worry. it now when we're doing the whole the aftermath, and, and you have everyone's rebuilding, people are smiling and shaking hands and stuff, and then she walks up to him the following day, in the sense of like, I want to train more, and he's got his arm in a sling, and he's like, okay. You know? Yeah. You get, you get that little montage, you're like, oh, how cute, because, you know, they went through They're a little They're kind of arc. becoming friends. Yeah. yeah. But no, he's dead. <sighs> he's dead, yeah. <laughs> he's gone. And remember, this isn't just death, they're getting their souls sucked out of them. I don't know what that means. Yeah, mm. Like, I don't yeah, know if that, you, getting yeah. it consumed by some kind of horrible demon, yeah, where like, I don't it, know if, Where do you go? Does it I, go I don't to, know. <laughs> like, do you, are you inside the demon now? How, can you escape? Find another body? Is this like Ghostbusters, or...? Or like, a, you know, is everyone else granted like a peaceful afterlife and you're just like... <laughs> you're just told to a horrifying <laughs> existence yeah. of, you know... Yeah. Um, I don't know. And so, Shad, do you want to... So she's like, oh, he's dead. I'm going to have to do it. And uh, so it probably wouldn't upset a lot of other people. I take personal offense because I actually <laughs> do archery and I know the difficulty it is to train to be able to shoot heavy bows, to be accurate with them, and also the their limitations and lengths. The distance we're talking here, she's on the edge of the shore of the lake, oh, they're well yeah. into the middle of the lake. It's well half a kilometre at least, it's the distance is insane. Uh, I'll half just briefly, briefly just, to, just to give some clarification to the audience. So there is a bulbous mass on the bottom of the dragon's neck. Oh no, movie bar. <laughs> that is blowing. It's an enemy. It's an enemy weak point. Uh, but yeah, con continue. So already, I, the like even a hundred and sixty pound war bow would not reach that distance. But this it's, is a magic bow. It's a magic bow. This is the only explanation. It's a magic bow that can shoot arrows insane distances and can let good. someone who can't draw back a, even a piddly, you know, hundred and forty pound. Sorry, a forty pound bow because a she would be weak as anything, and so this bow she's using must be like 30 pounds and wouldn't be able to shoot any farm. That's a magic bow, okay? So we could just hand wave, all right, it supposedly could do the distance. And then, yeah, she pulls off the most bullcrap shot in existence from, what, a day training? Literally, a day's training. And at that range, it's like, ah, oh, it's cover off. It's no chance in hell. Like, the... Ah, uh, yeah, just, I don't know, luck. Some soul of the dead guy gave her strength, even though the soul was <laughs> consumed by the demon or whatever, gave her the capacity to do it. It's, it's literally one of those 
Deus Ex Machina bullcrap. Ah, she could do it because we need it in the plot and give her a win because it justifies her being in the story when really there is no reason that she should even be here at this time to make sure she does something so insanely pivotal that it literally saves everyone's life. Like if she, she saved do the this, world. She, yeah. she, she literally saved the world. If not for this, and it's so controlled. Not our hero, Shang Chi. Well, uh, All right. Well, we're, like, yeah. What is we'll, we'll Shang Chi doing during this? We're, like, we're almost to the, you know, letting his father yeah. die. We'll everyone's, everyone of this, they're all, everyone's letting everyone die. I just want to, and what it said, Marvel's Katie is what brings down this world-ending dimensional demon dragon. Yes. Like, it's like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah, it's it, the contrivance is insane. We have to uh, accept it must be a magical bow. We have to accept that she either trained and got insane, incredible skill, or it was latent, or just accept that it was literally not even a one in a million. This is the shot should technically be impossible because of the range. It's a one in a trillion shot. It's it's an insanely like difficult shot over the length, the wind took it. considering her skill and all that crap. And we just have to accept she just did it because reasons. She's special or something. And so, like, I'm so checked out of this film at this time, but this is such bullcrap that even this part, and especially with my own, you know, background in archery, legitimately pissed me off. I was like, oh, come off it. Are you... Mm. Yep. <laughs> She nails... Yeah, so Katie pulls off the bow. She now she nails the shot, shoots it in the little floop thing that glows, and it releases the good guy dragon. Yeah, the magical Shang energy the yeah. Right, giving Shang Chi the opportunity he needs to save the world. Thanks, Katie. And Rags, you may be wondering One day. how how True. what was that? Sorry, statistically, One day of yeah, I'm wondering oh, yeah. Where. Um, Rags, crazy. how do you believe that Shang Chi will now deliver the? The finishing blow to this dragon demony thing. He uses the rings to uh, surround the dragon. Is this like an eastern dragon where it's long and spindly and shitty looking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, oh, I don't think I so it's got. Ah, right. uh, well, that's that's right, you're right. Uh, <laughs> but maybe it's like he like the rings. They like form it like they like get it like a cone, you know, and they squeeze it, and then it just like turns into dust or something man you're pretty close actually am yeah. i <laughs> yeah you're pretty close well, yeah. oh, but in um, reverse in reverse you're close but yeah kind of in reverse so yeah just for full context for everybody listening and rags uh she uh, uh, shang chi's sister throws the scorpion on a rope blade thing to the good guy dragon they wedge open the mouth of evil dragon by doing that and shang chi fires all of his rings down the dragon's throat and then, like, oh, spins oh. them around in its belly and it explodes. Yeah, it's like That's the spinning story. builds up. We see the lights from its stomachs and they're swirling around I... and they build in speed and speed. <laughs> yeah. And Shang Chi is just holding his arms in a certain way with concentration, like he's willing the rings to spin. And then he he does this pose where he literally just switches his arm positions, like he's switching a lever. And then the rings suddenly burst out in this <laughs> sphere of energy and. Just, yeah. that, that's uh, yeah. this is all while Shang Chi is Pretty falling boring, through the air. Yeah. By yeah, the way, he, he just keeps oh, falling damn. forever. Like, <laughs> how is he? How is he so good with these rings to do all these I complex know, maneuvers? Dude, he's trained with them for like one minute. It, yeah. I think that's a long time in in some ways. So, remember when you thought this would just be like a cool martial arts movie? Nah, sludge. I never thought <laughs> that. Gotta get some sludge. Well, no, I, that was... It would be cool if it was, because you'd have an understanding of, like, the stakes, and it would be relatable, and... It'd be nice to be down on the ground again in the MCU. Yeah, you know, vulnerable, but no, we've got to fight Dragon and kill it with these magical rings. Yeah, I mean, imagine just a... I mean, yeah, just imagine, like, a good kick-ass martial arts battle between him and his father. Like yeah, yeah, you can have a bit of a bit of like you know crouching tiger, hidden dragon stuff where they're they're using yeah, the rings. Yeah, fucking go for it. Why not? You know, heighten it a little bit, but it's still ultimately two humans fighting each other instead of this overblown monstrosity, Literally. where it's yeah, just insane <laughs> shit happening constantly, getting thrown at you. It's it is just like a mystical version of the Transformers films. That's all you got here. Mm-hmm. It's so and, over the top. Another and idea. You don't know. 
uh, you don't know the strengths, limits, and extents of the dragon or the demon or the rings, and because of that, you you can't be invested in. Oh, is he going to do something creative? We don't know if he can do because the rings seem to have this really <laughs> limited type of use. They have to be shot off, except when they need to do something special, like block a shotgun blast. That's almost point blank. They can just do that now. It's a scatter shot, but fine, they can block that, or they can make a magical shield from arrows, or or now they can just do this weird ball energy kung fu kamehameha blast they could just do whatever freaking needs to be done for the sake of whatever is the plot and because it's just literally whatever they they can do whatever they want if there's no that you don't care it's like oh they, the dragon we don't know the the monster we don't know and the rings we don't know. they're just doing stuff without any understanding or context of the limitations and what's being achieved and it's completely hollow and falls flat and you're just watching lights on a screen that's how mm -hmm. it feels and it, and once again it's not just that they fail at doing the stuff they want to do you wonder why they wanted to do some of this stuff instead of the obvious choices that have satisfying points in them why did you do that to death dealer why did you have the dad <laughs> and the son like that's the death scene why did you have the teacher archer get killed in front like what is it it's like they've not seen stories before it, it is just it is mind-boggling because at this point it's like you do the obvious thing but it's just like satisfying to watch and especially if the actor's good and you've built up this relationship you're like yeah she did it i'm so glad she was able to do it and i'm glad that you know she the, the master is proud of her and she earned his respect hmm. and he was skeptical of this outsider and that sort of thing but it all came together and now it's just like nah he's fucking dead and it's all shit this is our triumph Reminds me of, um, and with him alive, this movie because... is our triumph. <laughs> and if the old guy say was alive but broken arm, they could have justified that bullcrap shot somehow in some way that at least would have made it uh, well, not as bad as it was. Like I don't know, the old guy, he's a kung fu master, somehow is able to temporarily give her some of his own understanding capacity or something through some bullcrap kung hey, fu magic. Chat, I think he... the range correction needs to be done in general, right? Pull them all, get mm -hmm. everyone way closer. But like, I yeah. think it's fixed enough if you just have him giving her loads of advice, even if it's kind of generic advice. Yeah. Honestly, yes, even that, uh, even that would have been orders of magnitude better than what happened. Because you're appreciating the, the, the aspect of old teacher who knows exactly how to do the shot is telling the student how to do it. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can sit there and appreciate that as an action yes. that's happening. Oh, they yes. do that. Oh, they do that at the end of the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Oh, yeah, they do. You're right. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. He's, what he yes. says, he says, uh, take your time. He says that, like, right before he's. Uh... Take your time, but watch your breathing. And that yes. was even good because it was set up earlier in the movie. It, that you missed it, the we show. need to see that for uh, EFAP movies. We need to do that. I bet that's Van Helsing yes. level. I yes. bet. Yes. I can't, yeah, I bet it's great. I, well, I'm, I was going to say, by the way, a film that totally does what we're talking about in terms of just storytelling choices, Mask of Zorro. Like, throughout that, it's doing all of the things. Yeah. Yep. But it, like, it's doing them so very well that it's very... It's not... Like, if someone said, I could have predicted this whole story, I'd be like, yeah, but it's good, though. <laughs> like, it's... <laughs> they've done it well. That's what matters. And, uh, the, you know what it fucking bugs me about this whole subversion thing? It's like, well, instead of having him break his arm, she saves him, and he tells her how to do this shot, why don't he just die? And you can just picture the people in the boardroom being like, yeah, yeah, we'll just kill him. What if he did just fucking Why? die? Yeah, fuck this guy. Ugh. And then, yeah, the, the, the dragon, mon not the, mon the, the demon thing explodes because Shang-Chi can just yeah. use the rings better than anyone else. Um, and all the other, the mini demons all just die as well, don't yeah, they? He, um, yeah, he, he, like, does a pulse to the, the brick wall thing and he, like, resets it. It just becomes strong again, I guess. So they kill all the ones that got out, including the big one, and the gate is sealed again. Done and done. Yeah. Imagine explaining that to the other Avengers. By the way, world was almost destroyed because the Black Widow interrupts, like, no, 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 the world was almost taken over by Drakov in well, my they, spare they day They start... <laughs> Yeah, they start telling the same story, but then it starts to diverge. It's like, yeah. wait, what? Dragon. So this and they're like, wait, what? Russian secret agents? What? And then, <laughs> then Loki shows up and he's like, man, you guys won't believe what's happening right now. And like, no, I doubt that's you what can really top... happened in between movies. Yeah, I doubt you can top an espionage agency or dragon ticket of the world. He's like, I can top it. <laughs> I can oh, I can. Top it. Sit your asses down, ladies and gents. We're going to take a wild ride. 
Um, first, like, like I guess, because like there's people who listen to EFAB that that's how they consume the MCU now, because fuck watching it. So once this all happens, you have Shang Chi and and Katie are talking to their friends that they were talking to earlier in the movie. <laughs> And explaining the whole story of the film, and they're like, "How ridiculous! You were valets, and now you're slaying dragons! Like, what, what the fuck?" And before they can like, they, they don't believe the story, basically. And in in the background, uh, a portal opens, and and Wong comes through, and he's like, "Are you Shang Chi? Do you have the Ten Rings? Come with me." And they they go through his little portal, him and Katie, because for some reason he also Why is she needs coming? They, he needs Katie to come as well. <laughs> oh, she's well, a she killed it or well, helped kill a giant demon, and she's a magical bullcrap kung fu archer yeah. now. So she's next person on, you know, to take over Hawkeye's job. And so, and that's well. There's a second, uh, or is that that's not after credits? That's like a part of the film. Um, yeah, that's part of it. Is there one or two after credit scenes then? Uh, there's there are two, two after credit scene. scenes. Do you, wanna, some, yeah, do you guys like want to want to take them? Um. So the first after credit scene, um, Shang Chi and Katie are hanging out with Wong, presumably in the Sanctum Sanctorum, and they are like, "Hmm, these rings—they're like older than Earth, basically. They are super crazy." And then uh, Bruce, who is a human now again, is For like, "Oh, no reason. Wait, how? Yeah, yeah uh, we we have no it. idea. We'll have to find out in the show, She Hulk, I guess." Watch next content, guys. And then, uh, yeah, he's like, oh, I, don't, I don't recognize these. And then Captain Marvel's there on the call, like on a hologram you know, call. You know, it's so and funny. I, I put Captain Marvel out of my mind so much that when she appeared, it literally reminded me that she existed in the MCU. And I was like, oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so and she's like, oh, yeah, I've never seen these in space either. So it's like, all right. So basically the whole point of this scene is you will find out about the Legend of the Ten Rings in the next movie, not this one. <laughs> Um, and then but that's and then what Wong this one's and, called. Yeah, and I know it's kind of bullshit, isn't it? And and yeah, so that they're, they're like, oh, sorry, gotta go. Presumably to do her movie. And then Hulk is like, yeah, I, I gotta go as well. And then um, and then they they sing karaoke, and that's the end of the first uh with Wong. Scene. Wong joins them with in the Wong. Karaoke, yeah, with Wong, and they're, it's they're so funny because it's Wong. Yeah, Wong rhymes with then, song. It it was set up. It was. Yeah, and and um. And then uh, the second one is basically the sister is now in charge of the Ten Rings organization, but she's training oh. women as well, so oh, it's so okay that she's now <laughs> going to be a criminal. So <laughs> like... the, 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 the subversion was that Shang Chi actually says his sister has left to dismantle to dismantle his it, father's yeah. organization, but this what? after credit scene subversion, she's not dismantling it, she's controlling it. Bum, she's going to make it better than it ever was before by making it all female. I think it wasn't female all female. Fight. It was it like wasn't all now, female, now women yeah. get to fight. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Now women get to join terrorist organizations. So what now instead of just forward. training men and getting a head start, you can... So, oh. So yeah, that's... Uh, I suppose so that, that thing, the movie. Uh, people want mentioned is the, uh, the rings are sending a signal. A right? signal, yeah. Somewhere, Which a yeah. lot of people like to say, is, 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 is like, the, to, like the mother boxes. Is it going to be Galactus? Eternals. Is Galactus going to come from this? Wow. Well, like, I, I guess it's safe to assume that, like, Captain Marvel, whatever she's getting up to in her adventure, will be related, maybe. Mm -hmm. I, fact, I don't I think don't not Captain Marvel. I, I think Captain no. Marvel's going to be a really oh, she's weird got her own adventure. kind of. Yeah. Bizarre thing with the Marvels. So there's going to be Monica Rambo as a Marvel. There's going to be Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel. Be yeah. her. Um, uh, so I, I think it might be tied with the Eternals. Expertise. Yeah. That. Uh, well, because uh, I'm just trying to remember. Because I think the release schedule was Eternals was meant to come out first before oh, okay. COVID stuff. So I think the timeline I was... And in fact, I think Shang-Chi was meant to come out... Yeah, so I think it was Black Widow, then Eternals, then Shang-Chi. I can't remember what was after that. Um, fuck, yeah, I'm, I'm blanking. Uh, I think Spider-Man. That's right, so... I'm not sure if that changed or anything in the meantime. I don't know that I particularly care at this point about what they're trying to set up. <sighs> That's so, the movie, though. Yeah, that is Shang-Chi, everyone. 
Lodge. So, Rags, having Lodge. heard our stellar summary there, what, what's your overall impressions of Shang-Chi? I give it a an 8 triumphs out of 10. <laughs> wow. High school. Triumphant, indeed. Um, obviously, the Eternals will likely get a similar treatment from us, because I don't care about oh. that either. Um, but the problem is, I do care about stories that are going to be coming after these ones. Um, like Spider-Man and, and Doctor Thor, Strange Doctor and Guardians Strange. and Thor, yeah. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> so like, I, I do not have much hope for Thor. I don't have much hope um, for any of it, um, to be honest with you. I, I'm hoping that Thor will be fun. Yeah, hopefully Taika can make me laugh. You, you can do yeah. that, usually. The, this is the thing, like, as much as he did that with Ragnarok, and it was nice because, like, Dark World was so grim and stodgy, I'm not sure I want him to do that again. I'm just like, yeah, there's only so much you can make Thor into a laughing stock before, like, I just lose I, interest in the character. I think that Ragnarok actually does do some meaningful stuff for Thor's character. I, I've uh, come around oh, yeah. the position that it's... I, I don't... I used to think, like, man, this is such a heel turn, or like a pivot, but I don't think that I feel strongly that way anymore. I think that, um, I think that Ragnarok has enough meaningful stuff in terms of, like, recognizing almost, like, what his role is supposed to be in Asgard. It's not, like, a huge part of that story, but it is a part of it, that I feel like there's reason to believe that there may be some character stuff here. My concern is more about priorities in, in uh, the new one. Like, how much time are we going to spend on Thor rather than everybody else? Because, like, Jane Foster's coming back. You've got to spend time on that because she hasn't been in it for, like, ten years. Um, what, you know, I'm not opposed to Jane Foster coming back and if perhaps she remakes Mjolnir and get, gets, like, Thor-like powers. I'm not actually opposed to that so long as they don't belittle and destroy Thor in to, so he can make way for this new wonderful female character. It's like, if they can strike a balance or still give Thor all the credit he deserves and it's still his film, I'm just like, yeah, bring it on. Let's expand the, you know, the story and stuff. But I, I man, guess, I'm worried. I'm, I'm guess, worried that it's... Mm. I mean, Endgame just kind of took his role away from him. Yeah. Oh, Endgame sure. I think, Endgame, gave up yeah. whole, I think like, this, Endgame, this... I think it totally screwed it up. Yeah. Yeah, like this, this you know, being the ruler of Asgard, which was essentially what all of his movies were about preparing him for, like giving him that maturity and wisdom. Especially like, when he's next to Loki, you know? I think that's Endgame's fault, though, not Ragnarok. Yeah, in, I'll, in I'll, I'll, Ragnarok. yeah, yeah that's, that's fair. I that's think all fair. of us yeah. like Thor in Infinity War, too. He's like, I like him in Infinity yeah. War a yes. hell of a lot. That's a good um, one. He might have been my favorite character in that movie. But then, yeah, he's given it all up. Valkyrie's now going to be the ruler of Asgard. Jane Foster's going to be the new Thor, essentially. What the fuck is this guy going to be doing now? It is Everything's up in the air. I have no idea how this yeah. movie's going to work. I'll give it a shot, but again, I've got no hope for the future of the MCU. Yeah, it's, it's super concerning, like, the place we're in now. Because this is like, yeah. we've got... We've had six MCU properties in a row... That have just been disasters in like every regard, pretty much. Yeah, from character, true. world building, plot. Yeah. I mean, Sh Shang-Chi is probably the best one for character. It, I think it's the best one. Uh, and, and because he wasn't a dick. <laughs> he wasn't yeah, horrible. he's, he's <laughs> actually, he is actually a, a kind of heroic character. And yeah, yeah, if I had to pick amongst all of them, it's the least bad. Yeah. But that is what it is. It's not offensively bad. bad. His, and his personality is, okay, you could go along with it. He doesn't achieve anything substantial or, you know, there's no great payoff in the film. But I agree, in terms of just as a character, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, it just, it, it's like I said earlier, it just feels like so many great elements were there that you could have done so much with in this movie. It just feels like a wasted opportunity. Yep, I'm inclined to agree with that. Um, I think I think that there is something here that could have been worthwhile. Whereas I feel like that less so when I look at like Black uh, Black Widow could have been really cool too. But like barely any of the worthwhile stuff was in the film. It was all stuff that you could theorize and talk about. Yeah, different different stories entirely that you could tell. Where well, there is a story here, it's just squandered. Fuck, man, I'm not looking forward to like what's coming next. 
I'm worried about Hawkeye. I'm worried about what they're going to, like, that this is oh, his first God. opportunity to actually star, and they're going to totally discard him. Eternals, it's like, man, how much retconning are we going to do now to, like, introduce these characters in? Super worried about Spider-Man. Um, Doctor Strange, I'm terrified <laughs> what they're going to do. Multiverse of so, yeah. It's written yeah, by it's the guy fun. who made Loki. Like, Yay. That's what it's called. <laughs> upwards. Woohoo. So, All right. th there's a moment in the Spider Man trailer that just, man, is making me not only worried, but it made me even hate the trailer and what they're setting up in the thing. Because my, my massive annoyance, one of the reasons I hated um, Far From Home, was how stupid Peter Parker was. I just felt um, he was, made so many dumb so. decisions and things. But in the trailer for this one, he, he does something astronomically dumb. It's like, what, you haven't thought about the fact that if you erase well, everyone's so memories, your, your, aunt, your aunt and MJ's memories might not be erased. Oh, and you're only bringing it up now? And you're interrupting this crazy, dangerous spell world? Are you a friggin' moron? Well, that's that's the concern, right? Is um, hopefully the trailer is bullshitting us. And that's not how the scene actually plays out is. in real time. I, I, I well, think the, he's the going to be as that, big a moron that, as he was in the last film. And it, um, no. I'm, I, well, so I, I don't think he was a moron in Far From Home. But in terms of this particular scene, the concern is it's like, well, they, they lie in like these Marvel trailers a lot, like to mislead you or like have lines that aren't in there or, or mm. characters appear. Yeah, no, I know. That's the that's so the, the attitude we had with One Division. I think Falcon the Winter Soldier, a little bit even with Loki. Certainly, the wider audiences that were uh, crossing <laughs> yeah. over as was just wait. It, they'll make it make sense. And I am so fucking tired of trying to move <laughs> forward on the back foot all the time. Just why wait. Can't, it'll make sense. Yeah. yeah why can't it guys? make sense? Hopefully. And the, do you guys Initially, remember the concept yeah. of like? What subverting your expectations usually means is like you actually have a through line and then it turns out it's a whole different through line that also makes sense. And you're like, oh shit, yeah. okay. Instead yeah. of none of this makes any sense, maybe it will at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's and again, it's like how much good faith does the MCU get to have at this point? None, zero. Well, if if that's how predictions work, right? We're basing it off past examples, like we are in the dire position right now. Um, I predict that No Way Home is going to be bad. Prediction. Hmm. Because you remember, yes. we were talking about this when we watched Birds of Prey. It's like, do we predict, what do we predict about The Suicide Squad? And we were like, uh, good. I don't, I don't see why it wouldn't be good. It's free control, new IP based on, he's going to take very little from the world that he's a part of, James Gunn. And uh, it turned out to be a, a, a we, we gave it a five. It scored directly in the middle. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, and we were incredibly pleased with it. I yes, I was incredibly That's pleased to right have a now. five. Like, yeah. give me more fives, <laughs> I swear. Like, if the MCU hits Iron Man two levels of quality, like, <laughs> like that. <laughs> That's where it's at now. We Please, miss those days. Give them back. Too, I mean, is this good. now just a result of like bringing in whole new writing staff? I like people who don't... just don't have the experience and the the, the talent to put together films like well, they this. don't have the talent i i yeah. think it i think it's a matter of misplaced priorities in a few regards um i think first of all nobody is interested in writing a story that fits into this universe they want to do their own thing they want to use other characters they want to get that cool aspect of the shared universe sort of format of like hey we can have wong show up an abomination isn't that cool but like we don't really care about how well our story fits into this universe we just want to do whatever we want and then, it like, the, the second thing. one is, Ooh. yeah, and then the second one is just content. There's the next one. Hey, look, guys, get excited for next media and the next show and next movie. Like, you, it feels like um, the, the, uh, the, the cycle for MCU stuff is, like, people were excited in this movie when they saw Abomination in the trailer, and it's like, but you're kind of only excited to see what he will do in the next story. Like, you... Like, it feels like we don't give a fuck about the, the story that we're doing right now. We only care about what's coming next. The next show, the next movie. Oh, man, who are, they, are we going to see Galactus? Oh, look, Celestials, isn't that crazy? Oh, my God, Abomination, yay. It's fucking... And, and, and if you're telling stories with that goal in mind, you're never going to... It's going to be really fucking hard to write something good because it's like your priorities are just totally misplaced. I think it's really noticeable when it's like a legacy character as well, like with Black mm. Widow. It's like, yep, clearly that entire movie was just to get you pumped for, for the new Black Widow. 
Yeah, you basically, know, yeah. like where yeah. this this exists to create it, and it's probably going to be the same for Hawkeye as well. It's like, so yeah. we're going to get you in for Hawkeye because you're like, oh, Hawkeye's going to get his own movie, cool. And it's like, but probably the point of this show is Kate Bishop, like she's the new one, yeah. she'll take over, and it's the same probably with fucking like um uh God, what's um the it'll be the same with Thor. Like, it'll be. It might Hemsworth, be, yeah, it might be. Hemsworth it can't have many more Dude, Thor movies in him. I really don't want yeah. it to be a moment where Hawkeye says, "Don't make my mistakes," to Kate Bishop. Like, I just don't want that scene. <laughs> Please don't. Be like, you can be a better Hawkeye than me. It's just like I fuck kill you. I swear to God. Yeah. <laughs> With your magical vaginal powers. You will be the Hawkeye that I never could be. And it's feels like that's the that's just the thing. Now we're gonna get you in with this character that you like. We're gonna kill them <laughs> or destroy them, but that's okay because there's a better version of them. Because Yelena is better Black Widow, yep, and Kate Bishop will probably be better Hawkeye. She Hulk will probably be better Hulk. Fucking what? Else, what other shit is coming out? Um, Wanda is better than Doctor Strange, even though he kind of came afterward. But I mean, that seems to be yeah. It just feels lame. Like you just sort of transferring the care that people have for certain characters onto these new characters without putting in the effort. And there's no reason, there's no reason why you can't have the passing of the mantle and have it work. It's so like, cynical. You gotta put in the work to do that. Why? It is cynical. Why yeah. do you believe you can't just build up a character on their own? Why? Like, <laughs> just do mm -hmm. it. You can. Well, you yeah, many because times. you, that would, yeah, but that would interrupt the momentum. They just have to keep it moving. They have to keep the assembly line going. And so it just has to be quick and efficient. Get, and this get the is old the one out, get the new one way. in. This is the most efficient way to do it. You're absolutely right. Like, it's way more efficient to have your lane of being Black Widow. Hey, look, you abandoned me. You suck. Not like me. I'm awesome. I had a traumatic experience, but I'm incredibly funny and... Well-adjusted. Well, funny. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm snarky and everybody I'm likes me and I'm really cool. Like I could, yeah. I, you flip your hair. That's weird. And you, sleep. yeah. And and it's hey, weird. look, all right. You can transfer all of that goodwill to me, and then I can do the new Black Widow yeah, I mean, stuff. She shames Black Widow in a scene. She's like, <laughs> "You yep. suck," and Black Widow's like, "I do." She's like, "Yeah, I do suck." Not like you, look, Yelena. You're awesome. <laughs> you, you and your first movie, you are amazing. Yeah, and Black and Widow two be, is yeah, that's, like, that's likely to happen, right? Black Widow two, and it'll just oh, be all it's about you. Yeah. 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 Well, Loki, that, that was really just a bit sad. Oh yeah, yeah, Loki. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and like, if you want to talk yeah, about hum humiliating a character, Jesus Christ, like getting him punched in the face, kicked, kicked in, in the, the balls, pathetic. Have, yeah, how he's yeah, a little no. puppy for her in the whole season. Uh, Remember how he awful. describes her to the other Lokis? He's like, she's incredible. Yeah. Don't Again, it's just exactly right. like what we were saying. It's like she's the new Loki, and she's better than the original. Yeah. So you You've got you have way to like too many more. examples of this. It's getting weird. Like, it's a trend. It's a trend. It's it's a trend at this point. This is just the way that it's done. God, and like I they're gonna it. look back at one point and be like, "Wait a minute, people don't love the new characters. What happened? We did all of the things we were supposed to do, right?" It's like, <laughs> I guess you could say that. Right. I guess that. But people do. People fucking love Yelena. I, I just, I kind of working. hold out hope that she won't I guess, yeah. be, like, it's a different kind of love, for, for how weird as that sounds, the kind of Twitter love that dies after a week, where it's like, <laughs> she's amazing. You forget it's it like, happened, yeah. Yeah, like, it's like, oh, my favorite character, you know, it's, you take someone who adored Black Widow in a year's time, you ask them, uh, who's Yelena, and they're like, uh, the mum, I think? <laughs> and you're like, yeah. Yeah, how many people are gonna remember? Like, people don't remember what Captain Marvel was about. Like, nobody remembers. nobody remembers that plot line, dude. People who hated Captain Marvel have trouble with it too. I don't blame them. Like, the plot line for these movies is all meshing together. Who's gonna remember Shang Chi's fucking plot line? Oh my god, this is like some kind <laughs> the of magical nightmare forest dystopia. with the dragons behind the wall that suck souls. No one's gonna remember this. It's like. Yeah, it's like you just you go in and you absorb this garbage for like a couple hours and then walk out with no idea what you've just seen and then it just fades away and then you move on to the next thing and you're not even sure why you're excited for it anymore. Like Jesus. This is this is movies now. <laughs> this is what we this is what we're consuming. I I you know, I I do hope in some ways that it crashes and burns and it forces them to get better at their fucking jobs. Like, oh, absolutely. I want it to crash and burn. It needs it to. We need though. a reset. It ain't. It ain't, though. People... It's, it ain't. It's That's still, right. It's not It's not gonna happen. This movie is doing better than well, I thought I'm, it would. Well, I'm talking um, long term, like maybe in ten years, sort of oh, thing. 
Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure that they're because I think they recently confirmed the dates for eight more movies in like 23 and 24. Uh, they're doing uh, four movies a year now. Yeah, and they're doing like five shows a year too. I'm pretty sure there are like five shows coming out next year. Genuinely going to be hard for us to keep up as soon as the Star Wars uh, shows start rolling out as well. Well, yeah, because they got to pump those ones out too. At least we won't have yeah. we won't be running out of things to talk about, guys. Hey, we're just on <laughs> trains. <laughs> Uh, yeah. No, <laughs> just, I'm sorry. I just, I just feel tired now. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel tired. <laughs> it's so like too much content. It's like I had, it's like I had a nice ice cream once, and then someone was like, "Oh, you like this fucking ice cream, do you? Well, I've got ten more <laughs> gallons here, and I'm gonna make you eat all of it." It's no. a silo that just pumps into your house. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, the thing that's... is, I oh, mean, go ahead. it also means if the content doesn't improve, though, like I didn't want to watch Shang Chi. I like it. I was not interested in it, but I did want to review it because I had a lot of my audience who was wanting to get feedback and to find out what it was. So I watched it for them. But it almost feels like I have to punish myself now for all this crap. Like I don't want to watch the Eternals. Or that whatever they are. But Eternals and, uh, probably going to be super important, like in terms of long term. Yeah goals if they're introducing celestials and stuff this is probably like one of the more important ones so i was like yeah. well guess i gotta watch it now i don't watch it i just I didn't want to watch feeling something. this this is going to end up being all that's on you know what i mean Marvel. like you know yeah. in demolition man how like the only restaurant that's left is taco bell <laughs> like it, it's going to be like that like you go to the cinema and fucking all that you'll be able to watch is marvel movies the There'll be nothing channel. else that's the concern isn't it because when you look at the stuff that's coming out it's mainly Marvel stuff that is consistently making money, but someone like said, reliably. Someone said with the profit they made from Endgame, it would take flops for a decade to even see losses from that. Is that true? For like the well, Endgame made two and a half billion dollars on I think combined budget marketing of something like six hundred million dollars. Um, so yeah. that's a lot of money. That, and of course, you got that's funding for like six more movies. Easily. I was going to say they clearly it's amazing to watch, but they're clearly trying to catch Star Wars back up with the MCU after TLJ and Solo, mm -hmm. and so like yeah. they're going to pump out TV shows and movies for both sides of these IPs just everywhere. Disney are just they're just everywhere. Well, you know for a fact they'd buy it all if a, they could. They've turned it into such an efficient process where that. Like, where you can have one studio producing, like, four movies and four TV shows a year that can come out every couple of months, so it's never not on. You get access to, like, all of the talent you want in terms of actors, visual effects, set design, and all that. Like, you... <laughs> it's like it's like a, a snowball that just keeps building up, and it's like the momentum isn't just doesn't seem to be stopping. Like, it, would, it's, it seems... It, the fact that they got eight dates confirmed for, like, the next two years... That, that that shows like an astounding level, maybe not astounding, but just like such a high level of confidence in this IP that it would take several failures for them to probably reconsider yeah, what they're doing. Like the effects of all of these really shitty things, it may t take some time for us to actually see the results of them. I, we're I would we're say calling so, it out I think, now, yeah. but maybe audiences will eventually when they realize like I don't find maybe. the need to watch any of this stuff ever again. Maybe I didn't think it was that good. I don't know. Maybe, it's, yeah. You know, it's got me wondering as well, like, they, they've obviously done it with Marvel, they're doing it with Star Wars. Are they going to do it with Indiana Jones as well? Because this could be another yeah. example of, like, he's, Maybe, you know, yeah. Ford's getting retired, if they're talking about money, bringing in Phoebe Waller-Bridge as, like, some kind of new Indiana Jones. Are they then just going to start pumping out Indiana Jones movies every year or two? A TV show, I think probably. If, spin off. If they could, they would. If I think that's the big thing. If Honestly, they could, they would, so. It wouldn't surprise me if they just do this format with almost everything. Like, there's an Indiana Jones TV show, Harrison Ford it cameos in episode one, and it's mainly about, I don't know, a family member or Phoebe Waller-Bridge, and it does well enough because of the amount of money they pump into it and plaster it everywhere, that then they make three shows about the Indiana Jones universe with different characters. It's just like, Jesus Christ, stop. I Please saw, stop. Because I, I just saw someone in chat say, there will be a tipping point where everyone gets over it. I remember in, like, 2013, when people were saying there's too much Marvel stuff coming out. Yep. Like um, when they looked at the slate yeah. for the Remember, next few years, and there is three times people. more content. There's like three times more content coming out now 
than at that time. Dude, I'm, and people are not bored of it. I've been watching Red Light Media for a long time, and I remember them back in Phase 2 being like, the fatigue is setting in. This is the fatigue is here. Yeah. It's like... Yeah. And they've even said, and like, yeah, we've been wrong about that a couple times at this point. It's like, yeah, you, it's hard to tell, honestly. I think so. Um... And it just it just seems like they've they've almost honed into the the perfect way to do it, which is constantly tease. We have enough money that we can get any of the actors and like the characters whenever we want. Yeah, I I, I don't know. I I get super worried thinking about the future of this series and just content in general, media. And plus, this has gone on so long. We're talking about you're just getting think of all the new people who grow up and get to that age where they're interested exactly. in this. Just new people rolling in. It's like Star Wars. Yeah. It's like generations. And it's, yeah, it's all ready to bit. be picked up on these streamings. It's like, come in, come watch. And come then on, they start with IMM got, one and they're like, wow, this is neat. And then I honestly not no offense to like kids and stuff, but they'll watch I have ad, they'll eventually see Shang Chi, they won't tell the difference. They're just like, This is fun. I love all of this. Fun adventures through yeah. space and time. Who knows what'll happen next? I'm so excited to see Abomination, that incredible villain from The Incredible Hulk, <laughs> 2008. He had his ears. That was the big complaint, right? He didn't he did have, have his ears. His ears. Yeah. And now he does have his ears. See, they're listening to you. What, is he a character? <laughs> well, that doesn't really matter. <laughs> He's here. That's all that matters. Well, I mean, to a degree... The consumers dig their own grave, right? We we understand this. This is reciprocal. You have to defeat it from the ground up as well as trying to tell the writers oh, to do yeah. better. It's, it starts it starts with us. Now the writers are telling us to do better now. Oh yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. We need to do better, all right. Welcome to the Doom of Podcast. Where yes. We talk about uh, how everything sucks. As you could see, there was very few things we even complimented about this film. We tried. Yeah. Uh, it's unpleasant to watch. The character, the main character, is thin as fuck and acted by someone who I'm not sure he cared that much. Like I'm trying to go from like how I felt right now, and I'm just like it. It just wasn't much of anything. This film, and then most of it, I was just getting like annoyed at how much I can't make sense of anything. Like yeah, there's not that much that I think it. And I guess that, that would be the question, right, is even if we put aside all of these plot issues and things that we've talked about, what exactly are you, what, the people who really love this film, what are you pulling from it? What is it, what is it about the film that is so amazing? I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I really don't. I mean, uh, well, right at the beginning, when I was talking about the screenshots from Cinema Wins, one of the things he points out as a plus that wins for Black Widow is a huge point of flaw for me in my video. Yeah. So sometimes you just, you just got no fucking clue what's going on. You'll have remember the guy we covered who said Loki finally makes the world make sense now, <laughs> and we were just sitting there like, "Are you fucking nuts? Like, what the hell?" Just, I wonder I if, work. yeah, I wonder if sometimes these people just read the room and it's like, ah, the general consumer sentiment is positive for this movie, so mm, fuck it, I'll just think up just some reasons to praise it. Loki's good. Do you have a career to think about? Totally makes sense. And Loki goes on a great arc. That's what people probably want me to say. I mean, and this is the thing. I was pretty critical of Loki, and yeah, like I didn't get a great response to that review, and I was surprised. You know, I just, that I, one is surprising. Yeah, really I, is I, I was like, "Are you guys, are you people seeing a different show than the one I saw?" Because like, man, they had serious problems. I honestly think it's because of Tom Hiddleston and how fun the dynamic is and how crazy it all is. Like, whoa, different multiverses traveling through time. It's, oh, it's so interesting. The '60s like, aesthetic is cool. Yeah, and it's funny. I'm sure they described it as funny. Like, it's this is what I mean because you get, of course, right. The next film to come out, Eternals. If we have a whole stream shitting all over it. There can be plenty of people who even watch EFAB and be like, you guys just hate everything that comes out for Marvel. Apparently none of it has been good. And all I can do is say, like, we've gone through these in detail. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know what else you want us to do. Uh, the Suicide Squad, if that was in the MCU for whatever reason, that would have been a, a positive review, I guess. Yeah, it's like, do we yeah. have to go back now and, like, cover good ones? <laughs> like, we have to go and yeah, cover yeah. Iron Man yeah. or something? But I mean, Eternals is one of those ones where I'm like, I'm kind of super interested because there's this clear push that's happening now in the marketing that like, man, an Oscar winning director is making this one. 
So like, if it was like they're doing that hardcore push of like, nah, see, this is now we're doing some real high art shit, and then we'll probably watch <laughs> it. It's probably going to be sludge. Like, it's probably, it's probably what it will be again. I, I mean, it, it looks really it, it looks like a film with not an ounce of personality to it. Like all the trailers yeah. I've watched, I have just looked at this like this is like a fucking bowl of porridge. Like it just does absolutely nothing. It feels like it's sludge and that it's retroactive. Sort of I've said this so many times. It feels <laughs> like it's retroactively trying to market it as like high art when it probably started as sludge. Yeah, because because of the name yeah. they've got attached to it. That's the only. Well, reason. because she won an Oscar after. Yeah, she won an Oscar, so it's like oh shit. Um, but then and then it's a question of like. How much freedom do you have? And even if you have freedom, what does that mean if, like, your priorities when telling the story are to tell your own story rather than try to fit it into the Which end? is only going to get this, worse the more time goes on. It it, can only oh, it get keeps worse. getting worse and worse because it becomes harder and harder to justify. Like, why didn't the Eternals show up to fight Thanos? You can't have that line in the trailer and just be like, oh, we told we weren't allowed to. It's like, <laughs> that this that is line hard I mean, honestly annoyed me so much when I watched the yeah. trailer because not long Stupid. after the line, they're trying to say how much they love Earth and all yeah. that stuff. It's like, yeah. oh, yeah, you love Earth, except when you're told not to help it. It's like, come yeah. off it. That line is you not You don't love it that much, to... do you? <laughs> yeah. You have a, well, you have an, you have a passing love. affection, a fling at most. The interesting definition of love. <laughs> I'll just say that. I much. mean, the way that you would justify it, or be able to justify it, is that the, um, the celestial beings literally took away their powers and made them regular people during the events of what's happened in the MCU. That would, that's the only way you could almost pull it to do, explain what yeah. they, they're not getting involved. But I don't think they're going to do that. I think they're going to have, have had their powers. And I bet the writers think that explanation we were told not to will be in Saturday. They think I that's think they think that's it, enough. Guys. We got it. Yep. That'll do it. I, that'll I, do the job. I absolutely think that they think that that's enough. And it ain't. Uh, <laughs> and it just, ain't. Yeah, it really isn't. It really isn't. It just is not. Uh, so Don't I you. find it really interesting to think about like what the average regular, you know, average Joe person, how they gauge quality in movies. Um, and I find it, yeah, it's just a very interesting thing. And what I'm kind of seeing, especially with the reaction to like legitimately bad movies, right, that people say are great, is because they uh, enjoy really surface level stuff, you know, action, funny, hey, I laughed, therefore it's good, or I enjoy it, therefore it's good. And I do find, uh, part of the reason why I find that interesting because I apply it to myself and try and think about, all right, what are the legitimately bad things I've watched that I've enjoyed? And, I, you know, I actually enjoyed The Mandalorian, but for very surface level basic stuff. And so sometimes I think our own standards or needs are very minimal. Uh, we don't need much. And uh, if we get given that small little bit, we will just accept and consume, basically. And it's kind of depressing when we equate it to quality, though, because... Well, you know, like, um, like, those little bits we were talking about fixing, little fixes here and there, like that thing with the archer, or the like maybe with the dad, he really tries to save the dad, and the dad is just, like, unsavable because of the dragon, and all these different, like, decisions are throughout. It would have made me like the movie more if I could see that mm -hmm. they failed to do what, like, some good-hearted storytelling. They were just like, you can tell they were trying to do, and you're like, I could feel for it, just I wish you had done it better, blah, blah, blah. Um, well, the other... The, the other side to how I think regular people could see, even though sometimes it doesn't take much for them to uh, end up liking something, uh, give them flashy lights, an action scene, you know, big spectacle, they'll like it. I think even the average moviegoer still at, un, almost subconsciously has a standard or, or understanding of what true quality is, and it's reflected by the movies that truly remain and have a reputation that lasts longer than their own. Like, no one's going to be talking about Shang-Chi in 10 years. No. It's going to be forgotten. Oh, wow. It's a piece of crap. And uh, nothing it, nothing in this movie that people watched really impacted them on a deep emotional level that they're going to carry with them for their life. Like, uh, 
compare that to that emotional payoff in The Last Jedi with Luke versus Vader. That is something that hits with Return such impact. Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi. <laughs> yeah, Return of the Jedi. Uh, oh, goodness. Return of the Jedi. That it hits yeah, with such When that sentence started, I was like, impact. Yeah. Hmm, yeah. yeah, where's this going? Yeah. yeah, hits with such emotional impact that it stays with someone for their whole life. And so even if they can't voice or are able to look at a movie in really deep detail of the writing, the structure and all that stuff, I think even regular people have this deeper understanding of something of a type of movie or quality of story that it actually means something and it's reflected by those shows and movies that stick with us in the long run that we remember fondly back in the day and even can actually change us a bit on an emotional level because it impacted us so much those are the yeah. things that really last and i think even I mean, regular movie goers for, right? have that sense exactly even regular average joes have that sense and so all these you know, uh, uh, um, essayists who make film reviews and stuff and mm. trying to justify how great Shane Chi is. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's see what you say in 10 years. And you might still say it's good, but really, is it that good? How many people are remembering Shane Chi with true fondness? You know, I think that says a lot more. Well, you're in luck because you might get that wonderful moment from Return of the Jedi. Like again, Vader's going to be turning up in the Obi-Wan TV show. Maybe we'll have plenty of payoff for you. Enjoy, isn't it? I'm sure you'll love it, Shad. That's not going to be a nightmare to watch either. <laughs> Aiden Christensen yeah. in the suit, and he'll be like, Obi-Wan, right, you're a dick. <laughs> it's going to be great. It's, it's like watching die. someone take all your, your treasured possessions and burn them. <laughs> <laughs> like... And do a funny dance while right, they yeah, just, right like, before it, yeah. they pick up whatever particular character it is, and then they say, "This person is this now, completely opposite of what they were." And then they toss them into the fire. You're like, right, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Don't you like my new character though? <laughs> His name is Schlieb. He's Ap better than Luke ever was. Appreciate Schlieb. <laughs> Appreciate Schlieb, please, please. He's good, isn't he? He's wonderful. God, He's amazing. Because, you know, everyone wants to see more stuff with Rey. Everyone loved her. She was great. <laughs> Luke, yeah. though, you know, when he showed up at the end of Mandalorian Season 2, I, from what I could tell, everybody was very upset. Everyone was very sad. Yeah. They're like, oh, not this asshole. Not this character. Know. No one likes this character. If Rey were there, <laughs> it would have been so... That would have been pretty funny, actually. Oh my god, <laughs> imagine if she... <laughs> <laughs> I built a time machine to come back here <laughs> and do all this. I bypassed the compressor, don't worry. Yeah. I, I can't create paradoxes. Bypassed the timeline. Um, yeah, we'll probably move into Super Chats now, and so I want to offer the, the, a chance for um, good old escape. Shadowversity and Critical Drinker. You've been wonderful, both of you, and this is your uh, escape hatch option. You can run away now. Tragically, yeah, I think I'm going to have to get into that escape pod mm. um because i've got to be up pretty early tomorrow but it has been it's been an experience talking about shang chi again and reliving it oh yeah uh, uh... but i can't think of a better bunch of lads to do it with so there we <laughs> ah! go. so nice uh do you want to wanna, not that they wouldn't know at this point but do you want to tell chat where they can find you and why they should subscribe i'm the critical drinker and you can find me on youtube i talk about movies that's 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 what I got. Why do you talk about movies? Why do you hate? Uh, I like them. Well, I used to like them. I find myself <laughs> liking them less as time goes on. Hmm. But I do. I do try to sprinkle in like positive reviews of older stuff that I've I've really enjoyed in my my lifetime. So I try to get a little bit of a balance. And yeah, I'm. If it comes to pointing out the problems with modern movies, I'll try and be fair about it and at least get into some kind of analysis. Um, and occasionally I talk about just general stuff about how storytelling is done these days and the differences uh, with how it used to be. So, yeah, that is that is the basis of my channel. Mm -hmm. Link. Hey, before you go, Drinker, I just wanted to say, um, also watched Invincible and I really liked it um, because I saw your review on it as well. Um, and so I would encourage people to go watch Drinker's review. Invincible, wow, because weaves. that's one of the few things of recent, in recent media that is at least been half decent and actually had some really, really good moments for it. And so, you know, sometimes stuff is made in the modern day that actually is worth a damn, and Invincible is one of them. And so, recommend. Nice one. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, 
I think uh, we will we will likely be doing some other things as the, as time goes on. I'll probably message you about it, but of course, thank you so much for hanging out with us for fucking almost six hours, probably, uh, to, just to talk about this incredible movie. And uh, it was better than the last like one where you, it was like your your anniversary special, and I was in for about an hour. <laughs> it's about all I had. <laughs> Yeah, but that there wasn't as much of an interesting conversation. You know, you were so invested in Shang Chi. I had to make sure you were here for this because that's you know, true. One of your favorites. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's been fun, man. And uh, we shall catch you around. All right. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much for having me, guys. Doodles. See bye you. bye. Wow, he didn't even Save say me. the thing. He didn't. He didn't go um, go away now. Wow. All all of chat's gonna be upset about that. Uh, Shad, are you you hanging out or are you running off? Well, well here, here's the thing, Mauler. Um, mm -hmm. uh, do you want to guess where I am right now? You are in uh, Spain. I'm not in Spain. Hmm. Mars. Not Mars. Uh, that's my two options. I don't know. Okay, I don't know. No. Mm -hmm. Free two Where genders. Are you still in Canada? I am actually not in Canada. So that would logically mean, where am I? Huh. Are you back? You back in Aussie land? Well, this is, sorry, if I am back in Australia, that actually has a hanging implication of a current circumstance. Can you connect oh, the dots? Oh, uh, you're stuck. Yeah. You're oh, stuck. my you're God. Yeah. Where am I stuck, Frigging? Where am I stuck? Are you, no, don't tell me, are you stuck in like a hotel? Airport? I am in hotel quarantine at the moment. Oh, okay. Oh, shit. Right. I'm in friggin' oh, yeah. hotel quarantine for two friggin' weeks. Oh, I'm shit. not kidding. Oh, Damn. Man, and, so and, 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 oh, yeah, right, right, right. And they, they force you to pay for it as well. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so $3,000 uh, for oh, the privilege geez. of oh, being man. in hotel quarantine. The privilege. For two weeks. <laughs> the privilege. <laughs> And Damn. holy crap, uh, like, you guys, have you played Fallout? You know, when you're, you're getting uh, escorted through all these, like, um, processes with security and everything? Mm -hmm. That's what it was like getting off the plane. You are met by police everywhere, and you are funneled. Damn. Christ, you'd think it was the end of fucking civilization or something. I, it was, it's it's insane. It is insane, right? And so you got off papers, please. Fill out all this stuff and all this crap and get shuttled, literally shuttled off on a bus with a police escort, with police meeting you at the thing. And step here, move here, step there, stay there. Make sure, no, don't, don't get too close. They treat you like you are dis like legitimately plagued. I like, like it, even on one of the counters, right? Um, they ask for papers, but then they ask you to hold the paper in front of them so they don't have to touch it. Because Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ, everyone's what Jesus. If, what if you not... instead of spending that three, can you just buy a hazmat suit and promise you'll stay in it? <laughs> like, oh, I can't. Uh, <laughs> don't even get me started. And so yeah, I'm in hotel quarantine, and part of the How much money. Do you have? Pay... Sorry, what? How much longer do you have? Before... Uh, yeah. You've you finished so, uh, about a week and a half left. Um, does that so... does that mean the reason you're telling us all this is that you would you welcome all and any distractions? Basically, I, I have all the time in the world. Though I am expecting some important calls now and then, so I might duck out. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna you like know, phone call to eat, but I'm, I'm pretty him. much I can, I can stay forever because. Uh, yeah, the food sucks, by the way, here in Corinth. And they, <laughs> yeah, they force you to pay for the food, and the food's crap. And so I've had to pay for it, but there's so much going to waste. And can then you I order in stuff to be I delivered? Can, I can order in, but it has to be delivered to the reception, and then they have to take it to my room, leave it in front of my door, knock on the door, and then they run away because they can't have gone. <laughs> I've, dude, I've done that once or twice where I've, uh, like when we're uh, doing EFAPs and stuff, and you know, eight hours go by and you get hungry, I'll order a pizza or something delivered. And sometimes those mother. Fuckers at DoorDash decide what they're going to do is they're just going to put the pizza down on the ground in front of your door and, and then just fuck off. Do they not knock? No. Well, how well, are you supposed to knock? Right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, and they they've done that you? multiple. They've done that multiple times where there's like a. So if I go to a, the pizza places website and order something, have it delivered, I guess they use DoorDash or whatever to have it be delivered. So I know it's coming and I know to like go out there and check. 
but multiple times they have not knocked and just left the pizza there because the people who work for DoorDash are subhuman scum oh my God. who don't have two brain cells to rub together and make a spark. That's just that's the kind of dumb shit that infuriates me. I don't How get it. How like, stupid do you have to be to do that? It's got to be less beneficial to them as well. Like if they just so it said, check if you have no contact delivery set. That literally doesn't matter. No contact. Well, even if delivery. it's non-contact, I've had no non-contact, but I still ring the doorbell. Well, I, I was yeah, going like, to say, you if should, you are yeah. that worried that knocking the door might get you caught, can you at least be like, "Hello"? Then no. how do you operate? Just how are, how do you keep your senses well, together use to a glove. operate in society? Use a, or use, or a glove, use a stick. Or just... <laughs> Throw the. Now, like, stick if you're away. this fucking stick, terrified over <laughs> coronavirus, and when an actual crisis happens, you're going to be fucked. The... <laughs> get a baseball bat and smash the door. Like, open up, please. You come outside. FBI, just see open the up. Here's your pizza. <laughs> or just throw the pizza through the window attached to a brick. <laughs> That's another option. <laughs> I think Rags well, might hey, be a little look. angrier at that point. Well, well, I mean, come on. Like, it's 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 still not good. <laughs> I mean, if I if I had not known that it was coming and went out to like check for it. Or coincidentally, I have a, like a window open or open enough to where I could see when people pass in front of it, and I'm like, "Oh, that must be the the well, delivery guy." Does, is there like a thing on your phone that is like, "Hey, your order's here. Come get it." No. Oh, that's bizarre. I know Uber has that. They're like, "Hey, it's here. Come get your now." Food. Some so sometimes I get like called by the delivery person because they're like, "I can't find your place," and I have to tell them where it is. Um, Can you right. request they call you on delivery, or at least try that? Uh, well, I, 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 I could, I can see them. Yeah. I could see them in the window as they, as they walk right. by to do the thing. At so, least is that, yeah, yeah. But like, if I, if ever, I do know that if I did go out there at any time and it was just sitting out there cold outside, I would call back and say, "You're gonna bring me another one." Is what you're gonna fucking do? Because this is unacceptable, and you hire the dumbest motherfuckers I've ever seen. I remember, uh, I think it was one time when I talked about it on EFAP, but I ordered something, and then it was like an hour later that it came, and it was the wrong order. And I said that, and he's like, oh, you sure? It's like, yeah, no, I, I, know, I know what I ordered. And yeah, I know not, not to, uh, yeah, I know um, not to order things I'm allergic to. Well, what and, the... and then, yeah, like, he was like, oh, well, you know, like, do you want me to, like, you don't have to pay it. I, I can't remember what he said, but it was like such a terrible suggestion. It's like, dude, this isn't what I wanted, like. <laughs> I don't want it. The best. Why you yeah, you, you, yeah, I paid for a thing, and you didn't bring me that thing. What do you think yeah. fucking happens next? It's like, oh, idiot. I got another order. It's like, well, is that my fault? Like, <laughs> you brought me the wrong Here's food. what you can do. If it's too late, you can bring one to me tomorrow, or you can bring one immediately, which is what you need <laughs> to be doing. Yeah. Um. The best example that ever happened to me was I ordered a pizza, and they rang the bell, I came and collected, and they handed me a, um, a tub of Ben & Jerry's ice cream. I was like so beyond confused. This is before I knew they even sold those. <laughs> I was like, this is far from what I ordered. <laughs> like, I don't. <laughs> yeah, there are degrees of food, food that are much closer. I think, I, think, I think my favorite part was like, in this particular instance, the guy's like, oh, but this is what it says on the bag. It's like, okay, it's still not the right order. Like, I don't know what you want me to say. <laughs> You're explaining why the mistake occurred. It's still a mistake. Someone screwed up, and it's not me, so I don't know what I'm someone, meant to do here. Someone said, someone said, it's quite simple, Rags. If you want them to knock, just put it in the special instructions. All right, so one, they don't give a shit about special instructions. Oops, I sorry. promise you they don't, because Shouldn't I always put, because every time they call, it's where the hell is your unit or whatever, even though that's what I was putting in the special instructions, because they always call and ask. They don't give a fuck about special instructions. But there also, is no connection between when you put that in for your order and the person actually like reading that. Second, I should not have to give people special instructions to do like baseline level yeah. of Knocking things. Like door. I should probably knock the door so they know that they're pizza, which in the summer I am just leaving outside of their house. You know, it, there That's is special instruction, right? This is 100% their fault. It is their screw up beyond all measure. Any attempt to try and pass this on to be my issue is insane. I love no, how you guys fault. don't understand how Didi and UE operate, that it's much easier, more financially sufficient for the driver to just move on to the next order and you call customer support. Why would you ever assume that, like, if you had this happening again and again with multiple ones, that it wouldn't cause major issues? 
Like, what what defense is that anyway? It I makes don't even the know. Like, yeah, the idea is customer so, experience. Again, you have them dropping the cold pizza, or rather, it becomes cold to rags because they're just like, I ain't knocking, which is so fucking stupid, by the way. It costs you like a half second to just fucking knock. And then they do it to the next person, and the next person, and then they start getting a flood of calls of people being like, I want a hot pizza, also wrong order, also blah blah blah. And it's like, it's fine, they make money overall. It's like, what do you. No, <laughs> you really I don't think there will be any discipline for this? It's not an argument. It's just, it's, well, it's, it's like they're shooting themselves in the foot and it's like, they can survive. It's like, just stop shooting yourself in the foot. Like, why the fuck I are you like, doing that? Why would I stop shooting myself in the foot and make it, you know? It's like, it's, oh, it's, who cares if make shitty movies in the MCU? They'll survive. It's like, I think it'd be better if they made yeah. good movies. <laughs> like, what? Exactly. What a bizarre argument for not knocking on the door. <laughs> Like, I just love the idea. It's like you don't right. understand how this works. It's like Rags is complaining about someone doing something fucking lame. It doesn't matter if it's financially viable. Like, why the fuck is that even coming up? So wait, Rags, are you ordering through the DoorDash app or the pizza place? I'm ordering through the pizza place, and for whatever reason, I guess they use DoorDash or they, because every place around here is hiring. You'd think that coronavirus fucking wiped out everyone like it's the black goddamn plague because every place around here is hiring and people are not going out and getting some goddamn jobs. But I, I guess they're outsourcing of... to yeah. DoorDash or whatever. And so though they are just... often the people who come and arrive. Isn't that because they're getting heaps of like welfare payments that they just don't need to work at the moment and they're like just mooching off stuff? Is that the case in the United States though? I don't know. That's one of the reasons we had that I've the, floating around. We had Trump had a couple and I think there was a there was at least a couple. Um but I don't know if there's been any I don't think there's been any well, reason. I would imagine ones the reason why everybody's though. hiring is because um you just have the thing of like unemployment is going back down again. Well, I think they had to up again. I think around here and because like especially restaurants and places, there was a period of time where it was like half capacity and everyone had to do this and that and they had to da 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 da. So when you have less, you know, half the people you could serve at one time in a restaurant, you don't need the staff. So they just they just have to let people go um, or they just don't get work anyway. And now that everything's back to normal here, I guess people haven't been rehired yet, but it's like everywhere. There are places like the CVS isn't open 24 seven anymore. Places aren't open on Saturdays. There's just, there's all every place places is hiring. Aren't open on Waffle Saturdays. House. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, well, if it's a restaurant and it's not open on Saturday, you're like, damn, they're missing out on a lot of money. Cause they ain't got people. It's just so weird that, but you yeah, know, I, cause I've heard that, that a lot of companies are having trouble finding people to fulfill, to fill jobs. And it's just, it's really bizarre thing. Um, is, well, so, uh, I'm assuming then you're going to hang around then, Chad? Or? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I'll be if for uh, well, just to hang out. And again, don't mind me if I have to just briefly pause to take a call or do something. But sure. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sticking around, guys. No. What, the, what else am I going to do? No problemo. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, who knows? You might well, want to. Go watch I some did YouTube come videos or something. Yeah, I, I did come prepared. Say, yeah, I got lots of I got work I could do if I think, uh, you know, editing and other stuff. And but still, I'm um, in a good position where, yeah, I'll just stick around. So, what tip are you getting from a half-filled place? Well, if there's half the workers and the place is half full, you probably get the same amount. Um, now, I will say that when we would go to like Waffle House and places when it was half capacity, the servers hated it because the more tables they do the more money they make um Not so really. they're yeah they're like yeah we we hate this stuff uh we you know the sooner it can get back to normal the better especially when people like lose their jobs because of it because there's just not enough money coming in to support the same amount of workers than there used to be when you run in half capacity so some not open 24 7 is a very american complaint though so i don't know so what a bizarre thing to say but i specifically said cvs so cvs's are typically open 24 7 and they had to get rid of the 24 7 stuff and it's currently done and it's not like open 24 7 because they don't have the staff so they don't that entire shift just doesn't happen anymore. I was gonna say, we, the funny the same thing happened with us uh, we had 24-hour tesco stores but they've i don't know about all of them countrywide but uh, a lot of them now are not 24-hour because of what happened which which 
sucks because it's it's really good. It's super useful to have some place really, really close that's open 24-7 yeah. in case you're just up late or it's 11, 12. Yeah, I, uh, I and you just need to go out and get wish, something. I do luckily, stuff here was open for luckily, the come and go is 24-7. Uh, and I can go there and get a snack or whatever if I need to at night. But it used to be I'd w I would walk to the CVS a couple blocks away, and I would I, I could get it's basically a mini grocery store. You can get uh, all kinds of little goodies there, and they got mm. some good deals and stuff. So I'd go there if it was 3 a.m. and I was just up and I wanted to stretch my legs and get something, restock of milk or bread or anything like that. CVS was there, but now I. Eh. Next time you order DJ, it'll prompt you. No, I don't use Dora. You fucking dipshit. Jesus Christ. I'm not going to explain it again. You could rewind the fucking tape. Rags, it's not on a tape. It's on a stream. <laughs> on a stream. You can the rewind stream. the digital thing. You can. The stream. Strumbly. Um. Well, all right then. Strap in, everyone. Now yeah. it's time for the Super Chats. Uh, opening strong with High Rags. Hello. Molly, you're a Lisbonius today. Hi, Froggy. Yay. Oh, hello, Froggy. That's fine with me. I'll be a Lisbonius. I heard Molly talk about Unforgiven. If I've never seen a Western, is it wrong to start with that one? Um, nah. I would not start out with it. Honestly, I wouldn't recommend starting with it, but you could. Like this, you know. You could, yeah. But it benefits greatly from you having taken in other Western movies and then watching Unforgiven. You will through cultural osmosis probably benefit from what the movie's saying regardless, but I would recommend seeing some westerns that are more uh, typical. Yeah, so you can watch some of the... It probably would help to watch some of the classics, like A Fistful of Dollars and yes. things. I didn't mention that. Fistful of Dollars. Surprising how well they hold up. Yeah, you could do 310 to Yuma is a good one. The Quick and the Dead. Once Upon a Time in the True West. True Grit. True Grit. Both of them. Um, and then if you watch some of those, and then you watch Unforgiven, I think it'll it'll work better. But Unforgiven's fantastic. Yeah, but there are also there are many fantastic westerns. In some, like if you're gonna want to watch as little as possible to get to it, maybe the Dollars trilogy would be the the idea because it, in some ways, it does feel like the character's history is that trilogy, and so, like potentially. Butch um, Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Oh, Rango. Rango's really cool. Rango's a western. Yep. Rango. Rango. Oh, yeah, there you go. Watch Django as well. <laughs> and Django. And, uh, hell, yeah, you could watch, um, uh, the, 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 the Hateful Eight. Hateful Eight. And the Magnif- Oh, the Magnificent Seven. Yeah. Watch them both. I, I think... like the new one. I, I watched the new one. I remember enjoying it. Is Chris Pratt in that? That's all I remember. He is, yeah. 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 Hey, where's Frank Grimes' car in the parking lot at the nuclear plant? Why Why would his car be there specifically? Do you remember the joke in the episode when <laughs> did you backed up his car and destroyed <laughs> Frank Grimes' Oh, yeah. Grimes Tombstone, car. Blazing Saddles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was such Down a great under. joke. Yeah, that's enough. One. Yeah. Oh, why'd you hit Letty? What are you doing? He was in my way, Fringy. Oh, and, and that's an excuse a to hurt I've your friends. Much. He was in. Does Mad Max my count as a western? Ah, uh, nah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I don't think I call Mad Max a western. It's got a different. It's got a different. I mean, sort of, kind Mad of. Max the second is more one, post maybe. Apocalypse, I think. I feel yeah, like yeah. Apocalypse counts as a this genre. Um. I might count way. the second one little westerny because by, by the the general story ish um stranger from out of town had to rough and needs to protect the town so it's kind of got that vibe to it which a lot of westerns sort of have but um yeah i would uh yeah i mean i that, that's a that's a i guess a quadrilogy that i need to rewatch uh the mad maxes because mm -hmm. i haven't seen them in I'm just thinking of Paul Lenny still. Ow, my eye! It's not supposed to get cars in it. Yeah. The one thing to avoid. It's poor eye. Remember the one where it's like the Omni goggles or something? The guy opens a newspaper and the the uh, the, the, the rubber band hits him in the face. And it's like, I'm yeah. all right, folks. 
thanks to my Omni Gogs and Letty, a little late for Letty with the freaking eye patch. <laughs> this poor eye. All right, they got an eye wash station in this place, so. Oh, the, here, Letty, you look hungry. Have some nuts. <laughs> and then it's just a spring. It's like sticking out Stuck of his, his eye. eye. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was it, Mo? Like, Homer, get out of here. You sure seem angry, Mo. Here, have some nuts. Gee, thanks. <laughs> Even though he's just seen it go into <laughs> his eye. Lord Longbone of Mewchlington Abbey. Have you given any more thought to Kong Fab or Peter Jackson's Thong Kong when there's less going on? It would be a movie fab for the ages. P.S. Hello, Wagsies. Scritch is for the good boy. Oh, hello. And, uh, yeah, it'll happen one day. That's just, I don't know what else to tell you. It'll happen one day. Because uh, I, am, I am interested I, to see that one again. I saw somebody mention Deadwood. I'd like to watch Deadwood. I only hear good I things went about there. it. Well, but the, the place where they filmed it? No, Deadwood, the oh, South okay. Dakota. That's right. where, um, that's where Wild Bill Hick Hickok died. Calamity Jane was there. It's it's, uh, it's kind of interesting. I'm just thinking about like American sort of Western and how, because in Australia, I think I think you could consider basically like the the sort of um, bush ranger stuff is essentially our version of Western. Well, like I would Ned consider Kelly. Quigley Down Under a Western, and that's Australia. That yeah, takes I, place in Australia. yeah, exactly. I, I feel like Western, you can have Westerns that don't take place in, you know, the typical areas in America. It's, yeah, the it's more like, West, yeah. at this point, it means it's more like a broad term of lawless frontier work, land. Yeah, I mean, West, typically a, is the, thing. The, the, the dusty outsider comes to the town and fights off the yeah. bandits or something like that, you know, or there's a... The old world meets the new world. Oh, of course, the of course the greatest uh, the Western movie ever made, Wild Wild West, with a... Oh, that's uh, an EFAP movies movie, right there. Yeah. Oh my god, what a film that was. He, he turned down something to play, to do Wild the West. Well, well, I think it might have been, it might have been turning down that to, yeah... I think so. Someone in chat will know for sure, but like, yeah, it's that's quite a movie right there. Australia is the closest to the old west that we have now. Um, yeah, in a certain sense, like if you go out into like deeper into the outback, that kind of would. It's it's yeah, it's um. I would say that probably is. I guess you'd still have some towns on America that are like you in absolutely the, in do, Arizona yeah. and stuff. Yeah. It yeah, if you go to. I mean, everywhere, like South Dakota, you don't think about be, you don't think about that being like a place where the the West is I would you know, kept spiritually that alive. The West. I, I yeah, it, it, yeah, I would, but a lot of people like doesn't Wyoming come to, and stuff count to well because yeah, I think you go out there and about, there's. Uh, I just think people think about Arizona and like New Mexico and that's and California and Nevada and that's like oh that's the West, but it also includes like the quite Northern, a very Northern it's a very broad area. Yeah, um, I mean, it also includes Mexico as well, northern Mexico, anyway. Yeah. But yeah, like I said, Deadwood is essentially a town with buildings that are 100 plus years old. That it all kind of matches. It. I mean, it, it basically, the town functions because it's an old west town and the tourism and the people and everything that's that's a that's that is Deadwood. It's a, mm. I mean, you can go, they got the place where you know, Wild Bill got shot, and they got the all the bars and saloons and everything, and all the historical spots where um, you know this happened. The other thing they got they got the graves on the hill with Calamity Jane and all them buried, and the stories of the miners and everything. And it's lovely town, great place. The whole thing about um, Wild Bill, isn't it? That like he's like a great gunslinger, had a huge history, and then he got killed really casually because he like won a was it like he won a card game and then the pistol oh, pistol. well so. Wild Bill, who who he has the so you see he's got the um he's got the 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 band around his belly and he keeps the pistols and he's got the cross draw right and that's that's kind of what he was known for so all the statues and stuff of him they have the pistol the you know the the grips kind of sticking out of the band but he um he was that he is the guy with, you know the dead man's hand that is the hand that Wild Bill had when he was uh, shot in the back of the head he was so generally the story goes wild bill would always sit with a face in the door so he knew when people came in but he didn't that day right 
He, there was a he, he was sitting right by the door, facing away from the door, and he was sitting playing a poker game with a bunch of people. And a guy came in and checked to make sure that it was Wild Bill, and just shot him in the back of the head, and that was that. And uh, so that in the dead man's hand is, a, as you could guess, what Wild Bill had um, as his hand when he was uh, when he was killed. Talk about an anticlimax, though, in terms of just your life. Yeah, and uh, yeah. that's it. It was uh, aces and eights as the dead man's hand. I feel like Red Dead Redemption thing. was um, yeah. in part hugely influential in terms of reviving interest in West and stuff. That and like Django as well. That was around the same time. I don't know that they ever lost their place. They just became smaller than they were. Um, yeah, yeah, I, su I suppose it's just compared to how many of them they used to be. Um, and talking yeah. about westerns? Yeah. Yeah. Well, remember, there was like, well, I guess not remember, but there was a good three, f I mean, from post-World War II, you get into the mid-50s till about the mid-70s, and it was just cowboy, bonanza, gun smoke, mm -hmm. little house on the prairie, just westerns and westerns and westerns all over the place that was the big thing for decades yeah um it was i mean it, it was huge for so long uh and it, it was it was big 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 and yeah it's, things come and go I mean, it's people, a bit of a cycle sometimes people have used it as a model for the way that the mcu will die um it's just gonna be interesting to see how much it does match if it matches yeah, I mean, when you think about the MCU, it's... I mean, how old is it now in terms of MCU, about I guess, 12, proper? About, something like 13. that. Like, triple that was the... You know, double, triple that was the, the height of all these sort of Western things, where that was huge. And that's so, interesting to think about as well, I mean, when, when these Western things, it was different IPs, like, they were all in the different... They were all set in a similar era and a similar time, but they weren't from one company... Um, yeah, it was what people models liked company. and wanted, and you know, it, you know, things changed over time. Uh, as the people change, as generations change, interest changes, mm. technology changes as well. You can do a lot more things, and you could try out new stuff. And mm -hmm. I'm going pretty good. Every once in a while, when I go to my folks' place, they'll it'll be playing on the TV, and it's interesting to sit down and kind of watch them and to see how older things were filmed and shot and how dialogue was and how the the show sort of progressed and it, it was nice to watch some of these uh, some of these shows. Hmm. Um I had to send this apology super chat. Sorry for saying you were down with pineapple pizza last night. I had to do it. Yeah, this person uh, told the Friday Night Tights crew that I I was down with pizza that has pineapple oh, on it, which is just hideous hideous slander. Shame on them. Shame yeah. on them. You're lucky you're not being sued for that. Yeah, they're apologizing, so, you know, I can, I can accept well, that. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, it's a triumph. What more needs to be said? I guess so. Which I covered in the mm -hmm. title, so. Um, hi, Rags, and other EFappers. Hello. Hello! Hey! I finally finished my first draft. EFapp really helped. Looking forward to redrafting now. Good luck. Excellent. Have fun. Yeah, good stuff. Um, I've been I've been suspended from communicating on Xbox for referring to someone as a slack jawed massive. Take my shekels instead, you slack massive. Slack jawed massive. <laughs> so folk, wait, so if you call somebody like if you sing that Cletus the slack jawed yokel, you might get banned from Xbox. I didn't think slack jawed was at that level, but apparently it is. Uh, may, I'm surprised that it is uh, actually, because hmm. yeah, that seems fairly tame. Some folk will never... Damn it. I... De I uh, <laughs> damn, I forget the middle part. It's hey. some folk will never something, but then again, some folk will like Cletus, the slack jaw, your girl. Um, Cletus. That's just like Cletus. the default, you're an idiot name. <laughs> you're an idiot name. <laughs> how, do I, how do I let the audience know this person's an idiot? Their name shall be Cletus. Cletus, what are you doing? Uh, oh nice. my god, there's something out there in the field. I told you the corn stalks at midnight, Mom. <laughs> Dang it, Cletus. <laughs> Are you? Hey, damn it, Cletus. Funny name. Cletus. 
It's, it's perfect for the accent, I think. It just it just rolls right on the tongue. Uh, nice to see Shad back on. You guys should pull ER out of Purgatory to go over something. Um, well, I mean, if he if he wanna's, I I think he's vaguely on Twitter. He hasn't done a video now in a long time. I don't I don't know if he's up to what he's up to, but be interesting to get his opinion. I'm sure he'd love to do a review on Shang Chi. So um, yeah, yeah. hopefully, hopefully. Shang Chi with EFAP drinker. This must be my lucky day. I was gonna say if I, I saw people being like, I guess they're not gonna cover Shang Chi. Oh well, it's like you just got nearly five hours of us going over it. So hopefully that was what you were looking for. And hopefully uh, you don't uh, want any more because I never really want to talk about it again. Nope. <laughs> Only ever. I never want to. I never want to hear about it again. Yeah. <laughs> the funny thing is, right, we do plan to do that MCU arc sometime eventually. Oh, boy. So we will watch uh, Shang Chi again, but it could be like three Shang -Chi years. Shang Chi will now. return at Avengers Endgame. Yeah. Well, the Ten Rings will return. They made that known. Uh, why would? Why wouldn't they just say Shang Chi would return? I don't know. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, have any of you guys seen Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? If so, thoughts? I have, and I like it. I have not. I haven't seen That would be a good one to watch. Hmm. I, I, I would definitely recommend that one as uh, one that we see. Very well. Um, hi all, hope you're doing well. Thanks for mentioning Bly Manor on the latest catch-up. I binged it in one sitting, and it was celestial. Not a fan of horrors, but Bly was really well written. Also, hi Rags. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, it's not that like scary, scary. But it's, it's definitely really going to depend on the person. Type of scary. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I, if you guys remember, I was because someone in Discord was asking like, why isn't there? You said you recorded the blind man and stuff. Like, why isn't it, you know, out? I guess at this point, and I was like, because it can't can't convert it in the same way yet. We need more stuff because if you guys remember when we finished episode five, we spent about. 30 seconds gushing over it, and then we're like, next, 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 next episode. Yeah. It's like, but but we need to talk about it, though. <laughs> it's like, the next episode. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll fix that up at another time, in terms of commentary and analysis, and then we'll release it, and hopefully change the tide at least a little bit on that show, because, yeah, it doesn't get much praise, mm -hmm. unfortunately. But uh, hey, Midnight Mass is on the way. Maybe that will combine the writing of Bly and the scariness that everyone's looking for. Hopefully. Mm. It would be nice to watch something spooky that was written really well. Oh, Rags, it's going to be... I've got so many plans for us on Halloween slash October. Oh all of... Oh. All good horror movies. Mmm. Yeah. Definitely, why def did you laugh? You laughed. That's that's why would you laugh? Because laughter can be an expression of many emotions. In this case, joy at joy. the fact that Rags is gonna finally get his wish. Boy. I like joy. Mm-hmm. Um, hello there, long man. Loved your arrow and rope video. Hi Raggleton. Hello. Yeah, I worked really hard on that. Um, it's something that I think oh. Shad should cover at some point, I think, the rope. Yeah, the... you know, shooting arrows, ropes and stuff. Mm. But uh, just, you know, breaking the illusion, that video is actually doing surprisingly well. So oh, I was quite happy look at you, know. teaching the world about stuff. Yeah. Yeah, pretty so, good. Because <laughs> I needed to go to sleep early with to wake up on time for EFAP, right? And mm -hmm. that means meant I couldn't watch how well the video did in its first hour of release, which I usually do. And so... Uh, that gives me an indication of how well it would go over the long run. Uh, and so just waking up ready for EFAP, that meant the video had been out for a good couple of hours already, hadn't been out to track it. I had a look, it was like, it was just doing well. I was like, oh, that's, that's a bit that's of good, good news yeah. before jumping on. Yeah. Fringystein, in an earlier episode, you mentioned the Grime Simpsons episode. You need to watch the YouTuber Emp Lemon's Never, Never Ever episode on it. Also, hi, Rangoon. Um, Hello. <clears throat> the, who, who's whose video? Why is it so, going to be one that upsets me? No, the the um, well, funnily enough, I don't know if they're referring to the same video, but Amp Lemon, I think, is the creator who made the video on why the Simpsons died that I thought was thoroughly engaging, and it centers around the Grimes episode. Oh, um, okay. He basically makes the argument that Simpsons peaked its purpose with that episode. Like it, it, I mean, I can totally understand why you would say that because it's like this juxtaposition of the Simpsons world with a character who 
I think I, I think it's been said that the whole idea behind the episode was what if an actual real person was had to interact with Homer Simpson. Um. <clears throat> so yeah, if they're talking about that video, I fully recommend everyone check it out. Okay. It's fantastic, yeah. and it's better than. Because the thing is, I went in cynically. I was like, oh, here we go. Another video telling me that the, the death of the Simpsons happened because blah, blah, blah. Because uh, a lot of people always pick the, the, the Skinner episode. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but his analysis was fantastic. I was I was very impressed. He goes okay. into a lot of Excellent. detail about a lot of things. The production and everything. Um, I, I do... Re I'm pretty sure... Uh, aren't there some people who worked on The Simpsons who don't like the Frank Grimes episode? Uh, I'm not sure about that. Maybe. Uh, I, th I I've, hmm, I'm not sure. I feel like I've heard that, and that I don't know why, because I think that episode is amazing. Uh, which one, Mola? Can you please say it again? Emp Lemon and I can't remember what it's called. This super chat says "Never Ever" episode on the Frank Grimes episode from Emp Lemon. If you look for Emp Lemon Simpsons, it's probably going to be his most viewed video. I'd imagine of of that. Format. I don't know how many Simpsons videos he's made though, so maybe I'm wrong. Um, that's the best I can do to figure it out. Opinion on For Honor. Never Didn't played play it. it. I don't think I ever played it either. I saw friends play a bit of it, but uh, yeah. I remember that no the clue launch for that game was uh really bad. I remember that much. This person says they hate and love it. I'm afraid we've got nothing right. for you. Oh, yeah, I, gave it, I gave it a go early on. Uh, I didn't really get into the um, uh, the controls, uh, that, and so if I'm not enjoying the gameplay, it's a bit hard for me to really dive into it. I think mm -hmm. I could have enjoyed it if I really tried to get it you know, in, to know intuitively, because um, uh, there was a bit of buzz in my community about the game in terms of you know just the concept and stuff. But unfortunately, it didn't hold me, uh, but uh, I ended up playing Mountain Blade, for number two. There's a good game. Mm. Uh, by the way, Rags is a cutie. Ooh. Oh, thank you. I am, though, it's true. Mm -hmm. My 10-year-old came in and knew immediately who every one of the guests are on the panel. Can't wait for my plushies to come in. Your 10-year-old? Dang. Oh. I mean, not 100% sure a 10 year old should be watching you. <laughs> yeah, 10 year olds probably shouldn't. Probably should. Um, we are legally obligated to let you know that mm -hmm. this is not a show for children. But, yeah, I mean, Shad and Drinker, the uh, mainstays almost at this point, we trapped them in the realm of EFAP. In Love the it, realm man. of EFAP. Uh, pineapple on pizza debate with Nerd Rotic and Az. I mean, real BBC's on Tuesday. I'll tell them the truth if they gotta hear it. It was funny. Um, there was, sort of like, an actual, like, thing that almost burst out of Friday Night Tights about the pineapple and pizza thing. <laughs> just, like, the most ultimate, like, what can you even do with the argument? Just, it's gross or it's not gross. That's, like, the best. Yeah. It is gross, though. It is gross, though. Objectively. Hello, EFAP. First time Super Chat here. Have you heard of the game Space oh, Station right. 13? I've heard of it. Can't say that I've heard have. of it. I have not. Uh, once you get used to the controls, it can be quite fun. I highly recommend you check it out. Oh, perhaps we shall in the future. Uh, yeah, I gotta admit, maybe there's a reason for it, but that is a generic name for a game. It's not like um, uh, uh, Bamboozler, where you're gonna be like, oh, I remember that name. Yeah, God, everybody remembers Bamboozler. Mm -hmm. Game of the year right there. Australia is a prison island, but surely it isn't Marxist. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not Marxist, no, but it's certainly... There's some troubling signs happening with the uh, certain things happening. I don't want to get too political. No, I, I understand. Um, the, the There's stuff going on there. That's, that's There you go. That's there is. Apps. There is a, yeah. Stuff going on in a country? Yes, yep. that is the controversial Man, that's take. breaking news right there. Rags, my ex was Asian, so... <laughs> what is she now? <laughs> is that the end of the... <laughs> the, end of the I just never know there. if I'm allowed no, to I say you... something like, like these. These are, these are the... <laughs> Oh like right, with, these like were you like, like the TOS robot is looking over. Is she better? Like, like mm. what? I don't know. What do you want me to say? Yeah. It, well, it just is says she okay Ching, now. Ching Chang Pog. That's all it says. 
Ching <laughs> Ching Pong. That's I wonder about those ones. Oh, is that her name? I don't. I don't know. It, I'm not even. Oh, well, maybe it was reference to ping pong. I don't. I don't know because we were talking about sports. Well, yeah, because oh, I don't know where we're up to it, in terms of the timeline, right, mm -hmm. for the conversation. Maybe she invented ping pong, and it was named after her. Uh, hail everyone. Have a fantastic weekend. Oh, thank you. you Hi, too. thanks. I will do it. Um, again, we had this last time. They just said warg. Oh, warg. Mm. Like, the, like the big hyena dogs? Or the ability in the Game of Thrones world to warg into things. Um, warg. Oh yeah, who knows? Who knows what this person's trying to tell me? I'll find out one day. Uh, when will rags invent rugby as a sport? Rugby? Hmm. Bunch <laughs> of dudes out on a big field just <laughs> wrestling. <laughs> just doing I their wrestling, know. you know? I don't know. Who can say? I don't know. Uh, rugby needs an equal ratio of rugs to bees. I could come in there and explain how to do it. I mean, no, that seems self-explanatory to me. Yeah, to I don't bees. know what's confusing about any of that. Mm -hmm. but the ratio of rugs to bees in my house, though, it's a little lopsided in favor of the rugs. I have like three... Let's see. One, two, three, four... Okay, does a does a kitchen mat count as a rug? Um, um I don't know. I'd have to check, I'm not sure. I have three point five rugs. Oh there you go. That's a lot of rugs. I have no Is that a lot of rugs? I don't know. No. Actually I no. So. As, I, as soon as I said that I'm like, wait, no, that doesn't sound for, like a lot of rugs. Maybe for a cause cause half of my but uh, essentially have well half of my place is essentially carpet that's the thing but it only counts as like eh, does it a rug uh, it's enough i will go ahead and put it in rug territory i got one in the kitchen mm -hmm. where i can stand on it where my human could stand on um i've got one in the bathroom one of those bathroom rug sort of things and i got a couple by the door i'm not going to count the one on the outside because that's more of a mat Right, mm -hmm. it's more of a, that's more Maddie. Would want to count Maddie than Ruggy. Uh, which franchise has worse continuity, DCEU or X Men? Uh, probably. Oh shit, that's a tough one actually. Um, yeah. they, they've both done time travel. Uh, I'm pretty sure that X Men's continuity just flat out contradicts itself several times. I remember in yeah. uh, the first X-Men movie, I think uh, I think Charles says, when I was 19, I met Eric, but in first class, which is canonical to both timelines, they're in their, like, late 20s. So. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, that's the thing. If we were to rewatch them, we might find sure a hell of a lot of stuff. Well. Like, yeah, there's, there's stuff that I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure that um the ending of Days of Future Past is meant to be set after, um like, Dark Phoenix. But how can that be possible? Like how how is it even possible that these timelines? I never saw Dark Phoenix. Can... You will one um, day. We'll do the X, the the Fox an X Men arc. The Fox yeah. X Men arc. Yeah, that that'll be an adventure. Mm -hmm. The park. I would still maintain the like Dark Phoenix. It's not a good movie at all. But like a lot of people saying it's like absolutely catastrophic. When if it were considered against like the worst of the MCU right now, it's doing better than. <laughs> it killed it Jennifer Lawrence's over. mystique, guys. Come on. It has to get points for that. What? It racks there, as there a carpeted bathroom. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't have a carpeted bathroom. That that used to be a thing, though. That died off because obviously... Because obviously. Yeah, you do Awful! Because obviously. Carpeted bathroom, gosh. Yeah. Um, remember, people would have That's, the carpeted the toilet hell? covers. They would what? have yep, carpeted... Yep, 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 yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was, that's yeah, a thing. that's right. Uh, but no, I have a I have a bathroom like a little a a portable rug. A lot of rugs are portable, but mm -hmm. I like a portable rug so that when you like step out of the shower or whatnot, you can you're not stepping on the, the oh, floor. Yeah, sure, floor sure. You got those definitely. Yeah, but like, that, that's the actual have carpet it. across the whole thing. <laughs> what kind of hell hey, man, is this? Hum humans had some wild ideas back in the day. Yeah, there were, yeah. Uh, I mean, you walk into some old houses and they might still have it, uh, but thing, houses like in terms of architecture and stuff, the way they're built and the trendy stuff of bathrooms, it it changes over time. I mean, it's it was a real uh, thing. Yeah, sure. There are some 
There are some bathrooms that are just what do you straight think up. Yeah. Man, this isn't that I have never thought about this question ever in my life, but I think it would be interesting. Which decade do you think produced the best, consistently produced the best house designs? You know what? I will text my parents who are both architects. And I'd be curious will... what they think. I was going to say, yeah. I would submit yeah. to their answers. <laughs> Let me go and get. The reason why I think about that is because, um, it, like, you can you can kind of see it here because, um, scoot my ass so it scoots towards the desk. You again. can see certain design templates across the decades. You can see them here as well, like especially depending on which suburbs you go to, where they were made more recently, versus. I guess I'm thinking about houses because some people sound like the 10s and the 20s. It's like, man, that feels unfair. Art Deco is really cool. Um, and uh, I'm kind of almost thinking from like the 50s onward to like 20, 2010s. Yeah, see, see Roman I don't know. Era. Uh, are you talking about the design again? aesthetic or are you also including uh, comforts and technology? They're, they're you know going what? to be inextricably linked, generally. I I wonder if it's not fair to, to include things that houses from like the 50s and 60s couldn't have like due to technology ducted air conditioning stuff like that i'm kind well, of that'll the still be it it will it'll impact the design and the layouts of places uh, yeah i figure it would uh but i i think it's i think it's fair um maybe we'll get a super nuanced answer then because uh what is yeah. what well, is the, uh, what's the question Asbestos again Asbestos could uh really tip the scale what which which what's the question which decade produced the best designs overall for houses? Well, there's what an answer that, no, the, 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 the answer is non-controversial and clear, and you can't even argue against it. It's clearly the metal, medieval period and <laughs> castles. You can't beat it, all right? Ah. Castles are the ultimate homes, uh, best designs, and they are legitimately homes, okay? They're private homes that people had. So what decade I'm not can't sure. Best I feel like, um... I can't afford yeah, a castle, castle question. Question. I think about well, I like castles, castles, I think about really... all the people you need. Well, I, I'm not sure, because I think about, like, manners. You know how you have those movies that are set on manners, and it's like, well, you need a whole staff to run this place? I don't know that I want that for, like, the place I, I live in, that I have to pay staff to make, take care of it because it's so big. Look, Fringy, the burlesque castle. Hang on, like that, 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 that depends on the size of castle. They're a much more... Oh, okay. Um, like, you know, smaller size castle, which is still stunning and looked amazing. And, uh, yeah, just a, for a single household. Not you a problem, might, I mean... I have no doubt that you know more about castles than I do, so you probably have a, a bunch of that extra knowledge that is absent for me, because I'm just thinking of huge castles, not small ones. Well, actually, the interesting thing, most castles are actually far smaller. The huge ones represented the minority of all castles that were okay. built. They're most the were actually movies. far. Yeah, exactly. Most were actually far smaller and more conservative uh, in size. Um, let me give you some examples. I have, like, endless resources. You got pictures, yeah. <laughs> oh, resources. yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, when I say this, thousands and thousands of imagery sources that I've collected over mm -hmm. years. Um, Which so if you have a look at this one, okay, right. um, uh, that main keep is only uh, essentially a single room with three floors. Um, right. And right, and that's far more representative of uh, what a lot of medieval castles are like in the medieval period. Uh, let me br let me bring up a couple other cool ones. Um, but people like that, people uh, get. Do you still need staff for these kinds of? Buildings, or because it looks like there's a uh, one. Well, the one that there. I posted there, you would still have your, you know, man at arms and servants and things. Right. But uh, there were even smaller ones than this. Uh, let me let me find a good Boy. one. So at the the beginning of um, a plague tale, innocence. You uh, they yeah. they have a a nice, uh, well to do. They it's not a castle, but it's like a manor, I guess you could say, and it's very lovely. Uh, and I'm, I think when I first played it, I messaged Chad and said, hey, if you ever play this game, it would be nifty <laughs> maybe to do uh, something on this house in particular. Because it was really, it seemed really nice, <coughs> and totally believable, super immersive. And I, I, it would be curious to see if it was representative of that late yeah, medieval-ish kind of yeah, the, house um... design. The trailers looked really interesting for a Plague Tale, just in terms of the design aesthetic. There's a, there's a lot of you know uh, inaccuracies in terms of just the whole concept behind Plague stuff, but uh, no, like, like the aesthetic. I was oh, like, it's clearly it not. Cool. Yeah, it's it's definitely not. The plague aspect is definitely not realistic. 
-hmm. it's a very gaming mechanic -y and uh, semi uh, suspense kind of stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. But I would recommend it. It's it's not I wouldn't call it difficult and the puzzles are barely puzzles, but it's it looks lovely. It's a decent game to go through. I enjoyed playing through it. Um, I, I like it. You have to play as a Frenchie. But apart from that, it's pretty uh, <laughs> it's pretty nice. Pretty nice. Uh, it's, I would recommend it. There's some a lot of cool segments in that game. Well, I, I think I can swallow my pride and play as a as a Frenchman. <laughs> I said that with far too much. Pride. You can get you can, actually you can have like, it eaten I by like the medieval, time, medieval just, French uh... had some real like like really interesting stuff. Man, the castles in France were just epic. They had a great a huge um chival chivalric culture around knighthood and, and everything. You know, baguettes. Um, They're neat. <laughs> One of the uh, the cool aspects when I went to the UK was just how many towns were built around. Uh, medieval castles like the the castle was sort of a centerpiece of the town and the town was mm -hmm. constructed around it i can't remember exactly which one i went to. like that's cool we don't have that here these towns are too young here's a couple of examples for you especially that last one right. um, yeah you know. that one looks smallish that looks like yeah nice and that humble, second one humble castle. yeah have a look at that second one right basically it's uh, a full keep but it's a two room structure one okay. room on top of another um, and you'll be surprised how many castles like that were in the medieval period. They were vastly more representative of this type of castle than the big ones. Most of them were around this size. Okay, interesting. Yeah, it might just be that, like, the big castles color our perception because, you yeah, know... Yeah, it's exactly right. You just see so much of them. Sorry, I can't... Oh, yay, yay. Yeah, you are sharing the image, Mola. <laughs> I'm so a good host. movie that we could, um... One, one movie that we, uh... You should watch for our, our little list of movies as Lady Hawk. What's wrong with the man hawk? Um, he was lame. Even, well, there I was a man hawk. It started out as man hawk, but then, you know, he got faced out. Lady Hawk took over. She's way better than he ever was. You know how it goes. Mm. That was one of um, Matthew Broderick's. He was he was young in that. Rutger Hauer is in it. Man, um, I remember watching that ages ago. Is that the so is that the one Michelle that has Pfeiffer, like really weird music that's out of place? It's like real synthesized modern music that just does not fit the period that they're trying to depict at all. <laughs> and oh, the swords are awful in it, and the costumes as well. Gosh. What movie? Are you oh, about? Uh, Alfred Molina's Lady. in it. He plays uh, he plays a guy in that. Hang on, Lady Hawk. That's the one with um, Lady uh, Hawk. Ferris Bueller's Day Off guy in it. Matthew Broderick, yeah. <laughs> Broderick, is that his name? Yeah, I don't yeah. remember his name. Yeah, he is in that. Ferris yeah, that's Bueller's right. Day yeah, off guy. he is. He is in that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's got. Yeah, it's got some. Um, yeah, it's got some. It, it, I um, liked it a lot. I liked it. It was one of the movies I watched when I was young. We had a VHS of it. I liked it quite a bit. Uh, when I said some humans have wild ideas, Frankie, you'll appreciate this. The, the other okay. two probably won't appreciate this at all. But maybe, but I triggered a memory of a really good Simpsons joke. I'm sorry, yes. everyone. Here it comes. So, you remember, <laughs> it's... I think... I, I want to say it's... It was in the Heaven and Hell box set. When Homer, like, finds Jesus, kind of. And thinks himself yeah. like a prophet or whatever. Um, or uh, maybe it isn't. Either way, he's, he's trying to talk about Jesus, but he can't remember his name. And he says... Because um, someone says, like, what if you're wrong, I think. And he says, well... You know, there was, there was another guy who everybody oh, thought was yep. wrong. It's like, he has some <laughs> long hair and wild ideas, and he didn't always do what everybody said was right. And that man's name was... <laughs> I forget, but the point is... <laughs> no, I yeah, forget I that, that too. One. Marge, you know what I'm talking about. He used to drive that blue car. <laughs> like, yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> it's remember like, that wait, car. what? Who the fuck was he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I like Homer. He's a funny lad. Homer is in... Right. Great character. Is he still though? I wonder. I I do wonder on that regard, yeah. I'm not sure. Um, can you have Fringy <coughs> Chad say dough, donut, and I know? Uh <coughs> like dough okay, dough, donut, I don't know. Oh the last oh, one's so and I know. And this, I this know. This is a tricky thing. Yeah. This is a tricky thing for me. I'm actually Reading? more conscious of my Australianisms and accents um, out of intention because I personally mm. think the Australian accent is pretty 
rubbish in oh, terms of shit. pronunciation. I don't. I, I think the Australian accents all like I get. I get that people like it, but I don't like the fact that we pronounce words differently to how they're spelt or how clearly they should be pronounced to say it. And so I actually do emphasize certain sounds. It's natural for me now, but it, I started it intentionally. So uh, as a result, my accent is not wholly Australian. It's this weird amalgam and mix. And there's a lot of Aussies who <laughs> think I sound British or American because I round I my R's usually. Oh, yeah. Mm. I, I round my yeah. R's too. I, I don't get like the same thing. The, uh, yeah. I reckon I sound American sometimes. I'm just pretty sure Rags is to blame for this. And, and so with, with your the R's? question... That, <laughs> I don't well, know. With the yeah. question that people are asking me to say those words... I know I can sometimes fall back into more heavy Australianisms in my accent, but when I'm conscious of it, I usually don't. And so I don't know what they're wanting me to say. So if they want me to say no or no, um, <laughs> it depends. So so what are the words they want to say? I could do both. How about that? I'll do, what are the words again? So you got dough, donut, and I know. So it would be dough, donut, and I don't know. Or what? dough, donut, and I don't just know. Say it, just say it normally. How did oh, you well, and Fringy hear I don't, don't know rather than I know? Both of you did that. I don't know. I feel oh, like I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's, more, maybe it's uh, a... Um, they're more used to saying the... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they're most of them. Yeah. I do know. People ask me questions all the time and all I say is I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Look, it's better to admit when you don't mm -hmm. know than to pretend that you know when you don't know. Okay? I know. I, I'm really trying to push up the... Uh, <laughs> The Australian we couldn't tell. We, well, it, that, that's the funny thing because I know that so you just like, like I can really yeah, overpronounce yeah, the yeah. No, no part, or I can just go be like no, you know, like so. It, it, it varies. I, I I'm inclined to agree to a certain extent, Shad, that there are aspects of the Australian accent that are um that I don't like. Uh, however, I do think that it has its charm. Uh, yeah, I, I think it does it's have a charm. Almost provable. People love Australian like creators. And they find the the accent is uh, is, is I think it's, cute I think it a lot of the time. A uniqueness. It's uh, it's a unique one. There's not many. The Australian accent is a it's a bit of an oddity. Um, it's like it kind of sounds like British, but it kind of has different aspects to it. it. It's loose, definitely loose compared to everybody else. Um, probably more so than even. And 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 it's not like New Zealand where it's it's kind of a little too weird, like. Fush and chips. It's like, what's going on? Fush, you know, fush and chips from. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I I There's find that the New Zealand one is often even cuter when I listen to that one. It's you, so... Oh, when you listen to like listen to Peter Jackson. <laughs> uh, so one of the New Zealand accents I actually like is the New Zealand Polynesian accent, the kind of the Maori yeah, accent. Yeah, so, yeah, I like uh, that. That's an accent I can actually fall into because. I started to naturally adopt it. So I was a missionary for my church and for two yeah. months before you go out on a mission that you go to what's called the missionary training center. And it was in New Zealand. And I was, had a lot of, you know, other missionary mates who were um, from, they were either Maori and stuff like that. And they had that thick accent. And I naturally start to, started to adopt it. And I could fall back into it pretty easily. And it's so interesting, the type of accent, because all you have to do is start clipping off the end of your words like this, bro, and yeah. then you start talking like this. Yes, and this bro. is this is this is just how they speak. On, if you bro. want to speak like this, you start to speak the accent like this, bro. You know, yeah. it's What's easy. Like Korg. That's on, bro. <laughs> yeah, it is Korg. Hey, I'm Korg. This is Meek. Uh, he has Korg, swords for Meek. arms. Swords for now hands. this is a circle, but it's more like a freaky circle. I'm kind of a freaky circle, that, bro. But, yeah. <laughs> and and it was weird because I was around it. Like I actually noticed my accent changing in real time when I was just talking and I realized I started talking like this and we needed to go yeah. over there and hey this is a bit <laughs> weird <laughs> oh, it's f I uh I'm a all right go ahead it's just this the super common if I if I end up talking to people who like heavy Welsh accent people I'll start to slip into mine um and I think mm -hmm. when we all get drunk uh accents usually start to become like they, they get further up Jay was drunk the other day while in a call and my god the amount of times he said I like <laughs> rare. Like he wouldn't. He always was talking about himself. Um, that that's a you know that's a fair clarification actually. So the, the in agreement or um in the <laughs> middle of things you were saying. Aye, 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 aye. That's another accent people love to listen to. I know a certain yeah. drunk creator and just entertain with. That. Oh yeah, they love it because it's so romantic. <laughs> 
Ah, oh, I love the Scottish accent. I think I like the Scottish shit. accent. I still think I prefer Irish though. It's uh, it's got that cute oh, accent yes. again. The, Irish the has Irish a, yeah. What are you doing? It's a it's wonderful very, little accent. And it's floaty like a leaf in the wind. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I think that that is the oh. best way to describe it. It is floaty. It, it feels it's floaty like, like it, a leaf um, in the wind. Little fairy. Yeah, like a leaf in the You think they're ever going to put doors on Stonehenge? No. That'd ruin it. Oh. I, uh, I really like, um, like, posh British accent, like Oxford, um, accent. Is that what it's called, or Westminster? I'm, I, I, I like that accent a lot. It's nice and refined. Yeah, I like, like a British like accent, but how Cavill formal and refined. Like, yeah, yeah, just gonna have money from my chest. Well, like, but that's that's only some of them, though, right? Because if you go to other, I find it so fascinating how there are like fifty different accents in the United Kingdom. Yeah, and some of them are like repulsive, and then some of them they'll have like a Tom Hiddleston, where you're just like, man, you uh, mm. you're hitting the lottery there. I don't know what you did. And uh, I really like um, the the is it oh god is it like the Devon kind of um, what's what's that one called? Which one? The Devonshire. Like, you get around Devon Torquay. What, what's that one called again? I'm not sure. The one where they have the kind of like the the harder R's and the um the it's, it's really oh that's pirate that's pirate talk. <laughs> uh, not, pirate, not pirate. Not pirate. Damn it! I know it is. It's called. I can't believe I'm shiver me Cornish, timbers. maybe. Give us an example. I like Cornish West ends. Country, West West Country. Yes, yeah, Sean Bean has a Yorkshire accent. He has a. Uh, I love I love his accent. Yeah. Yeah, Sean Bean's accent is fucking great as well. Bastard. He has a bit of a oh. northern accent. Bastard. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody talks Cockney now, by the way. I don't think that's true. Nobody is going to... I met people who have... What about in Cockington, where they're from? Mm. I think the uh, one of the things I find interesting is the conversations about variations in Australian accents. It's like, you really need to grasp at very small details. And I don't even think it's very meaningful to draw distinctions. Like oh, some people it say depends plants, where you go, then. It, it does, it certainly does, I mean, like, there's I kind mean, of like the you go to, accent in my mind. Yeah, but. there is this really thick, different accent in Port Pirie <laughs> in South Australia. Yeah, it's where my uh, mum yeah, comes yeah, from. Yeah. Which, and it is like, oh, they really pronounce the wise like, oh, that's really yummy, like that. And it's it's weird. I can't even do it right, but it's a yeah, very no, it's, strong it's, um, it, You kind of have to, uh, you kind of have to try and, and notice it. It's, it's not one of those things that is immediately apparent i would say um but it, it, i think i think it's just a matter of this country is young enough that there hasn't been enough time for uh for really different accents to develop yeah um conversely in america it has fewer accents than like in the united kingdom but it still has more than australia really has because it's a little bit older as a country it's just just a little bit just a little bit, like a couple Just hundred a years. <laughs> yes, thousands if you really go back. Oh, well, if some you want people, to, yeah, some of the people things. from the the origins are still serving their sentences. They're they're they'll they'll be out eventually. It's, mm -hmm. It hasn't been that long. The classic. I feel like I was for I England. Like I, was James. Sentence. I think he was much more. He reduced his accent in Golden Eye, from what I remember. I need to see that again. I think he did. Yeah. And he's like no. England. For whales, and then boots them out, and I was like, "Yeah, it's on the farm for whales." Yeah, but have you? Ever is that heard? where? Uh, what's his face is from? Who now? Uh, Richard Branson. Uh, <laughs> <Elf>? Branson. <laughs> Richard Branson is Bond. What? <laughs> what's? <laughs> you really funny. He's like making his uh his his record company while saving the world, working for making his way downtown. Bronson, um, right? Brosnan is, uh... He's uh, not Welsh. He's no. definitely not Welsh. I'm trying to remember. Is yeah, he... Talking like about why. Charles Bronson? Because Connery's Scottish. Wait, you're talking about Irish? Pierce Brosnan? Is Brosnan Irish? Pierce Brosnan. I'm a, I don't know. I thought Richard Brosnan. Where is that? Richard <laughs> Branson? Like Richard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, people are saying he's Irish. I thought he was Irish. Yeah, I was, I was trying to figure that out. Uh, Daniel Craig, he's just English, English right? Uh, yeah. Uh, I was, it's and then, Timothy Dalton is Welsh. 
It sounds so dismissive. Ah, he's just English. Right? Well, it's just that he is meant to be English, but like he's so often played by people who are uh, like Irish. I'm pretty sure it wasn't one of them Australian uh, who was only in it for one movie. Lazenby. Yeah, shaking uh, upstairs. I think that's his name, yeah. George Lazenby, and yeah. Oh, what was course. that? Shaking not, stirred, like shaking. <laughs> shaking not stirred. Shaking. Shaking not stirred. Shaking not stirred. Oh, that's how I like it. Somebody said I don't sound Australian. I think I do. Um, <laughs> I remember one time somebody thought I was American. <laughs> oh, I think I do. Oh, 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 I think I, I think I sound like where I'm from. Ooh. Yeah, big man, suit of armor. Take that off. What are you? I'm playing doctor. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's under the mask. It's just another one. Um, that's almost a that's mix of that swirl. That's, that's really... not true. That's, if they're telling Wallace that's and Gromit right. accent. <laughs> Ooh, lovely cheese, Gromit. Lovely cheese, Gromit. Wallace is bod. Do it. And Wallace. Gromit's accent is just nothing. <laughs> Wallace <laughs> would make an incredible James Bond. He has an. Yeah. Al he already has an incredible familiarity with gadgetry in and British gizmos. culture. Yeah. Right. And exactly. British culture, he knows how to For deal cheese. with animals, to befriend them and to eliminate cheese. them. Rags, you sound like you're from Arkansas. You ever felt that? I don't actually. Oh. Why is it? I don't sound like I'm from Arkansas. Oh right, because it's 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 a Native American name, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, we did look it up. <laughs> yeah, because I was always wondering. It's like there's Kansas and then there's Arkansas. What happened? What happened <laughs> here? Explain it. Arkansas is from the Quapaw, by yeah, way. Yeah, that's what I mean. I yeah. Right. Oh, okay, um, right. Because the... Um, uh, da, 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 da. I forget the specifics for what it's for. I can get in a second. Not but, too no, I, I don't sound like where I'm from. Uh, my... Someone's right, you sound Southern. That still covers a broad... <laughs> That's a lot of the, places. The, the American <laughs> South is like four UKs. It's a, it's a pretty broad area, and, and not all Southerners sound the same. But neither of my parents yeah. are really southern they don't sound southern and so i was born here and i lived through here but my parents didn't quite have the accent so bit of a mix people would always ask me when i was a server in a restaurant are you from here or you don't sound like you're from here and then you're like that's uh, very but... offensive <laughs> yeah it, the, the french term arkansas their plural term for their transliteration of akansa an algonquian term for the quapaw people so oh, the Algonquins called the Quapa a thing, and the French transliterated that, and that's where we get Arkansas from. And I guess that one, I don't know if they put it to a vote or for whatever reason that one stuck, and that's why we have Kansas and Arkansas. Mm-hmm. I, mean, oh, I see. I think Arkansas sounds cooler than Arkansas. Um, oh, I also, mean, I in... that sounds cooler than Arkansas, yeah, but I, it's a weird one. I'm just like, why, why is it pronounced <laughs> this way? When Legally, the possessive stuff. form of our state is A-R-K-A-N-S-A-S -S, apostrophe S. So it ends in oh. an S for the, uh, mm. the, yeah, the state legislature passed a non-binding resolution in 2007. Just to clear that up, I suppose. Well, yeah, there's lots of people right. waiting for oh. to clear that up. Oh yeah, we were, we were yeah we not too um, we were we were fiftieth and everything until then. Then we got our shit together. Not to tangent us even more, but I was just gonna say like out of the bonds, who do you think's got the best voice out of a lot of those actors? Well, not the Aussie oh. one. You know oh. there was an Aussie Bond. Yeah, we we just we're, went yeah, over no. that. <laughs> okay. I, if you notice, I'm too busy looking. You at know, these Pierce Brosnan. Did you know Matthew Broderick was in Lady Hawk? You commented on it because Rags immediately said the thing. <laughs> like, after right? we did well, yeah. the weird accent, and then yeah, you were yeah. like, well, "What was that?" Well, there we go. There we go. I am. Triggered so, it, uh, I, look, I, I You're distracted by the castle. Yeah. There's so, so many games, great castle bonds. images I'm trying to share with you guys. That you know, just like look at the last one I just posted. That's a great one. Do you see? All right, I'll show everybody the sexy castles, but you have to now answer the question. Belch. Okay. What was the question? Who, out of all the James Bond actors so far, has the best voice? Uh, I would probably go Pierce Brosnan. I was kind of floating that way I myself. Think that's I really like it's a fair choice. I really like his voice. It has. But this, I mean, I do um... like Sean Connery. Well. I mean, my choice is probably Timothy Dalton. I, th I fucking. Oh boy. In, uh, I mean, Hot Fuzz is the easy one to, like, reference just for an updated thing, because he's, I don't think many people remember his Bond movie. 
Um, these are all very nice castles I'm showing, by the way. <laughs> I just want to make sure everyone... <laughs> And specifically, these are an example of the more representative size of most castles of the medieval Okay, period. this one... Um, how do we get to this one? Yeah, like, how bizarre... So, man, there are so <laughs> awesome locations of castles. Wait, the last like, one? Because you just That one's a real there. one. When I saw that, I was like, is that a miniature model? No, that's a real freaking castle. Uh, single keep size, uh, single room, and yeah. <laughs> um, I've got another picture of that somewhere, actually. Yeah, Sean Connery's voice is pretty classic. He, yeah. That is classic. It's hard to what, beat. Sean. Um, what's the chat got? Pierce Brosnan or Sean Connery? Dalton was cool. Just watch License to Kill. <laughs> Timothy Dalton's Welsh accent comes out a few times. Some Bond good stuff. He, that man just needs to play more villains. He's perfect for it. Yeah, Pierce Brosnan yeah. sounds like he'd make love to me. Sean Connery sounds like he'd fuck me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Might be the most accurate thing Rags has ever said. <laughs> what would Timothy Dalton do? He'd talk about how um he's a, he all of the projects he's got to work on for um for I can't believe Sanford. And yeah, son? I guess he would. Hey, hey, have a look at the location of that castle. That's like just amazing. In the open field. Rags, there's a, a the stream hill. in which these are being shown on. And, uh, <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. Ah, let me let me click the live button because I got the chat. That's up. That one. Got some. some yeah. Cool that castles. was some of these. Some look of these just that. look like they'd be a pain in the ass to build. Probably. They were, and the, the the ones that um Mola was just showing, they're called the Carthur Castles. They were never taken or besieged. Though. But um, what happened was they were built on the border between France and another country, but they became redundant when France actually overtook the other country, and so they just ended up being abandoned. That must have sucked. Do you think? You yeah. think the people who ran France at the time, they were like, ah, oh, we could like expand our borders, but those are some nice border castles. Do like, oh, <laughs> I, oh, like, do we want to really though? I like the uh, idea that oh, man. Chad is just peeking out of the top of this one being like, come get me bitches. Like, yeah, you know, like, like look everyone at else at the bottom of the mountain is like, nah, you, you can have it. staircase <laughs> leading to it, that <laughs> castle. It. It's like, good luck trying to get that one. Man. Fuck that. I'm not going up there. You have fun. Sounds up like a lot of work. Here. Have your castle. It was like a lot of work for very little gain. Yeah. I mean, you, 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 you won't be interrupted they, they, reading a book up there, I guess. I'll keep it. There, there was a lot of gain. There was a reason why they built them. They were the linchpins of holding land and, uh, you know, in the middle. If you wanted to take land, you needed to take the fortifications, the castles or the fortified cities. They were essential in medieval warfare. Uh, and so there. And uh, yeah, some of the locations are just amazing. And that Jessica they built them in that time. Gus, I love it. Sorry. Get, you got me on castles. What can I say? It's okay. It's okay. Mm. Um, did you hear the UK are thinking about going back to the imperial system? Um, I don't know why they would do that. I've, I've not heard that. Yeah, no. No, I have not heard that. Come to the dark side. Mm, Source, <laughs> please. I am doubting. I'm pressing the X button. To actually, yeah. Uh... Uh, it's called dive grass, you uncultured swines. Dive grass? I don't. Know. Was that Sorry, dive grass. One of the sports. One Think of about the sports, it, it was sports. Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I, I. I can't remember what we were talking about that would be relevant to that. I'm sorry. Dive grass. Right, when you dive it rugby, is... rugby, because you dive onto the grass. Right? Okay. Well, what does that have to do? Like, how does that fit in with anything? It's we the Urban Dictionary. Names, right? Oh, yeah, Urban Dictionary. You mean the game where players were diving everywhere to milk a penalty? Ah, they should call it Dive Grass. Oh, I getcha. Now it all comes together. Fun fact, American football is called football due to its origin. Similar to soccer, its origin is from rugby football that your feet are used to successfully execute a goal kick. Right. Wait, is American football actually its origin is rugby? Probably. That's I mean, they seem like they have similar rule sets, and I yeah. think rugby would be older. Yeah, I guess so. I've never looked into the history of rugby. I don't know how long it's been going for. I assume probably a while, yeah. Interesting. Uh, we should have seen the assassination Shang-Chi completed before running away from his father. Sounds incredibly important to the character. Um, Crucial, indeed. 
There's development and uh, things, but... Mm, Again, you need to tweak that scene. You need to have it so that... I'm totally fine with the dad taking the hit from the demon dragony thing for the son. That's great stuff. We'll keep that. Um, and maybe you have Shang-Chi desperately trying to save his dad with the rings that he has at that point. And it just doesn't work because you need more than the rings, I guess. Well, you don't really because you shove yeah. it in its mouth and explode <laughs> its belly. I don't fucking know. Again, it's hard to have stakes because you have no idea what's happening. With, I, and with the, what the rings are shown actually capable of when they want to, you know, achieve something in the plot, the dad could have done any number of a thousand things to get free. Like, the rings could have just surrounded the arm that was holding on and suddenly turned into a chainsaw or chop its arm off or, you know, all the things that they've been capable of. But no, he decides to die and just, yep. Loom. Would have been cool to have him fight with them. And then, if you still yeah. want to kill him, do it after that. Like, really pound in that he's he's changed his mind completely. Because fucking hell, it was annoying watching him be like, Mama, my wife is in there, I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. <laughs> hello from Ketchikan, Alaska. Oh, hello again. Uh, hockey games are the funnest games to watch live, and I'm not referring to the occasional fights. <laughs> hey, we didn't talk about hockey. Uh, I, I mean, it's popular in Canada, right? I think that's, like, the main sport over there. Good for them. It is. I was able to confirm that, you know, hockey is very popular. When I was in Canada, I spoke to some actual native Canadians. Uh, not Native American. I don't know. Uh, my terminology is getting mixed up. But anyway, Canadian people. for me, they're yeah. Native <laughs> Canadians. because they. Anyway, they, they like hockey. Yes, that's confirmed. And lots of maple syrup. And they have this thing in Montreal specifically called poutine, which is like chips with... Uh, I've heard of that. With, chips yeah. and gravy. Yeah. Chips yeah. Hungry, chips you just instantly good, diverted that train right over to cheese foods. curds. They, they add melted cheese curds onto it. And I wasn't sold on the cheese curds. They're a bit obsessed with these cheese curds. I even tried to eat some cheese curds by themselves. And uh, they're a bit rubbery. And they're just like, mm, not, not sold mm. on the curds. Not a fan of rubber, I see. poutine from South Park, uh, Cartman... And Kyle were having them while they were talking about their uh, Crack Baby Basketball Association. Yes. Uh, you know what is rubbery but delicious? Octopus. Yeah, octopus is fantastic. Actually, octopus isn't bad. I agree. I not actually. Great. I started by I saying that it was good. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's an actually good one. It's just, just it's, good. It's yeah, what are you trying to say, well, Chad? Can... I'm when you say it's actually good, that's a type of expression where you're using a different context to say it's I think really a lot good. of people, it's very good. You the idea say, that there are some people out there who don't think that octopus are delicious, that is insane. They are very yummy. Yeah, well, I feel like actually usually means, see, now you wouldn't expect it to be good or most people don't think it's no, good. Or no, there's there no are multiple uses for words, and words can have well, multiple meanings depending I'm, on context. And yeah, no, that was the I'm, way. I'm giving you the multiple reasons. <laughs> like, yeah, okay. Just, and so just, you like, could actually you, you can say actually sad. in we're the place of what very. We thought you meant. Okay, well you were wrong. I'm just explaining what I meant. Okay, okay. fair <laughs> enough. Well, I would warn I say, that if you want it to mean very rather than in it's a, contradiction to common thought then I would recommend using a different word because most people think you mean when you say actually it's good that you're contradicting the common assumption. Uh, I'm, I'm blazing a new trail here, Mola. I'm I don't like blazing make, trails. Make I think they smell good. Matt, I'm going to make it mainstream and uh, people be on board. So why do we leaving burn marks everywhere, Shad. Stop it. Yeah. No, no, no. That's not what blazing's for. That's not That's not what blazing means. When you oh, blaze right, a trail, right. you, are, you are putting marks up on trees and things to indicate that this is a trail oh. that is to be followed. Wow. I've never it's not known that. Own <laughs> yeah, that's that's brand Honestly, new to me. It, oh yeah. man, that's a fun one because I've always assumed it meant you like start up the car really fast and just blast through an area and you make a pathway for somebody. Yeah, because in the same way, if you blaze well, if you blaze a trail, you are the fr you're like a you're a trendsetter. You're the first to do something. So if there isn't a trail yet, you blaze. The trail, you put markings on the trees so that others That's behind you can follow, and then as a result, a trail develops as more and more so and more people use it. It's not when people are just smoking heaps of marijuana and getting heat whole, fully blazed while they're trying to trail. Oh, it it wouldn't be a trail. trail, it would just be a bunch of people wandering in the woods and getting lost. <laughs> 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 they get uh, fully blazed, you know. Hey, look, you, got a, you got a trail. Oh, wait. 
I can't tell if Maul's being sarcastic or not. I never knew that that's what that meant. I, I, I didn't never. know that either. Yeah. <laughs> that's new to me. It doesn't come up. Like, people just know what you mean when you say it, you know? It's one of those ones. Yeah, yeah. Which will happen a lot more as time goes on, with, as we've talked about before, but fast forward and rewind. Kids ain't gonna know what that means. No, why that one's why those words really are used good. that way, I mean, I guess. Yeah. Rewind, for example. That's gotta, that's gotta fuck with their head a little bit. What what exactly are we winding here? Yeah. <laughs> like, to wind it again? Why? What do you mean wind it what again? What do you mean wind? You just, I just turn, I just put the, the, the file just goes backward. Why isn't it just backwarding and forwarding? Do you reckon there was like an old man who was really used to the winding systems of many things and then when he saw like a DVD, he was like, what the fuck? That's so much it easier. It's sure like a yeah, it's in the wind here. Well, no, just I mean, like um, angry at the fact that people, the kids get to do that nowadays while he had to wind everything. <laughs> He's like, for fuck's sake. There, there's a lot of people who will never know the annoyance that came with putting a VHS into the VHS player. Yeah. And then realizing that the last time you finished it, you didn't rewind yeah. it. So Dude, you're, you're watching credits all of a sudden and you're like, oh, I gotta wait. We gotta rewind it. You guys ever pull one out and it? Oh, that sounds bad out of context. Pull a tape out of the, <laughs> yes. the VHS yeah. and it's the the it's tangled like it's 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 chewed yeah. on the fucking tape and you and you're like oh my god no it's like a, you desperately just try to get it out without damaging both. I don't remember that ever happening to us. Uh, oh, never it's happened, happened plenty of times uh, to me. I guess as well as Fight Club when they're talking about cigarette burns. It's like yeah, I remember those. Yeah, they don't exist anymore. Cigarette burns. Yeah, no. so in the cause the uh the tape the the film reel like it, it's multiple reels. You need multiple reels stitched together to be a full film. Mm -hmm. So the projectionist would not make cigarette burns in the top right hand corner so that they knew when to switch over. Um, you, you may remember when when you watch movies rags like a little a little mark in the top left or right hand corner would just pop up for like a frame. It's so quick, Do and a lot that? of people Do don't even know those exist until they're pointed out, and they're like, oh fuck, okay. But that's yeah, in, yeah it, it's it's super I remember interesting. That. About... I, I remember that. Well, yeah, it's just you forget that they, they physical things. These were like well, physical think about items, like, you know. When people fake film grain because they like the look of it, and yeah. you imagine someone who has no fucking clue what you're talking about. Like, what do you mean? What do you fake? What? what do you mean like... film grain? It's like, well, it's okay, printed on a on, on film. Like it's it's on a it's on a physical thing. Like it's not a digital file. Yeah. And they'll just be, I gotcha. gotta catch them up with all these things, you know, I mean, whippersnappers. You know, it's the reason why they say cut, right? It's like, yeah, cut the... Yeah, like, a, like a Q mark, in a way. Uh, yeah, basically it's so that the projectionist knows, alright, the tape's coming to an end, I need to switch it over to the next one. Um... It's gotta be big enough to see, but it can't be too big to where it's obnoxious for the viewer. Well... Yeah, and it's Fortunately, usually quick. because it's only one frame or a couple yeah. of frames, you know, it's just the projectionist. But now it's not a factor at all. It's a digital file. You think you'd be able to tell um, by by the looking at the reel and noticing it how small it gets? You think you could do that? Or oh, maybe they just maybe? it ends up being more precise than that, right? Because it's literally like a you see it and then you pull the lever or whatever you do to switch them over. Yeah, exactly. Uh, hi, Wags. Hello. I was the car mechanic market in Arkansas, uh, thinking about moving out there. I have no clue about the car mechanic <laughs> market. Very. I will tell you this though, as like I said, every fucking place is hiring. I was say, yeah, uh, should be right, right? That's something you can find out before moving there, I guess. I'd imagine. Presumably. Yeah, you can so probably presumably. call a bunch of places, ask if they're hiring, and do that sort of thing. Yeah. Mm. Take a look. Do you like about combat sports? What do you like about combat sports? I'm guessing. Maybe, I'm that's, guessing. maybe that's what they mean. What do you like about combat sports? Hmm. I don't know. It's the same kind of rush you get out of action movies, I guess. Yeah. Where yeah. It's like it's. There's enough. That's... There's a better edge to it because it's real. I've yeah. seen people who are very talented and they are executing and performing things that are so beyond the normal capacity of regular people. And uh, yeah, it's uh, I mean... amazing. <laughs> Funnily enough, sometimes I might feel a little bit way worse because of the fact that it's real. Um, <laughs> like, that gets really hurt. Yeah, there's no escape hatch for my mind in terms of it's not it's not real. The person's fine. You're like, okay. But when someone's, like, screaming in agony because they break their leg or something, I'm like, oh, man. That sucks. Yeah. Well, it's like when you Ouch. watch those weightlifting videos where oh. people, like, 
they dislocate their arm when it falls backward. It's like, oh, oh they fucking oh, throw up everywhere. Is, uh, it's, yeah. it's just, you're out, you're done. Like, that's that's it for, for, uh, for this particular career path. Not only is the injury horrific, but, like, there's kind of no hope to fully recover from it. I hope you were good at math. <laughs> or good at just just making else, fun yeah. of movies. They can join us on EFAP, these X weightlifters. EFAP. Boop boop. Uh, hey Shad, what were the Ooh. what what were music genres like in the medieval period? Were what were music genres genres like? I assume that's what they meant to say. Yeah. Unless unless you meant like where music like at the full moon mm -hmm. the music turns into like <laughs> death metal or something where it was like where it was a pleasant dirge or a magical now it's just that is metal right there <laughs> that was that's metal uh, yeah. yeah yeah that's the that's that death metal right there I'm I'm, I'm satisfied with Rags's answer uh, I think that's acceptable oh. But all right, yeah. so medieval instruments are actually really interesting, and some are pretty weird as well. And so, if genres though is an interesting kind of question, um, because uh, we don't have too many sources for medieval music. We'd have the instruments, we have some uh, examples that would have been written down. But in terms of oh, I want this style, this style, that's hard to say because you you'd have your minstrel kind of arrangements but then there'd be uh, sonnets and uh, and sung you know things but also uh, uh, they loved poetry in the medieval period and then poetry in verse with the melodic tone uh, is also common as well and uh, and so i think instead of genre you would have different arrangements or that involve different kind of groupings of either instruments styles that things that incorporate vocals things that don't uh, and that's kind of what you would see. Um, and it's interesting that sometimes they had the one that was a bit like a piano. Oh, one of the funniest ones was, um, I forget which, it was either a bishop of some time. He commissioned, he wanted an interesting kind of um, instrument. And so what they got this guy ma made, it was, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's a bit animal cruelty. He got different sized piglets tied onto this thing and he had keys like a piano. But when you pressed a key, it would make a lever fall down with a t with a pin on it which would prick the b behind you know of the, of one of the piglets oh, to make no. them squeal oh, <laughs> and, and no. you could get different pitch squeals out now of the that's a trailblazer that right you, there you would press oh, no. <laughs> that's actually <laughs> oh that, that oh i don't like that Bring you, go hunt that guy down with it's, a time traveling machine history, he, he got all these history. pigs together and he's like all right who wants to be a star <laughs> I do, I do. Uh, so if you want to make it in this there, town, there you gotta make sacrifices. Well, it's either that history. or being bacon, so... I don't know, well, at least you die with the bacon. How long does this torture yeah. last? Uh, it, maybe it depends on how bad the prick is. Makes what if you get turned into bacon later on? You just suffer and then die. It's like, oh man. I don't know, maybe, maybe if you're really good, it prolongs your life. Maybe yeah, they have a reason to be as... Uh... There would be a reward. If you can squeal appropriately when you're pricked in the right way and you do it on time, they get released into the wild to live a long and happy Aww. life. I, I would I would hasten to that's guess definitely that what not how it works. Yeah. No. That sounds like the <laughs> kind of animal nah, compassion they, that they, they would have. They definitely had a feast afterwards. Poor piggy. <laughs> Dinner and a show, yeah. Yeah, let's <laughs> yeah, make them sad. Monsters. So anyway, different time. Different time. Uh, and you different should do a special where you look for swords at cashies. What's a cashies? Like a pawn shop? Like a pawn shop? Like yeah, must be a pawn shop. Maybe, yeah. Well, I oh, just on that note, sometimes I come across <gasps> oh, like, you know, what uh, like sword a retailers. Note? No, not like that. But. So I go to a medieval festival and there's people selling swords and stuff. I was like, all right, I'll give it a look. And oh boy, some of the quality of swords that people are trying to sell sometimes is just awful. Like it's like selling one for I don't know between two hundred and five hundred dollars. Like I would not pay you ten dollars. No, you would have to pay me to take this piece of crap. Oh uh, wow! You should do the antique roadshow, but with swords. You should. Uh... Do that. Fun, actually, maybe see the old man, anti crowd show. What a weird video! I'll go to a medieval festival and I'll go to one of these people selling swords and I just confront them, record you know, right the in front utter, of their face. The 
utter this is crap shit. you're trying well, to sell here. This is complete You're trying to swindle and, these people? Yeah, do that. And do the one where you find, like, they're like, oh, $10 for this? And you're like, yeah, yeah, great. And you grab it, you grab it and then you move out of the room and you go, fuck, God, this is $1 million. Oh, my God. <laughs> you have no idea. And then you Whoa. sell it. So like, far, so dollars. far, in all the, um, you know, random retailers I've found, and this is also random shops and everything, I've never seen a single sword of this exceptional quality that they didn't know was half decent and they were trying to sell it, mm. you know. Um, I've only seen crap being peddled as, you know, medium or even great to people that don't know anything. I've never seen come across, like, an Albion being sold for 10 bucks. That would be awesome, hey. but haven't haven't seen it yet. Because I think I saw a couple of episodes of that, and I think that was the appeal for me whenever they walk into a room and there's this, like, shitty old cabinet, and then one of the presenters is like, Fucking God, you have no idea. That's an exquisite French-laden custodial... My God, it's, it's the, missing, <laughs> the missing LaRue. And then it's like, they, they fix it up a little bit, and then they sell it for, like, 20 times what it was on sale for. It's like, what the fuck? Wow. Yeah. Antique people know their shit. Generally, yeah, that tends to be the case mm. a lot of the time. Makes sense. Um, when you say an antique person, you are referring old to just people. very, yeah, very, just very ancient old people. Person. Yeah. Just old people good, good, good. who want to be reminded of their childhood and the way that things used to be, so they live vicariously through the consumption of goods in mercantile. What Rag said. That's, That's what we mean. More yes. depressing. But... Hey, you hit Lenny again! What is your problem? What are you talking- there's an objective to hit Lenny in every map, what do you mean? No, it doesn't you say that. You got an achievement. It's not my fault, Fringy. Yeah, I'll shut you up. Yeah. I'm just- <laughs> so I'm baffled, I'm bewildered. I've, I'm stunned into silence by the cruelty that I'm witnessing here. Like, listen, it's a it's a man prick pig world out there. All right, so <laughs> man run, running over Lenny world. Is that what Jimbo told you to do? You're gonna pin it on him. I mean, it wouldn't be pinning it on him if it was him that did it. I I just am skeptical as to the truth in that claim. Skeptical. Why is uh Why is Bart driving? Did Bart drive uh Millhouse's vehicle in the final well, race or? Millhouse is the one that gave me mm. this mission, so that might be why, narratively, I have this. I... Yeah, I guess I'm just... Because I'm, I remember Bart's wasn't as good. But then this wasn't, one, the wait, parachute... Wait, the honor roller? I thought that was Martin's not. or whatever. That's that's what I'm saying. It was Martin's. You said Millhouse. Um, did I... Did I say... Okay, I meant Martin. Mm -hmm. Um... I, I, it's a pretty cool car, except that it didn't deploy the parachute and he crashed into a... Well, and then it just got set on fire for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of jokes in The Simpsons that are just things catching on fire. There's something funny about a burning orphanage. <laughs> I feel like Norm MacDonald would probably take advantage of that. There really is, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Team America, Orgasmo, and Basketball are amazing, but in that order only. Well, uh, Basketball? Yeah, uh, I was going to say, Fringy, you've seen Team America, so you just got to see Orgasmo and Basketball to complete I've... the trilogy. Alright. Uh, Death Race <laughs> should be a sport? I mean, Death Race would be watched by know. everybody if that was a real sport. Holy shit. It would be the great cultural unifier of our age. I mean, kind of, right? Like, everyone gets to build their own sort of crazy vehicles. I guess in this context, they would be convicts or whatever, but if... If it wasn't that, the people it was just that anybody. if you died, you're like, oh, it's not that. It's actually kind of like it's all right that they died. It's like Mario Kart in real life, but with like drastic consequences to the point of killing people is like totally normal. Did, did you guys ever see Death Race? No. Um, so are you no. talking about the new one with um, uh, is it Jason Statham? Is that the guy? Yeah, I think Paul W. S. Anderson made it, right? I think so. So yeah, Resident Evil guy. <laughs> um. But yeah, the uh, the idea is like everybody sort of has their own. That's a movie that would probably work for uh, EFAP movies. It's like they all have personalities to a degree. What I mean by that is like um, they're like caricatures. Like there'll be a, like a Russian guy who has loads of guns on his car, or you know whoever. But um, the main character has the tombstone, which is like the the cool ability of a giant block of metal on the back of his car. It's really good for as a shield. But then his like ulti is dropping the tombstone, which just crashes down the course. It's so Mario Karty. 
Um, everyone would watch it, and everyone would want to innovate a car that beats the others, and if they're crazy enough to do it. Do you reckon that would have a lot of takers if it were legal, with how dangerous it is? If it paid Gosh. enough, you bet your ass. Mm. Yeah, even to the death, I think people would want to chase after glory and stuff, because there are people who do profoundly stupid things just for the bragging rights, the glory, the attention. I mean, there are people who actually fight with deadly sharp swords just for the sake of it, and they're idiots, right? Like they, you know, it's really bad things can result out of it, but they still, there are people who do it. I know. So, the, um... Maybe that's the thrill, you know? Because I was going to say, mm. even, like, the, the racing in, uh, it's done IRL uh, with, like, different tracks all over the world and stuff, there's loads of deaths on them, and lots of famous drivers, like, the best drivers of all time, a lot of them died. Because it's just malfunctions and stuff. I learned a lot about a lot of the, the ones that did die through uh, Grand Tour. They did like special episodes on a lot of the greatest drivers of all time. And it sucks because a lot of the time it would be the vehicles failing them sort of thing. Because of like different design flaws that come from desperately trying to create the best uh, vehicles and stuff. Um, since you're not talking about Shang-Chi, did you hear Nicki Minaj call Vorsha Pedo? It was glorious. Oh my god, did that seriously happen? <laughs> Nicki Minaj? <laughs> Maybe this isn't the worst time. What? Yeah. I need is is that I, like... I heard she I heard she went after Hazar Hazar or whatever that Hazar. Holy guy. shit. Chicken Nuggy man, but not that one. I mean, cause it, it would be really unlikely to have sent that super chat if that's not something that happened. But it just it feels surreal. <laughs> 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 Uh, Y'all have probably gotten to this question already, but have any of you seen Malignant? Completely insane, but fully entertaining to watch. Toodle pip. We're actually. That's uh, what I've heard. We're planning to watch it, and it might be released this year. If we can't make it, because how editing goes, uh, you'll see it next year for sure. Uh, has anyone really been far, even as decided to use even go want to look more like? Ah, uh, it's been a while since I've heard that one. Very good. Mm. What do you guys... Do you, do you agree with that, or do you think it's a bit... Nah, I don't endorse. I'm, I'm thinking that is a now. definite possibility. Mm. I just think there's a lot of discussion to be had there. I'm glad they asked. I, I, I agree, yeah. There's a golf course in Australia with a lake full of bull sharks. Is that enough of a hazard, Rags? I mean... I mean, if as long as... Here's the thing. As long as you don't go in the lake, you should be fine. Well, you were saying you wanted a golf course with real hazards, right? I mean, like, yeah, I guess in the sense of... Because normally a lake is only a hazard if you don't know how to swim. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that could be, yeah. That only non-swimmers are allowed to play this course. To make the hazards more real. Uh, is dwarf tossing a sport? Yeah, probably, I'd yes. say. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Reminder that Fringy calls soda soft drinks. What's wrong with that? I mean, that, yeah, I that is an umbrella them. term, I think. They are. Them, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah, soft drinks. Or, or, yeah, we call them sodas busy. here. They call them is pop it, up north. Is the idea that hard drinks fizzies? relate to alcohol and soft drinks? No, we don't call them fizzies. We're not, we're not that. Yeah. We're not, uh, uh, <laughs> you call it pup 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 rags. Putt yeah, putt, because it is putt putt. Putt putt, putt putt is a man's rag. game. You've got putt putt is a man's putt putt. sport. Holy crap. Putt putt is a sport for fizzies, men. But putt putt Miniature totally golf? Fine. No, 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 no. Mini golf? No, we're not putting mini in there. It is putt putt. It you is are a struggling to make miniature a bad word. Putt putt is easy. It is. It's a self-explanatory. Putt, yeah, it's self-explanatory for the grand, incredible sport. The, the competitive thrill, the windmill dodging, ramp... Uh, rolling, uh, birdie gaining, hole in one attaining, uh, trap evading thrill ride that it is. Choose oh, the golf, color right? of your ball and choose the length of your putter, and we shall see who wins on this day. So it sounds like you're describing mini golf. Sounds, sounds a bit desperate, doesn't it? No, 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 no. This isn't. This is putt putt. This is way better than mini oh, golf. Oh, no, no. What like, you're describing. Like, mini golf is like. What's like... that for Oompa Loompas? What, what's that? Is that for ants? How is the that fuck like you a craft compare... sport for ants? Putt putt sounds mini like an Oompa Loompa like, house. No, no, no. no putt putt, 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 putt sounds like an Oompa Loompa. The, the, the dump, <laughs> like the poo of an Oompa Loompa. That's, 
That's putt it, putt that, sounds that, like an incredible sport for men. <laughs> putt putt sounds like an Oompa Loompa janitor. He's like, I'm putt putt. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, putt putt. Mini golf sounds like a fucking Smurf. Does it really though? What's the connection yeah. there? I feel like you're just uh, you're grasping at straws right now. Yeah. He's... There are no straws being grasped here. We can see them. I that I that I can see. <laughs> the number of straws being grasped here is honestly kind of unfathomable. No, the mm -hmm. the number of straws being grasped, it is it is a round number that rhymes with hero, all right? Boy, just you digging that grave deep. Zero. I mean, that was yeah, a no, weird I, way to I, get I, zero I across. It sounded a bit uh, desperate uh, again. Yeah. I don't know. I just wanted yeah, to I just like, wanted to float like you something easy so you could feel delay. like you figured something out. No, I, I think I think you were trying to find a way to like delay so that you could figure out you know your counter arguments. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, the, uh, you're trying to get them all straight because you know you're you're on the losing side of this one. The only thing straight around here is my shots in putt putt. Straight into the well, hole. Might be the case. It doesn't make putt putt better as a name. It does. No, you can just transfer any sport, that over any to mini sport golf. That I am any sport that I am better at automatically makes it better. Are you saying you're not good at mini golf? I don't play mini golf. What am I, some kind of nerd? I play man's How do game. You know whether you're better or worse at it, then. Yeah. Oh, I'm. I think I'm. I can. I can take one look at. I can take one look at mini golf and know that. Ugh. I'm not. Ugh. Why would I ever sully you're these? You're not good at these it. These hands. Why, you... Man, why don't you? Why like... don't you catch the... these oh, hands gosh. on the putt putt course? The, le the levels of cope are getting pretty yeah, extreme man. here. Clearly, Ooh. he was like really bad at mini golf, and he's like, no, no, putt putt's my going game. high, guys. All right, but. Buy it now. Get some stock in Copium. Mm -hmm. It's just going through the roof. I'm not a financial advisor, but buy Copium. Wait, wait, wouldn't it... Would, so, but if there's supposed to be more, wouldn't the price be going down? No, you're hogging up all the Copium, so it's becoming a rare commodity. Am I? Like, all of the Copium Hogging up all your, the Copium? Your, so invest, yes. yeah. So well, if now. they have some extra money, that what they can do is they could come down to the putt putt range where all the shots take place, and they can challenge me to putt putt where they will lose because putt -putt range? I play man's the games. Putt -putt I play range. men's range? sports. Range. The range, yeah, because of all the these range. all these long dis yeah, because everyone better stand back where it's safe because I'm about to fire this thing right into the hole, hole in one. Through the gaps, over the rocks, around the ridges, 18 holes of putt putt and glory, nice smooth green turf, level sticks, and we're gonna we're gonna sink it every time. Do you think when they're Slide describing it right it, in there? How they're gonna name it. They originally called it putt 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 and then they're like, no, that's too gay. You need only a little bit gay, like putt putt. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's uh, I don't think that's the reasoning they went. And then through. the chads who are like so golf but smaller and like miniature, and like just call it and, mini golf. And and exactly, and because it's smaller, it requires more skill yeah. uh, to be able to handle. And Certainly so, more than putt putt. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. So, Fringy, do you say fizzy when you're describing soft drinks sometimes? Um, no, I always call them soft drink. Uh, have you heard people call it just fizzies? Or yeah, fizzy yeah, I have. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. People call them fizz, yeah, but I, I typically call them soft drinks. I don't call them soda ever. Yeah, soda's a bit weird. I don't think I've ever said that once in my life, except for then. Well, no, we I've have said it, but uh, we don't call them fizzies. fizzies. There is a drink, we have a soda, drink here that is a like soda, soda, yeah, but that's... Yeah, yeah creaming soda, but we, we don't call them all sodas, because they are soft yeah. drinks, ultimately. That is the Farmer umbrella. 29, holy fuck, he looks like he's 45. Who's sorry? Who's sorry? H Bomber guy. I guess it's his 29th birthday. Is he, um, is that a joke? He, he, he looks. I don't think he, he does looks, not look like he's in his 40s. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where you got that from. Is it because of the hair, or because he's he's know. usually shaving that down now? Oh, that's good. Yeah, I mean, I'm I think he looks. To, uh, to shave it down a lot more next time I get my hair cut. I, think I, wanna... I got my long luscious. Yeah, locks. basically get it all off. I want to. I, I want, uh, especially since summer's coming up, I think I want yeah. less. Yeah, just get rid of it. Keep the beard though. A beard? Eh, it's not really a beard. <laughs> so I, I can't. I, I, my, my human doesn't grow a beard. He, he trims his uh, facial uh -huh. hair. I guess mm. the beard doesn't really mean much under the mask. 
Mm -hmm. I need to think about Halloween costumes. <laughs> oh shit, yeah, yeah. ten days. Right, yeah. I want to see a new it's one almost... from you. I demand a new one. A new costume? Mm-hmm. We have to go something different every year until we're dead. Like, in, like I could, like, go to this. I know the Halloween store. There's a big Spirit of Halloween store thing that opens up around this time. It's it's open. It's out there. Do it. I could go see if I could be a bumblebee or a ladybug or um, maybe I could be... Um, Oh, I don't know. What are the things I could be? Maybe I could be a a, a mushroom, or yeah, you could be a mushroom, um, yeah. Yeah. maybe I could be. Summer's coming like up. A, We're halfway into like September. A, like so a cutting board. This is southern hemisphere. Go ahead, continue. Just a oh, just a second. I'm getting a call. Uno momento. All right. Oh well. So anyway. Um, I don't mind that people don't consider LOL or CS a sport, that's why they're eSport, but I hate it when people demean those who play it professionally. Um, yeah. But, so this was the thing, though. You, If someone says I'm willing to call it an eSport but not a sport, I'd be like, so is an eSport just a sport but online? Well, see, to me it feels like they're actually confusing terms of words because sport just by itself must therefore include everything that can be considered a subcategory of sport it's the most general term in reference to and sport and i'm talking about exactly yeah. and if esport is literally has the word in the name it's a type of sport by definition technically um you might say well it's not a physical sport or a, or a ball sport or a foot ball sport or something like that but Which that means like, just well, NASCAR, exactly isn't NASCAR a sport yeah uh, and you're, well, you're, I got, I got you're restricting the, the, the definition of sport by uh, by adding be, prefixes to them. It would be email versus mail, right? They're both male. Yes, just, yeah. exactly. And they do they function perfectly the same. It's just that one's electronic is where that comes from, right? Yeah. And and even if you can't yeah, say that um, mail, the original concept, couldn't have incorporated the definition of email because email didn't exist. That category must be broadened when email is invented as a new type of mail and it encompasses it. And this is the same with eSport. You might think that originally, because eSports didn't exist, it can't be encompassed. But no, the, the new sports can be invented all the time and come under that same umbrella Absolutely. category. The only problem with this is I am not married to sport at all. And so I'm just like, whatever, categorize it with whatever's accurate. But there are people out there who are like, fuck you, eSports are not yeah, sports. It doesn't count. It's like, it's okay, like, I don't know, man. Very you just gotta get used to that. It. You gotta get used to it. I'm sorry, man. Like, people care about this stuff, they engage with it. It's uh, okay, it so takes skill to get good at these let, things. Naturally. Let, let's see, Especially let's see how far this can be pushed, right? Because there are things that you know people will try and claim that do not meet the true category and definition. For instance, say cheese, and someone has a new type of cooking meat and has no cheese in it but they call it a so like meat cheese or something like that right is that right. definitionally cheese because it's called meat cheese is a new type of cheese as i would say i can't because cheese has a more strict understanding and definition based at being a byproduct of, a, of dairy essentially and the way it's made um creates a very a more strict kind of category and definition of cheese and so i don't think you could invent anything and give it a name that right. you know is related to something else and then say by the name that yeah, it's sure. therefore a new type um and so with esports i think the reason why you can do it is because of standards that exist and categories that you already give sport to like yeah nascar or whatever sports things well, or yeah it's, you know. it's competitive and it takes skill um yeah exactly and it does require a level of physical exertion and that i mean I would say, like, it would be a little awkward to suggest that if you're playing, like, a first-person shooter competitively, that there is no level of physical exertion there. Well, someone, you're not getting tired out. That's what a chat said. Darts made this happen, because darts is a sport, oh. right? Oh. Yeah. And, uh, it has to be a sport, yeah. And, like, that's got to... I know people are going to be like, there's still more physical exertion in darts than there are in esports. I'd just be like, I mean, we're mm. getting to the point now where it's, you Really, know, though? That's minutia. Yeah, that's a, that's yeah, that's, at that that's point. a... That's I don't even agree with that. Like, if you're playing League of Legends or something competitively, you're probably going to have super good hand well, with, coordination. I was going to say, with darts, they do dart, 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 and then they usually sit down, right? Or they can. And, and doesn't poker? Isn't poker considered a sport? If poker's like, well, considered a sport, it's over. <laughs> then, then, yeah, that. And I think it is. I think it would have to be. It's competitive. It's a skill-based game. I think that's really what matters more than physical exertion, is competitive and skill. 
I think um, so, yeah. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. So, poker, I'm not so sure about. I think there's a far I less of physical component support. to it. We'll like, see what I think there is no that's that's the point, right? There is no physical component, more or less at all. Um, but I would still consider it to be a sport. What chess? As uh, chess is a sport, yeah, isn't uh, it? Chess, I would absolutely consider a sport. Really? As far yeah, as I'm not even this isn't skill based. I'm not even going with like my opinion here. I'm pretty sure chess is a sport, isn't it? I think it's considered a sport. I think so, is widely. It? Well, can you can you Wikipedia it see if it's like listed as a sport at any point? I'm very okay. curious about that. Uh, Google. Google. Help me out. I'm sorry, I'm, in, I'm trying to... I'm working on the comic. Let me Google. Dude, back to back in chat. Yeah. Chess is a sport, absolutely. Chess isn't a sport. <laughs> <laughs> chess sport. So, uh, chess is recognized by the International Olympic Committee as a sport. Ooh. I feel like that's got to be the best Ooh, one Ooh, okay, we well... If chess if is legitimately a sport, a sport then gosh. I feel like it has to be a sport. Yeah, it's hard to exclude many other things, even poker. I, I mean, like, and, and you know, like, if chess doesn't count as a sport, I feel like that's meaningless anyway as a thing, because, like, chess is an incredibly competitive skill-based game that's, like, it, it doesn't really take away from any level of legitimacy. I, think, I just think that is. there are people who very much are invested in the physical exertion I don't know why. part, but the problem is that the line with every example we give gets, like, more complicated and yeah. more complicated, you know? So, exactly. at the risk of potentially triggering a massive tangent, but I <laughs> am deeply interested in what you guys think, because there's been a debate that we have had over on my other channel, Game Nights, which has been a very passionate, involved, intensive debate oh on a very <laughs> crucial question, oh. and it is about chess. But it is, is chess a 2D or 3D game. Isn't it both? I feel like it could be both, right? No, no, what is it fundamentally? What is it? Uh, is it a 2D I, or 3D game? But, so, I, and my confusion here is like saying, what is Mario fundamentally, 2D or 3D? I'd be like, well, there are 2D Marios and 3D Marios, so I don't understand. I, I guess I'm not sure what the question is. Like, are you saying, what is it more so than... Like, which plays into it more, the 2D aspects or the 3D aspects? Because I feel like it would probably be 2D, I was right? about to say, yeah, if we like, go in that direction, down, you don't require the third right? dimension for chess to work? Yeah. yeah. That's true. So I feel like I feel like the fact that you don't need 3D, but you absolutely need two-dimensional, means that it has to be a 2D sport. Well, to be fair, everything requires at least 2D, right? <laughs> right. Not man. necessarily. Is there a 1D well, sport? I I, well, I mean, I guess there yeah. would be certain sports that don't make sense in 2D that make sense. I feel like it's got to be 2D, right? It's flat plane. It's um, what now? move X, Y axis. Like people, the, the, I, it, yeah. Well, I feel ask like Rags it, a question. See what he says. That in chat too. Rat Rags, is chess a 2D or 3D game? It's 2D. Yeah, I feel. I feel like 2D. It has to. What would be the? I, what would the? It's length and width. I like, agree. Like with you me. could, you yes. could literally. You look down from the top, and like there's no, there's no, like, uh, vertical yeah. component to it. It the the, I... the playing field is flat. The <laughs> pieces can be represented with simple icons that could just be part of the space itself. It doesn't. The, the, there's no. There's no horizontal aspect to it. Ah, it's good to hear you guys put my heart to rest. Yes, oh, like that was b be my contention as well. It why, is absolutely, why is this an fundamentally, <laughs> well, a 2D game. Yeah, I was going to say, well, there's nothing, I had a, I I had a, there's nothing oh, for me like to argue. Hour, <laughs> yeah, well, I've had an hour long dimension. debate with some of the other game nights um, over on the channel. Well, tell us about their arguments, what they say. What do they think uh, the third dimension is? Well, th their argument was that, uh, well, I don't want to. I don't want to don't, don't worry we will yet. not we will not use any names just just give us an idea or approximation um, of what someone might say is that the most Alleged. common representation of chess is in a 3d format and when people mm. refer well, to oh, sure. yeah, chess, I live in usually... reality I live in reality but like that doesn't I don't think that means anything in terms of uh, yeah, well, well I, I disagreed with that one because you can technically play chess in your head with another person with grid references and you don't need it represented in a 3d world to be played I, I guess um, uh 
Yeah, like, I think it's just a matter of that almost feels like, well, if I draw something on paper, that's 3D because, like, I can well, pick the paper Well, hang on, that was one around. of the arguments people were saying. Like, on the chess debate, there were legitimately <laughs> unironic comments saying, it, because it exists in the 3D world, it must be 3D. <laughs> At that, then it, that sort of yeah, yeah that yeah, sort of devalues exactly. the entire yeah um, point of these d dimensions is a thing yeah yes. I mean, yeah the we have pieces because we like the artistry of it and we like the representation visually oh, of please. it but there's, yeah but you could yeah there's there's no necessity for a third dimension it's not like a a, a ball is moving through space up and down and left and right and has a it, it, there's no depth like scribble scramble it, that's required. Yeah, there's... Do you ever play that? Yeah. No, I've never heard of that one. I've Do never you... heard of Scrooble Scramble. Hey, chat, who's heard of Scrooble Scramble? It's one of my favorite fucking games when I was a kid, and the idea is just, you have a ball, and you have to get it through the entire course using all of your console buttons, and it would be like to uh, push it through like little tunnels, or to bounce it across little platforms, to use a magnet to drift it across things. But that would be a 3D game. like. A board game, even because I was, I was, I wanted to kind of dispel the idea that like all board games might be, you know, like there's, there's a difference between chess and Scrooble Scramble. There you go. Right. <laughs> to just highlight that not all, yeah, that there are some fundamentally 3D games. There uh, are. I'm seeing at least one person who knows Scrooble Scramble. You're my excellent my spirit animal. Okay. Mouse Trap is another one like that. Yeah. You guys remember Mouse Trap, right? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, mouse I remember. Yeah, there you go. Trap. Yeah. I do mm -hmm. prefer Monopoly. Um, I actually really like Monopoly. I hate Monopoly. You actually oh, I don't know. really enjoy it? it? it uh, see, to me, it depends on how you play. Like I enjoy Monopoly. Monopoly when you can be really, you know, um, I guess... Mischievous. I enjoy when you can be very yeah, creative yeah, with yeah, the when rules. You, yeah, when, when you, um, uh, you negotiate and you uh, have, you know, that interaction between players, Monopoly can be heaps of fun. Yeah, when there's a lot of modifiers and extra rules and things you're allowed to do to make it interesting, I'm a lot more keen on it. But default rules, it's it's fine. I but think I, I do like the aspect of making a lot of freedom with how you could wheel and deal and how you could agree to do things and you know adding a bit of options into it. I definitely agree with that. I way prefer like non-vanilla Monopoly, but uh, at the same time, those games can die so early if people get the right roles. It's just like well. That's true. And then, you know, what yeah. you can do is have them be like, let's make this a bit more fair. I'll, you know, you can take a thousand out of the bank for free if we both agree. And it's just like, this feels weird. Like, we have to create handicaps to account for the fact that you've just gotten the best properties and I keep landing on them. Yeah, uh, that is the frustrating part about Monopoly, the luck factor and how it can discount uh, in a large measure any level of skill that you might be able to bring to the game to win can just be subverted completely by someone getting lucky. That's annoying. Yeah, like, for instance, like, play Monopoly t one time with a goal to be the first person to go bankrupt. Where that is your goal. To get your- to spend your money as much as possible. Hmm. You still like first person to zero win sort of thing? <laughs> yeah, first person to spend all of their money and go bankrupt, you, um, they win. For that, do you give more starter money or do you stay the same? Stay- you could stay the same. But it changes it changes your objective and how you you always buy everything you possibly can. You want as few uh, moves consistently as you go around the board. Um, that does sound interesting, honestly. I wouldn't. Yeah. I'd be curious to see how well that works as a sort of new kind of game. Uh, but other, there's all kinds of different uh, like extra rules and variants that you could look up on the internet, and some of them are really um, some are really interesting. Um, a lot of people know a lot about some of them. Like technically, if you land on go, you collect four hundred instead of two hundred. Right. That's technically not in the rules. It's just sort of an accepted thing that a lot of people do. Um, the worst situation is when you got zero money, basically zero houses and hotels and properties, and you land on like the biggest one, and the person's like, "It's okay, you can owe me." And you're like, "Yeah." <laughs> oh, an another thing too is. Um, a lot of people think that whenever you go bankrupt, your properties go to the bank, but technically in the rules, all of that goes to the person who essentially cleans you out. Your stuff goes to the bank, which is often not used because it's just the rich get richer. It's like, it's called Monopoly. Like, yeah, I know, but hey, it's still look, a game, all right. so. that's, it's, it's, that's, you know, that's just... Monopoly. Don't hate the player, hate the game. 
Right. Also, oh, when hey, someone lands on a property for sale and they don't buy it, it immediately goes up for auction with the rest yes. of the players. That's yeah. Another rule that you can use. Um, you can't collect rent on properties while you're in jail. Yep. Um, if you roll snake eyes, you pay money. When the person who's like the richest and owns everything goes to jail, everyone's like, roll the dice now, go, 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 <laughs> run around. <laughs> yeah, now but the ability... The, the, the stuff where you can give loans to other players and you can we you could do these strange transactions with other players and things of that nature i like those kinds of rules where you can mm -hmm. try and stuff that can circumvent the unluckiness that dice can give yeah um i like stuff like that where you can try and um you know well, you can do um double the effects of all community chests and chance cards as well you know like to, to raise the stakes in a lot of ways for different players. This there's just like a bazillion different rules you can make that are real fun. You may, yeah, like if you want to instead of using the chance and community chest cards, whenever someone lands on one of those, they have to pay money for their houses and hotels they have, uh, which can be used as a way to keep the players who are yeah, quote unquote ahead in check. Because there is that one card right. There's like where it's like pay however much dollars for every house and hotel you have, which is supposed to I guess try and you know, balance the people who are winning hardcore. Another, oh, um, using three dice for movement. So you roll three dice and you get to choose which two you want to use for your movement. Mm. So you have a little bit of say, you have a little bit of say. It's not just whatever you get, you get. You can actually sort of pick and choose a little bit. Um, do you, do you, so. Is it a vanilla rule or not that double six is another turn? I think one. it's it's doubles, doubles of any kind. I doubles believe. is any yeah, but if you do it three times, you, you go to jail. jail. But then yeah, yeah that's right. That. Then you go to jail. That's true. Yeah. Um. Let me see. Yeah, but, but there's a lot of uh, the little rules like that that th make things a bit interesting. It's a game that you could really sort of uh, you know fuck around well, with to with. make it cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. I, I generally like a, like the first one I mentioned, the whole who can, whoever can go bankrupt first. That's often a thing that's really fun to do in games, where like the exact opposite, how do I get, you know, how do I kill my player the fastest, or how do I lose the fastest? Sometimes that could be really, mm -hmm. uh, it totally turns everything on its head, especially with Monopoly, when you know what you want, especially going around the board the first time you want to snag as much as you can or you want to try to get to these properties first and get them i i personally really like to snag the oranges uh in the reds whenever i can particularly uh, particularly the oranges um but then you're like oh if i'm trying to lose money what do i want to do especially if you add in the three dice rule and you have a little bit of say like which thing will make me lose the most money possible Uh, hey frags! Sorry, gotta go watch DSP's stream again. Oh, that's fair enough. Yeah, is, you gotta do it. He, he needs is, all. He needs the. Yeah, he needs it. He is a legend among us. Um, congrats to Aussie, America, and English land on the new alliance and Psych Canada and New Zealand. Fringy, I knew you were gonna talk about this topic. Go ahead. Oh, I know Paul Keating isn't a fan. Um, but I don't, I don't know enough about it to have a perspective one way or the other. I don't know what it means or anything like that. It's not something I'm super familiar with. Alright. Young chi is the worst hero I've ever heard of, but you have heard of him. I mean, vaguely. <laughs> well, I've heard of him now. Yeah, I've just certainly heard of him now. And he is the best hero in Phase 4, at least, so far, so, you know, good for him. Uh, Shad, Shang Chi means ascending vital energy. Does it? Ascending vital energy. Hmm. How does it translate? What's the, like Shang? Does that mean ascending? And Chi is obviously a, yeah, you know, get your Chi energy. Like your in so Chi is your life force, like your that, energy. Uh, that sort of ascending stuff. I like energy. that. Uh, Taoism and and um, those sorts of ancient philosophies. Up. Super interesting and neat. Yeah. I still think Shang sounds like a descriptive phrase of doing something when you go and Shang something. Maybe uh, am I thinking of Shank when you get you or shank hang, someone to hang something? I'll hang, yes. Shank something, and combine so, them up. Combine them. Shang. Shang. 
Chang! You, you bastard. Chang, you bastard! Um, Tom Scott made a cool video about the phonetic alphabet and all the sounds humans use in speech. The Welsh are the only ones that use the LL sound to be... Huh. I thought we were. I've not heard it anywhere else. It's a very strange one. By the way, when we that I I took a seven minute interlude there for a moment before we got into the Monopoly talk. That was my uh, daddy-o getting back to me about the house question oh about the God. which decade. Oh. His answer might surprise you. Uh, he he talked to her about seven minutes or so and let me go uh, about housing and things. Um, so for starters, he doesn't really like modern houses. Uh, okay. Oh, good on him. I agree. <laughs> What's the good what man? Doesn't like about him though? Yeah. Uh, a lot of the times it's the outside shape and how um, he didn't go too deep into it, at least now. Um, but uh, we had talked about this every once in a while uh, when we go out and get breakfast or whatever. Um, we, we do, depending on how it's done, we can like a more... Because um, as, as housing, generally the, the rooms were smaller back then and now they get more and more open and stuff. And so you have, especially nowadays in modern houses, a very big kitchen living room like lounge kind of area that's it's just a singular large kind of open more open space and those can be done well but generally he I'm, really doesn't I like prefer the, that style yeah he, he doesn't like generally modern uh the the look and some of the layouts for things uh but he said that his favorite decade um if he had to choose was the 1910s to 1920s and okay. uh, he, he really enjoys a lot of the Jeffersonian influences that they had in terms of their uh, prairie and craftsman styles, uh, the outside in terms of brick and the columns and things of that nature. Um, and he said, because he was thinking this from a term of aesthetics and also the utility aspect. Well, houses made in that time, right. they, a lot, they did have electricity. And they did have essentially modern-esque piping that can still be used pretty, pretty much as normal. Um, and you can add air conditioning to these places. Uh, my, so my grandparents, for instance, they have an old plantation house out in the country. And what they do is they have an external unit and they have essentially it, all of the machinery and stuff is external. It's on, it's, on, it's on the side of the house and air is pumped in, in their case, through the bottom. Oh, the, the bottom space underneath the house, it comes up through there and through the floors. Um, and that's what happens a lot of the time. These older houses from the tens and twenties, they just get these add-ons to, you know, generally it will be air conditioning or modern wiring if it needs it, but there's space for all that stuff in these houses. Uh, so you can work with that and you can do it. Um, but that, that is his, okay. uh, that's, that's his answer. He, he likes those uh, styles of houses. Fair enough. Yeah. I find older architecture to be far more artistic and beautiful than this modern, brutalist, blocky crap that we see in the um, modern day. The thing is, is like, I I can kind of like brutalist stuff. Um, I think sometimes it can be super neat. Just, it's interesting. Um, and I think, I feel like minimalism gets a bad rap. Um, probably because, well, actually, that's, uh, there's plenty of reasons why. But I find that there can be a lot of value in, like, super minimalist designs that aren't incredibly detailed, like a certain clarity to them. Um, I, th I think that there's, I think that there's interesting things to be said about a whole bunch of different eras. Um, this, this might be a controversial one. I kind of don't like when there's a neighborhood where all the houses look the same. Like, I kind of yeah, hate that. That's not controversial at all. I don't think that's is that controversial? Well, it, I don't think it is. It's, I, I think, it, well, is, is yeah, it well, in America that there are just like a lot of areas need... where the houses are identical? Well, yeah, because what they Very do small. is they, if there's there's a housing development project, what they do is all the houses mm -hmm. are basically made like one after the other or mm -hmm. simultaneously, and they all are the same color, same roof color, same tile, same yeah. brick, built same for efficiency, identical right? layout. I basically, we need to like put up a idea. dozen houses here. Boom, 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 and they all go up and they all look yeah. the same. It's all sized ahead that. of time. And stuff well, the like interesting that. is. I've had conversations where apparently it's just a thing that certain people like it, that they like the uh, the uniform nature of the designs, but like yeah. it might make them feel more neighborhoodly. I, don't like I guess. The idea. I don't know. 
I, I think it's the idea that there's a certain synergy. Um, yeah. Everything kind of fits in and looks the same. My problem is I don't want to live in a house that looks the same as a lot of houses. I feel like I'd legitimately yeah, get I'd confused hate sometimes where I live. Like, I just feel I depressed. Like, like I'm just there's nothing special it about feels, where I live. It feels it's hollow just hollow and empty. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm just a my house thing, is like all know? the other houses. This was put up to make a bunch of money for a property developer. This was not a community that naturally developed. Um, I would say I like neighborhoods where the houses are often the same style. Um, so you don't sure, have a still. yeah, you, you don't have a, a a 50s style house that's you know next to a super modern looking house, and next to that there's a 70s style house, and they're all you know not something crazy, but where they're all like they're all just look like houses, you know, just normal houses where their brick yeah. color is different and they're not all shaped the same, and maybe the neighborhood is one or two two story houses, that sort of thing. That's what I that's what I like. Um, and, and um, some some this, have more trees and some have more bushes. If you found different. the house that you wanted in terms of space and rooms and everything, it was like, oh, this is just what I want. But it's one of those uniform houses. Would you then not buy it because of that? Um, I might, yeah. I might not. I might not. I don't think it would I'm very matter to me. Yeah. I'm way more concerned about the utility right. than whether or not it, it fits in uniform with a bunch of other houses. I guess the question is, if you're in a situation where you have no other choices, I don't know. I I think I think that there's something to be said about the aesthetic of the uh, the house that you choose to live in and the area and what it looks like. Um, I, yeah, I, I if I, I was allowed to I, repaint it or something like that, then oh, yeah, oh, you have to be allowed to, to do if that. I have the I ability, imagine, right? Is there any well, place you're not allowed uh, to repaint your own? I, I assume. Are you uh, are you allowed to? I, it might depend on I don't. don't now, if you buy it, like if that, you bought it, and... I have I have no clue about that. I uh, I assumed that you could paint your own house. Like I don't yeah, know. you can here. Yeah, everyone. I, oh, you know what? Oh. Are you sure One... about that? Like I'm pretty sure that um people can like contest things that fuck with the neighborhood in ways. Do you mean like if you painted it like bright pink or something? something? Yeah. Yeah, but if but that would be something that you'll like know beforehand if it's one of those big neighborhood things um because the realtors would probably okay. have yeah, that people as are saying that hoas do. in america hoas prevent you from painting your house in some ways in context that sounds right to me that there'd be yeah certain... in some ways like that you can't make like it like black shit, white man. i was gonna say that, that would annoy the fuck out of me yeah well, I, but that's what i I'm get saying. it though. that might be the case in one of these neighborhoods um i, I get I it i get it but at the same time well, yeah, like, this you... is my shit like yeah like if you make a house if you make a house and you and you paint it like screaming, bright ass zonker green and uh, and polka dot purple with yellow stripes all over it, and why can't you know, I do that though? You know, it's my property. Well, yeah, and but then it's like, oh, I it lowers the value of the other houses potentially, and it yeah. might drive people away if I live across but from that's that the ugly free ass bit of work of right there. Yeah. That's the free market at work. I'm sorry, yeah, it is? it's yeah. free market. I, mean, that, I, see I, I, I do find it amusing that like things that are really beneficial for areas can just get shot the fuck down because of property value. Um, like things that are just incredibly useful or really important and necessary to an area getting destroyed and, and they're not allowed to happen because, yeah, because, oh, my property value. One of the things I will say, and my parents are in, they, they despise this, and I do too. People just paint brick. I don't know if that's a thing that happens over there, paint but it's starting brick. to be a new thing that oh, people do. Fuck. Oh, you mean like... The, I know, right? It's not they actually just, brick, it, they just brick house. bricks on. No, 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 no. What? No, we're talking a brick house with, like, brick. And they just paint over the whole fucking thing. Like a gray, they'll just take gray paint and they will there's actually next time i go walk and there's a house nearby where they've done that and it's just a brick house that they have painted gray over the bricks over the spaces in between the bricks it's all just gray and it right. looks like crap and i have no well, idea why some people do that or why this trend caught on because it looks awful and brick looks you would great just get a brick just build it out of brick like no no, no. it was built out of bricks <laughs> oh yeah yeah okay he's, he's saying they paint over the... it, it was a perfectly good looking brick building with 
bricks of all because they come in all kinds of colors and they paint over it. So it Man. basically is a painted house with a texture of bricks. Well, I know, I know my my favorite thing I saw was there's a I, there's like this burger place I went to it was kind of hipster sort of thing, so it had the exposed brick kind of industrial look to it, but you could see that the brick was fake and that the wall was actually made of concrete. Like you could see that because it didn't fully go oh. right to the bottom. Uh, if, if I don't know if you've ever been, to, well, probably not because you live on the other side of the planet. Uh, for those of you who live over here, if you ever go to Mount Vernon, which is George Washington's place. One of the things that over there they have, um, so so like uh, like stone and stone buildings. N not it's not like today where it's a lot easier to get your hands on stone and all kinds of different kinds of stone and stuff like that to build a house. Uh, so you, you what you'd often do is you use fake stone. So when you paint it over some of the stone shaped woodwork on the externity of your house, you would mix in like sand and stuff with the paint so that it would seem as if it was stone because it had a little bit of grittiness to it. Mm -hmm. And from a distance, it looks basically just like stone, but then you get up to it and you're like, wait a second, that's not quite I'm stone. being fooled. You lied to me. I'm being fooled. I don't know what it's called, though. Um, but, yeah. Mount Vernon's lovely. I will say um, uh, Monticello is my preference, but Mount Vernon is very nifty. Fair enough. Just on your comments before, Fringy, about, you know, um, sometimes minimalist and even brutalist architecture be, you know, decent. And, oh, look, I do admit, sometimes it's, it's like, I, I see, yeah, there, there's a beauty in that. But to me, it just cannot compare it's to... It's not uh, always horrible. Really, yeah, beautiful, classic, you know, um, buildings and stuff. Like, I, I'll post some examples. Um, I'm inclined because... to agree. I, uh, I, I, do, I do typically prefer... Um prefer older looking stuff i guess it's more just that um i don't i'm not so opposed to minimalist kind of modern stuff that I will be right seems back. a lot of people are okay yeah that gothic stuff is really cool yeah and, look um, at this uh, like oh, how yeah, gothic I, incorporated it, modern buildings they look amazing like ah oh. and then that's really even, cool um yeah oh, it's just gorgeous Mola comes well, back maybe he'll be at it he can, yeah yeah Chat, I, um, I, I, I remember seeing someone in chat say they like Tudor on the outside, but the inside just kind of shit. I like Tudor. Um, yeah, Tudor is, is uh, cool. probably one of my favorite styles in terms of just home cottage styles. I love the old medieval, you know, cottage look. Yeah, T Tudor is really cool. Um, I, I like log cabins. Um, I really like log cabins. I'm not sure that I would ever live in a log cabin house. Maybe. I'm not sure. Brutalism is not the same as minimalism. Well, I'm kind of defending both. I like minimalism as well. Um, in certain contexts. I'm not a super big fan of, like, all of the sort of incredibly, like, minimalist apartments and things, apartment buildings that are getting put up around, like, all, pretty much in all the Australian cities. Really cheap. Ah, oh, they're awful. And they go up super quickly, and apparently they're, they're not particularly, like, yeah, they're just not great. There's a like a lot of just stock standard Australian built homes by the major companies. Not only yeah. do, have I never been a big fan of them, it's really hit home to me how really ugly they are generally. When I was traveling through uh, some you know Canadian neighborhoods, they have these beautiful homes with these high angled roofs with this really strong cottage kind of medieval flavor to them and they're just gorgeous these these uh, streets and neighborhoods were just absolutely beautiful and then i wanted to show some of the friends that i was hanging out with over there what a what a, a normal australian neighborhood looks like in a country town um because one of the things that was throwing me so much is that they don't have sidewalks in most of these canadian neighborhoods uh, and i was like it's so weird it feels fake to me because none of the streets have sidewalks it was bizarre um and so i wanted to show no them yeah, normal... okay yeah no sidewalks and in australia they're everywhere you can't have a neighborhood without a sidewalk it's so weird no, of course not. um yeah. yeah and so i wanted to, i showed them one of the normal australian homes and neighborhoods and so and i i picked a, a new development i went on google earth that i knew where, where it was and showed them and when i saw them I was just honestly like it struck me so strongly as like wow i knew that i didn't like them, 
But in comparison to these beautiful neighborhoods I'm seeing, man, Australian homes are ugly. These flat, squat, low-angled roof, stock standard factory pros, uh, they're just awful with very little character. Um, and it really was a, was a stark contrast. I guess it's I'm honestly... thinking about the reasoning for why that's the case, because it might just be that a lot of Australian houses are built pretty recently, like in the 60s, 70s, 80s, um, yeah, as well too. Yeah. Like, these cities just aren't old enough to have- 70s uh, houses so, oozed have a lot of character, though. Yeah, some of the older um, homes I, yeah, are pretty I like nice. Yeah, I like the houses. Mm. Uh, uh, my current home yeah, is a, is a I, much I older agree. home. It's one of the oldest homes in the in the town, actually, and it it actually has a decent right. character to it. It's got a nice kind of front with a, a nice angled roof on it and things. Um, and but it's because you have to go so far back. Yeah, um, a lot of the you know real uh, you know f uh, cheaply built ones, like a lot of the homes the SES built and things, are just really plain and flat, and there's nothing special making them stand out or pop. Um, and then, and then the modern houses that are being just spat out everywhere, so few have real character. Um, unless you find like a, a more independent builder that does uh, kind of country uh, timber homes, then you can get some nice character homes. Um, but the main I stuff. I guess it depends on. Well, I, I I do wonder how many people build their own homes because I imagine if you build the house that you want to live in, you can kind of find ways to inject character but if you just go into these developments where they're just throwing them up then yeah like you're probably not going to get anything particularly fancy bring all those um, great and, and, i mean at this point yeah i remember that one um oh, I still oh, think that's why i love this game oh, now I'm just, yeah this game is I, like a, a love letter to simpsons fans mm -hmm. is I'm, I'm now just thinking about how depressing the uh the property market is here it feels like people just want the house like they want the land they don't yeah. really fuck what what it is um, yeah, just because of the fact that the housing prices here are so high. Again, oh, average house awful. price in Sydney is like $1.2 million. It average. Is insanity. It's average. So that's like if you live 40, that's like if you live 30 minutes away from the city. <laughs> like, that's average. Um, mm. and it, it's, it's, it's pretty similar everywhere else. Like, mm. Melbourne's like a million. I think Brisbane's 700 or 800,000. It is, there are not many, unless you live in the country, and even then. That's, that's what, Newcastle, live in the country, like man. That's right. Well, no, yeah, in I've, my uh, area, houses are far more affordable. Um, I bought my first that, house for yeah. 110,000, and uh, uh, my well, second house, <laughs> the one we're currently living in, was about 320,000, so it was a bit of a- That's 110 for that first one. That's in, that's in Australia yeah. dollars. That's like Monopoly money. So. I know. Yeah, yeah, it was a really, mm -hmm. it was a, a great investment. It's worth That's over two hundred thousand now. It's doubled in value since I bought it, um, and so really good investment. Oh. Smart move that when I was early on. Um, oh, hey, Mola, I, I sent some mm -hmm. images to show Fringy the type of architecture that I really, really love. The stuff that incorporates classic stuff, and uh, I think the chat just wanted to see one or two of them. Um, oh, the chat want to see it, do they? Yeah, the chat want to see it. All oh, right, chat. so. Because people in chat are like one point two million US dollars, like thirty thousand US, right? Um, okay, so the median house price in Sydney right now, oh my, oh, dude, the median house price in Sydney in July was one point four million. It's worse, like so that, that's like one point one million US or one million US, or something like that. that yeah, Brisbane house price is likely to double as tens of thousands flock to Queensland. <laughs> Like awesome, um, gosh, oh, oh, eighty thousand increase price is just just like Cali, yeah. Except it's the whole country. <laughs> like in terms of this, this <laughs> market, California is the whole country to some people. Well, I mean, one fifth of Americans live in California, right? Exactly. It's a big old chungus part of America. And apparently, according to Gary, it's he says basically that, Hassan affordable. Yeah, uh, pineapple and pizza <laughs> yeah. is normal to Californians. So at least a fifth of the American population Man, oh. is just yeah. It would be normal to fucking Californians. That's exactly what I say. <laughs> it's like that doesn't support the argument. Um, hmm. it's more like one tenth. Oh no, I, I was mixing up. California is like one fifth of the U.S. economy. It's probably more like one sixth or seventh of the population. I think. 
Gary's lying. I live here and it's still horrid. <laughs> <laughs> He's lying. <laughs> He's trying to trick you. The lying is capitalized. <laughs> um, hi, Mola. What do you think of Metroid Fusion? Would you play it this Halloween? Are you excited for Metroid Dread? Um, I think, I, I mean, I'm I'm probably going to let Fringy tell me if I should pick up Metroid Dread. I'm not, like, I'm just... Because I'll, I'll be grabbing that. Yeah, he can he can be my little test pilot. As for... It uh, looks really fun. I'm playing Machine for Pigs this year around with possibly playing the stupid Dark Pictures next installment with Metal. And then the following day being Halloween, if everything, we have to plan this out, being uh, the Aliens game with uh, Rags and Fringy, because... The, literally, both games have it so wrong. Like, there's no online four-player for the, the stupid shit game, but then there's only three-player for the Aliens game. And all you ever hear from people, because I've checked out a few reviews, they're like, I don't know why it doesn't have four-player, but, you know, fine. Three is three is bizarre. I don't know why three. Is it just because we're I'm conventionally like, if you can used bounce. to four, or...? That's more reason to do it than a reason not to. No, of course. I'm just saying, is that why we think that it should be four rather than three? Or is it more than that? But it's the typical... It, it is, you know, I guess it's... In terms of it being typical, I mean, it's one more person that, theoretically, you could get to buy the game with a group of friends to play, you know? Because I'm assuming four play was often the cap because you'd split the screen into the four squares. That's probably where it started, right? Maybe. And it's a decent number. It's not too many. Yeah, yeah, and it's not too so. few, you know. I, I think it settles nicely into being its, you know, clearly its own sort of deal. Um. So yeah, you know, we're, we're, I'm still figuring out what the hell's happening for Spooky Ween, but uh, all the EFAB assets are ready, so don't worry about that. You'll be seeing the return of the the Halloween, um, the variant variant. That's the word I was looking for, I guess. Play Luigi's Mansion Three for Halloween. There you go. <laughs> it's a spooky game. Uh, Chinese has characters represent single words, and is said in high, mono, and low tone, meaning Ching Chong Bing Bong is only racist in the high tone. Ah, oh, okay. He drags a grenade button. Uh, oh yeah, rag shot grenades like an idiot before, right? No? So, F is bizarre. No, that wasn't Rag's fault. That wasn't your, Rag's fault. Yeah, if, if you have F set to your shoot grenade button, not like flashlight or use... <laughs> That is bizarre. Yeah. Yeah, if any, you're, my you're automatic right now, holding a gun and it, it has a grenade launcher on it, I'd expect middle mouse button, to be honest with you. That's, that's like where my automatic assumes it's going to be. Yeah, so I was like, oh, flashlight. F. Yeah. No. That's no. your fucking <laughs> grenade launcher button. Like, oh, it's not like middle mouse button, maybe, or you have to swap to it manually. Or... Dude, um, like all the battlefields, you have to swap to your underslung grenade part, and then you would shoot that as your gun. It would take the place of your gun. You could shoot, reload, and all that sort of thing. You know but, how uh, in that strange. game they argue that Hicks is still alive and well because a guy who looks just like him with the same injuries enters his pod while he exits it, and then he gets to, you know, you remember all that? No. Um, Fringy, do you know what I'm talking about? Wait, sorry, I'm blank. I didn't catch that last part. So the guy. I think he was called Movies with Mikey or something, right? The guy who wrote Aliens, Clone Orleans. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, uh, he wrote it so that Hicks didn't die, as yes. we thought he did. Yeah, that's right, I remember that. Because yeah. some guy got into his pod, and so that's the guy who, who actually <laughs> died in Alien 3, one of the most hilarious retcons ever. It's yeah. fucking... It's, I, can, I can sympathize with it. Yes, it's just hilarious, and also the game was terrible. So like, it's it's what it's like Dark well, Fate, where they're like, too, yeah. "Don't worry, Genesis isn't canon," and you're like, "Shut up!" <laughs> just, <laughs> um, As if that means anything. Yeah, but like I remembered it the other day, and I told As and Gary about it because they'd never heard of it. They're just seeing their faces when I told them that you see someone who looked just like Hicks. <laughs> got into Hicks's pot. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, it wasn't Hicks. People really, yeah. We're, we're gonna just, uh, desperation to try and fix that <laughs> horse shit from Aliens 3, where it's like, yeah, all that shit, yeah, it's just, uh, yeah. Alien cubed. As, a, as, as some of the marketing would have you believe. We've so. cubed the aliens. We should watch that sometime, just to see what you think when ignoring the fact that it just randomly kills two characters that everyone liked. 
Why though? It's one of those like <laughs> it's like the sh the arrow thing in Shang Chi. Like just why? I suppose like there's probably yeah. some yeah. reason on record from the director slash writer. There's probably there's got to be something out there of them saying why. Like oh, it causes a really harsh journey for Sigourney Weaver's Ripley. I, I don't know. Um, I blame the French. Charles Dance is in that movie. That is a reason enough to see it again. Remember, Mola, the Mongols weren't successful since they eventually died. God, that conversation was so frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit... It was weird, but you know what? It was fun. And, uh, it's a, it's a, it, was, it was fun jumping on those those streams every once in a while. That's how I met Shoe on Head, so, yeah. Was, you know, you never know what's gonna happen with stuff like that. Uh, if you had, a, if you had to write Wakanda and make it good, how would you do so? Hmm. It's not a place, it's a people. Um. So, it, it is a question of how much are we maintaining? Because if you guys came to me after, uh, fucking, after Civil War, I guess, and we're like, alright, we're making it, and they're gonna be a secret society that's been on Earth since the beginning, but is more advanced than all of them, I'd be like, oh man. You guys really wanna Damn do that? And you're like, yes. Like, okay. <laughs> Are you sure? Are you really sure? <laughs> it's like, yes, we're super sure. I'm not even sure, because... We have to make it so that they were hyper... Like, maybe we knock out the hyper-advanced stuff, and the vibranium is just a really strong metal that's malleable, but it doesn't lead them to having, like, technological wonders to the point where they're just super advanced from the get-go, because... are just the best <sighs> in everything. I don't even like the idea that they don't share it with the world at all when it's like an incredible metal that could have helped us all, like, with everything. Yeah, thanks, it's actually guys. actually horseshit. I hate the Wakandans. They're such pieces of shit. Yeah, I fucking hate Wakandans. And plus, yeah, just the fact that you have access to a super metal doesn't... That doesn't explain how you got <laughs> super advanced. They think Especially it considering, I don't know how you made anything out of it. How do you form? How do you? How do you buy? How do you vibranium? How do you mine it? How do you melt it? Shape it? Is, exactly. If it's indestructible, basically, how do you fucking do, do anything you, with it? Is it that they find a bit that's fallen off and then they use that to chip away at more and then they hit it with each other to create sharp edges uh, until I, they can? I, uh, Shad, uh, you'd know this, right? Or. Vibranium, it's a different story. Like, there has to be some type of process that lets you work with it. Otherwise, how did they make Captain America's shield? And so, you know, it doesn't have a melting temperature, you know? Uh, but you're right, it yeah, doesn't explain how they can, ha how it would have given them such advanced technology just by having access to this material. Because in tribal warfare, like, what really is going to be the difference between bronze and vibranium really like it how what what's the difference really gonna do for you to that is it gonna be that degree i don't know well, i don't you I mean, mean like... it, it, well bronze is its own different kettle because it, like bronze will uh, um uh, you know bend and uh, well, be penetrated say, by more superior this... metal so if you had vibranium weapons you would be able to bust through bronze breastplates yeah you dominate in fights yeah but like aren't they but they, would, yeah. they, they wouldn't even the... they wouldn't even like wear that stuff like so, the breastplates and things well just to clarify is it said the vibranium doesn't go dull as well is it like it stays sharp forever if that seems it. like it, because remember when Killmonger <laughs> got the vibranium hammer no and all idea. they did was like shake but off that's... the surface yeah, muck yeah. and it was perfect? That implies that it can last forever and never deteriorate. I was about to say, like, you, and remember it weighs like nothing, Rag, so it's just like they could create like the perfect medieval weaponry to the point where they can just dominate the whole world, probably. Well, impenetrable armor if they can and sword. Properly. Well, you like, need the, the numbers, give the logistics, you an edge, the ability to actually one -on -one. do stuff with it. But, I mean, the thing is, medieval armor, when it's properly made, you know, when it, um, heat treated, tempered, hardened steel, you can't chop through that with a sword Yeah, but at they didn't all, make, either. like, ah, but I don't remember them sword. making, like, suits of armor. Like, they just basically walk around with cloaks and sandals. Oh, you're talking about the Wakandans. I thought if you, yeah, yeah it's the whole society. Yeah. Well. I think, oh yeah, yeah. I think I guess we're talking that about clothing is made of vibranium. Yeah, yeah. Is unfo it? Yes, unfortunately, yes. We're supposed to assume that clothing is made out of vibranium. They, I'm pretty I sure they argue in that fucking that, yeah. dumbass movie that like vibranium is just throughout their entire society. It's just everywhere. 
because they can yeah. they can like process Maybe? it down to like being threads of clothing and stuff. Yeah. Holy crap! But it's, it's one of the most incredible materials to ever grace the planet, and they kept it all to themselves. Say what you will about, like, different countries pilfering everything they want from countries or whatever, but it's just like, well, thanks for all the advancements we don't have now because we didn't get to use all of your incredible technology. Remember, they, they've they created amazing things with their science department, and then they fucking put their nose up at the entire world. Like, right. wow, look at you guys no, making well, all these mistakes. Legit, legit, right? If they discovered the cure for cancer and they kept it to themselves, Ooh. those astronomical a-holes, wow. Well, but that's that the problem, is isn't it? The, we don't know what we've missed out on technologically mm -hmm. because of the fact they've kept us from being able to have the world sciences go out. Remember, sure, he's like, lol, I'm smarter than Tony Stark and Bruce Banner put together. And I'm starting to wonder if that's a matter of, is it because you guys have, like, I don't know, the vibranium somehow fed into your textbooks and made you all smarter as well? Because <laughs> that seems to be the only answer. Like, vibranium can make superhumans. And so the answer of how it led to technological advancement, it made them smarter because there was trace elements in their water that they drank, and the vibranium just makes them better. Well, yeah, they, um, the plants grow as a result so of the meteorite, So they've got right? lead poisoning. Yeah, but it's good lead poisoning. It makes you smart. It's good. Mad. Well, remember, this- that movie is so stupid. Like, <laughs> when they take away- no, it's not. The, um, it's the incredible. flower power from the people who have, are yeah. no longer king, when it's like, that doesn't benefit anybody, just let him keep it. He- it prevents him from having heart attacks and stuff. It's really good. Like, why would you take that? No, it's like let's tradition, have one, lol. Let's have one. We only- have one. We only need one. We don't need lots. We got stupid. spears. I want we my personal god to have the goddamn flower power. Okay, it's a, it's a rule I would be instituting straight away. Yeah. Absolutely. You know what? Just fuck it. Everyone gets it. Yeah. You know what? Entire society. Let's do it. Yeah. Just fuck you know it. What? Let's yeah. let's yeah. shake this shit up. Everyone gets it. I still even have. Because you know, even if the criminals get it, your cops will have it too. It's so stupid. There's, there's no logic to that other than, like, I remember people being angry at me. It's like, it's a tradition. I was like, I I don't understand how this tradition has survived every single king over the entire course of the entire like, timeline. How? They just refuse to let anyone else have the, it. I don't want to talk more about Black Panther. That movie was smelly and stupid. <laughs> it was so sad, too. I was really excited to see it. I was like, this is going to be great. Black Panther's got his own movie. He's going to be badass. He was really cool in Civil War. He really Wait. was super cool in Civil War, and he's so shit in his own movie. Yeah, he was awesome. He's lame in his own movie. He had an arc. Yeah. He did. Um, remember arcs? Those were really cool. Remember arcs? I when remember they were just arcs. trajectories downwards. Stern Halma is the original name of Chinese checkers, which was invented in Germany. Alma is a four-player game similar to Checkers, and Stern means star in German. Oh, okay, interesting. Stern. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, there's a nice little Shiba Inu sticker someone sent. Yay, thank you. Beautiful. I'm disappointed in you, chaps. No review of Space Jam 2, and you could have done it with Paige Spiranek. She has things to say about it. Look her up. I mean, no reason why we can't do it one day. I think that's... Got potential for a double feature. It's gonna be oh up to boy! Exci I mean, you know, it's gonna be interesting to watch because I'm pretty sure the first one's not perfect either. But the second one, I just I heard so many bad things. My goodness. Yeah. Uh, froggy thoughts on connecting the water in North Australia to the water in South Australia. This flooding the feck all desert in the middle to make Australia great. Oh, that was, um, I remember there was a video or something about that, the idea of if you try to introduce some sort of natural water system into the centre of Australia that would completely transform the ecosystem and give us a lot more land that would be useful in the middle of the country. But that sounds like an incredibly expensive project in a country that already has an abundance of space that's usable. Like, that's even, even though place. the vast majority <laughs> of this country... Well, yeah, even though even though a lot of this country is kind of like, uh, well, the problem is it's like, well, it has a lot of value because there's a lot of mining that you can get. Oh, like, there are mineral rich land so much all yeah. over in that desert. Um, 
and and that's the thing it's like well it is useful in that regard it's like well don't you want people living in the center of australia well there is a well, lot of space in the state well so yeah that's kind of my that's kind of my point is we have plenty of space that's usable which we don't use already um our cities are already much bigger than they probably ought to be um in terms of like metro area it's disproportionate compared to like other places for population to the space used we're quite inefficient as it is and yet there's oh yeah a lot of, of our stuff is spaced so, out even in the metro areas um it's too uh, it's kind of too spaced out if i'm being honest um we need to do a better job of actually having things more integrated and in city areas having things more tightly connected uh less reliant on massive highways to get everybody where they need to go uh what's, so yeah what's, I, it what seems like a strange thing well, just on that note for yeah. you, like when I went to Perth, um, have you been to Perth? I don't even know mm -hmm. where you live. Do you live? At I have been to Perth. Perth. Yeah. I've it's even more Perth. spaced out. Like it's ultra spaced yeah, out. There, but, there's yeah. so much space between the edge of the road to, you know, like you're on a highway and then you have a, you know, a side of grass before you hit the big fence line that separates the highway from the, the buildings and, and neighborhoods. There's like that space between the edge of the highway to that wall line is three to four times longer in Perth and it, you just, it's just spaced out everywhere. Even the roads well, are Well, I mean, makes sense, right? Nobody, nobody lives well, there. <laughs> like it's yeah, basically the middle is, of nowhere. Is literally, it's desolate nothingness when, you, when i was flying into well, Perth, you just i was seeing nothingness for ages and ages and ages and then finally oh there's the city <laughs> well i mean that's uh that's that's the meme is that perth is the most um the most remote city with a population over one million yeah. i think like in the world there, there yeah, are no in that, yeah in that yeah under that ratio it's the most remote on earth <laughs> yeah um for you to just make a channel on one end to the other and let the ocean in, dude. Do you know how big this country is? Do you know how much? Do you know how much money it would cost to build a giant f river that connects from like the north to the south or the east to the west? We're talking thousands of kilometers. Do it. That is uh, that's a. That's a lot of money for what is not a lot of utility at all. You know, it'd be really Roman cool. I, mean, I know that it would change the world forever anyway for all the other applications. But you know, if portal technology was like a thing. And then somewhere yeah. is flooding horribly in the world, and then they just like open up a big portal in the main place in it's space. flooding, and just drop it. Not even into space, into just like a big deserty area of Earth, and then it's like it goes from being like this horrible disaster to being like, oh my god, we've got a chance to create like a whole new. <laughs> it's well, you be could great. literally conjoin. Well, you you would remove the. I mean, think about in terms of you could put a portal someplace where you want the water level to be. And then a portal somewhere else where you want the water level to be. And the two of them will... You could literally equalize two bodies by moving the portals where you want. Like, it's it's. Well, I was going to say, like, it's cool to think about, but then again, it's like, man, if we had portal technology, everything would be different. Like, it just affects everything. Everything would be different. Yeah. Yeah. Everything would Funny, be I was actually thinking about the other day, just like on my travel back to Australia from Canada, I was like, wouldn't it be awesome if you could just open a portal and yeah. it opens up and I could see my home and I could just step through one step and I'm home. I was like, oh, gosh, wouldn't that be awesome? Tell me, man, it's a good thing those There's planes are so thing. fast or else nobody yeah. would use them. Oh, that's true, but still, my <laughs> flight, 30 hours. Well, oh, I, I, had a layo I had a layover in Qatar, and so the first leg of my flight was like 12 hours, but then the layover was three hours in the Qatar International Airport, and then the last leg was about 15 hours uh, to Damn. get back to Australia. Well, I remember my uh, my first trip to the UK, I did four flights. The second one was much quicker because it was just uh, two back. But uh, that first one, I think it was 36 hours, um, and I did not sleep one of those flights was overnight and because i'm told they sat me at the like the uh the, the emergency exit because it gives you a little more leg room unfortunately there was this massive fucking person in the seat next to me and he just did not give a fuck he did not give a fuck about how uncomfortable i was he didn't give a shit and his fucking like wife or girlfriend hey can you ask if you can sit in the fucking emergency seats that are for the air hostess what kind of stupid fucking suggestion is that? That's their seat. I'm not allowed to sit in those ones. And it's funny, they were like, you know what? I'm gonna go check and see if there's another seat for you. And then it's like, oh, sorry, the plane's totally full. <laughs> like, all right, awesome. I guess I'm just gonna stay awake for another eight hours. Oh, um, that's awful, man. Fringy, look how much I'm fucking dominating. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, 
He, he's, you, he was, you were, you're doing was just, quite well. I was just farming his car because he got caught on another one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm doing I'm the like, world record right now. Proof. Man, Fringy, I feel so I sorry for you about well, that flight. That like, I, I got to spoil myself because we were in a lucky circumstance where we had put aside enough money to actually bring over one of um, the guys that worked for me to help out. But then there was so much trouble getting permits that um, he wasn't able to make it, but we had the money oh, set aside. And so, I, I, no, I went business class, dude. And oh. business class on oh. Qatar Airways. Oh, freaking, oh my goodness, it is so good. Like Qatar Airways yeah, is one of the fanciest I, uh... airlines in the world and business class with them. Oh boy, I can recommend. Yeah, my goodness, it was I, nice. That doesn't surprise me at all. I uh, because I flew Emirates for a good portion of the way, and and they had some real nice food. Um, mm -hmm. and it, and it was it was all like ups, you know, it was like fancier as well compared to like Qantas. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know. hey, you um, and so like Singapore. Oh, there's Ralph. Look at him. He's got a big bucket of paste. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you guys call glue look at him there well he's american i right? call it glue Are you, you do that like like glue like glue? what kind of paste oh, yeah. I got my oh, it's, probably glue it's glue yeah. it is glue okay is glue a paste or is paste is all paste glue you know well, no one calls glue paste here, from from yeah, my knowledge. Okay. Uh, so I was well, just curious. That's what that, that would be weird. Glue is glue. Um, I mean, I've seen it called paste in loads of American media. What really? Yeah, I haven't noticed. I guess. Um, I, I don't know. Like, an, uh, I assume it's like the kid-friendly glue. I don't know if that's a difference. Oh, oh, we call that clag. <laughs> I've never heard of like that, the, but all right. Like, all right. So, wh which one is it? Is it um, Billy Madison and uh, you, uh, the scene where he like you know is really hungry because he wasn't given his um, I don't know some tasty cup by the nurse, not his nurse, his uh, whatever the lady at his home, and so he opens up the the kid glue and he starts eating it and he tries to hand you want some to the other kid that type of glue, because we call that clag like or just glue glue or clag is the name we call that. All right. You guys know that scene in you. You see, you know the scene in Billy Madison, don't you? With I Adam Sandler. Seen that in way it's too been long. Been ages. I'm uh, in well. ages. I remember Happy Gilmore Today, way better than Billy you Madison. And you, I think. I think uh, Happy Gilmore was better than Billy Madison. So pretty, yeah, pretty I'd say degree. that as well. Yeah. yeah. I remember. I remember the the guy who kept sabotaging him. You will not make this shot, you jackass! <laughs> and he kept fucking up all of his hits. Wow, and then, um, fail. what was it like? Well, it was really funny. That guy just kept. Uh, and I oh, I remember the end when um, when he beats Shooter Shooter McGavin and like then Shooter just steals the jack and it gets chased by everybody. That tall guy beats mm -hmm. the crap out of him. Shooter McGavin was a great villain. Such a yeah, jerk. Yeah, he, he was able to play a very good a hole. That is very true. Like, yeah. Oh, oh when he destroys his happy place. <laughs> Taking all the money, his <laughs> mom gives him the money. I eat that pieces of crap like you for breakfast. No. You eat pieces of crap for breakfast? <laughs> no. A classic. Um, <laughs> That's a real. Would you find gents consider doing a Cinderella triple EFAP movies? The animated one, the 2015 one, and the Amazon Prime one. Also high rank. Oh, I don't want to watch. I really don't want to watch the Amazon Prime one. That's the thing. No. You ever, how does how is James Corden like famous? Like, what has he done of, for society? I think he may have sacrificed something to someone. Like it's it doesn't really make any sense at this point. Yeah, I don't get it. Hang on, I missed what movie are we talking about? The the Amazon Prime is it called Cinderella or is it called something else? It's just it's called Cinderella. Okay, well that. Oh, that looked awful. Looked painful. It looks terrible. Yeah. Uh, I can I can honestly recommend the, the like the only Disney remake that's worth a damn. Uh, the Cinderella Disney remake uh, recently was actually really. It's one of my favorite movies. It's brilliantly done. The I 2015 love it. one. So, is that the 2015? It's got the guy out of um, uh, Game of Thrones. Richard Madden. 
So yeah, it's Richard who's, Madden who's the right? guy... using that. Richard yeah, yeah, Madden. That plays... I think that's the guy who is now going to be in Eternals, right? That's, yes, that's yeah. him. That's him. Yep. Yeah, Richard Madden. Madden. Like seriously, Richard I can Madden. recommend that. I mean, it's not an action film, but it's a lovely, yeah, talking about charming, Richard uplifting film. Yeah, it was Richard Madden. Okay. And now he's going to be playing Flying Superman, who was clearly inspired by Zack Snyder's Justice League. <laughs> what? He shoots lasers out of his eyes and he flies. That's never been done before. Dude, ever. that is this... Yeah, for people who don't know what the fuck he's referencing, there's this weird <laughs> thing on Twitter with Snyderbots where they, like... They will literally just take an image of anyone doing anything in a Snyder film and connect it to any other film be like, you see Snyder's influence, they copied him, he did this first. And there's really? ones yeah. where oh. they literally have an image of him in the Eternals using his laser vision. They're like, see? Zack Snyder That's just did like this. Snyder. <laughs> You're like, oh. Zack like Snyder did Superman lasers, with laser anyway. vision. Okay. They are fucking like, look strange. Look at the shot, though. Look at the shot. It's like, what? It's just a normal looking shot. <laughs> He's just shooting lasers out of his eyes. Uh. Snyder invented humans. Yep. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but yeah, maybe something at some point, in some way, I no promise we're watching that film ever. <laughs> the Amazon Prime one. It, I really it don't want to watch so it. awful. I, like, how could you punish yourself to watch that thing? You know what? Hey, oh, look, I wouldn't mind banning people. Um, does anybody like James Corden in chat? I don't get what is there to like. I've never seen him in anything good. All I see is people hate him, and he's just never funny. He's all I don't <laughs> he's get it. Annoying. He was like the he's worst always part annoying. Of the, remember the Three Musketeers movie? He was just annoying. Yeah, I do remember yeah. that. Yeah. Like I guess it's because he's totally fine just being the butt of all jokes or something. Like he knows that he's a loser, but he's just happy to accept <laughs> the stardom. That's what my husband does. No. Never liked him. Don't understand. Who is he? Didn't he? Uh, but he replaced um, because he 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 uh he replaced um, oh my god, I can't believe that I'm blanking on his John name. Stewart? Scottish guy. Nice? No, he. I think um, it... John Stewart was replaced. No, no. Um, was he a... John Stewart was replaced by Noah uh, Trevor Noah. Does he have I his think own he's on... late show though? Yes, he does. Fuck I think he's yeah. wow. after David Letterman. I, dude, I mixed them up. So there's, there is the Tonight Show, which is that guy, the one that is like really, what's his fucking name? He's not funny. Jimmy Fallon. Um, yeah, that's him. And then the one after that, is, which used to be J uh, Craig Ferguson. There it is. That's what James Corden replaced him. Oh really? Craig, I don't, Craig I don't, was Craig great. Is really funny. He's I know really that, like, awesome. I know, yeah, and I was yeah. gonna say I know that like you know it's not, it's not because Jimmy Fallon is proof that you know anyone could be a late night show host. I guess, but like, fuck, did James Corden get that job? How? Well, yeah, because you're replacing probably one of like we're thinking about the best late night people. Yeah. Craig Ferguson is up Craig there with Ferguson, like Conan O'Brien. Easily, easily, he was really he's one good. of the and best. Conan O'Brien lost his show, right? So. Uh, well, he, so what, oh, that's a whole story, yeah. Um, because it was initially, because there is The Tonight Show, then Late Night, then, oh, fuck, no, th that's not the name of the show. I keep mixing them up, there's so many of them. Yeah. Um, j so what happened was, Jay Leno, he stopped doing The Tonight Show, and that got Conan O'Brien bumped up to The Tonight Show. Um, but then he, Jay Leno had moved on to the Jay Leno show, which was a primetime show, uh, and that didn't do so well. And so they're like, alright, Jay Leno, you can go back to The Tonight Show. And it's like, well, wait, I'm Conan O'Brien's on The Tonight Show. It's like, yeah, you can move back to your old one. <laughs> so it's like, oh, awesome. So, like, Jay Leno's show failed, and now I get bumped back to the, uh, later segment. And that's when he left to do Conan with TBS. Mm -hmm. That was a whole adventure. Okay, so there's tonight, late, and late, late. That's right. Yeah, not at all confusing. <laughs> um, and then isn't there the one that that YouTuber is on, uh, Superwoman or whatever her name is, Lily Singh? She that got was like cancelled, wasn't shirt. it? Was it cancelled? Uh, I didn't no, know. That. I believe it was cancelled recently because it sucked <laughs> astronomically. Oh, I've seen like, the clips. It, it's the really clips. weird. It's like. It's just her talking about how awesome she is. Like, why would I want to watch that? It's 
it feels like a horrible, like, botched idea of what it's a late night show narcissism. is. Narcissism. Yeah. Yeah. God, it was you so got bad. it. Wait, is it? Uh, she. Oh, yeah, that show did get cancelled earlier this year. All right. Well, someone said she got a season two. Um, is, is, are both of those things true? She or? did get a season two, but it got cancelled after oh. the second season. It aired 2019 and through 2020, 2021, and then it got cancelled. Um, there is there is an art to the late night show format. Um, I feel like ah, it's, it's probably a really tough gig as well because you got to be performing four nights a week. Um, of course, you've got a team supporting you, but then there's a lot of stuff that is unscripted yeah, in your yeah, interviews. You kind of have to work I'm, hard to have the banter. I've watched a lot of clips recently because I've been looking at norm mcdonald with conan o'brien's appearances which uh, yeah easily the so best good. person to match both norm, great, yeah. the chemistry is conan like um gives a space. Space. Break together, yeah. bill burr is really funny on uh conan as well um yeah Con conan just knows how to uh he knows how to engage with um and like knows when to let comedians sort of take over and do their own thing i know craig ferguson had a natural charisma that really worked well he seems to be able to get along with everybody and make everybody feel comfortable on that show. Um, can't believe and, I actually missed David Letterman. Natural. David Letterman's funny. I think I think David Letterman's funny. Uh, I think he's I think he's um he's not my favorite, but he's 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 a funny guy. Do you know that um I found this out the other day, but um, Norm Macdonald said in some kind of tweet, I guess I can't remember if it was a tweet, a reply, or a statement, something. He said that uh, Louis C.K. and uh, Roseanne, I think he said those two should talk to each other about what happened to try and give each other advice and stuff in relation to like how all their lives are just completely, yeah. And then he got like a reply saying like, what the fuck, you know, who cares about them compared to the, the people that they victimized or whatever. And then um, Norm said something like, uh, those people never went through what they did, which is losing their entire legacy in a moment. Um, which is something that I think they could maybe help each other out with, sort of thing. Give each other advice and maybe, you know, just something that... Because he's right uh, to a degree that, like, is right, yeah. this is something that's unprecedented to lose everything that is you and the work you've done in, a, in, a, in an instant. Because you fucked up once or... You said something, yeah. Um, even, yeah, or, or even you didn't even do something bad at all this... Everyone just blew it up to insane proportions. And to clarify, obviously, over. there is a difference between Roseanne was uh, put out bad tweets or whatever, and and, and Lucy K did the the, the weird stuff, <laughs> undeniably strange yeah. stuff. Uh, he point, did a weird yes. thing, and so every, he became the worst person in the humanity. Um, but I, uh, so this is I got this from a video, so don't know if true. But as far as I know, it's true. He was in the green room for a Jimmy Fallon show, and because of those tweets, he was then told that he can't come on. And, Jesus uh, Christ! Norm Macdonald, he was yeah. told that. And, uh, Man, and the okay. thing is, uh, I Fuck heard me. it was too. I was listening to people talk about it, and they were like, uh, "The producers never would have let let him get to the green room if it was their decision, and they reckon it was Jimmy Fallon's." Um, hmm. And so that like Jimmy Fallon's got a lot of people who hate him now, especially because that was that wasn't even that long ago, and of course we can't get. Oh, him yeah. Rise. Um, but like that, yeah. I was, I was, I, was uh, I just, I found out about that. I was like, damn, dude. Like, and uh, Norm ended up putting an apology out on Twitter. He he said that I didn't mean to say that, like, uh, I didn't mean to demean anything about the victims or their pain or whatever. I just wanted to point out that um, those two may be able to have like a good conversation about what to do next sort of thing and, and what it meant to, to lose their lives because of stuff like that. And it's just like, yeah, it's, what he said is totally chill. I guess uh, when you think about like late night shows, there's kind of almost, e even though you're doing comedy and a lot of comedy is pushing the boundaries, there's a level of having to be kind of really diplomatic because you're meant to have basically any guest ever come on. Um, so you probably have to play that game of like trying to figure out what you can or can't do or say. Mm -hmm. It's not really a one job I'd ever want, I don't think. <laughs> one of my favorite ones is when they had uh, Bill Burr on Jimmy Fallon, and Bill Burr goes off on his um, uh, um, uh, what was it, the uh, money uh, stealing uh, whores or something like that, and he goes on his like 
rant about that. And Jimmy Fallon is just sweating his balls off. Yeah, that's what like, I mean. I feel like uh, I feel like you can't be that temperament on one of these shows, you know? Yeah. Like you, because you, you you need to be comfortable with people saying things that um that uh, are a little bit edgy, because you're not fully in charge of the content. Oh, uh, one of the, I was looking at a compilation, one of the fucking funniest things to me was, and it's again because of how he delivers it, but Norm was on, uh, Jimmy Fallon, he said, I mean, like, a comedian really knows that they're funny if they can make Jimmy Fallon laugh. And he, and like, Jimmy Fallon just started laughing immediately, and it's just like, obviously the joke is just he fucking laughs at everything everyone says, so there's just nothing. Yeah. <laughs> And it's to me, That's like, I find it so, Exactly, I find it hilarious. <laughs> it's just like, fuck, Norm's smart guy. <laughs> He's doing some oh, magic yeah, over all the time. Dude. Uh, Angry Super Chat 7. God. They're climbing. Ooh. Um, one week. One week at uni and I'm already three EFAPs behind. Curse you long, man. So One sorry. week is all I can spare to play with you. Seven days. <laughs> Seven, Seven days is all I can spend to play with you. Man, you spare late a night was time. supposed to be edgy, hence on late at night. Well, yeah, I guess that's how it might have started, but a lot Acceptably of like, the late edgy. Night... Like, not edgy, well, edgy, but, mm -hmm. you know. No. Ne well, network TV edgy. Um, but I think part of it now is that a lot of like late night content is consumed on YouTube in, in, in the form of interviews and stuff like that. So. The place that it takes, the time that it takes place is almost irrelevant now to the content. Um, I, I guess there's also the concern now of like a lack of variety in terms of late night content. Cause it's like, well, who, who they got right now? So it's, you got like Stephen Colbert, um, and, and I feel like that's one of those ones where it's like, man, I wonder if like I rewatched the Colbert report and I'm just not super impressed anymore. <laughs> like. I, I do there was a about time that. where I think he made me laugh, but I get it stopped at it's this point. It's not now. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen his interview with Bill Burr? It's super fucking awkward. Um, I feel no, like Bill I haven't. Dude, that... Bill Burr is oh, the. That sounds good. Bill Burr is the barometer oh, well, okay. for when you've gone from being a normal person to like a plastic person, because you can't deal with him if you're plasticky, like and showy. Well, yeah, that was that was the issue, is um when you know, like, something that you notice with Bill Burr is that every time he's going on, it's like he's demoing material, he's trying to gauge audience response and then work with it, mm -hmm. and it was totally cold when he went on the, when he went on with Stephen Colbert. Like, Colbert wasn't really playing along, the audience wasn't uh into it, and it's like, damn, that's really uh, awkward. Or when he um, went on the fucking H3 podcast. Yep. Oh, yeah, but that's... H3, that was, uh, he's a plastic cool. person now. Yeah, that's kind that of was, what um... I was getting at. Um, <laughs> it, wasn't it, wasn't yeah. it something like, um, you mentioned his daughters, and then he was just like, do, do, you, do, you, love your, do you love your daughters? He was just like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's the fuck? What yeah, he's like, what the fuck's wrong with you? What kind of fucking question is that? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of question? Yeah, he was—he was—he was just fumbling all over the place, and that's yeah, because history had no fucking clue how to deal with him. You gotta play along, you know. You gotta read the room, and yeah. Um, I just got back from taking a six-hour fundamentals of engineering exam to earn my engineering license. Oh, you were gonna say a dump. Six-hour dump. <laughs> I just I just got back from taking a dump and I'm like, damn. It's like I'm dumping oh, I'm like, epic. fuck me, dude. You okay? That's an Jeez. epic dump, right? Okay, yeah, right, you know? mm -hmm. Um I love tuning in and listening to some racism. After six hours of engineering, I can't imagine a better way to calm right now. Yeah, man, we know what people come for. And uh yeah, you know, hopefully that went well. Your uh, six hour exam. That sounds just so much fun. Yeah, geez. <laughs> God, I do not miss exams. Not me either. I ain't doing that ever again. <laughs> the, the closest I will ever take is the end of year EFAP survey. That is my exam now. Rag, stop asking questions. We're trying to world build the perfect Marvel universe with no holes. So stop it. I don't even remember when we were doing that. We've done it a couple of times, I think, this stream, though. 
It was very rude. When we were trying to summarize the films of Rags, he was like, oh, this doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. Oh, I have questions. I have things don't that appear to not make sense. Yeah, what's actually. your problem, dude? I was like, yeah, can you just fucking can't you just appreciate? Just like it. Yeah. Oh, so lame. Um, wow, no people of triumph descent? How dare you? I bet you have nothing of value to say. No? No, we didn't really. It took a while, though. None of us watched the movie Why Are You Talking About It? <laughs> you know what? That's <laughs> why. Like, we gotta keep you guys up to date when you- Cause you'll- People you'll need all, to know. You'll all be going to see Spooderman, so now you know the bits and bobs that may be necessary to appreciate Spooderman, cause I don't fucking know what's gonna pop up in that movie. God, imagine the homework needed to actually- Like, if you were a person who hadn't seen films, and you're like, I want to watch everything to help me understand. I envy those people. Yeah, that's certainly this is. But uh, if you were to watch No Way Home, and you're like, right, you need to see the MCU up to this point. You need to see the Sam Raimi Spider-Man films. You need to see the Tasm films. Um, and then if fucking Daredevil shows up, it's like you got two seasons, three seasons of TV. Yeah, you need to see three seasons. <laughs> well, I hope that was the bunk. For. I heard I um, Daredevil. Look, all wasn't of it's up in the air. I'm pretty sure that that. All I'm pretty sure that it's like. There's interviews where Charlie Cox gives, like, really kind of nervous answers, so I'm pretty sure at this point it's a safe conclusion that he's going to be in it in some, some capacity. If we're confirming Kingpin, why the fuck wouldn't they be Which, bringing him back? It's safe. Kingpin is pretty safe. He's been, like, heavily hinting that he's... Vincent D'Onofrio has been hinting heavily he's in Hawkeye. And, you know, I... Oh. Like, I, I, I still think we should be more worried than happy about that. I'm concerned. Yeah, I'm nervous. Be happy to see him. Uh. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of um. It was it was funny, you know, like the there was like oh, uh, Andrew Garfield confirmed, and then it was like how, and it's like there's this weird image where Andrew himself was like 50% opacity in a in an environment. It was like um. Okay, and everyone spread that around. Then people were like pointing that out, and he's like, eh. and then some people were saying hang on, actually. Hang on. I'm all like can I interrupt you? You said 50% what? Opacity. Opacity. Like... You know, it's like how yeah, transparent... As in... As in, as in uh, you mean opacity. I don't really have a... F I don't really fight for a team on that one. I don't mind either. <laughs> <laughs> Pick a team. Choose a I, side. I, I, Come I on. Still yeah! Be a man! Pick a team! Shut Commit up. To Chess it. is 3D. Commit <laughs> to your weird, retarded way of pronouncing it or not. Uh, opacity. Opacity. Opa I don't care. Honestly, I haven't even thought about it. I'm so sorry. I wish I did have a team to help oh, you out gosh. here. Uh, I'm also trying to destroy a limo. It feels bad. Also good. Oh, I had one second left. Well, maybe two, but mostly one. Um. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah. So that photo went around. Everyone was like, blah, blah, blah. and then they were like, no, fake for a while. And then they were like, actually, no, it's just the reflection of blah 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 to make him look blah blah blah. And then he was like, no, definitely not in the movies, or at least not to his knowledge. Wink, wink, or not to blah blah. And then the clip, or another photo came out that was clear. And then it was like, no, still not. And that's from actually that that image is from B-roll from like a Saturday Night Live. And it was like, oh, okay. And then the clip version of that came out. And like definite now, and then some YouTuber released a video saying how I trolled the internet and explained how they totally crafted that clip through like whatever tech. And then like loads of people were like, "Of course he's claiming he fucking did that for the attention." It's a real one though, and I'm just sitting here like, "Fuck's sake!" <laughs> like it keeps bouncing yeah. back and forth. I'm just gonna wait until the movie comes out. I think um. It is an absolutely safe bet that we're getting the three Spoodermans, though. I think that's totally yeah, safe. Yeah, that, that one yeah. seems pretty pretty solid. How do you feel about that? Do you reckon, like, do you feel it's a gimmick exploit to just lure people in, or it's going to be a fun bit of fan service that they're doing to uh, actually be genuine to the fans, to, you know, give so them a win? The difference uh, between those two is going to depend on what the writer does, obviously. That's, like, categorically, but... I have some th faith that John Watts would be like... Because, think about it, if you guys were bringing those two in, and their interactions with Tom Holland and Spider-Man is gonna be... Like... 
Like, we gotta make that substantive. We can't just have them turn up and go, hey, splish, splash, punch, punch, okay, bye. So, you're probably gonna wanna be at the, the Toby and Andrew impart some kind of lesson or experience that we can gather from what they would have gotten from their respective movies to Tom. Um, Sorry? What do you mean? Do you mean so as in like. I hope so. I hope they oh, do. Oh, hope yeah, so. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, I. So I think that can work. And um, and if they do that, if they and I, I was, I'm trying to argue myself into a position where I say yes, it was totally meaningful that we had all of these cameos from all these different properties that everyone loves. <laughs> you know, and uh, it's, it's hard yeah. to make me get to that point because you've got only one movie to be able to do all of that, like Doc Ock and Green Goblin showing up and doing lines that we've heard them say before. That's what I actually worry about: is that we literally hear them turn up and do their memes. Like that's, they leave, yeah. It's gonna be so bad if that's all it is. Like, mm, that's uh, like that's my worry that they're just doing it as a cheap kind of, you know, attention grab thing, and then it'll be real surface level, vapid, yeah. meaningless stuff. I mean, and I think that's a fair concern considering the state of the MCU right now. I think one of the biggest problems with Pokemon is that it's better to solo with the starter than to catch and train a team. It's really imbalanced. Um, I mean, Pokemon kind of cuts you off from being able to do that. At least to a degree with the whole, like, the caves requiring Flash, and so you need a Pokemon that can have Flash. You know, that sort of stuff, where it's like you can't just bulldoze with one Pokemon, typically. Um, and I think that the game... Benefits from players mostly wanting to have more than one Pokemon. Like, you're like, I want to catch some of these cute little fellas. But, um, yeah. as for how well Pokemon's balanced, I don't really have anything good to say about that. Uh, I don't want to be too harsh, because I, I haven't studied Pokemon that in-depth. It's just never come across to me as a particularly layered or in-depth game. And perhaps that is by design? Because a rock, paper, scissors format, just a little bit more complex than that, is just what younger audiences are looking for, you know? Mm -hmm. um, fuck, Mary Kill, Scarlet Witch Magic, Shang-Chi Magic, Doctor Strange Magic. So, uh, I like Doctor Strange Magic the most out of the three. Um, I got though, like it too. I liked Scarlet Witches when it was mainly just telekinesis. Uh -huh. Um, but like at this it point, helps when I understand it. That always yeah. is cool. That's neat. Cause I love the little like the runic sort of symbols around Doctor Strange's little panels that he creates to defend himself. And uh, though Doctor Strange's is pretty hard to understand in terms of his limitations as well. Remember when like he put well, up a panel funny. to defend himself from Drax throwing his knives, and they like stab through them, and it's like I wonder how strong those things actually are. Then you know. Mm. Yeah. They, they were able to keep it surprisingly grounded in the first movie based on he had a very strict amount of spells that he always resorted to and we were able to get an idea of their strengths and what their capacity was based on how they were depicted and they stayed fairly closely within the spells as they were presented but the danger now is that oh gosh he's been doing some wacky stuff like oh yeah ta make a spell to make everyone in the world forget who you are i could do that it's like oh or oh, now we're in the realms of magic doing anything we want and that is not a good sign i yeah because i i was gonna say i think i agree with you because like the the portals are very clear even though i would say that no character ever really uses them to their best because those things are op agreed um yep. You have, you remember the first film where he, he like tries to make a whip? Uh, he's like kind of bad at it at first, yep. and then he ends up using that mm -hmm. on uh, Squidward in the fight. With That's a part of Infinity War I'm not a fan of, by the way. I don't understand why Doctor Strange pulls the telekinetic man into him. You remember that? Yeah, I do. It's, it's like, I don't know why he did that. And this is the thing, I want to be impressed by Doctor Strange, well, as I was with uh, him versus Thanos. I thought that fight was awesome. Um, I don't want to be thinking, like, why would you do that when, you know... Anyway, um, yeah, you got that, the, the, the portals, the panels he makes to people jump around and stuff, but, um, 
you're right. Now that he can fuck with the universe, you're kind of just like, wait, what can't he do? Mm-hmm. And the, the fact that he's like, we know frighteningly little about all of this. Like, so why are you fucking No, you know nothing it? about it, though. Yeah. You know nothing. Multiverse never existed. Hey, man. Until the Swinton got it wrong. I don't know why you would pick Loki as canon over the others. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, uh, this we'll see. Kind of consider Loki non-canon. <laughs> What they well, would say I is that Tilda that. Swinton was referring to the multiverse of multi-dimensions, not multiverse of multi-times and parallel realities. And so they would say that the Dark Dimension still existed, and that's the multiverse she was referring to, like the multiple different dimensions. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I think the best faith that I was, was going to say, Sad, you yeah. can't fix it because of the wording. I'm pretty sure she says the multiverse exists. I like, think she does say multiverse. She, says, she says multiverse, like, yeah. Um, but the people, you know, defenders will interpret that's meaning. She's specifically it means referring there's a multiverse. to the multi-dimensions. Multi and because you can say uh, dimension and universe interchange interchangeably a lot. And so that's what people will say. Loki still fucked everything up. Oh, yeah. And, like, I, I just... I feel bad for the writers coming in after it. Or maybe maybe they're okay coming in after it because it unleashed everything at the end of it. Oh. Yes. Or did it because maybe. of the ending. We don't really... You know. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, really. Um, so yeah. Kill... Oh, kill Scarlet Witch magic right now. We have to, because that's the worst one out of the three. Yep. Um, I'm gonna marry Doctor Strange, but this answer would probably change as soon as uh, I see No Way Home. And then... Um, I think I'd line up on that. And then, then fuck um, Shang-Chi, I guess, because the rings... That's something we didn't get to talk about, that I guess we can now. Um, Ten um, cock rings. His stupid rings, plus his stupid dragon scale armor, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's not really clear exactly what can beat him. He destroyed, like, a universe-ending dragon thing. And I'm just like, so... We got another person now on the team who is just top tier. What... what, what I guess if someone said, like, who would win in a fight, him or Captain Marvel? And I'd be like, I guess Captain Marvel, but... Captain Marvel would win. But, like, uh, these rings, I don't know yeah. what the limits of them are. What if he shoved they, all of them down his throat? Interesting thing. I'm not impressed by the rings. I think they're pretty dumb, the way that they're shown. They're and lame, I'm annoyed yeah. because there are, there are two sides to them. There's the OP, they can kind of do anything, but just because the plot says, which I hate because it's inconsistent and they're just magical whatever bullcrap devices. And the other side, they have this interesting limitation, which is at the same time pretty lame and weak. And if they were actually restricted to the fact that they can only shoot off and return and he can only deflect things with the rings and stuff, his power level would be really pathetic, but they mm. can't decide which what, what they want to do or go for. And so it's just a convoluted mess right now. Maybe if um, if ever you're having trouble with a villain, you drag him to the impenetrable forest, like you trick him into going in there and it just eats them, you know? Yeah. Pretty powerful awesome. little area. Make use of Unless it. Unless they can fly or have like a hatchet, maybe. <laughs> right, or right. It's a magical forest. I'm climb. sure it's immune to such things. I'm not sure of that. I'm not sure what to be sure of anymore. I don't know yeah. what anything means. You'd they think that, that as a basic compliment. cause and effect is, you know, would dictate like, certain things. I just don't know. It's so unpredictable. Yeah, they, they'd be like, you, the only thing you can be sure of is uncertainty. And you're like, that's... okay. That sounds like <laughs> shit. I'm glad you're proud of that, I guess. Uh, since I'm going to be focusing on school now, I won't be able to catch EFAPs and Super Chat as often, so here's my parting Uncle Ruckus quote. It's long. You gotta... <sighs> How do I say this? They've done it in the font where they can get away with saying you probably, stuff. You but you what, what does YouTube think though? Oh, I know which words I definitely can't say. You gotta rotate your what? racial slurs. Now I know it's hard because the word just rolls off the tongue. But we cannot let that be the crutch, especially when there are so many other fine substitutes like spade. I. I, I mean, that should be fine, because I can use that, you know, normally. But then there's two that I'm pretty sure I'm not allowed to use. I say next time you're gonna call... Uh, something a something, you call that something... something... I think I can say Jungle Bunny. <laughs> That's probably allowed for now. You never know with this sort of stuff. Jungle um, Bunny? 
hope you found a way to read that. See y'all. Bye, rags. Bye. That's the best I could do. Uh, fun fact, Kathy's apt, Kathy's apt in Black Widow is Trump Tower Chicago? Oh, Kathy's apartment. Wait, who's Kathy? Is that in the, the, is that a character in, in the Shang-Chi movie? Did I say Shang-Chi? Did I mean Katie? Oh, well he said BW as in Black Widow, but I'm assuming they may have oh. meant to say Shang-Chi then, and he may have meant to say Maybe? Katie? I have no idea then. If Maybe. that's what you meant, then, uh... Interesting. Also, by the way, Squirtle is objectively the best starter for efficiency. Also, also, hello, Rex. Hi. Hi. Not true. It's Bulbasaur. I I really like Squirtle. I like him a lot. I I I think Charmander is my favorite in terms of looks and all that. But uh, I think, I I think, think Bulbasaur Squirtle. is objectively the best. I still like Squirtle. He is uh. Squirtle's my boy. Great. Well, but I Squirtle's actually great. I have no idea which one is the best in terms of. Are we talking about like which one can carry the best through the whole game or here let me um it's been a long time since it came up let's see here do to do all right guys in chat don't get confused with which one you like the most like which one is actually the one that will get you through the most yeah. stuff i because i there's obviously an answer to this i just don't know what it is i'm curious Okay, so Bulbastor, um, let's see, he evolves quickest. Uh, uh let's see, okay. uh, so even the same levels will get to his evolutions better. They are at 16. So Bulbasaur, they, uh, da, 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 32. Yeah, he gets to Venusaur at 32, whereas you get Charizard and Blastoise at 36. Evolving early in X and Y. It will already access have access to Mega Evolution thanks to the fact that Venusaur will have evolved right before the Shalur City Gym, but that's other stuff. I, I don't have a play X and Y. Um, best moves. Uh, Charizard doesn't get access to good fire type moves until you're about level 40. Uh, let's see. When it comes to. Da, 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 unless you have TMs to make up for it. Uh, da, da, da going through scrolling through here i used to know it by heart but that was ages ago uh it has let's see let me scroll here because I'm, I'm scrolling through stat paged uh do, 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 do. it synergizes better with more pokemon teams uh, let me see best options with right type access moves aren't ground or poison type maximum phase um better against more gym leaders There, I let's see. There's a. I think Squirtle's best for speed runners for whatever reason. I think it's because he can get through Brock's gym faster because he's water mm. type. Uh huh. Because that can be often the thing. Um, let's see. Yeah. Yeah. For speed runners, apparently Bulbasaur is the weakest. It might be. <laughs> uh, it might be. Uh, I know that. When you're speed running, your strategy is just totally different. But as as far as Gen One goes, it just has better stats. But I maybe the, and then again, this is many generations, so it oh, takes yeah. care of. Uh, okay. So who knows if they've it's been updated or rebalanced or whatnot? But yeah, it, back at, this is a definitely back in my day. Um, I was also gonna thing. say like. Maybe he does get to Venus, the final evolution faster than the others, but I'm assuming the others have stats that they do sit in things better than Venus or does. I'd be curious I if think their it's... full potential is the power output from Charizard just better than the other two's, or yeah. But generally, the 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 general thing I see is easy. Bulbasaur is easy mode, Squirtle is medium, and Charmander is hard. Uh, okay. Part of the reason is again, it's that first couple gems, right? Like if you pick Charmander. You're going to have a fire type, and you're going to have to be fighting back-to-back -back rock types, which fire doesn't do anything against, and water types, which is doubly worse. Yeah. So your first two gems are going to be tough. And you have a lot less options for your first gems in terms of trying to beat them. You have less Pokemon that you could catch. Um, you have less options in terms of items and equipment that you can use. So getting a type advantage in the early gems is far more important. Later on, when you have far more access to getting different Pokemon and catching them, and more options to better grind, 
it's not going to be nearly as much of an issue. I also, see. the thing is that the, the super chat specified efficiency. So it's kind of complicated exactly what that means. No, I'm not sure what that means, really. Yeah. Is yeah, it, but if it were of... to complete the game the fastest as efficiency, then... Or if it were something else, I don't know. Longman, I was joking. She's more of a sports reviewer. I just want to see a reactive boobs again, like you did on the Suicide Squad review. Hi, Rags. Hello. You want to see me react reactive to boobs, boobs again? I mean... I react... I react to boobs, positively, yeah. generally. Mm-hmm. Muller, is it possible for someone to criticize a film without seeing it themselves? Do you have to see a film to be able to say if it's good or bad? Uh, I mean... So, the, 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 the thing about this is, like, it couldn't possibly be binary, right? Because it's just all over the place. If you watch everything except the last five minutes of a film, like The Room, can you, like, is it... If you say that that film is bad, are you full of shit? Or is it that you have no. to say it's mostly bad because you haven't seen the whole thing? You know, like, it's... Eh. And this is the thing. You know if someone watches my review of, um... I don't know, fucking... The breakdown of TFA I do once all six parts are out. Which will happen, by the way. Um... I go through the whole film, like, in detail. And if someone watches all of that... But hasn't seen TFA and concludes what they believe to be about the movie, like irrelevant, whatever I said, nece uh, not necessarily tied to what I say. I feel like it's probably gonna, they might know the film better than someone who's seen it at that point, you know? <clears throat> so, like, it's really complicated because it's like intuitively, you'd be like, of course you can't say a film is bad if you haven't seen it. But, like, I mean, kind of you could, right? There's a lot of scenarios where you'd be able to. Yeah, can what you say it, Batwoman's bad if you haven't watched Batwoman? It, you just watched our takes. Does it does it count as having watched the film if you see all of it, but in portions of a review over a really long time? Hmm. You know, if you like watch sure. thirty second clips and then commentary on them, and you watch the entire movie that way, does it count? I'd say it counts. I would say that it counts first. I think the filmmakers would probably be like, that is not how you're supposed to consume the film. But at the same time, you've got all the information. Yeah. So... It's hmm. correct, it's correct, you know? But yeah, I would just be like, there's so many scenarios we could be talking about here. And say, for example, someone only ever saw a review of, like, The Last of Us 2 saying the storyline's dumb because this happens, this happens, this happens, in, like, a ten-minute review. And then they start saying the game is definitely bad. Trust me, I know. It'd be like, eh, you don't really know much about it, but, you know. Mm -hmm. Complicated. I guess it's context. And of course, all that matters is whether you're making good or bad points. Are you making apt observations or yeah, shitty ones? You know, theoretically, let's say, let's pretend for a second Rags knew nothing about Shang-Chi as he did a mere nine hours ago. I still don't even know. Maybe I still don't know anything about Shang-Chi. After all at that, I heard that just weird sludgy mixture of mm -hmm. what the hell, who knows? But like, let's say we put him into a room to debate Shang-Chi's quality, and then I was listening and just feeding him lines. It'd be really funny, because uh, the Rags would probably come across as though he has seen the whole movie. Oh, I definitely could. Yeah, I could I could come across that and way. So. Yeah, I don't know. There's it's just so many scenarios where someone would just be like, right, you haven't even seen it. And you're like, does it matter? I'm, all the points I made were valid. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's one of those things. I, it literally doesn't matter if I've seen it or not. Seeing something pretty much just enables me to have all my information and my references in theory. Well, so, yeah, I could totally be. Uh, yeah. That's the reverse scenario, right? Someone watches it and then you go, okay, so let's talk about the bus scene. And they're like, bus scene? What? And you're like, yeah, the bus scene where they have a yeah, the big the fight. Scene. And they're like, I don't. Oh, I. They like, can't say, oh yeah, well, you haven't even seen it. Yeah, well, if they were like, well, I've seen the movie, I don't remember a bus scene, you'd be like, okay, what am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> like, it's just, there's a big, there's a, okay. You know, some people might forget bits, some people, this is a good old-fashioned phenomenon where you watch a thing or experience a thing and then you remember it differently from what it was because of how it made you feel rather than what it was or whatever, and so, yeah, getting them references straight, honestly, is more important than whether or not you've seen it. Which is kind of funny, right? Because it sounds, again, it sounds so bad on paper, but like, I mean, 
True. Um, I just voted for communists. I hate them, but I hate current regime even more. Life is pain, so better to empty that vodka bottle. EFAP helps too. Oh. Well, all right. Okay. We'll, we'll be around <laughs> if you... Yeah. Mola, try Ac Ac ActVid as long as you don't mind the ads. Quality is decent for cam. I don't know, I think that's... I don't, I'm not sure what that's referring to exactly. Possibly. I have no idea. It's very strange. I don't I don't know these weird mm -hmm. new millennial words that they come up with Zoomers, on the internet. I, yeah. yeah, I don't I don't get... Just speak like a normal human being, yeah. all right? It would, it's not going to kill you. It really won't. I know some of y'all don't want to take the chance, but I promise it's going to be all right. I don't think I can envision that last battle scene in Shang-Chi you guys described. It's too much crazy. It's like, yeah, I could understand. Well, it's I'm fun. envisioning I'm envisioning something. I'm curious how it matches up to the real thing, but not that curious. Well, like yeah, give it like two years, that. Rags, and you will likely see that film as we are well into the MCU arc. Well, I'll try and remember what my mental image was before, you know. That'll be hmm. one of those ones where it's like, should we do it by phase so that we can, you know, have them actually, or just like do record them all, edit them all up, and then be like, coming this Christmas. You know, <laughs> this fucking yeah. every single Marvel movie. Um, why does Marvel's Katie have the same back end as Station from Bill and Ted? Hi, Rags. Hi. Hello. Um, well, now, when do you say back end? They must be referring to like like uh, software and stuff. Software back end. I, I didn't get <laughs> a good look at the programming, but yeah. Chad, I read your book. It was good. Can't wait for the next part. Also, shoe on Eve. Well, I'll stop there, actually. Yeah, there you go, right? It's Chad. <laughs> awesome to hear. Thanks. Glad you liked it. Sweet. Also, <laughs> shoe on EFAP when? Um, who knows? Might, might source something out at some point here and there. You never know with all these creators doing their own thing. If we can get her on to debate TLJ. Does she like TLJ? Oh, I Does she doubt think it's it. good? I don't, I don't think she cares. She's one of those people that's like, oh, what do you think of this movie? And she's like, I haven't seen it. It's like, this movie? I haven't seen it. This movie? I haven't seen it. This movie? Yeah, I think I remember that one. You're like, yeah. <laughs> right. What am movie? She hasn't, um, I don't think she's seen, fuck, I can't remember. Chat, you're going to have to help me out if you, if you remember the stream. We asked her if she liked, like, seven movies in a row and she hadn't seen them and they were all, like, super fucking popular. I think she said she got bored of Lord of the Rings. Ugh. Oh, poor man! <laughs> Gotta remember that 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 is a Lord somewhat of the Rings. known take for for real hyper normies, you know. Normies, seemingly for some reason. It's not I enough explosions per second. There's heaps of action though. Like, that's <laughs> what I don't understand. There's plenty of action in Lord of the Rings. Oh yeah, she hasn't seen The Matrix or Fight Club. Oh it. fuck! It okay, happens. it happens. Yeah. Yeah. It does happen. That's true. Yeah. These, these people shouldn't be jailed yet. Like, this time. Not, yeah, we'll give them a chance. Not be jailed. That's... Jailed. Pee pee poo poo. She loved Joker. That's good to hear. I'm glad she did. She said Ray was the final form of Mary Sue. It's probably true. The final form? She's okay. definitely up there. She's Who's up gonna there be able with... to knock her off that title? Like. Well, ooh. Shang Chi's uh, sister. She's a pretty. The thing is, so. Editor. Someone might be able to match it better, but I don't think anyone's going to knock her off because uh, Ray is the main star oh, of the uh, main trilogy, yeah. the hyper popular. You know, it's like yeah, true, she's true, so true. prominent as a character, so much work and effort and focus. Was Incredibly put onto beloved characters were and, basically killed to make way for her. <laughs> and no yeah, one can to, explain to like, her. who she is as a person because none of the films could. They were all confused. No, yeah. Who is she? Sacrifice the altar of character fuel. Three movies that I don't really fucking know anything about you other than you're extremely good at just fucking She's everything. Fucking great. Great. She's yeah. so good at everything, yeah. You are just so awesome. Um, drink of your books are next on my reading list. I, I believe he would have appreciated that. Unfortunately, he dropped out four hours ago. Can handle it. <laughs> That's all. We're up to nine, by the way, which for me is the the place where we start to think about where we're going to stop. I, 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 I'm i still willing to keep going. I don't know how you guys feel. I mean, I, I'm well, I think we can get it. through the super chats, right? 
because I'm I'm getting pretty tired. But can we can get through the super chats for this one, right? We can try. Right, <laughs> right. I feel like the Padme meme right now. You're right. <laughs> right. The super chats, right. Again, we can try. No promises. Uh, hi Rex. Hello. Buffy likes pineapple pizza. Reference to season two, episode ten. So Buffy is. This is why Buffy's good. No it's a perfect. flawed character. And yeah. It's better that they write flawed yeah. characters than giving us all these perfect people, you know? Yeah, we were just talking about Ray a second ago. Ray loves not pi not eating pineapple on pizza, because of course she does. Yeah, She's a fucking yeah. Mary Sue. Everything is correct for her. She can't get a single thing wrong. And you might be thinking, like, oh, so you guys want her to like it? It's like, you know, it would have been nice to have a flaw. Would have been would nice. Have been have nice. Mm -hmm. yes, One we, thing. Clearly we asked too much. Um... Shemai Mola, Shemai, and this team of legends. I'll take any of the right. Netflix Marvel stuff over this crap. Would love hearing you discuss the Punisher. Oil. Oil. Net um, Netflix Marvel stuff? I'm not a big fan stuff? of that show. Oh, yeah, that's what, like, Daredevil, Punisher, Jessica. Oh, Burns, gotcha. Okay, I Cage. gotcha. All right. Yeah, I'm not a huge yeah. fan. I tend to, when I run through it, it's, it's like, Daredevil, that's worthwhile. Uh, Jessica Jones parts of season one and then you can discard it there luke cage yeah, um, up until maybe episode six and then you can write it off after they kill cottonmouth spoilers <laughs> but uh <laughs> an iron fist is not particularly worthwhile in general iron and fist Defenders was garbage of top tier order it was horrible i enjoyed jessica jones a decent amount especially um uh, kilgrave uh because yeah. david Tennant just killed it at kilgrave no pun intended he was, he was amazing um, oh absolutely yeah. amazing um and i enjoyed of course daredevil you know see i i enjoyed both season one and two i i also gave up halfway through jessica jones season two i just lost interest um and i, I, I personally really did, did not, not like season two of jessica jones yeah. Fuck, that was uh, painful well, I did not like Luke Cage. I couldn't get into that one either. Very slow and dull uh, overall, well, so in my opinion. The, what I tend to say about Luke Cage is I basically liked it up until they killed Cottonmouth, and then once they killed Cottonmouth, I it was like, okay, all right. Like, they replace him with our Diamondback, and he just is incredibly <laughs> flat. Um, yeah, I, I that's kind of threw me off. Um... But yeah, I mean, compared to, like, the sludge now, it's like, oh man, makes Iron Fist not look so bad. <laughs> oh gosh, that's depressing, because Iron Fist was uniquely bad. That was like, ah, oh, from the beginning, it um, just... Mm. The thing is, if I rewatch it, I remember when I watched it, one of my takes on that was like, man, it feels like people are being kind of unfair to this show when I, I feel like some of the other shows suffered from um, similar problems. Um... I, then again, it's it's. I haven't seen it in a long time. That, that's that's probably one. No, I don't want to rewatch it. Actually, I was gonna say it might be worth rewatching. Nah, it's nope. okay. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not attached to defending that show. Not not particularly. Guys, bamboo is used for scaffolding. I get it looks silly, but that's not a mistake. Like I said, I know nothing about scaffolding. I'm gonna make a yeah, claim. Yeah, on skyscrapers right, that high. Scaffold. Yeah, give me a reference. I need proof that's for that surprising. one. Cause... What? What I say? Rag said we, you said like, oh, we we get through the super chats. I remember when this came up. This is only like two hours in. Fuck me. <laughs> We're gonna be here for a while. Let's go. <laughs> so I can do it. Do it. Who would win a fight? The average Krogan from Mass Effect versus the average brute from Halo. You can give different answers yeah. for fist uh, fight Kro versus weapons. Krogan. I think it's Krogan. I feel like Krogan have got this one. Um, Krogan have access to Mass Effect tech. It, Krogans are tanky as fuck. Uh, especially in the first game, Krogan Battle Masters were like mini bosses. Essentially, they could take out a yeah. lot of punishment. And also, when they go down, they'll get back up again. They and the big down. thing is, like, if it, if it were a hand-to-hand -hand fight, there's no contest that they would win against the brutes. If it was weapons, maybe that would change things up. But I still, feel I think like the Mass they, Effect weapons, the gonna... uh, Covenant weapons that the brutes had access to. The brute shot is pretty good. Um, um, but like the spikers yeah, and the plasma but... stuff, I think that just the the handiness and the bullet-like qualities of the Mass Effect weapons just help a lot. And brutes don't have. It depends shields. if numbers backed into it. 
but if it, it, I guess it also depends on whether we're factoring in um, numbers because if it's numbers, it's like well, there are a lot more brutes than there are krogans. A lot more. There aren't many krogan left, really. So, well, I mean, the this was just specifically about one on one, right? Oh, oh, yeah. I feel like krogan, krogan probably have this one. It said, um, yeah, would there be different answers for hand to hand versus all? Like weaponry. And I don't think there would be. Um, I think hand to hand, Krogan will absolutely dominate, and weapons might be a modifier, but I'm not sure. I think when you add equipment, I, I think that the um, the stuff that you fight, that, that brutes have when you fight them, is just going to be flat out outclassed by uh, Mass Effect armor. Mass Effect armor is like, it looks like it's real, right, proper armor that I could imagine being. A real thing but some brutes their armor is just clearly not that great like entire legs exposed entire forearms open often chests are just not even covered sometimes there's nothing more than a leather bandolier over the chest it, some of them have can have better armor of course but i i just think the krogans have it on this one wait well if we're thinking like brutes from halo 3 you got i guess the question is if they were going up against like a, a chieftain or something hmm a chieftain might actually put up a, a good fight. If it's the, well, specifically, if it's the they said hammer, the average Krogan versus the average brute. Oh, okay. I, think I, go, uh, I think I'm going to go with average, yeah, the average Krogan. Brute. I'll go with Krogan. Yeah, i go with Krogan, I think. Uh, does Mauler like Pink Floyd's The Wall? I've, I've always liked a lot of the songs from it, but I never really had any appreciation beyond that, though a lot of my friends did. So when, like... Nostalgia Critic did his review, like I said, I was just like, so this is just as cringe as his normal stuff. And then I saw a lot of people reviewing it that weren't explaining the problem, but... Some the, of the reviews that we watched of the of his video were worse than his video. They were, they were really bad. They were just the standard Downright shit we cover on EFAP. sometimes. Yeah. Like, Ralph was terrible. But it was super hypocritical. As of just a couple, I want to say possibly even one month ago, um, holding ideas, a person who is... N very much doesn't like me, so you can take this to be a very unbiased take. Made a fantastic video, not only destroying Nostalgia Critic's video, but also explaining very clearly what the wall's about and what value there is to sort of dig out of it from the different ways that it approaches the medium. Really appreciate the video. I thought it was fantastic. Um, and, and, and that's the kind of stuff I really like. That YouTube does, where it's just like this. I, there's a specific kind of video I need to be able to sort of access a particular thing, and like, you know, the right person doing it in the right way manages to nail it. Um, Dan also doesn't like you. I can't believe it. This is the thing. Uh, he he hated me for the moment I made the the DS2 response series. It's, it's been a while since then, so I'm sure he doesn't even know who I am anymore. But I'm pretty sure he does. Uh, like that game? No, he liked H Bomber guy a lot. Oh, they're, they're well, very good friends. Fucking so. get over it. <laughs> When he heard me mention and say the the O word, he was like, "Wow, you can't be objective." What word? Uh, can't say oh, that we're man. actually incorrect. <laughs> took me a while well, like to it, realize. It was, it was, people always like took it really crazily. That one of the opening points H Bomber guy starts making is um, how like fun, like like the, basically the Dark Souls two made things more fun, and I like am immediately just like so. That's fucking useless to me. Like, I can just say that everything in, uh, you know, the paddling pool is more fun than anything you've ever done. I just love slapping that water. It's just more fun. It's just like, we gotta do better than that. And um, I think I just try and stake the claim there. I was like, that's super subjective. If we can get more into, like, actual stuff. And he does eventually start doing references, but they're really bad. The D his DS2 video is one of his fucking worst videos he's ever made. Um... So it took a while to respond to it, as you guys may be aware. This is like a really long series, and yeah, a lot of people did not appreciate it. Um, doo -doo. But yeah, uh, Danielson's made a couple videos I really like. He made a video on Flat Earth that's kind of amazing in terms of dis like, just trying to be definitive about it just in his local area. He found a particular lake, and he did a lot of work to, to prove that like, the, the, I, it's hard for me to explain because I'm just not fucking familiar enough with the correct nomenclature, but uh, I would recommend that one too. Um, the movie kind of contradicts itself by claiming the father is bad for putting his son through training, but also claiming he's sexist for not putting his daughter through that same training. 
Does it do the sexist yep. part? Yeah, it basically says that, yeah, the dad's sexist because he ignored the daughter and thought not, didn't think she was uh, capable or worthy to be trained into a super assassin. I'd have to rewatch it to remember the references. would have been as strong as but... Captain Marvel if she actually got the training. Oh, dude. Oh, can't imagine how powerful she'd be if, yeah. Unstoppable. Uh, Rags is indefatigable, an indefatigable RLM shill, and I love him. That is um, a good reference. Yeah, indefatigable. No, movies are about family, make $800 million. This won't. Oh. Of course, Mola doesn't understand the concept of fun. I like things a lot. I have plenty of fun with all kinds of things. I just don't think it's a great argument whenever you're trying to say why something's good that you simply had fun. It's funny because I end up saying it about a lot of the stuff that I enjoy, but I hopefully fucking put arguments alongside it. Shumai Muller, my streaming week, or why I can't remember how it's pronounced, Hoffany Cloyed Eteen Drava the Punisher, Ephali Kamharu and Ibir Black Widow, Oitin Ungorai Hoyl. Um, it's like an Elrond here that... sending the super chats. Is that Welsh? Is that Walish? I don't know why yeah, we would compare think... Punisher to Black Widow. I thought Walish was. It's, I, I thought Walish sounded I like. Wales and Walish are completely different things, right? Gosh. I'm sure that's pretty offensive to somebody somewhere yeah. in the world. Sorry about that, this chat. This is really good. Rags is indefatigable. Um, yeah, I've not seen Punisher of those. I've not heard great things about Punisher, and then I don't... I, I don't have a good... Yeah. I don't know what... Like, cause they were saying, like, compare it to Black Widow. I was just like, why? <laughs> like... I, that's a weird comparison. It's probably better, but... Uh... Probably, yeah. I... I'm trying to think of the connection, it's not like spies, really, or anything, it's <laughs> they're very different yeah, approaches. Yeah, I'm not sure so why. I'm not sure why we picked those two specifically. Um, I'm getting really tired of the EFAP crew coming up with better stories than the writers, stop it. So, I do want to, you know, try and downplay that a little bit. Some of the stuff we were mm. saying was super basic. Like, oh, the, the veteran gets wounded and therefore the student must take the shot with his yeah. encouragement like that is not complicated that's been done in lots of stuff it's very satisfying to watch it's normal it is not satisfying it's, to watch yeah. him get killed slowly and have her fucking watch that's just stupid <laughs> it's it's out of character for her and it's really unsatisfying to see yeah. and fucking death dealer bad what the hell were you thinking I could even have gone for the idea that Death Dealer survives the movie. He gets like an awesome fight scene, is defeated, and then leaves. You know, like run, even just is like, oh, this, this is fucked, they're fighting dragons, I'm out of here. And then we see yeah. Death Dealer come back as a mercenary for a different bad guy. What Taskmaster does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just basic shit, man. <laughs> like, uh, I miss good boss deaths, too. Yeah. We were talking about this before, uh, me and Fringy, but Indiana Jones is like the gold standard for boss deaths. Everybody gets a good boss death. Some bosses, yeah. Yeah, I think, let's see, because with Last Crusade, we have the, yeah, the, the rail, the, 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 the wrong grail. With the Temple of Doom, kind of the we have the falling down and then eaten by crocodiles. Mm -hmm. And, um,. Everyone uh, knows arc, the arc. Lock arc. Yeah, well, that's the big, big one. Bad ones, but I mean, even the sub bosses like yeah, the sub dude bosses the and the muscle. They all get. Remember the yeah, muscle in the um, guys. Holy, uh, the arc is he gets shredded by the airplane. Yeah, repellers. Yeah, yeah. and um, Kingdom of Doom, you had the cool fights on the uh, the. He got um, the, crushed the, in a conveyor belt, right? Oh, he yeah, did. Yeah, he his crushed, his yeah. pant tassel thingy yeah. got caught in the the grinder. Yeah, flattened. You could say that uh, the tank was sort of a boss battle in and of itself. Yeah, though that was that was. Oh the yeah, the, he died in the what was his face? I, I forget his name, but he died in the tank. It um, it, fell it went over the ledge. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
And it didn't explode. Yeah. So he got he tossed around and tumbled around. Yeah, fuck. He got fucked up. And all the yeah Nazis along the way he fought. Oh, those man. are we gotta see those movies again. Oh, yeah, oh wait, we they're, they're oh and what about annoying. the other one? The the fourth Indiana fuck. Jones movie. What oh, about well, the... that one had the ants. The fuck yeah, the, the ants. ants. Remember that? That crazy shit. I do remember shit. the ants. Yeah. Yeah, that that was uh that was some nightmare fuel right there. <laughs> the ants ate Kate Blanchett, right? Or was it? No, no, Kate Blanchett died by the aliens. Aliens. They Did someone get her. eaten by the, the ants? Yeah, the the some the, the mini boss the... got oh, eaten okay, by the ants. Mini -boss. Mini -boss. Mommy's yeah, to, yeah, and they, that was uh, that was nice and terrifying. Is is it is it sort of like poetic that a communist gets killed by ants? Because <laughs> the ants hmm. are the worker class. It's like a, it's like <laughs> a, a oh, collective, a, yeah, a, exactly. Like, like a you know, each of them a little bit, a little piece. Um, you know, just mindless drones. Yeah. The funny thing about that, right, is that everyone says, and it's totally fair, there are only three Indiana Jones movies, but at the same time, if we were to do an arc with them, it's like, I assume people would want us to watch the fourth one to rip on it, right? I think we'd have to, because, yeah. yeah, we didn't, I we can't we exclude to. the bad ones from the other series we do, right? That'd yeah. be cheating if we said, ah, oh, that one's, we, we all know that one's bad, we're not going to watch that one. Wait, imagine doing it with the MCU, we just, like, fucking... We watch, like, four <laughs> movies, and that's it. <laughs> Stepping over huge MCU's gaps. done. We did it. We watched all of it. There's no. There's only four movies. That's all Who are these other people? Um. But yeah, and then the fifth one's coming out. So it, yeah. Yeah, I get uh, excited. Yeah, everyone's getting excited. Yay! How does it feel to watch your favorite franchise? <laughs> How does it plate. feel? Feels great, man. Um. Cleaning the theaters for Shang Chi, I watch the after credits theme over and over. I hate how they destroy impact of a scene with comedy, karaoke lols. Also, check out the truck in the far right lower lower corner. I don't know what I would be referring to. The truck in the far maybe if there was like um was there a traffic scene and maybe a car was supposed to do something missed. That, is it or? is it the zoom out scene when we see the um uh, ten rings compound because there's some cars and stuff uh, maybe driving in it, and yeah. out in that scene. Just do it more check know. the truck. I don't know what truck I'm supposed to check. I don't know what this shit means. Also look for him, I've trapped him. Wait, let me see. Somewhere. Oh shit! Okay. Oh, the game. Him. The game has a way of dealing with it. <laughs> <laughs> Technology. You uh, don't dare cheat us. Evap is my favorite sports podcast. I can't wait to find out which sport is objectively the best. Also, hello, Mola, Shad, Fringo, and Drinker. Hello. No. Yo. No high for ranks. My God. Ah oh, well. It's feels wrong. No one can be a- not everyone can be an amazing winner, Super Chatter. Mm -hmm. The dialogue between so Tony Stark and the Air Force Infantry and Iron Man 1 is some of the best in the MCU. Good days. Uh, which- Oh, are they talking about when they were- when that, they were- Which part are they talking the dog about? The dogfight. Uh, dog no, fight, Well, that no, wasn't- No, isn't- when he's in the car? Is he- isn't he when he's in the car at the very beginning? Yeah, because if they talk- because I was gonna say, no, there's a couple things they might fights, be referring to. Uh, he, by, yes. He doesn't talk to them, he talks to Terrence Howard at that point. He talks he? to Roy. Yeah, so I don't think they're yeah. referring to that. Otherwise, they, hmm. why would they I'm not, not sure just say that. Rody? I'm assuming they're talking about the intro where he's talking to the guys in the trucks, so like Shad said. Oh, but they weren't they uh, army? Not Air Force? I don't know. Uh, they could be Air Force infantry. Easy to get them mixed up. Yeah, I, I definitely wouldn't be able to definitively know the difference on that one. Apparently the people in the Humvees are airmen. Alright. Okay. There you go. Hydra, Shield, the Sorcerers, Red Room, Eternals, Ten Rings, the Forest, Village, the Hand, etc. Marvel really likes the group that is super influential but only show themselves now trope. Yeah, it's fucking tired as hell. Yeah. They need to stop. And we're gonna get more with Secret Invasion. Hey, Ooh. look, the scrolls they were here all along. <laughs> Dead Island when and Jackie Chan Arnie movie when? I'm I mean I'm on board doing both of them. Uh, uh 
classic Jackie Chan movies, love them. Legend of Drunken Master, some of the most incredible choreography and stunts, especially in that big ending fight. It's just next level. It's jaw dropping. Maybe we do a Jackie Chan off. Oh, I'd be on That'd board, be man. I'll have to throw in, um, fuck, why am I forgetting? Chris Tucker one. Rush Hour? That's it. Rush Hour. Yeah, I think that would, that would be one to throw in. It's a cosmic chicken. Maybe they're referring to the, the Mandarin chicken meal thing. Maybe. Don't know. Uh, which came first, the cosmic chicken or the world egg? Also high rags. Uh, the cosmic chicken. Laid the world egg. Hmm. The world egg has many names. The cosmic chicken didn't come from a world egg? No. We'll create the cosmic chicken. Oh, it's we're gonna do some. We're gonna special plead our way out of this one. Fine. I just wanted to well, know. That's a, well, I mean, technically, the the chicken comes before the egg, right? Or, or I don't know. I, I said, mean, I it mean, would have to be evolutionary right. speaking. Well, what source are you appealing to there? Because um, the reality. Well, I mean, yeah. Well, I, I, I guess it would be the, uh, presumably the, the, the egg was a, wasn't this just a came after the organism? This is a category like, thing, right? Like, like, there's a line that gets crossed eventually where the chicken used to be a different sort of species, but then it became a chicken over many mutations or so I, whatever. I assume when it comes to, yeah, I, I guess eventually it would be, I guess you would know most when it was like an adult right you'd be able to verify it more accurately if you had adult samples to eventually say okay right, so we are now going uh, to with, differentiate at this with, point because they're substantially different hmm. or different with enough. evolution the egg has to come first because the egg would hold the first mutated um uh, you know mutated enough to be considered a chicken and when it hatched there that's our that first the chicken logic, right there. Then? Of, um, I assume so, because if because if an it, animal, we, hmm. because the egg is a combination of multiple genes and it adds its own mutations. So I guess when it lays the egg, once as it's forming and it, it as an egg and it, that egg gets laid, that would be the first of I guess whenever yeah. okay. the new species technically, even though it's largely arbitrary, I gotcha. um, that would be the the egg. There we go. We solved and, the and, question. Yeah. Um, it comes first. No one ever did Unless this before you're... with the first. <laughs> By oh, the way, we're not Christian... we're not talking about <laughs> eggs in general before chickens. That would be dumb because obviously eggs existed before chickens existed. Um, we're talking about chickens and eggs and you know themselves. What about chags? But, yeah. I don't know about chags. I don't know about chags. Mm. I don't That's know about chags. Surely the the greatest mystery of our time. We'll answer that one on the next stream. You know, one one huge <laughs> no. problem at a time. Which came first, the nuggy or the chicken? <laughs> well, the nuggy chicken obviously nuggy. came first. Chickens are just a nuggies deviation. are like yeah, nuggy. spiritual beings. So they, yeah, they... what happens when we accidentally allow a chicken to go unnuggied? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows the forest kills people when it wakes up. Haven't you seen Lord of the Rings? I mean, you know, Lord of the Rings is not one to one with real world. It's close. I will give you that. But, yeah, but this I didn't is the know other strong thing. Was an adaptation of Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings actually yeah, has a more valid explanation for moving trees than Shang Chi does. Well, it, yeah, I guess yeah, that's a silly comparison. Like they don't wide. have one in Shang Chi at all. <laughs> exactly. Oh yeah, that, that's that's right. There was no explanation. It's just the way it works. Yeah, it basically what a says here. Um, yeah, it's a stupid at. Movie. Uh, uh, at some point in evolutionary history, when there were no chickens, two birds that were almost but not quite chickens mated and laid an egg that hatched into the first chicken. If you're prepared to call that egg a chicken's egg, then the egg came first. Yep. Mm -hmm. I agree. Could you shout out all weekend charity marathon at Green Zone? Maybe rated after the stream with three dollars each, we could even double their goal. I have. What is the charity? I was gonna say, I have no idea what charity it is. So. Gotta be careful, cause you never know what charities are doing what, where, why, who, where, when, what. Mm. But um, obviously, if it's all good stuff, then uh, super appreciated. Good, good stuff.
Morris is Disney's attempt to monopolize the head pillow market. I mean, maybe. They'll probably be able to get, get a few sold, I'd imagine. I'm sure that they're already selling toys for Morris. Yeah. I don't know. Not as well. It's not really near as cute as other toys, and so I don't think they're going to be wow, near as Wow, well Chad. As picking on Morris. I... I... I I will I think that Morris kind of neat like I I think it's kind of there you neat. go Fringy's gonna buy like five Morrises now that you've said this um, I oh Fringy you're you know, just weird like, are you actually wow. gonna buy a Morris thing I'll hold that against um, you Fringy I don't know that I would buy a Morris toy um, wow peer pressure I, out of I, it. <laughs> no not really it's more of like a matter of space and just you know how much yeah how much yeah taste because he sucks I agree much. oof. Well, it's, it's just priorities, right? I've already got the Rags plush and the Molly plush, and I got other plushes that already, you know, exist in, in this uh, abode. Sounds like you're agreeing oh, with Shad, then, that it's worse yeah, it's, than it's like the know. Rags if plush less, and the Molly plush are objectively superior <laughs> to this crappy, retarded, I, mutated thing. I don't know that it's, I don't know that it's objectively better. It's more that there is a, a, a personal priority to have the, uh, the, the Rags and Molly plushes over the Morris plush. I, I don't know that I'd be opposed to getting them flushed. Oh, you're clearly an awful human being. I I I I just think it's kind of neat, like it's as a as a thing. Um, <laughs> awful. <laughs> Sorry, I. I, 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 I just, that's that's you know what you can hate it. That's totally fine. I will. Thank shy you. Guy thank plus? you yeah, the shy guy plus is also another priority one. That's uh, I'll be adding that. Who's soon. better, shy guy or Morris? Uh, shy guy's better than Morris. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, Morris. Can you, you name a single plush? Can you name a single plush that Morris is better than at the moment? The Quinton plush. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, all right. Uh, I have to concede that point. You got me. Yeah, I feel like unfair, there'd be a decent yeah. number of animals that I'd feel would be more interesting to have Morris than a uh, plushy nepotism in a certain sense. Yeah. The pandemic plushy nepotism is everywhere. Mm -hmm. If they let the Mandarin originally in, he could have killed the beast with the Ten Rings, so it was never an issue for anyone. Um, I'm so I'm not quite sure what's being said in the super chat, but one of the guesses I'm having is: Are we saying that it's kind of amusing that um, uh, Wen Wu could have probably have killed the dragony thing? Oh, well, I mean, I've, the rings maybe? are obviously capable of killing it because I was gonna say that, uses them to kill it. It would so. be pretty funny if, like, Shang-Chi is like, no, you know, you're going to release the horrible monster. What are you doing? And he's like, if there's a horrible Maybe monster, I'll kill it. it. Like, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, no, it's really powerful. And he, he jumps out the dragons there, fires all the rings into it, explodes it. And he's like, it's fine. It's fine. Now, can I look for my wife, please? It's like, yeah. okay. In peace. <laughs> not with you. You're not coming back. He's like, what if you release Lost. another one? He's like, I'll kill it. I'll kill any fucking demons that come out of here, okay? You can leave me alone now. Alright. <laughs> I think they mean the first time he visited the magic forest and met his wife. What the fuck was that sentence? Oh, uh, so I don't think they're gonna be able to... So, the idea would be if he made it to the forest and, he, and they were like, We have a giant beast behind this wall. Could you kill it with your ten rings? I, I don't think... They would rather the wall doesn't get removed at all, you know? Yeah. Because for all we know, and this is totally fair for the film, there's maybe more than just that thing behind that wall. Like I said, it seems to that he reseals it, so I don't know if the idea was like there's a whole army of spooky demon dragons back there. I don't know. Spooky. And the, Perhaps. Yeah. Uh, it's it's white out there. So we have Wakanda and the Chinese Wakanda. When do we get Mexican Wakanda or French Wakanda? Maybe a Thai Wakanda too. Is Mongolian Wakanda moral? <laughs> I'm sure. They're all morons. It's gonna be great. I'm sure they're all horrific, terrible places. Does that mean it, it is actually hard to generate a secret but also super altruistic society that's existed since the Stone Age with better technology than everybody that chose to do nothing about anything? Like, um, yeah. How do we do this? Yeah, those things don't fit together. Yeah, it wasn't even Again, like, oh, it's Atlantis help. and they sunk and they're trapped underwater or something, so they can't get out or you know something like that. Uh. Or even that they even just that, don't though. like the world, make them well, like yeah, not. It's... Yeah. Well, oh, you, yeah, you mean like maybe they had a war with humans? Well, because Atlantis and Aquaman don't like the 
surface, right? How so that's why they have don't like interact with them. The animated Atlantis, something like that. They collapsed into the the their technology was able to. Oh, save by the them way, I'm pretty sure Atlantis is being introduced in uh Black Panther two. By the way, I'm pretty sure oh, that's just like known. Wait, but they're introducing it's called Atlantis in the Marvel universe that. as well. I think it's called Atlantis. Atlantis is, an Atlantis. Atlantis is in the named, public domain. Yeah, guy named yeah. Namor. Namor, that's Atlantis. right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, name him. I'm more. pretty sure he's just confirmed ha. to be in that movie. So. Name Namor. Yeah. That's what. That's what. Whenever I go to Waffle House and the waitress asks me for the syrup, that's what I will say when she says, "Is that enough?" I'll say, "Nay, more." Nay, more. Ranks, you watched yes. the meme where you said that. Remember? I did. That was really good. I really enjoyed that with all the syrup just getting filling up. Mm -hmm. That must be bizarre. All the people walking by the Waffle House because they have the the two of the walls are just like windows, so you can see inside and everything like that. It's got a diner kind of feel to it. And just looking in and just seeing it, it just full of syrup. Everyone's just up to their shoulders in syrup, you know. Eating the plates have floated now on the on top of the syrup, and they're just oh. eating off of it. And maybe if someone moves, it makes a little. I guess like, I misinterpreted some ripples it. and waves in there. I thought that the doors were probably either open or the syrup could get through them, and that it only filled up because it had filled up the whole planet at that point. I mean, it was no, 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 no. The, the it's sealed enough to where it keeps all of it in. I mean, it it pours faster than it drains. I imagine that a Waffle House is. Yeah, they keep a pretty tight ship over there, so I, I feel like it would. She, it'd seal she, it she was pouring for a while. Tight. I'm sure it filled up earth relatively quickly. Um. Oh well, no, I was done by then. I was done. Oh. I was done. I said. I said when by then, and in doing so, inadvertently and through total accident, saves trillions of lives. Mm -hmm. What a story. That's right. Trillions with a B. They were more advanced than the Devourer thing killed off their civilization, and now it's just a remnant guarding the other dimensions with the dragon. I don't remember them being explicit about that. Right. Um, they remember that there was a fight, I remember a lot of them dying, but they never said that they lost technology or they fell backwards in a dramatic... And if you lost it, why wouldn't you just remake it? Exactly, yeah, I mean, if you had people who were at least educated in the technology, they'd be able to recover a decent amount. They wouldn't be sent back to the medieval level technology. And wouldn't you use the portal to come to Earth or something and get some cool and shit I'm, like phones yeah. and like some gas generators or that's, some combustion that's engines? That's another sort of thing. Like, I wonder how much of their dimensions aware of this portal to another universe that has way better technology and possibly entertainment and... People. Yeah, when they're freezing their asses off in the winter and burning up in the summer, they're like, man, if there's only some way to condition this air to our liking. <laughs> the condition oh. air. Jeez. Uh, Unfortunately, we don't have such technology, such wonderful magical technology. Yeah. It will revolutionize where we can we live. We literally have magic, but everywhere. we don't have such magical technology. Yeah. At what point are you like, fuck magic, just give me stuff? Hmm. We got dragon scales, though. That's good enough. Wow. It's like, yeah, but I want to see the new season of Breaking Bad. Fuck the dragon scales. Uh, Lion King EFAP movies double feature when? It'll, it'll, it'll probably happen someday. I don't, I don't, we're not gonna, we're not in a rush for that. People like watching us watch the classic stuff and then the horrible remakes. But, like, you know that they're a miserable experience, oftentimes, the new visions, right? I don't want to watch yeah. the new Lion King. If if it's done, it will be done at some point, but it... Oof. Ugh. Oof. We'll have to have YMS on for that, though. Absolutely. He will guide us. Yeah. Also, I'll be back. Oh my god, this car. I'll Holy be fuck. Back in a oh, alright. It's just me and you, Shad. Hey, alright. Do you reckon we can do it. it? I think we can. Alright, let's do it. Football is not played with the foot, it's played on foot. Like basketball is played on base, as opposed to on polo played on horse. Because a polo played on horse. Football's played on foot, basketball's played on, on base. Foot. Or baseball's Say, played no, on foot. No, hang on. Is he saying it's on foot as in you're walking on foot? I guess so, but isn't that like the, all what? sports? Yeah, like that's I guess bizarre. not chess. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they call chess. 
yeah. sit ball. Exactly. It's um, a on chair sport. Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, at that point, the naming conventions for the other ones are all going to get confused. Yep. Um, not a clam slam, Shad. A cunt punt. Oh my god. <laughs> Beautiful language. Isn't English just wonderful? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I can't say that because I avoid saying that naughty word because mm -hmm. I'm a good Christian boy. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, the rest of them just loaded up and it's like, yep, yeah, we are not. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take a while. Mm -hmm. um, Ellie is gay and she shoots a bow. Can't be too hard. Yeah, you know Ellie, what? Ellie, from, from who? If, from where? If, from oh, Last that's The Last of Us. If gay people can shoot bows, they can't be that hard. That's, yeah, there you go. I don't Destroyed have any in the point of reference to fight in that, like, like, I, I don't think it has too much, you know, influence on it. I, I would have thought upper body strength and, you know, steady hand. I've heard, actually, the you know, weaker you are, the better archer you'll be. Oh, bull crap. I've, well, so okay, you have your little ideas, but let me let me counter you with this. Whenever they have right, whammons in stuff, they will end up being the archer, and women are often weaker than men. So there you go. Yes, that's a that's a pet peeve of mine. I even criticize like in one of the videos where I talk about the best um, weapons for women. I do have a dedicated video on this subject. I point out this contradiction. There's literally like a shot of the Hunger Games where Cadmus Everdeen, she's holding the bow and next to her is her boyfriend and he's got a crossbow. And I'm like, no, 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 this, this is backwards. The people <laughs> first give, give the weapon to well, She would need the crossbow. He isn't it that even bow. crossbows can be tough as well, right? Strength-wise, you need to... I guess if you have a yeah, tool it, to pull back the wire or if you're doing it by exactly. hand. Exactly. Yeah. And you can pull back a heavier crossbow easier than you can pull back a heavier bow because mm. you have like just even a foot stirrup to hold it down and you can use different yeah. muscles. You're pulling upwards, which is an easier uh, thing to do to handle heavier weights than the posture you have with a bow to pull back a really heavy bow. Mm -hmm. um... And also, just on, just on the um, uh, Last of Us thing, so... The bow she's using is probably like, you know, a good 40 pound hunting bow. And they exist. And you, you can actually take down game with like a, even a 40 pound bow, um, especially with the right type of arrowhead. And that could still kill a person because uh, uh, you'd be surprised how lethal even lower poundage bows can be. The issue that you run into is when you have any type of protective layer, like even thick clothing, especially armor. That's why they had such heavy poundage bows in warfare. That's why you have the classification of war bow to deal with armor specifically. That's the whole point behind them. And also range. They wanted uh, much greater ranges to hit the enemy as well. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the killer argument. Guns typically okay. deal more damage than bows do, and women and, and people of weaker muscle can handle guns, so why can't they handle bows? That's too big brain. I think that's blown me away. I was going to say. Kind of, bows typically ooh, deal. Kind of. Bows are lethal. You know, you pull them back, you fire them in a video game, and it kills the person instantly. Not like bullets. It usually takes a couple of those. <laughs> yes, bro. Right, fair usually point. Yeah. More lethal in that's, games. Yeah, that's exactly. A lot, a lot of games, you will game, headshot yeah. someone with a gun and it will not kill them, but a bow, like an arrow from a bow, usually does. So, touche. Yeah, and we're this, not talking about is... the Black Ops one where it, like, explodes. We're not talking about that one. This is flawless logic. I'm having trouble arguing against it. I was going to say, the one thing you have to deal with, mm -hmm. though, there, Free, is more games have guns in them and, and then they do bows. True. And gamers are True. often weak muscled. Mm. So, mm. Mm, something to think about. Yeah. Remember when there was like that time when just every game had bows? Yeah. Like Tomb Raider, Crisis 3, uh, I think Far Cry 3 as well. Yeah, like just games had bows. That was the fixation. Bows are cool, all right? They're like, they're just they a are cool. cool. Weapon. It was just weird that all the video games that time just had bows. <laughs> they all had them. And. 
Seriously though, just if, another cool factor, right? Shooting a war boat, all right? There, that there is this just rush, this impact, the, like the, the the vibration of the bow because the string hits tight so suddenly, and the the pressure that your body is under, and then the sudden release and jerk that happens in it. It's it's a unique experience. It is really cool. I'm uh, lots of fun. I am assuming there is a similar experience in that when you fire like a gun for the first time, you get a huge sense of power where you haven't had before, necessarily. And there are different rushes for those sorts of things. Absolutely. Like if Absolutely. you're in an Iron Man and suit, it would probably feel pretty badass. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and, and for like most people, um, and uh, I found this more common with guys, just holding a sword for the first time. They get a sword in their hands and there's just a sense of power. There's this cool feeling that comes with it. It's just awesome. That's toxic masculinity is what you're feeling there. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it! Oh, inject it into my veins. I love more. toxic it's masculinity. Masculinity is rushing <laughs> through my veins. It's like I'm going super saiyan. I'm going super toxic. You met him in Utah, but they landed on Obama in the movie. No, I meant Omaha, not Obama. Ruined my joke, damn it. <laughs> Obama Beach. Obama in Beach. France. Uh... With the Shang killing that guy, even if it is the most basic version of it, you guys have to say they could have still done that well. They don't even use the simple ideas to any effect, just killing bad. Yeah, we, we went over the whole conversation, doesn't really tell us anything about him. He's just like mm -hmm. sad about it, and you just don't really, you're like, eh. It's not even necessarily that. He's worried that she will look, think he's a killer. But he doesn't express any real regret that he killed someone. It's almost more implied that he's happy he did because he killed the killer of his mum and so nothing is really given us in detail about how he truly feels and how it's affecting him maybe he'll have his own movie in shang chi 2 you know the first one mm. was just the baby steps maybe um, Spectacle, martial arts fighting, flashing lights, clunky dialogue, airbending, dragons, people misusing weapons, inconsistent tech levels. It's Atla. Oh my god. You're not allowed to say that. Stop it. I'm several hours behind. The proper name for American football is Hand Egg. Hand Egg? <laughs> I've, heard of, I've heard of Hand Egg. Uh, currently on EFAP 62, while this is live. Let's see how long it takes me to catch up to this super chat. Maybe weeks? Also high rags. Hello. Enjoy your adventure, sir. Absolutely. Have a good time. Drinker's Invincible video is one of the worst videos from a frequent EFAP guest. Way to cover an eight-episode show in eight minutes. It definitely shows. Oh, man. <laughs> the review was great. Shut up. <laughs> I don't know. I, I seen it, eight right. minutes is really quick. Shad versus... That is quite a, a short amount of time to talk that about. That is quite... A that's well, a really well, quick... I guess it depends that is a on... short amount of time, but in terms of hitting the core things that the show did right, I thought he did a wonderful job. In yeah, sure, I guess it, it depends on what your goals are, right? Like, if you're not doing an exhaustive review, I think it's a recommendation, like, hey, here right? are a few things I think are cool. Yeah, exactly. Like, if that's the case, then... Yeah. I was gonna say, like, eight minutes for a recommendation I... on a TV show seems fine to me. Yeah, yeah. I don't I'm think saying I can talk it, so. for just eight minutes. I don't know what's that. What are you... That's what it was hard doing those video game reviews when uh, they like, yeah, it should be around 10, 12 minutes or so, and I'd be like, fuck, can I talk for that little? <laughs> I know the feel. Um, who cares about Shang Chi? Spider Man's coming out. Well, I mean, we don't have to care about Shang-Chi now, we've done it. that time of year. Yeah. And, and funnily enough, that is one of the reasons I think a lot of people don't care about Shang-Chi, because Spider-Man is coming out, and mm -hmm. we're focusing on that. Uh, well, when that Spider-Man trailer came out, it's like, Eternals and Shang-Chi kind of just dropped off real quick. Well, yeah, once the, I guess, official or, or second trailer comes out again, Eternals yeah. is going to be like, please let us have at least a week. <laughs> please pay attention to us, please. We're also here. Um, Godzilla 98 should have been called The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms, and it wouldn't have been so widely panned by Godzilla fans. Godzilla 98 is not Godzilla. 
It's called Godzilla. Yeah. It's the adaptation of Godzilla. I know that it's not as cool as the other Godzillas in many ways. He's much more like a dinosaur. Um, or at least I assume that's what they were created, trying to do with him. Because Jurassic Park was 93 and that was 98, right? So that kind of makes sense. Um, but yeah, I know. Uh, I'm assuming you guys... This is the thing. The Godzilla, you know, crowd of whether or not something gets to be deemed Godzilla. You guys approve of, I assume, Godzilla King of the Monsters and versus Kong. And I'm sure both of those movies, because I haven't seen the second one. Or rather, the, the latter I'm one. Sure I'm sure they're absolute crap. But as long as he yeah. looks like Godzilla, it's good enough. It's like, hmm, okay. Lucky uh, they didn't make any comics about him. I don't know. <laughs> they did, didn't they? Aren't they Godzilla comics? Shad, you might know this. Um, I'm, I'm very likely there are. Yeah. Uh, back in the day, people would make comic books about any popular cultural thing and then they did crossovers uh there was even a fun kind of uh, aliens versus uh superhero characters in uh it was the image comic sign i forget the actual uh, ones that are better yeah aliens and um mm -hmm. predator comics and uh, godzilla yeah terminator ones, versus so, yeah. predator versus alien versus freddy versus kruger <laughs> um what are your thoughts on what Denis Villeneuve said about Marvel movies being cut and paste? So that's close to what we've been saying for a while now about the whole... That's what the sludge thing is. The idea with the sludge thing is that they're all coming out and that you can't really tell where one ends and one starts and it's all the same color and smell and taste. It's just... it's all yeah. sludge. Um, though the problem with Denis Villeneuve's comment is that he doesn't have enough balls, I'm afraid. It, it's the same thing every time, where they'll criticize it broadly, and then people ask them for specifics, and then they, like, run away. They're like, eh. And I'm pretty sure he was well, and pressed for whether or not... Because everyone's talking about the stupid Oscar-winning director, right? As if there's I, no I other directors. I think that was the same interview, by the way. I think that was the same interview. But, still, it's kind of the same thing where... But also, you haven't seen that movie! It doesn't exist yet! So, like... <laughs> Well, no, but how can you? How that's can not even the point it, I'm like... making. So I think it's gay as fuck that he's like, oh, you know, she, she might make something really visual. It's like, what about all the other people? Mm. Like you, why James you... Gunn. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, why are you? Russo, sorry. Why are you like, oh, oops, I might have stood on this this lady's di directorial Marvel debut. It's like, what about all the well, people you just shat on? Like, well, I yeah, thought that was the if, point if of your that's comment. that's a concern you have, if that is a concern you have, then just don't say anything at all. Exactly. Like about um, any of it. The thing is, when someone says, like, wow, you guys reckon that it's, like, all sludge right now? I'd be like, right now, yeah. And I'd be like, so has there ever been sludge before? I'd be like, yeah, there's been bits and bobs and, and mm -hmm. stuff. Um, there's also Look been some really Iron good Man things. Iron Man 3. Or 2. Ant-Man, kind of. Ant-Man and the Wasp, certainly. Ant-Man sludge, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, and if someone's like, wow, you just shadow over blah blah blah's work, I'd be like, yep, that's what I did. Just and own it. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, if you're gonna be like, you know, this is what I think of Marvel movies, and they're like, wow, you just said that about blah blah blah's work, and they're like, oh, no, 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 I didn't, I, I wouldn't, I... and it's like, how did you not reconcile that? It's the same shit with Martin Scorsese as well, which, by the way, upset James Gunn to the point where James Gunn said mm -hmm. Scorsese said it because he's trying to get more marketing for his movie, and then everyone hated James Gunn <laughs> for saying that, and I'm just sitting there like, for fuck's sake, like. Yeah. <sighs> It'd be nicer if everyone could just be a little bit more honest with each other, and if Martin Scorsese said, yeah, I haven't seen any of those fucking shitty Marvel movies, but from what I've seen, they just look terrible, that's all. And I don't like that they made on a production line, I don't like how much passion and creativity doesn't seem to be in their production. Obviously, I don't know for sure, but that's my guess. And I honestly think people would be like, you're a legend. I, I completely agree. Well, that, that, would be, that would be a decent take. Yeah. That's basically the take. Instead, he's like, they're like the theme tank. park rides, and that's fine, but it's just not about emotional journeys. And you're like, dude, what are you doing? Like, you're and then just he's wrong. like, he's like, I'm not saying they're bad. You know, it's fine. You can enjoy popcorn. And you're like, what? they're just not cinema, though. <laughs> you know, like it's not the same like, as what are you I doing? Do. What are yeah. you doing? Just what say are you, they're what bad. Are you... That's it. Just <laughs> say just... they're bad. Like, just say they're shit for losers. I know it's what you're thinking. Like, come on, just say they're shit for losers. You can do it. I believe in you. <laughs> Because, you know, like, 
when he's talking to like a friend of his in some off the record thing, he's probably said like that there's some they're po he's probably said they're destroying the movie industry. And they're like completely You might be right about that, but well, the, the, that's the funny thing. I, I would way prefer to hear unfiltered comments instead of having to dance around, not trying to offend anybody, but also trying to make a point. Mm. Uh, free. If you were a mile out in the ocean with no boat and just a pair of swim trunks, would you rather come face to face with a great white shark or a saltwater crocodile? Also, high Rex. Mm. I think I'd take the shark because I feel like I've got better odds of surviving that. Oh. I thought that your logic was going to be I need to choose the one that kills me the fastest because you're dead either so, way. So, hang on. How far out in the ocean are you? Because you said a, a deep... mile, so that's 1.6 kilometers. I could swim back. Yeah, uh, because I would go for the crocodile. Because aren't they? They don't they hunt more in shallow water. Um. Well, the problem is that if the crocodile, if if I am to assume that either of them are attacking me, if I got the crocodile, I'm done. I was like, about to say. I think it. we should Game assume over. they're both aggressively. I again, we had this question before, and it's like, why would we assume that either of them might not attack you? Like, they're docile or whatever? Mm. Like, I'm assuming the Let's question... Let's assume that they both attack, yeah. Both blood of my so, blood. I'll take the shark. I'll take the shark over the crocodile. Um, hmm. I think I think that I have a better chance of escaping the crocodile, uh, the shark than I do the crocodile. Like, if I punch it in the face, it might leave me alone. Um, whereas the crocodile, I feel like it's going to be a much more difficult fight. And, and as people, as somebody's already mentioned in chat, like, the croc has stronger bite, bite strength, so if it grabs me, it's going to be harder for me to escape. Um, saltwater crocodiles are huge as well, they're like four meters long, so, yeah. Uh, death roll, go with something that's a death type move. Well, it, it, the problem is, it's like, if I want to live, then... I don't want to go with the crocodile because of that. There are so many female archaeologists because women love digging up the past. Hi, Rags. Hello. Fair enough. Um, of course people loved Loki getting completely character assassinated. You've seen how much morons clapped for Atlas finale and that is a 9 out of 10 on IMDb. Wow. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> Too hot for TV. I mean, well, if you wanted to do just a broad criticism of the general viewing audience, like, yeah, I mean, we'll always have shit stuff, because it's very easy to appeal to common denominators. Like, you know, there's a meme for a reason, it's like, have explosions. It's like, why? It's like, people really like explosions. Like, it's just satisfying to watch stuff blow up, it's also the, just the colors, or... What, it's just like have an explosion it'll help you out like people will be like oh there was an explosion that was neat lasers lasers are kind of cool i like seeing lasers have some lasers maybe the lasers make an explosion um australia doesn't exist stop lying to chat shad and froggy this it's not a lie i don't know what else to say Oh, sounds like what a lie would say. The poor souls would soon end up thinking the Queen of England even exists. Hi, Rags. Hello. <laughs> She's just a spooky bedtime story. Hi, Rags. Hello, hi. Install a bear trap in your front yard. When someone screams, your pizza has arrived. Huh, what? Yeah, that would work. For the last freaking... Hey, that tells you where we're at, I guess. That we talked about that when we were at five hours in, right? Oh boy, we did. We're getting there. We're making progress. Oh, I, I, I was. We just crossed ten hours. You guys, you guys still okay to? I'm okay. Personally. I'm, 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 I'm awake at the moment. I'm all right. I'm okay. I'll I'll be happy when we get to the end. I'll say that. Okay. I am ready to. F I am ready to finish. We'll put it that way. Very well. Uh, Matt Jabo works for DoorDash. Oh. <laughs> Does he? <laughs> no wonder it has a bad reputation. How how bad did your YouTube career go? Well, well, maybe he can do some DoorDash 
vlogs where he's like, I'm on my exciting delivery. They oh, maybe he has. Let me go to his chat. Let me go. What's it's three buck theater, right? I think he has two. That's channels. what he normally. Yeah, he has a couple. Yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure. All right. Then this Villanueva is wrong with the MCU. Just destroy Grub and um. I guess he goes Hollywood After Dark is his show. Avoid he has avoiding the rabbit hole. Andrew Garfield and 8K was a deep fake. Hawkeye reaction. Megan Fox versus Chud. Indy getting replaced. Uh, Cheng Chi again dominates USA. But why is that one in all caps? Alex Jones broke the fandom menace. Oh my god, Fringy, um, fringy look. Look! Homer! He's, uh, what's he eating? He's eating cheese slices. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He That's, eats uh... them all in the morning, he just feels ill. Mm, <laughs> 1,000 slices of American cheese. <laughs> One, two, 999, 100, and then uh, Mr. Burns and Smithers fall off of the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, 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 because he just comes in to eat cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically, cheese. <laughs> there are so many. Like, oh fuck! Now I'm just thinking of the uh, the the one where they were trying to, where Mr. Burns was trying to kill uh, Abe. The, yeah. but the first one was to poison his dentures, but when the alarm goes off, he throws the glass <laughs> and then puts the alarm in his mouth. The second one, your family's here to see you. Hot dog. I Wait a minute! My family would never want touches the knife. Yeah. No, not again. I'll be in the car, dudes. And then, of course, the finale. There is one more way to kill a man, but it is as intricate and precise as a well-played game of chess. <laughs> Kicks the door with a machine gun. <laughs> Why is it? Was that you or is that me? And then what was it? Oh, the nurse. Fuck. Yeah, the nurse. It's like, help, someone's trying to kill me. Okay, we'll take care of that. First, let's double your medication. <laughs> the guy busts in, pulls the shotgun out. Our residents pff, are trying pff, to nap. Oh, It's a good defense system, just, having your orderlies with shotguns. Man, he's just uh, going at that joke, cheese. Look at him. Just, <laughs> he just keeps going. Look at him. Omar really likes his cheese. This is, see, American and cheese. I just associate them very much so. American cheese is just, I think of Homer sitting there. It'd be really cool if the cheese was gradually going down. I'm not reading the script. I just, I know the lines w word for word for a lot of these. I don't think they understand unless they had the same upbringing of watching a lot of Simpsons classic episodes over and over again because they were that fucking Yeah, exactly. Kid. Because I remember exactly what happened in that episode, because it was the flying hellfish, and they got a bunch of art from France in World War II, and they made a bet that whoever survived, would get you know, until the end, would get the... Yeah, and the only people left were Burns and Abe. Um, and so, Mr. Burns was trying to have Abe killed so that he could get it. And, it, and that was, that might be one of my... I think that is a strong contender for the best Abe Simpson episode. Yeah, it's a really good one for him. It just, reminds you of like how cool he is as a character seeing him do these really oh man it's it's a great archetype of having like the old man go on adventures like just like when he was younger it's a really great episode abe is he is a uh he is a pretty great character i give him three thumbs up yeah i give him four thumbs up nice so I think uh, he mentioned Matt. Uh, he his main channel. He he nuked it, I guess, a while ago. He's the last video was three months ago. So, boy, uh, hmm. I guess that three buck theater seems to be what he's on these days. And uh, what? So, so you can go there to listen to all of his insightful commentary on like the film industry. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, he worked in the industry, right? So if anybody should have something interesting to say, you'd think. Hmm. Man, that that boulder thing, that uh, <laughs> like that was, that was a mistake. <laughs> I'll say it again. I always say it, even if it's true. Come up with a better lie because that is not going to be believed. <laughs> I went out picking up boulders. Like what? <laughs> what an oddly specific but 
Please. also really unbelievable thing. Yeah, well, that's the thing. All of this is solved by the simple fact that he's extremely arrogant and incredibly stupid. Yeah. So, like, like well, those things I mean, just mesh the, the and you get The whole thing is like, uh, it's honestly like art watching how yeah. the lie begins and then it's like, well, wait, you can, you can see whether or not you've done this by pulling up this tab, do it. And then he's like, oh, yeah, and it's like, oh, no. He just immediately <laughs> does the, I've been going through some things. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's honestly one of the best moments on the internet. Just, it's just one of those trophy <laughs> case moments. I can't believe the idiot did it. I you know. know. Like, the absolute idiot. The, the, that's the thing. Insanely arrogant. Incredibly stupid. I don't know what he was thinking. He, The worst possible thing you could have done. Well, considering the career that you have, it's like, yeah, you kind of understand the, the consequences of this. And you, you did it. Like, mm. What a character. Well, what yeah, a, well, what a I mean, loser. <laughs> one like as like I've said, one day his 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 spawn will go his his wife's kid is going to grow up. And that kid will get on the internet as all people do and learn about the legacy of their father. Yeah, but I mean, and... I, I guess you could extract that more broadly, right? There there are probably heaps of people who like their parents have this sort of a uh, legacy um on the internet sure but like man it's kind of a new thing yeah you haven't had to deal with that before hmm. yeah like if your parents were like weirdo losers you wouldn't know about it like there's no way to there it's not something you you could really find out a lot of the times like oh, i'm gonna track down all the college friends that my parents had you know 30 years ago or whatever uh, or I'm gonna do da 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 da. Like you couldn't really do that. It was an in, in, insane process that just you didn't do. And nowadays it's just as simple as, oh, let me check out my dad's YouTube channel. Oh my god, everyone hate. Oh my god, my dad's a loser. That must suck to find out. But I kind of feel sorry have... for him. Not Matt. I still can't get over boulders. Like what? <laughs> boulders. He told him what? Dad, we never went boulder collecting. Dad, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, Im imagine the expose that will come out in 10 years or whatever. I don't know uh, how long it'll be. It was like, all right, yeah, that boulder thing, that was horseshit. I was there. That's going to be one of those things, though, where they announce it and everyone's like, yeah. Yeah, we know it wasn't. But it's good <laughs> to get confirmation. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. We just want to watch Matt's kid dunk on Matt. <laughs> Join the crowd, kid. Maybe Matt, uh, Matt Jarbo's kid. Like, you know how two ugly people can make a beautiful baby? Maybe that's sort of like what will happen, where Matt is such a, just just a loser and an idiot and an arrogant asshole. He, the, somehow that gets filtered through some genetic process and the kid is just amazing, smart, handsome, witty, wise. Just this incredible renaissance man of our age, the new Leonardo da Vinci. Mm. And... You know, and, and then everyone loves them, and they're great, and they're super humble, and they, they never just do tell anybody who the their world. dad is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's your surname? Um, it's not really relevant, is it? <laughs> you should talk about other things. Special instructions: Do not coom on pizza. Hi, Rax. Do not coom in pizza. That's a good idea. Hello to you. Yeah, pop that on the I will let that. I, I can pop that into the special instructions because I know they don't read that shit. Mm -hmm. I've even called them before when they fucked up orders and stuff. Like, hey, that's that's duh. I don't know why every time, every every fucking time you call me and you ask where the house is, and it's in the special instructions exactly where it is, like the building and everything. So. I'm just like, do you not show people that? I'm like, oh, I'll make sure they know. And of course they don't. They lie to you, right? Fucking, fucking loser working at a place like this and doing a shit job at it, which is the big thing. Doing a shit job at it. Rags is correct about DoorDash. I once had a driver fuck off after they picked up my food. I could see them on the GPS driving around for the next hour, and my phone just said, your order is on the way. 
fuck? Like, see them driving around. What were they doing? I <laughs> just, you know, what if I just wow, keep Hagler driving? Is food like a no, I just have like, I have very reasonable standards for when I pay a company money for shit. I, I have given you money in exchange. You will deliver to me a pizza in a satisfactorily edible state. My address is listed here. You you can you can you know fill in you can figure out the rest. Fuck it up and he'll come for you. Fuck it up and I will call you and I will be upset and you will get me a free pizza. And I will just have the one you fucked up as leftovers later. Something. I don't know. Chad, check out the arms and armor of the game Greedfall. Excluding the mallets and warhammers, I think they look plausible for the most part. Yeah, from what I remember, they weren't too bad. I only got as far as the tutorial before I got distracted and stopped playing. It wasn't because it was bad, but um, uh, I didn't devote enough time to get hooked or anything. But from what I remember, it seemed all right. Um. Note, Shad only stays longer when he's in captivity. That's, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, I can't blame you too much for that one. He hasn't got a family to distract him. We have him now. Uh, used to think the Star Wars universe would be a great setting for a western, but after having watched Mandalorian, I've changed my mind. No, it is. It's, it's, no, Mandalorian's just bad. Like, <laughs> we can still do it. I had really high hopes for that show. Do you remember when we watched episode one, Rag Screen? Remember those? Yeah, I do. I yeah, was... we were. It was. Yeah, we were. Uh, we thought it was good uh, on the very first viewing, but mm -hmm. then we wisened up to that pretty quick. They didn't keep us fooled for long. Wonder Vision was the same thing. First couple episodes, it's like, oh boy, this. I is mean, those episodes then, are still like, probably but good. But those, they still good. Uh, I still think yeah, they're yeah. good because, because like I was explaining to some people, I was talking to them earlier. I was saying one of the reasons the first few episodes were good is was, is was, was because it was all setups, and aesthetics, so, it wasn't really the. You know, we we were waiting for those to get paid off. Like it's easy to make setups that are good. You know, yeah, that's like, like that's like the first half of a joke. Literally, it's, what's it's in easy this to box? come up with the first half of a joke. What's in the box? Like, wow, they nailed that setup. What is in the box? And then they what's open the box. In the and box? I do. I I would. I would like to know what is in the box. Yeah. What's or in the box? if I was watching Lost, what is behind the door, and then why do we press the button and then holy crap you're just gonna keep doing this every single season aren't you i'm not gonna Careful, lose brain fan. cells over this I've, and then i've activated that. lost fans before by saying the smoke monster was shit <laughs> <laughs> there are fans of this stuff you know just gotta be careful out there you never know what's gonna happen purgatory that's all that's what lost was this is your answer um, did y'all see the video on Twitter of some guy in Australia who took out four cops? Dankula retweeted it. Dude has some insane flow right there. Four cops? What do you do? Is that the one where it's in like, the, on um, a date? Uh, yeah. No, is that it? Oh, that's nice. <laughs> hmm. I, I, is it the one where there's the protest and the protesters break through the police lines and they're just running crazy and there's one guy that's kind of going out of his way to run into police as his passing. Well, that's... Yeah. Why why do that? Good question. Cuz if you're cuz if you're upset with the government, you see the police as agents of the state. I mean which they are, but you know, it, it's your attitude is one of like being aggressive and letting out that aggression on them, then that's I guess that's a okay, thing you'll do. I guess that my hope then would that mm. So, uh, like, People. I think it's <laughs> that's honestly that's... friggin' disgusting how the Australian government is actually trying to suppress protests for what's going on based on, you know, they're breaking the law and stuff like that. I think people should have the right to protest and stuff. Uh, I uh, agree. But I'm I mean, also, I, don't go uh, yeah, cops, I don't, I, like, I, yeah, for... going out of their <laughs> way to hurt police, uh, like, uh, gosh, some of the things that the cops are doing in Australia is friggin' disgusting. There's just they've really gone overboard. Okay, but I don't again, think that justifies sure wouldn't people. Wouldn't it be criticism of the institution rather than like individual yeah. police officers? Yeah, because there are heaps of great police officers that do a good job. It's gee, it's a mess at the moment. It's just 
sad face. Yep. Why can't we live in a utopia with fluffy bunnies? Well, that's the thing. If you if you make it to where protests are not allowed, then you're essentially violence is your option at that point. You can't. It was like we're, we're, the government's not letting us protest. Well, I guess now violence is on the table because they've taken. A, we can't even. We're not even allowed to do this. So, well, that's where what some Australians are getting pushed to, especially in these protests that's what and happens, stuff, yeah. when they're trying to stop their right to protest. What's their other recourse? And then, especially with how aggressive some of these policemen are being, these are the bad examples, they, they go out of their way to do horrible things, and then the people who just are trying to defend themselves from this police over-aggression, well, they can't do anything, because if you resist in any measure, that's a crime. And so you either have to get beaten down, or... Execute a I suppose to my question would be then, is this the standard that everybody applies to all, pro all situations ever where like people have conflicts with the police? Well, the, the, the correct or, or answer is at the moment one, you know is, what I mean? like, is to not resist the police, unfortunately, and try and use a democratic process to find justice and recourse and vote well, out Well, that would be my assumption is the way that, way that it should be done. Ideally, that you use that you work within the system to change the system. Ideally, um, rather than like um, beat the shit out of people. But mm -hmm. I've seen it quoted a lot on Twitter that it was an illegal freedom protest or whatever, and everyone's laughing at that concept. But then I've seen people being like, "This is a thing. There are legal and illegal ways to protest." And to me, I was like, "You yeah, can that, get permits that... and things. You have to like you need you you gotta let them know so that they." can like maybe put up you know they, they could be around you know uh where they can make the sure thing. that an area might may, may maybe need to be cleared out so that they can stop traffic uh, close off some roads for it well, there are legitimate reasons work, for right? that. like you know, yeah stuff, like, yeah stuff like that where they can say okay there's going to be a protest here we need to put some signs and close off this road and do a detour or something but if you go for, to apply for a permit for a, a protest and the government's like nah then, well, shit, some people are going to be like, well, I guess I'm going to go fuck up some cops then, because I guess that's what the rules are now. I'm not allowed to pe protest peacefully. Yeah, I was thinking, I don't know enough about all the specifics, I just know that that's the, yeah, the no. current discussion, so. Mm -hmm. um, Chad, can we expect a plushie from you sometime? No, but you can expect, um, uh... The Imperious Sword, being made by the literally the best LARP manufacturers of foam hey. weapons in the world, and uh, it's going to be released pretty darn soon. And they look, and I, I've held them. They look, handle amazingly, it and cut through bone. they're incredible. You can't cut through bone. They're LARP. Wow. But hey, bone meal. Can I cut through bone meal? Yeah, you're not confirming right. very fast. I, I struggle to have confidence oh, in this. Sorry, it can't can't cut through bone meal like wow. I said. Wow, LARP safe. It can. Good for training. No, good for training and good for hanging around and good for hanging on your wall. It's, they look amazing. Interesting. That, that's pretty. Through that's pretty shitty if it can't cut through bone meal. Honestly, hang on, hang on. Bone meal. Bone meal. What what do you, what do you mean when you say bone meal? Like uh, the the powder, the ground animal bones and animal oh, products. Oh, powder. Like yeah, it's, it's like a dust, yeah, dust powder. Yeah. Yeah, Rich in phosphorus. Through. You said it when you said it couldn't cut through bone meal, I was like, man, this is what a load of crap. <laughs> it must be made of paper. <laughs> this, uh, this must, I still even think you could slide yeah. a piece of paper through with it. They don't you gotta say, nah, my foam sword will book up some bone meal and sugar and salt. And you know, even, yeah, lemon pepper. Salt, yep, pep lemon pepper as well. Slice and right through some cilantro. Well, well, actually, that's my favorite Spice have, Girl, by the way. Cilantro? We did have an injury yeah. on set that was caused by one of these swords while we were actually in, <gasps> in the middle of filming the um, the fight scene, and so unfortunately, as things sometimes happen when you're filming a fight scene and yeah, people are going full energy and stuff, there was a connection close to the side of one of the uh, actor's eyes and wow. uh, cut, cut it open so so that see I, I could never support anything you do now cuz you've led to direct oh, really? toxic masculinity I hope that takes violence. I hope that takes in the film or else they got hit for nothing well actually I think we are going to be using that take because it's 
clearly connecting and the actresses reacting like because in the in the in the actual context the actress that, that strike wow. nice yeah, that, like now i'm definitely women. gonna watch it now that i'm strike, definitely watching it she is supposed it. to get cut along the cheek uh by that very move and it was that move that unfortunately just uh look if, uh, if you're going to abuse men that's connected. fine but women wow i could have supported this but you've gone too far they were space, gee space, space, man space. uh Dawson felt so bad about it, um, but and uh, and Carolyn is such a good sport over it as well. It was a, a, a potential disaster because it was the, like the potentially the last time we had to, to try and film the sword fight, and uh, we couldn't continue because she had actually cut the side of her, you know, um, not her eye, but just on the edge of her eye next to it. It did right. cut it open, and it was bleeding and stuff, and we didn't know how deep it was or anything <laughs> like that, and. Um, and yeah, that potentially could have ruined a whole thing, but luckily we were able to organize it to film one other day to finish off the fight scene. And also, luckily, uh, Anne Caroline, it wasn't a serious injury. It was only very, very lightly um, there. And so things worked out, thank goodness. Um, Molly, you're gay. All right. Ooh. Do you have nice. anything to do with the EFAP Spotify playlist? It's missing a bunch of episodes, and I love listening to it at work. I'm afraid not. That is ran by someone else. Um, hopefully it's it's functional and stuff, but no, I do not know. A, um, I think you can get YouTube to MP3. Uh, there are YouTube to MP3 sites that maybe you could use in the meantime. Uh, that'll just download the audio. So that's something that you could do, I suppose, if that if the episode isn't there and you just want to listen to it. That might be an option. Mm. Not something I generally recommend just for hassle, but I guess if an episode is six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours, then the the returns for the f for the I guess minimal effort to convert that file is not too uh not too bad. Oh, the file's too big for that. Ah, uh, we got someone who's already tried it. Yeah, I guess you're screw delicious. Or you could just, I guess you could have it playing on the phone or something, maybe. I, I will see, I don't know, I don't really watch videos on my phone, I don't use my phone much. If you're on YouTube on a phone, and it idles long enough to where the, like, the screen turns off, does the still, does the audio still play? Only if you have YouTube or Premium. It... What? It's weird. That's a bizarre, no, I that's a bizarre I thought the audio thing. still plays. Okay. Oh, well, wait. If we're talking, so... I guess that's, that's going to be down to your phone. It, you can set, I assume you can set it so that you can turn the screen off and it continues to play. What I was talking about also is you can literally like put your phone into, what is the mode called? You know when you like press the power button but quickly and it just puts it into like standby I guess or whatever? If you have YouTube Premium it'll continue playing the video or at your pleasure sort of thing. Um, but I'm pretty sure they try and make it so that you cannot, like, you can use the YouTube app at the same time as any other app if you have premium. I think they try and stop you if you haven't paid for premium. Oh. <laughs> That's kind of lame. Well, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that, because, like, YouTube is a pretty great service, and it's free. And so the idea that, like, if you pay for premium, you get a bunch of bonuses, it's like, I mean, yeah. You also don't have to have any ads anymore. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, Never Ever is a pretty good series. There's an episode on the Russian guy who stopped World War Three, and those people never knew about it till well after he died. That does sound interesting. Shad, thoughts on Kingdom Come Deliverance? Oh, great. Hmm. Right? Yeah, Kingdom Come Deliverance. I wanted to uh, just look something up. I, uh, I don't know anything about it, really, other than it's the game. No, business. you guys have never played it? I didn't play so, it, no. in terms of how accurate it is, it's absolutely amazing. The, um, uh, the world environment is some of the best depictions I've ever seen of the medieval world. Absolutely phenomenal. The armor is spectacular. Uh, so, I really don't, can't... I have very few criticisms of it overall. The, the, the heartbreaking thing for me, right, is that it's I I just I can't get into first person games. Like it's the type of game I like for me to really enjoy and just get engrossed in. I, it needs to be third person, and so uh, that's like a kick in the nuts for me because everything else about it I really like. Uh, 
Yeah, it's just I have my very distinct and particular preferences for video games. And uh, I can do first person when I'm like doing a shooter, like Counter Strike or something like that. But for yeah, medieval game like this, I just yeah, I just I can't get into the first person. That's weird. I've always found melee games yeah. to be just easily better in first person, like not even close. Really? Ah, oh, I'm, I'm the complete no, opposite. I don't agree. I don't agree. Yeah. Ugh. I totally disagree with that one. I think third person. That sounds like, right. Able, uh, like being able to judge distances when it's right there and you don't have to. I don't know, man. Like experience. Devil May Cry, that's third person's pretty good combat system. And that's entirely melee based. I think Dark Souls, like the Souls games. Well, I, guess, I guess if it's a melee games, system like that, where it's like person. super arcadey and. Um, I'm going to be the radical know, like, centrist and say whatever you prefer is fine. Well, I mean, your preferences are totally whatever that you want them to be. I prefer third person. Yeah, I think I prefer third. And I can get over this other part, but um, uh, it's still my preference. I love character creation. Uh, a game that doesn't have character creation already is on a very difficult kind of back foot. But I can still do it. I mean, if I enjoy the character enough, I can just get through it. But um, uh, honestly, that's the reason why I couldn't get into the Witcher series, is that um, uh, yeah, I just didn't mesh with Geralt as the character. And so, and that's annoying, because there's so much about the Witcher series I'd love. It's just, again, I have such particular preferences with my gaming that sometimes I just can't get past little annoyances that I just don't get into. See, if you didn't, if you weren't such like a toxic hater and just pretended it was what you wanted and liked it, you'd be having more fun. Yeah, just pretend it's what I want. Yeah. I've heard that's a thing. And, you know, who'd go on the internet and lie? No one would do that, so... Of course. On the topic of westerns, The Searchers is one of the last proper westerns and it's really good. Also, high rags and scratches Hello. for the long man. Oh my god. I didn't consent to this. Oh yeah, The Searchers is a... It's, I, I'm aware of that one. Not seen it, though. Hang on, someone's saying tell Shad there's a third person mode for Kingdom Come? Are you kidding me? No, that's not in the game. Not that. What? Maybe they added that, one. That later might be a mod. I was going to say, a if mod. It, it, it's probably more than likely a mod for that. Because if there's a mod, hell yeah, I'll give it. I'll totally load that up. Uh, you can get away with Ching Chang Chong, trust me. For now. I don't know how much longer, though. Get away from Liberty. There will be blood. Is it a western? If not, what genre and score? Um. Hmm. Oftentimes, when I struggle to think of what film a uh, film falls into, a thriller ends up turning up. Like, hey, I can probably take the the film. I'm like, yeah, I guess you could. This thriller can account for a lot of movies. There will be blood. I don't. I don't know. Uh, can, is anyone able to check Wikipedia and see what uh, There Will Be Blood is categorized as genre-wise? I can't at the moment. I can. Uh, there will be blood. Uh, let's, let's see. Film drama slash epic. Huh. Okay. <laughs> Rugby, the first full contact werewolf game. There you go, ranks. Ragby, first mm. full contact werewolf game. Let's fucking do it. I can't wait for the one v fourteen mode. <laughs> I love a good challenge. There's there's a win condition, a victory condition, but I mean a loss condition. But either way, you feel you win, right, ranks? Yeah, I think so. Behind in the stream listening to the sports talk, so does any game that can be played against another person count as a sport? Sounds like it does. Seems that way, based on all these definitions. Well, yeah, like... Well, I mean, if they include chess, yeah, that's basically anything now. And I'm not exactly... I don't, I don't really like that, because then that really, like, what is the purpose of the definition if now it can be anything as so loosely defined? It's anything that's competitive that takes skill. What's yeah, competitive say, that still... doesn't take skill? Huh? Is there something competitive that does not so have an element of skill? Okay, so then sport uh... is just competition, then. No, I was just is curious. Is Monopoly a sport? 
Yes. Yeah, is Monopoly? Well, that, no, that's or? that's what I'm saying. Is well, maybe maybe things it is that a have luck more to define but, how you win. Well, so we're in a scenario that I was referencing before, where bullets have to be bitten on one end or the other. Would you rather it be that it almost opens up to include shit tons of things, or would you rather be in the position where you are almost arbitrarily drawing a line and you're excluding gatekeeping, if you will, certain things when other things are allowed through um, based on what exactly... Like, why is darts okay but chess isn't? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with opening the umbrella really wide. Uh, I do think it's useful to have, like, a, like a traditional sports as the ones that generally come to mind, and the other ones are just also sports. They're just not the traditional sports. See, I don't know. I think a, a good classification limiting thing is uh, uh, a sport is a contest between two people that involves some type of physical two or application more, right? of... Two more than two or, two or more. Yeah, two or more, yeah. That involves some type of physical application of, the, you know... I don't even know if I'd agree with that. I wouldn't way. agree with two or more. I think you can do a sport by yourself if it's like time trials or, or uh, if you're okay, competing yeah, for even time. Even that, but... For me, you're, t you're essentially are competing against other people, other people's time scores then. But um, I would say, yeah, that it needs a component of some type of physicality. Even video games includes that type of physicality. Um, that requires mastering some type of aspect of your own body to be able to do it, which would yeah, allow darts, or it would allow esports, but it wouldn't really allow chess because chess doesn't have that physical component. It's a mind game. You're not really doing anything special to execute the movement of the pieces to be able to play the game better. And so that's why, like, my own natural kind of understanding of sport in that regard, I would be reluctant to include chess. Um, so th oh, I wouldn't need real games for this. I would just be like, you know, I'm assuming you'd say darts passes, but chess doesn't, right? Yeah, darts would be so a sport. I would start inventing kind of... games where it's like chess, but I'll just move it an inch toward darts, where it's like moving the pieces like you, is... Well, what about if you play chess and you have to run back to the back wall and back again? Like Yeah, the... yeah, I would... Just... Uh, like, if it, if well, it involves no, so type of physicality... That's too uh, easy, if, if... okay. You gotta, you gotta, this is why you gotta do it with inches. So... All right. The pieces... The pieces get a little, he like, really heavy now. Now what? That's right, Mahler. Embrace Imperial. <laughs> so, I would say pieces, if they're really heavy and it requires an actual element of strength to move them, would only be able to be classified as what I'm kind of considering a sport if the difficulty of moving them was incorporated into the victory condition of the game. So, if there was a time condition that you needed to move the pieces in X amount of time, even if they were really, really heavy, that would require building up physical strength to be able to move them in the right amount of time, um, uh, then perhaps, yeah, like, uh, you could fall. I consider it to be a type of sport in the definition that I'm kind of having in my head at the moment. But chess, as it currently stands, probably not. So there, there would, uh, there would be no way for Stephen Hawking to play a sport. Probably not. Um, I'm not even sure what I would assume about that. I'm just trying to think. Uh... I mean, you can uh, you would consider uh, like like yes. car racing and stuff. So some of those. The, 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 the... Well, yeah, yeah, that's a sport. It requires a physical component of coordination. What if? Well, the it's action. learning. What if, if he was driving you know, it like... with instructions from his like pad? What he still has to convey those instructions to the movement of the car through the manipulation like of his own pieces? body. What if he controls a car with a keyboard? No, no. But the success the of the driving of the car is wholly reliant on what if, how well he's able to train and move his body to achieve what the if, victory. Condition. What if he can control the car with a keyboard? So he's totally stationary, he's in the car, but he controls Yeah, the same, keyboard. same. It still requires a physical component. You can play chess so, without like using your body. Your you can just keyboard. voice the move and get someone to move it for you. Yeah, what because if, there's okay, no physical component. What if you did that with a car? Yeah, with a keyboard, yeah. Yeah, yeah with a car, you, you voiced it or something. The or speed in which you're voicing... Yeah, yeah, but the speed in which you're voicing the movements would be crucial wait, 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 wait. in so, being able to try, drive the car properly. And I think you did mention this earlier, but so chess, not a sport. Timed chess is a sport. Um, most, if, most if the chess physical is aspect, if the physical aspect of it is 
wholly reliant so the win condition is wholly reliant on the phys execution of the physical aspect done in competence and them and you can more easily win by getting better at the physical component that requires training your body then yeah i would consider a sport well what about what about let's say the, the training aspect if you take like chess and something like that chess if you want to get really good at it and you practice and practice and practice sure it's a, very largely mental that's still strenuous that still takes a lot of effort and yeah, concentration and willpower that. in order. Yeah, yeah. so to train for chess can be very strenuous. Yeah, but not just like um, that's me it's that's mentally strenuous, not strenuous on your you know physical body. So we don't care about that. Yeah, the brain. Yeah. It, these yeah, are not these are not powerful. things. These are not things that in, exist in, in some magical terms. ether outside yeah, of the body. Yeah, I, I get that. But in general terms, a sport is not a wholly mental exercise. A sport is usually defined by a combination because uh, of course there's a mental component to many sports but there's always a component in just a general understanding of what is a sport is just well, my understanding as i kind of follow through with how people use it in language is that there's always a component of the physical body being uh, used or reliant well, on the wind condition like the of brain. whatever sport you're doing but the brain is part of you that's part of your body yeah i'm talking yeah, yeah, yeah. that but is you know you. what i mean when i say it's you know what i mean when i have. say physical body though don't you well, I mean, but the well, problem is manipulation, like, if we, if manipulation of your macro, yeah, the manipulation yeah, of your limbs and appendages and stuff, you know. I am manipulating my limbs if I'm moving the pieces, of, and if and if the logic is well, you can yeah, do yeah, chess but the wind condition of chess is not reliance on you successfully doing it in a certain amount of time versus the um, other if we're playing like chess. But in a, no, no, you can you can play is, no, no, it, no, you no, can no, play chess. Time, hang on, hang on. Yeah. You can play yeah. chess without even touching the pieces. You can just yeah, but you can someone else okay. You. you can you can eventually play NASCAR without even being in the car. You just connect your brain to a computer or something, then drive the car. Yeah, and I've already addressed. Well, yeah, I've so already addressed how it would chess, apply it if it was uh, talking about NASCAR so, in a voice. Well, you know, does that so does that mean that chess, like if if you play chess physically and there's like a time limit, then it's a sport. But if you play it on a computer. Like with voice commands, then it's not a sport. Just like it in depends the on, case, hang on. It depends on how the time component is. Uh, well, no, no, no. Let's move away from the wind the condition. Let's move away from the time one. It's just if it exists in a physical plane versus a digital one. Is that the distinction? Like if we if yeah, we say possibly. you have to like... play chess with hands and move them with your hands, like that, then that makes it a sport. But if no, we uh, the, the wind condition of the game would need to be reliant on the physical component. Well, it is. It's reliant on me moving the pieces with my hands. No, it's not, because you can actually yeah, get someone is. to move the pieces for you. No, in this, in this, you have to use your hands. Your hands. Why? When? Because, because that's, that's the rules of this particular that one the rules? that I'm telling you. It's These the are the rules I'm telling you in this hypothetical. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying it's impossible to create a version of chess that could be considered a sport under the conditions that I'm talking about. That's not impossible. Not. I'm just talking about regular chess under the conditions I'm, you know, have in my head. But, but I'm, wouldn't I'm, be considered I'm asking a sport. you in this, but I'm asking you in this particular one. You have to move the pieces. Yeah, yeah, but why physically. is that relevant if you're creating an exceptional circumstance that doesn't disprove well, the standard? No. If if the if the game of chess where you have to move your hands to move the pieces around counts as a sport, then it feels like whatever line that we're drawing here is incredibly arbitrary. No, it's not. Especially if like if, a, if well, a, well, what, what condition did I say? But... What condition did I say that would it would require for it to be considered a sport? The physical component, sorry, the win condition of the game would need to be reliant on the physical component somehow. Yeah, so I'm am asking you in this hypothetical where you have to move your hands, does that count as a sport? Like, what the wind chess, condition is the wind condition reliant on how well you move your hands? Yes, you. Why? Well, yeah, you have to put it into matter, the correct box. Yeah, you have box. to put it in the right yeah. place. Yeah, you have to use your hand-eye coordination to put it into the correct box, or else it might be an illegal move, or it might be a move that loses you the game. Yeah, but in fact, it's ultimately like the most important thing. Execute it slower thing. or faster. If you execute it slower or faster, does that affect? anything in the game at all yeah if you got time limit or something if you're moving the pieces too slow if you're moving even if you even I if think, you didn't have a time limit you still have to yeah. do it but i think most yeah. of yeah, most yeah, chess games to at the it. top level do the time stuff right they yeah. definitely do competitive chess they absolutely do time limits mm, then maybe yeah that and plus there are not 
It's, if well, you take, guess, well, if you take the traditional like said, sports, it's not it, like under this condition. It's absolutely not impossible to create a version of chess that has a well, physical component that therefore could, re, you know, qualify for it being a sport under the conditions that I have in my head. If I can, I'm curious about testing the whole because, like, I think it's f fair and almost uh, normal to be like mental versus physical. Everyone understands the line, but I'm curious. So if we had like. It was a timed match of math questions between two people, and it's a matter of having to get as many right in a row as possible against each other going head-to-head -head with similar questions. And so all it is is they think and answer, think and answer, and then they get points at the end. Would you consider that a sport? No, no, I wouldn't. And if it were done just, like... Uh, just under the general, more common understanding of sport, I would say no. Hmm. Um, this is the thing. I'm I'm interested in the conversation. I'm just not invested at all in the umbrella term. Oh, of me sport. neither. Like, because like, like it, I said, there's there's a standard definition that includes chess as a sport already that I have no power to really fight against. I'm just saying, it doesn't really make sense to the more common kind of interpretation of what a sport is, as I've generally interacted with in regards to the use of language. Um, that example I gave you though, so you disqualify it because there's no physical element. Correct. What about? Um, just the, that I, would be a, it would just be a game. It wouldn't be a sport. Interesting. So like, and I'm not saying yeah, what if a lot, look, I know a lot of sports are games, but I'm not saying so the, they're, this is probably why it feels that all games must be sports. It's probably why it feels a little bit arbitrary sometimes is because if I said, okay, but I'm also going to make it a requirement. You have to keep running on the spot to remain in the game. Yeah, that would make it a sport. Right. And whoever falls down first. It loses. The well, suddenly guess, the win condition is wholly reliant on a physical element, and I would say under the normal, common definition, that would then. I do have a sort of sport. appeal in my own brain of like the spirit of sport as a concept. I think I'm not too concerned with the oh. physical, as it's. I'm uh, not ready I, to. I feel like discount competitive is more mental relevant exertion. than the physical part. That's kind of what I'm yeah. getting at. That one where I can see two big nerdy people going head to head, racing to answer the math questions, and they're getting harder and harder and harder. Like, and someone's like, "It's not a sport because it's not physical enough." I'd be like, ah, "I don't know." Yeah, like if if you were to say, "All right, you could choose between one of two things: you could learn advanced calculus, or you could run around this football field three times." I think a lot of people are running around that football field three times. I think that mental exertion and the the willingness to train in that mental way is incredibly well, yeah. difficult uh, to be fair i don't think Sh shad's in any way denigrating that it's just a matter no, of no, no, wanting no, no. to categorize them yeah i like yeah, i like I'm happy to have them both together some sports are just not they have a much smaller physical component than others yeah. in others well, see, it's just when like i say physical, physical component i kind of envision the use of the arms and limbs as the requirement what about the head and neck and I don't um, mean in the mind, so what, I mean literally like, like bobbing a head back yeah, and forth. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah that's, a, that's a limb, you know, a head mm. is a limb. And so if, if the sport required you headbutting something and only headbutting is like, yeah. Like the use of the body, you know, when that's the physical component, when he's, you know, you usually refer to it when you talk about physical movement and stuff, you're not really referring to mental exertion. Well. I would say that mental... <clears throat> the mental game of sports is incredibly important in pretty yeah, much Yeah, but they're not ever. inherently tied. Uh, of course, there's a, in many um, sports, there's a very I mean, large I mental component. But that tied. doesn't mean that anything that has a mental component therefore would qualify as a sport. I guess it's just that when I think about competitive and physical, competitive feels like the most important element of sport, more so than the physical part, because the degree to which <laughs> any just... sport requires you to be... So was yeah. a no sport would make you do that with your head. That's just dangerous. Yes, because no sports are dangerous. That's just no sense. sports are dangerous. They would at never all, do no. that. <laughs> yeah, like because driving around in a circle, have like head cutting soccer balls all just, the time. I'm floored <laughs> by the logic. Like, why would they invent a sport that could be dangerous? Like, what insane? <laughs> yeah, we we're not just in being world. awake is a mental strain that doesn't mean anything what if there was a sport that would stay awake for the longest amount of time which would be an You're incredible right, strain yeah, yeah, that, 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 yeah we engage in that sport once per year i mean because it, it almost sounds like a meme who could not all you have to do is not fall asleep like it sounds like a meme but then you're like, the, oh uh, yeah that's actually a great mental strain and physical strain too to keep yourself oh especially if you have to perform tasks over this, and over 
This one and if you fail the in, task, you lose too. In yep. school, it used to be like, uh, who can hold out? Who can hold a piece of paper the longest? And it sounded absurd, but it was literally like, you hold your arm out with a piece of paper. How long can you yep. hold it for? So, <laughs> to me, it feels like you're almost defining a sport to be any type of contest. And then, if that's the case, what's the even point of having a definition of sport? You can just call it a contest. So I think, you know, it's useful to have a strict enough definition to justify the existence of the definition. If we broaden it out too much, then there's no point in even having it. Yeah, that's, well, that's, I would that's the... It. Wait, wait, so that's the bullet we've got to bite, but the bullet you have to bite is generating a pretty arbitrary line. I'm happy to bite the bullet that's... At the what... moment, I've been, you know, answering that the are conditions arbitrary that you guys have been brought up. That's not a... Well, so, I would happily bite the bullet if we have arbitrary right. words I haven't English been language. arbitrarily changing my standard based on the I'm different not. scenarios you guys have been putting forward. I've been applying it consistently to the same standard that I have, so I haven't been I arbitrary. Know. Oh, yeah, so... No, that's not what... Well, you could be arbitrary The, the idea would be, totally why is it that physical exertion is, like, the fundamental... Yeah, that's... The, I the, meant... The fundamental parameter for, for the definition that you have is physical exertion. Like, competitive isn't the super important part in this definition, at least in terms if, of drawing the divide between, like, chess and Yeah, my, football, my, my point instance. was more not that you're flip-flopping, Chad. It's that, say there's a yeah. thousand sports, you've placed the line at 26 to 27, when I'm like, why isn't it at 22 to 23? Why isn't it at 36 to 37? So as to why is the... Uh clear like the most important yeah, like defining factor the physical component no, no, that's no, a good no, question no, 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 i no. i it's, it's this remember i was like changing the weights of the uh the pieces of chess as soon as it gets to a, a point where you think it they're heavy enough that it is a physical strain and thus difficult for players to be able to do and or something like you know like that well, that's well actually not even not even that it's that as soon as the uh, execution of the physical component becomes essential to the wind condition of the game, that's when well, it would become a sport Technically, in my mind. Not... every chess game and has so that good... wind condition, but the pieces are easy to move. Not necessarily. You um, cannot win a chess so game if you can't move chess... the pieces. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it doesn't matter how fast you move them or if you execute them well, as no, long course, as you so just move it within the time limit. My example is and I'm so making them so they, heavy... They, 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 you might not even be able to move them. That's how heavy I'm making them in my uh, hypothetical. Yeah. And so, yeah, and so there's going to be a point the, where yeah, you're exactly. like, okay, this so is a sport So the point now. where, yeah, so suddenly how you move those pieces becomes wholly important because you're uh, limited in your capacity to move them based on the time limit you have, which then creates a, uh, well, it becomes reliant on that physical aspect of the game suddenly, where previously when they were light and it didn't matter, like, it doesn't matter how you move them or how you get there, as long as, you know, you just move the piece within the time limit. As long the as you can move them, physical or execution of that physical thing doesn't matter. Well, there, but, here's the thing. There are, I don't think the time limit is a good one to use because a lot of mainstream sports, especially when they were developing, there were no time limits for anything. Like, you could literally just sit around doing nothing and that was not against the rules. There was no time limit for anything. So at any point, someone could just decide to sit their ass down and not do anything there is there is no time limit they had no you know imperative to move rule wise but i wouldn't say that that didn't make those things sports well there are a lot of games that have technically unlimited well hang on I, the, i've never used time limit forever. as the condition to qualify or disqualify something as a sport i said I think a sport is something that requires uh, the execution or incorporation of physical. You component. brought up, yeah, you brought up if there no, no, was a time that, limit. That the wind, was... the wind condition. No, no, no. The wind condition is reliant on a physical component, and so the only reason why suddenly the physical component becomes important in the wind condition in chess, if you have a time limit, is because if the pieces are so heavy that you can't move the pieces within the given time limit, therefore that's the restriction, and it's the physical component becomes essential in the wind condition, and so it's actually still the physical component, but the only thing that's make the physical component important is the fact that there is a time limit limiting you to be able to move that piece in the given time and so to be able to execute the move within the given time you need to be able to do it with a certain a level of physical capacity to be able to achieve it and so it's the physical component that would create it or turn it into a sport in that sense it seems I... like the time limit thing doesn't even matter no it does uh, honestly that's what i was trying to prove i'm not sure if you've got what i was saying I so think... with the chess pieces um, when when I make them really heavy, right? I'm not involving a time limit. I'm just making them heavy. Mm. And so you're picking up a pawn, and you're like... <clears throat> and you move it to the next space. To the point now that it's actually... You're not even sure you'll be able to win 
even if you're the better chess player because you're not sure you have the strength and uh i guess endurance to be able to move them all to win well aha see then now then that simply becomes an endurance game and because the win condition is wholly reliant on how much you can maintain the endurance to move the pieces absolutely that would be a sport yeah, well yeah, so, what if what if, so what if was, one player wins wait, 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 i'm almost there so okay. yeah all right. so what i was trying to say with that was how heavy do i have to make them for you to now decide it is now a sport yeah really good question um uh, usually people would determine that based on averages average human strength levels the minimum requirement for it to be difficult right. i wouldn't really care honestly but there would have to obviously be a, a beginning point to make it you know sufficient that enough is, for that's, it, it to have a, a point of um, I've, I've endurance expanded my that is it for my dialogue tree <laughs> wonderful yeah fun debate but i don't know if rags and fringe do you have anything else or? no i don't no, oh. really no, no, I will just you. respond I, to I'm, someone. I'm, someone yeah, I'm in, in the chat. Tired. Yeah, someone in chat asked Chad, "What about golf?" And I'm like, "Of course. How would golf not be a sport under the definition I've been using?" Yeah, I would say I would expect Chad to call that yeah, a sport. Yeah, of course, I would count. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> um. Behind. Oh wait. Uh, hey, Chad. Oh no, wait. That was the one I read already. Gosh. Look, it's we're coming up to eleven no, we're on eleven hours, okay? I have an excuse. Lord. I want a sunken living room. Tripping hazards be damned. A sunken living room? Is that where, like the, where living the living room, room is on floor? a lower level compared to the other floor level of the house and you have to step down into the living room? Yeah. That sounds probably like a sunken floor. Oh, okay. Uh, Shad, will you do a review of Dracula's Castle from Castlevania, the series? Probably not. I've watched the first two seasons of Castlevania. I really enjoyed them. Um, I started the third season and it starts to get pretty flat. Um, but I really enjoyed Castlevania. I'm not sure the castle, you know, is worthy of a review because it's fantasy. It's defying laws of gravity. It looks interesting in the way that they wanted to, for it to be interesting. It doesn't really need to be reviewed for defense because it wasn't made for defense. And, you know, it can teleport. It's it's a cool fantasy castle for what they wanted i wouldn't say it's the best design in just terms of aesthetics uh because it's a bit too chaotic for my tastes but you know it does what they wanted it to do uh do you do you have different requirements compared to a normal castle with a vampire castle are you like do you consider like sun exposure and everything mom uh not necessarily. I mean, I'd certainly have different standards based on what context the castle is supposed to appear in. If it's fantasy, if it's meant for defense, if, uh, uh, the, you know, certain levels of logic, for instance. I have criticisms of Helm's Deep based on the fact that it's made to be an impregnable fortress based on the dialogue of the movie, which actually contradicts the description of Helm's Deep in the books. Helm's Deep in the book is described as not very effective fortress. There, it was just made out of necessity, but in the movies, it's described as an impenetrable grand fortress. God, and I'm there sorry. are weaknesses and I issues with its design. Did you see that? <laughs> I didn't have it pulled up. Just, just roll happened. it back. Holy fuck! I have never seen that happen in this game before. Uh. Uh, oh, my, what happened? Wow, <laughs> you, you totally broke the game. I don't think I'm a, I don't think you're even able to, you're supposed to be able to move from that part of the map to well, this part like that. I, I don't think you are, and look at the shadow. Did you see how the shadow just remained like a flat plane against the car no matter how it was moving? Because, yeah, you may I, not have noticed that. The way they do it in this game, I'm pretty sure, is your cars are like magnetized to the floor. And so, when, that's why whenever they start to tip one way or the other, they get really fucking janky because they're not supposed to. The it's like the magnet is only on the bottom of it. So, um, but sorry, sorry, Shad, I didn't mean to interrupt you. That was just insane. Yeah, no worries. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, it depends on the context and appearance of the castle, which would then uh, create what level, what standard I'm holding it against. And that's an example of why I hold Helm Steep to a higher standards because mm -hmm. of what I was meant to fulfill is in the film compared to having less of an issue with um, Castlevania. Is there room in the Lord of the Rings films, because I have to go off memory, of saying that the characters claiming it's impregnable are doing it for morale? No, because the be one the who case? says it is Wormtail and he's saying Wormtail. it to uh, uh, Saruman um, and and he's trying to give Saruman every advantage of knowing how to break into it and so he Could says it it's said said that... how can he say How can he say it's impregnable but also it has a weakness? 
A good question. Well, I think it's. I think he's not. Be, I, I'm, I'm, could it be his understanding, yeah. right? Like, could we argue that it's to, to, to general battlefield tactics and siege abilities? It's I just mean a very well built castle according to his understanding. So, to maybe to Wim Tongue, and this is me just speculating. I'm just having a bit of fun. Like maybe Wim Tongue actually is. It does believe because he knows fuck all about castles that it is impregnable, but he is aware of a weakness, and that doesn't seem like a contradiction to him. He just describes it that way. Yeah, if you believe it's yeah, if, if you believe it to be impregnable, any report as such that seems like what you'd do. There are some really odd designs with you know Helm's Deep. Mm -hmm. They have this raised door really oh, high right, off well. the ground with a ramp that you has to get off the ground all the way up to even reach it, and so it has been almost designed to have a drawbridge. Yet they don't have a drawbridge, and the ramp just goes straight up to the front door, which is just. A, a bizarrely massive flaw in its design. It's like, what are you doing? You should, have you have you got any like video breaking down Helm's Deep as a castle? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's the video where I look at uh, castles from Lord of the Rings, and I do like a couple oh, in one. Okay. I do Helm's Deep. I do Minas Tirith. It's an oldie, but a goodie. You're gonna remaster it? You know, I might need to. A dedicated one just on Helm's Deep itself. Does, is Minas Tirith better editing? Um, better. Pass the castle test better. It's pretty good. I mean, the multiple layers of defense uh, gives it some really good aspects. The fact that it has pre-built pockets for its own defensive trebuchets to take out um, attacking siege equipment. That, that's a really cool feature. It's missing a, a, you know, a good solid moat or river surrounding it. There's just flat plains in front of the walls, which is like a... Ooh, oof, you could at least make a barricade or something or spikes or any number of things, but you just got a free flat walk right up to the edge of the wall is a bit of a bit of a One thing that's there. always bugged me about Minas Tirith in particular, what do those people eat? Yeah, there's where are the farmland? Like in the books, there's supposed to be uh, like farmland all surrounding it, and then there's this giant crazy wall that surrounds the farmland even further out. You can yeah, find it's, it's an always in how that mm. Pelennor Fields is just like nothing. Yep. No, this just kind of nothing. I was always like, that's weird how it's so barren. Hmm. Yep, same. I have a pet peeve about yeah. that as well. Uh, Fringy, you never talk about your family. How come? He hates them. He tells us all the time. He says he wishes he might do the job himself one day, oh but he wishes they just explode. Guys, we weren't supposed like, to say that on TV. Shang Chi, what he wants Shang Chi to take his rings and um, make him eat the rings and then spin them around and then they spit out Oreos or SpaghettiOs. Is that like an Australian Just any thing? circular, any circular shaped food. It's it's a Chef Boyardee delicacy. Oh. Um, yeah, but they eat the uh, but but they just throw up circular shaped food: pies, pancakes, uh, pizzas, uh, SpaghettiOs, Oreos. Um, uh, uh, that's probably all the circular shaped foods that there are, so I'll stop there. I'm sure you could have named more circular foods if you. Really I don't think there are anymore. I was going to say you named them all. Uh, I think me. that's it. I think that's. I think that's it. I think it's all the ones there are. The, the other ones are imperfect. Um. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to do a, a perfectly circular. That's that's really tough. Um. And all pizzas are perfectly circular, except for the pizzas that are squares or. Well, that's how well, that's how you can I tell mean, a real Italian pizza. pizza. A real Italian circular. pizza is perpular, perfect, perpular. Yeah, no, it's perfectly perpular. circular. Perpular. Absolutely perfectly. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's how I you get to be a. That's the last. That's the final stage of becoming a pizza uh, 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 master. Um, pizza well, I was gonna say, like, sounds like as you graduate. Yeah. Shad, because you're, you're like a medieval guy, so you might not know about this stuff. But basically, you know, like when they need like perfect circles in engineering, they use pizzas for it because they're all really perfect circles. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, in order to build some of these structures, yeah, that's what the Romans would use back in the days. They would use pizzas, where because it's it's an old Roman, they derive from the Roman uh, thing. In fact, because oh, before shack. they made pizzas in ovens and shit, they used to grow them on trees and stuff and pluck them out of the ground. Perfect circles again, because nature is quite interesting in that way. <sighs> Gosh, you, you guys are a wealth of knowledge. I love it. Yeah, we, we get that all the time. All the top comments constantly saying, like, oh, we never heard about this. Like, yeah, well, we yeah, in what. fact, the um, uh, that's where the word comes. The the uh, the old, the, the Latin word for circle was uh, pizzas. And so that's where we get the 
the the word that because they're perfectly circle. So the Italians, mm -hmm. you know, after time, the word pizza came from. Uh, yeah. The word In fairness, they have tried to culturally pizza. appropriate a lot of it, and I do think that's Absolutely, unacceptable. Yeah. But pushing yeah. back on that is important, and that is what this podcast is about. Absolutely. Everything that I said was absolutely accurate and 100 percent true. And you can verify it yourself on the internet. Don't just take my word for it. Do the research yourself. Mm-hmm. Shad, how do you feel about the Kiwi accent? Uh, I'm not actually a fan, in all honesty. Mm -hmm. I found it a bit... Look, you know, I'm not a... Oh, sorry, Kiwis, but the accent, honestly, I find it a little grating. <gasps> I don't just like me. it. I don't really like it at all. Give us hey, an example hey, of it. I also don't like the Australian accent either, so... <gasps> um, oh. Ringy said he doesn't like you. I, 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 I do like the Australian accent. I think it has a charm. I mean, the New Zealand accent is pretty similar. Um, I think it's just the way that they pronounce fish. Like, that, that's... Fish? Just... Fish? Fush. 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 You, you know, fush. It's, it's think of fush. Pork saying fush. fush. It's, it's, fush. it's kind of like you're saying A and I at the same time. Fush. Like, it's... Fish fush. doesn't sound like a fush. word anymore. Fush? Yeah. yeah you pronounce fush. eyes fush. as fush. ah. Fush. Yeah. Fush. fush. And chups. So, again... You pronounce chups. the I as an R. So fush and chups. Chups. Not fish and chups. Fish. Fush and chups. Little chips, little fish. Um. Get actual Justice Warrior on, also high rags. Hello! Perhaps in the future. Also, you can tell my, um... My brain's degraded because I am just crashing over and over and over. I don't even know if I have a mission. It's, it's well, isn't that uh, how it works, right? If you've been awake for a long time, it's kind of like you're becoming drunk. <laughs> In effect, it's worse. Your brain just isn't yeah. functioning. It's it's some it's worse. It can be totally worse to drive drowsy than it is to drive drunk. That's well, not that's, that's, way, that's not an official EFAP endorsement to drive drunk. By the way, just so we're clear, it's a, so, don't it's a drive, condemnation of both. Take, don't drive. Take a break. And don't drive. Just don't. Don't drive. <laughs> All right, right. Take the. Um, I was gonna, take but the, no, I won't. Take the airplane to work and then fly back every day. Or go make sure horse. you get. Yeah, make sure you get a um, a job someplace far away and close to an airport to make it work. Or it. you can do that thing where you you like put one leg and you kind of move it a little bit forward away from your body like a bicycle and then you put it down on the ground oh, i've heard well, of that it, like a like yeah, a lens it's, it's this a... new it's this new mode of travel where like you move your one foot you put it down on the ground and once that foot is firmly planted on the ground you lift up your other foot and move it further mm -hmm. ahead and then plant it on the ground you and you the repeat the process wait won't your wait will your legs not like won't they get too far apart well, or... see, what you got to do, Rags, is you have to use your judgment to figure out just how far you want to put your leg. Oh, the last time I was told to use my judgment. Oh, yeah. oh, no. Dude, this is so complex. It sounds like a... That sounds like a very People high die. skill. Fringy. It's really yes, tough. It takes years wait, to learn fringy, how to do this. Fringy, fringy. It does take years to learn. Is this a well, sport? Not this is not good for my I, I mean, I would consider it to be a sport. Um... Then yeah. fuck well, that. I don't want to be doing a sport component. to get to work. Uh, uh, yeah, I was about to say, it depends, right? If you, Well, it, it, in a certain sense, you could say that in this crazy capitalist economy, everybody's competing to get to work as quickly as possible by walking. Yeah, and yeah, like there, there's win and lose states. Like if you don't yeah, get are. to work if on you time, get you get work. fired. But if you make it to work on time, yeah. you get money as then a you reward. Keep your job. Yeah. That's right. You get to win, You're, but there can be many, many winners. Movie? That's that. That's right. There are there, there's more than one winner. Winning, winning. It, it's just as long as you try, you basically you you know then then you you'll be okay in this sport. Now yeah, like I don't think it's me. a fad at all. I mean, it does sound kind of fad. Fat jobs are a fad. This whole walking thing. I'm I'm following Rags advice. I'm taking the plane to work. That's that's a but funny idea where people might plane. think that jobs are like a fad and that oh it's it's just a fad it'll die out any moment I'm not gonna get one of those jobs any Wait, day now. Me that I get, you're telling me I get paid to do my work instead of working for the Lord in exchange for protection and and the, a place to live. I'll huh. do you one better. You can get you can get paid for just sitting on your ass at home. You don't even have oh, to man. go to one of those jobs. Fuck that. Well, 
It's it's like it's like uh, Ned said, you know, taxes pay for everything. Uh, sunshine. Um, I can't remember the other thing. And people who just don't feel like working. God bless them. <laughs> people who just don't feel <laughs> like working. God bless them. <laughs> the that's such a fun like meme. Just these they get this taxes done on the first day, and everybody else is in line on the very last day yeah. that they can get them in. Why did you wait so long to pay your taxes? Because I'm an idiot. You happy? Because <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> of course, not everybody is an idiot. Some of us sent off our receipts to our accountants months ago. Oh, does anybody have a calculator? <laughs> like, Herman, go on. <laughs> away. That would be pretty nerve-wracking if you saw your accountant <laughs> screaming for a calculator on the night that you have to get your taxes sorted. Um, I'm very excited to hear how Rag's opinion on Chun Li. <laughs> what? Chun Li. Um, just uh, isn't that like a Street Fighter character? I believe so. Yeah, she's got the Chungus thighs. Yeah, she Chungus got the big blue shoulders, right? Yes, the big, the big puffy okay. shoulders. Yeah. Okay. I had to draw Jackie her once. Jackie Chan dressed for, as her uh... once for a movie. Oh, that's cute. What are you saying? You had to draw. It. Draw Chun Li for what? Yeah, for for Gardic Phone once. Remember, I think Chun Li was one of the oh. ones I had to draw. I couldn't remember much. I see her every once in a while, in art, and so I was like, she has the the big blue, like like shoulders, and I think she has black hair. It sort of crops yes. a bit, I think, but I couldn't uh, quite hers remember. Hers is tied in two buns. Okay, okay. Oh, that's what I need to remember: the double circles, two yes. two black circles for like that's the right. Mickey Mouse hair. And then we have two blue circles for the shoulders. And then she has, like, some white going on around the midsection, like a belt. And then she has thunder Come thighs. Um. Titanic anus. We're only, like, a half hour from the cap anyway, but I th cool. we're, we're definitely not going to be able to finish these before we hit that cap, so. Of course. Um, yeah. Also, I'm pretty dead. Thanks, um, yes. <laughs> I was going to say I'm pretty dead as well, so uh, I think we'll probably call it there. Um, All right, oh, that's, that's a fair pity. enough. I, I was good to keep going. I'm still in, like, lockdown quarantine for... Some you know, of us have hey, to look, stay. Hey, look, yeah. if you've been awake for <laughs> oh, as long fine. as I have, Chad, you know, you probably only got, like, another four hours in you <laughs> before you go to sleep at the late, late time uh, that's of true. 30 at night. <laughs> I, I did wake up like exactly 15 minutes before we started. Um, so did I. Because yeah. I'm actually benefiting from um, jet lag still because so oh, I, I crashed course. really early and then, you know, I woke up early uh, feeling fine. So fantastic. And you're yeah, as people yep. saying, Shad won the EFAB sport. You you outclassed me at that. Woo! Yeah. Oh. But then again, have you uh, did you have you beaten me and Rags' record of was it 31 hours? I always forget. Like oh that. no, was, I haven't beaten that. It was something yeah, horrible. That's true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's what a what a fun stream. We managed to totally do tear apart a beloved MCU property. Uh, I feel like I'm a Shang Chi expert. Yeah. And and we also managed to have uh, some fun talking about all kinds of things. Also some sit and run. Oh, just the amount of things you can get done in the small time of eleven hours. You never would have thought. Um, thank you to to uh, Shad and, and Drinker, you, you wonderful, wonderful guests, as well as uh, Chad ah. for keeping us keeping us company. This, this whole thing. Absolute pleasure and joy, fellas. Lots of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much for the kind messages and donations, and uh, well, just just chatting with us. So so I, I guess uh, is there anything you guys want to say before we head off? Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I've paused a lot of work because I'm getting some new assets and stuff, and this should be really, really nice stuff to, that'll help me speed up production in the future. That's finally getting around to be worked on, um, so I'm kind of holding off on a couple things, like the, the dog bite stuff, until that can be, like, the main image for that, and I'll be using it a lot in videos as well, so... Don't worry, there's just a bit of a pause on some things, and I think the payoff will be worth it. Some good stuff to see. Um, uh, some nifty things I have to learn as well. What about you, Fringy? Um, I'm just working on a Chungus video right now. 
I can't give you a time for when it will be done, but hopefully when it is... A wrinkle in time and unbridled praise. Oh, why Yay. did you speak? Oh, I told you that in confidence. Well, right. Why would you... But, but I mean... You I know, mean, that's... I meant an unbridled malaise. That's I, I, what I, that's what I meant to that's, say. That's, that's, that's okay though. I'm, I'm keeping mode. myself, I'm, I'm going to keep myself distracted from that by, uh, working on my comic as well, which you can read on Twitter <laughs> and my website. Um, well, I looked up, yeah. just to be sure, I looked up malaise. That word perfectly describes a wrinkle in time. It is a general feeling of <laughs> discomfort, illness, or uneasiness oh, whose exact <laughs> oh, cause accurate. is difficult to identify. Go Malaise on, is, is the perfect word to describe that film. It's amazing. Yeah, it's pretty pretty much oh. e exactly the right word. And people are telling me the new Gotham High is out. It is out. <gasps> oh my god, yeah, fuck y'all. We're into the stream so we can watch Gotham High. Go to Jay Longbone's channel and watch Gotham High part... It's four now. It is four. She, she's oh, fuck, so she's beating me. I gotta get TFA part four out. <laughs> <laughs> so I can catch up to it. Gotham uh, High versus TFA. Oh my god, it's 41 minutes. 41 minutes of glory. Oh, oh god. What an adventure. Uh, All right. Showing up, everybody. Yeah, everybody. Fish to... Second we go offline, you jump over to that channel and watch that video, okay? That's the correct thing to do. That's the objectively moral thing to do. Um, Thank you so much. We'll see you on Wednesday for a potentially another 10 hour stream. Um, <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> yeah! Uh, links in description for guests as well as the cast channel, and, and I guess, yeah, that's that. Goodbye, everybody, and good night, I guess. Bye bye. Bye bye, everyone.